Oh my god, welcome, welcome everybody. Oh. Here we go. Hello, I feel like I may have screwed up the sound settings there. I can't remember. You see, fucking around with I something heard else. It. You heard, I heard it. it, and it was lovely. Most people I heard, heard it. it. Was lovely. There I heard go. you, Actually, but I'm on so, the call with you, so... The fact is, I did screw it up, but it was loud enough that nobody really noticed, because you guys were just super quiet for a second. Well, yeah, but but now fixed. that you've pointed it out, <laughs> now that you pointed it out, it's going to be on people's but minds. But I fixed After it while also it, pointing it out, so it's all worked. It's perfect. Nothing's yeah, that's, wrong. That's, Everything's that's working as intended. A, no worries, Good everybody. observation. Fair point. Hello, oh. everyone. Welcome. Hi. It's been five years... <laughs> With every it's year that closes 200... it, it's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> How have yeah, a little bit. This long? <laughs> Insane. Doesn't time fly? It really do. Uh, time flumps when you're fleeman. Time flies when you're having fun, watching movies, TV shows, playing video games, looking at little articles, clips, all the different things in the world. Media. What a miracle. And uh, I sure do like miracle. And uh, media. Mir media. Media miracles. As you guys are familiar with, when we do these sorts of things, as the title says, we basically just cover everything with everyone. Funsies. Now, the everyone part is basically people you've been seeing over the course of the year, possibly others, you know, fun times. And uh, well, in terms of the everything, who knows? Probably movie related. That tends to be the trend. But uh, thank yeah. you all for tuning up. Look how excited chat are. I always feel so, yeah, everybody. so hello, hello. emboldened by that. Because, you know, it was almost going to be that we wouldn't do any kind of celebration thing unless it was like every hundred episodes. That was the original plan. And then we were like, probably should do it yearly. And then it's like, yeah. oh shit. Because it, it takes us a whole year to do 50 episodes. <laughs> but the crazy part uh -huh. is like, whenever we get close, me, you, and well, us, we're all just like, hmm, 24 hours. Hmm. And you know, it's actually mm. longer than that because of the breaks and the getting up beforehand. Yeah, that's right. But wasn't you know, there that yeah. one year where you two, I think it was 100, what, wasn't you on for like 30 hours? Yeah, 29. <laughs> so it was 29. Yeah. yeah. Who made that decision? <laughs> uh, I think that was just <laughs> trying to go for as long as possible. All right. Not a mistake, obviously. No, it was fun. Uh, that, is that as long as possible? Are that you is sure? you, you that's the like longest that I have. Uh, I think that's the longest that I've ever stayed awake, actually. Don't. It's, Don't sell it's yourself so short. Is that the longest you've stayed awake for? I think so. I can't think of any other time okay. that I would have stayed up longer than that. Because, you know, life right. is weird. I don't um, know myself. I just know that that's, that's the limit. You can't stay up longer than that. That's, 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 that's it. That's actually the limit. It's not possible, <laughs> yeah, it's not possible to stay up any longer than that. On for the floor. Well, whenever you, <laughs> yeah. you hear those people who are like, oh, I stayed up for like a whole week, you're like, did you though? Did, did you though? Know, really? Did I, you or did you just uh, stay up for like twenty nine hours? Is that what you really mean? Never understand it. It's, uh, and you have those characters in movies that are like, oh, I stayed up for a whole week. It's like, did you? Did no, you? I don't get really frazzled know about that. That twenty nine hour one, uh, right? So I went for a walk once we were done with the stream. I can't remember if I ever said this on stream before, but went outside. Oh, and you know, you like the the lamps or the the street lights sort of thing. They had intense trails. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> this is probably not good. <laughs> like, I should probably sleep. I just trying to send me a signal here. Yeah. That something is very wrong, and he's very sad and disappointed in me for doing this to him. Hello, Metal. Hello. Hi, Metal. Um, you you, you Yo. sounded earlier than I expected. I, I missed a whole preamble on the stream. I was we are a little earlier than expected, possibly because we're going to try and take advantage of every last second that we're awake so that <laughs> we can get through the 24. Also, hi, Theo! Hello there. Hello. He was here as well. Fascinating. Look at that. We're already filling up the, the roster. It's crazy. Oh wow. Who knows who will turn up next? Could be anybody. I don't. It could be. I sure don't know. Well, what we do know is what the subject's going to be. It's, uh, it was a tradition that started... For some reason, there was nothing to it really uh, the, in terms of why it had to happen, but it did. And that is covering uh, sterling videos that relate to video games. That's that's, that's uh, mm -hmm. usually the first thing. I can't remember what we did cover on 50th, but the... I think it was... Oh, was it some sort of difficulty as like a... as a, as more a recent. Video game? Might have been more recent, yeah. Hard to remember. I All I remember is 100 was Privilege Goggles. <laughs> ah. He did <laughs> say that, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Privilege Goggles. We are also joined by Jedi Brooks and the Movie Cynic. Hello there, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. Oh my goodness, Brooks, is you, your image isn't quite loading for me. Is that for the same for everyone else? Oh, this is fine for me. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, all right. That's <laughs> okay. Like, well, <laughs> nice to meet you guys. 
Yeah, I never Cynic know. Cynic Leo, we... metal. Oh, hello. Yeah, likewise. Hi. What's up? Everyone say hello <laughs> to everybody, because I don't know who's met each other or not. This whole internet thing <laughs> is a scary I don't even know place. if we've met or not. Yeah, I'm starting to lose track. Have mm, we met yeah. metal? Uh, what are you again? <laughs> like that streamer guy, right? Are you or the something? one that really likes the Clone Wars? Oh. Yeah, that's me. That's me. Oh, okay. I love <laughs> the Clone <laughs> Wars. I love Sabine Wren and <laughs> Bo-Katan and Darth mm. Maul and evil evil bastard what's the name of the character savage Alpatine? oppressed oh, savage <laughs> oppressed yeah evil bastard <laughs> <laughs> somehow i prefer the name evil bastard <laughs> evil well that's the, that's the subtlety of uh Filoni writing <laughs> did oh. you really survive another lightsaber to the gut like i didn't watch it yet but I'm oh here. yes there's another one yeah. that, that's the thing uh, no took it like a champ she recovered faster than anyone I is think that our, uh, our wonderful fans are probably like, what do you think of Ahsoka? Talk about it. It's like, oh, you'll get it. You'll oh, get it. You'll get plenty of Ahsoka time. talk. Ahsoka minis definitely are on the is, way. Well, TV's it enough. definitely isn't terrible and cringe. <laughs> it's no. very good. You'll why would it. you even think that? I don't know why I would think that. There was a few people who had hope. It's also very <laughs> I don't know why. why would you I don't know hope? why. <laughs> Stop it. It's okay. Stop eating poopy. It's a human thing. Leave him alone. We had no, a few people on Open Bobby and like, why do you guys hate everything? Ugh, because yeah. everything's shit. <laughs> <laughs> because it's bad. Like, what about all of the, the third things? Third time, I like the third Andor. time someone survived a sacrifice. Andor is great. Yeah, we like it. Watch the we didn't watch it for three months because we weren't that interested in it. <laughs> That's <laughs> such a, that is such an so obvious, no like, argument. we had no we bias had no... sort of situation. Exactly. That was, that was yeah, a wonderful EFF fans. They have a good things. I don't know how they can still bring that up after Andor and House of the Dragon, like and like like you said, Picard season three. Like, there's yeah. opportunities for people to be biased. Yet when it's good, it's good. Like, I don't know. Exactly when it's good, it's good. Well, label and dismiss has been works. a part of most political sort of uh, factions on the internet. It wouldn't make as much sense that it would be a part of media factions as well. I label you as biased. Bye bye. <gasps> like, oh, man. Yep. Instantly. And you're not. Nope. I am impartial. <laughs> I am. I am immune to propaganda. <laughs> I have no opinion one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, that's the crazy part about it. Good times. It all makes sense. It all follows through. It's wonderful. Star Wars is in a great position. Everybody. Well, I love Star Wars. You know. Star Wars is great and fun, and it's very so, cool. So, Reva, Fennec, and now this Sabine chick. Is that three people who've been stabbed by the gut, yeah, or like has yeah, their insides destroyed? Just... Qui-Gon is the exception to the rule when it comes Qui-Gon is, yeah. Qui is a bitch, a giant, a Qui -Gon's giant a hole bitch. in his abdomen <laughs> actually caused him trouble. That but moment I mean, was so dramatic. It made the fight so much more significant. And to think that it's aged that poorly because yeah. of these stupid shows is just... <laughs> just no, bring oh, back well, remember, stomach. Who cares? Jedi Force healing was a thing, too. They didn't no. Know. Right, yeah. no. Oh, well. Take that no, back. He didn't have the book. <laughs> he didn't have Ray's stupid book. He would have figured it out. Right. Oh, my God. Right. It's amazing how now even Phantom Menace, for all of its horrific problems, because that movie is terrible garbage, but even now, one of the best parts of that movie is going to be ruined because when yep. we're watching Qui Gon get stabbed, we're like, oh, walk it off, you pussy. Yeah. Yep. Everyone yep. else did. It's the deleted scene like where Obi Wan's on, like, oh, Boston, no, that he's like, I'm actually okay. I'm actually, I'm fine. Just get hey, really come back. Can you bring me to somewhat the promptly and I will sick be bay fine. or something? <sighs> Remember Padawan slash not stab. <laughs> Stabbing twist is gut. What is it? Twi oh, stab gut. twist yeah. gut. That's the one. That's how you. That's how you kill an orc. Is you stab twist stab gut. Twist gut. Thank you for that lesson, Galadriel. Again, a I'm whole so much... additional mm. season of Rings of Power eventually. Wow, well, it's gonna be great. So oh, I can't season, wait. Right? Maybe possibly can't wait five, for that. four more seasons. <laughs> I was give, give me all of them. Excited. I was saying to Fringy that um, we are supposed to take a week off after anniversary streams, but last time we didn't because Rings of Power came out, and everyone was like, go talk about Rings of Power, you're already behind. We're like, oh, God. <laughs> yep. Not so unlucky this year, apparently. We're fine. Because that'll be out next year, right? Uh, it will uh, probably. Is it delayed? Longer than that. Yeah, Look, they maybe. filmed through the strike, so it'll be out next year. Woohoo. So what's, <laughs> um, what's not being delayed? House of the Dragon, Rings of Power? Marvel the Marvel not being delayed. <laughs> okay, as long as Aquaman those things are not. I think, it's, I think it's been moved up a week. Hmm, so, okay. yeah. or maybe it might be those moved up three. a week because Dune's now gone, so they can take up those IMAX screens. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that's the that's that'll make that'll make the Marvels good. 
No, like, that you could see it in IMAX. It's a theory. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I even It'll have an good. IMAX cinema the near me. The aspect ratio <laughs> saves the film. Absolutely. Oh, I'm supposed to mention as well, everybody, in the description, you can find it, there is a survey, just like there is every year, as far as I remember, of you get to, you get to vote on whatever your favorite things were throughout the year. Of EFAP-related stuff. Fun movies. Ooh. Episodes. Blah, blah, blah. Check it out while you're watching the stream, I guess. Uh, everyone's allowed to fill that out, even Matt. You have homework. What? I can't read, though. Oh, you can get one of the text-to-speech uh, things. I mean, you can, you can get oh, that story true. by the time this stream Where ends. Yeah. <laughs> you can learn to read. <laughs> yeah. Do it. So, I've posted the Watch Together link. Everyone jump in. we got four right now. We're missing three. Oh, let uh, me click it here. And I'm hopefully, because oh, we're wait, very wait. chaotic here, we uh, let people in and cycle people out based on basically who came in first and came in last and availability and stuff. And right now, we're up to a steady seven people here. That's pretty good, actually. It's not chaotic right. yet. We're doing good. Yeah, we're I can count fun. that far already. Yeah. So that's nice. And uh, today, we're going to be checking out, because I imagine we may as well just kick it off and watching some videos, talking about them, pausing. That's the whole thing, I think. Uh, this video is called You Didn't Finish the Game. And it relates to the concept of reviewing video games without oh having goodness. finished them. Oh, this ought to be good. Mm. Yes. Oh, I mean, this shouldn't be straight, pretty straightforward, I think. I've given it a watch through, and I've got all timestamps for the discussion parts. This is a <laughs> sterling video, so you can end up with a lot of crazy shit in it. And I've, uh, I've made sure to cut around so that we can just talk about the main points being brought up. Because isn't that the fun of the, uh, the, the whole thing? There's even another video that I've got as a potential that's called You Didn't Need to Finish the Game. So, oh my goodness! Oh, it's just yeah. This is this is a topic that's How come do you even up in argue that? gaming. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's mm -hmm. possible. Finish the fucking to... game, you bums! Like I just what are they? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Listen, if it's you know, it depends on the game, right? Some it games depends on the game. Depends on what you're really doing long. as well. And some games depends completing on... them means different things, you know? Yeah, like mm -hmm. completing an MMO or. Well, we'll see if that any of that comes up. Maybe, we, maybe we're wasting our fucking. Oh, time. and then it's worth remembering <laughs> the total, total <laughs> biscuits format of uh, doing uh, video game coverage was first impressions, but mm -hmm. very WTF deliberately. Is, yeah. You made sure to let know that as such. Exactly. Yeah, as long as it's clear. Yeah, I think that's the important part. Um, obviously, we could we could give our takes on all this, but we may as well use the video to. Sort of introduce them, I guess, and that means we're starting around here. Here we go. Uh, oh, my oh my god! Oh my god! Oh that? my god! <laughs> it's a, it's what an aesthetic. A, what a it's an aesthetic. Lady. Are we skipping the video essay as preamble? Yes. Uh, this, this is only a minute long. This part that I skip again because well, this introduces the idea of the video, and then we get to the discussion of the video. There's a portion oh, where, uh, <laughs> like, dumbass comments are read, and it's just like we don't need to do the do thing. Like we don't. <laughs> like, yeah. Which, you know what? No shade to anyone who does it. I'm just saying we got lots of videos to cover. Okay. And well, I if think... your intro was good, we might give a shit about it. But all of Jim, Stephanie, Sterling. Inquisition's intros are terrible and they're cringe and they're never funny. So why bother? This crazy idea that people say stupid things on the internet. Unbelievable. Unheard of. And they leave them in YouTube comments as well. Who well, if you have what could be considered mm -hmm. a controversial perspective and then you go, right, time to defend my position. Oh, and then you start talking about the stupidest, craziest people. Like, you yeah. should do it or aliens will abduct you. It's like, you know what? This isn't even, Ooh. this doesn't even make sense. Yes, <laughs> This is just oh, video games. There's no aliens involved. What's happening? I just, uh, I, I take issue. I enjoy aliens. I'm just staring at this hat. Nothing wrong with <laughs> Myla Mouse. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. I wore it better. <laughs> Wait, when did you have a top hat? Um, it was on my thumbnail for my Jim Sterling response last oh, year. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, Omega Ridley did it. It was really good. You gonna bring I it back at some point? It. Absolutely. Definitely, yeah, yes. 100%. So. Every time. Well then, let us see this introduction of the top like letters. Video game I... reviewer! Today, well, some of you may have seen this episode coming. We will, of course, be touching uh, on my... Which, by the way, if you're going to do, like, the say... CRT... The CRT, like, monitor effect, you need to have the lines moving. Like, if it's static, it just looks weird. Yeah. Well, Terrible. that's you where you're that? that's where you're wrong, Fringy. That's a common misconception. Whenever you would buy a CRT monitor back in the day, it had this like film over the over the screen that had those lines on it. 
So you had right, to make sure was, that when you brought it home, you had to peel it off. That's right. Yeah, you had, you had to peel off that film true. so that the lines would go away. It's like yeah. when you, you get a new phone. you got to peel off the CRT <laughs> fake display thing. They always <laughs> exactly. pop on the phone. Dab them. Dab them. Like, seriously, it has to move. This just looks That stupid. is part of what it does. That's the whole point, <laughs> is that they move. The spice inviting review for the legend of zelda the tears of the majority oh my god indigo gaming welcome to the show we're uh, Hi, indigo gaming. Hi, jump right into that watch together and you can join us we're about to start the discussion of whether or not one must complete a game before reviewing it that's a good discussion <laughs> bom, bom, Thanks for bom. Me no problem Jorah's Mask of the Link to the Kingdom of Time. Oh, that's all the names Zane combined, I get it. That's really funny. Oh. I think that cut was to be like, yeah, you big mighty bow. Broke! Because that's the big, the big thing, right? Equipment, damage, degradation. Big in mighty bows can break, mm -hmm. right? The Zelda right. games, people got upset about that. You see, that I was really lack. annoying in the first one. It was, a bit, it was better in the, in the uh, newer one. But still in the newer still one? Still annoying. Still annoying. <laughs> Damn them. Documents, a particular flavor of rhetoric that turns up whenever a controversial review comes out and the fandom gets mad. Which it always does because the fan base is fucking exhausting. You can leave whenever you want. <laughs> you <I know>. can <laughs> leave. <laughs> uh, um, Why do they do this if they find it that like exhausting? I just don't get it. That's the thing. What do you have to say about this? Just like, well, I mean, yeah, that's, I don't know. It's just some. That's just what happens, I guess. I agree. I don't like. Fandoms, Welcome to the internet. Like, yeah, you don't have to go and fist fight them. Mm -hmm. Is but the, you could. That you could. Yeah. But not, yeah you know shouldn't. that if you were reviewing silent films back in the day, that there'd be a fan base who were like, "Hey, you fucking gave this an eight. This was a nine. Piece of shit. It's not it's exactly a big change, but um." <laughs> You know what? Fair enough. If they've been particularly angry this time, let's uh, maybe let's see what they've said. The topic I want to get off of my heaving, productive chest this week is the case heaving? of fandoms Why did you arguing say that? that a review if is you were in better shape, you wouldn't heave when you because spoke. the reviewer didn't finish the game. <gasps> An argument that <gasps> presents a real tactical own goal hmm. if they actually got what they hmm. claimed they wanted. Alright, that's our hook. But the truth is, you don't want reviewers to finish games. What, because they would form a worse opinion of it? Um, is that <laughs> How do you uh, that? <laughs> the longer I play the game, the worse my opinions get. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 uh, unless you of... have like, unless you have 200 hours in a game, I don't want to hear your review on it. Like, that's like minimum for me personally, because there's so many things to explore. Jesus Christ. Wait, yeah, no, like, that's legit. Like a, <laughs> like a one hour game? 200. 200? <laughs> no, in, in terms of like a mechanic, like a mechanically heavy, uh, a game that's heavy on mechanics, that's going to be important to me. I really want to know someone who's going to be completely thorough. But if but it's just a one hour game. Wait, let's take, thorough. let's take a normal game like Bioshock. How, how many hours should you, should you have in that? Before? Okay, okay, okay. What would you that's... say? Uh, a couple hours with that, that wouldn't bother me. But something like um, a couple legal. Wait, you went from two hundred to legal. <laughs> <laughs> yourself. Okay, oh compare God. that. To, compare that to something like League of Legends or Dead by Daylight. Something that's like really mechanically focused. I want to know that they've had an extensive amount of extensive amount of time in the game. But something that's a little bit more story based, then that's not gonna. Be, I'm gonna be have a little more leeway with that. Well, because I was gonna say with Bioshock, I probably want them to complete it, uh, preferably. Twice, yeah. depending on what kind of review they want to do. If they're just doing like, a, "This is what I thought of it when I played it once," it's like, eh, whatever. That's almost like, that's almost like the premise for all of this. It's just label what you actually did at the beginning, and then tell me what you felt and thought. I guess so yeah, that we we know the there's scope. Loads of, there's loads of different things going on within this space we call reviewing. There's exhaustive analytic appraisals, yeah. and then there's just the sort of first impression, this is what I made of it, so recommendation, no recommendation, based on what you think of my taste and how it aligns with yours sort of thing. Yeah, this actually yeah. reminds me a lot of uh, this this talk that uh, Total Biscuit had way back in the day, and actually, uh, he, I think he, I actually asked him that question when I was at his panel like, way back when at Dragon Con, and he was saying that he specifically kind of does his he did his impressions videos like mid game to get his like kind of on the ground kind of expression of opinion as he was in the middle of the game but he did not frame those as reviews he would always call them impressions videos because he had not finished the game yet the yeah. series and was I, called wtf is yeah 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 and there were always impressions videos and i think that it has some value but 
I think that a review definitely demands that you have a very thorough understanding of the game, at least completed it once or, and, and depending on game, the kind of game where it has like multiple paths, multiple classes, et cetera, you might actually have to play it twice or three times to get a full opinion. That's where, um, because it's like, where's the harm? Why are people angry? And it's like, it's usually when you give a bad review and you weren't familiar with the mechanics mm-hmm. or you yeah, got something wrong. That's where people get I upset. Have a, yeah. I have a great example that uh, Tonald actually did a review. Mm. <laughs> I was, I, he actually did a collab video with me a long time ago um, before he blew mm. up and, and uh, he did a review <laughs> of the uh, uh, thir- Friday the, thir- the 13th game. And I was Steam friends with him at the time. He did a review, published a video on the game, and he had 45 minutes of gameplay on that title. <laughs> oh, oh. Wow. that's a bit okay. low. <laughs> yeah, See, that's a little yeah. low. <laughs> you're, you're not going to have an understanding of the mechanics or the bugs or, or, or like, you know, what actually is overpowered. In the, the things that people actually want to know, the the the, the, um, the proper information. You're just going to have your, your based impression. And if they make that clear in the beginning, that's fine. But a lot of the people don't. The fairly yeah. frustrating truth of things is that mastery has a really strong correlation with uh, familiarity with mechanics. Yes, yeah. yes. That's where I got my crazy 200 number from. Yeah. I, should have refer- <laughs> I should have referenced League before I just threw out that number because that's so like, what would open-ended a, for video games. But What would an analytic appraisal of, sorry for the sidetrack, but what would that even look like if you were to like, I'm going to review League of Legends? That's the problem oh. is League evolves every fucking week. So yeah. 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 Seasons, I, yeah. And it's also you would, one you of would... the most complex games ever made. Yeah. So. I think the approach you'd have to take is going through um, showing a bronze match, silver match, all the way up to challenger and explaining the different like the, the different uh, criteria of improvement. That'd probably be the, the only way you can do it. Because like, how are you going to explain that to someone who's never played the oh, game? Oh man, even that would take forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, then, and then you take into account <laughs> seasons and stuff like, like that. Like I, yeah. I, I got I got into Smite for a while and then I think season three came out and they completely re uh, changed the entire health health regaining system and all that stuff. I I put about 200 hours in that game and I felt like a complete newbie again. It was crazy. You blink, you blink and then you don't even know what what happened with these patch notes. You have to stay like, Oh yeah. I mean, I play league like once or twice a year with some friendos who played all the time. And every time I log in, it's like, I don't know any of this. Yeah. this? Yeah. this I recognize the items. Like, you know the map. That's it. They don't change yeah. the map. But every oh, yeah. character I've played a lot. Who knows? Half half the has, none of these, changed. has none of the skills anymore that I know. Yeah. yeah. Just like, pray, pray the yeah, pray that they, they weren't reworked. Like, who knows? Like, they're probably reworked twice before yeah. they go back. It was, yeah. uh, we were joking about it the other day, uh, Mel, but like, you know, every time I rejoined the game, I'd be like, what does Scion do now? It's like, yeah. <laughs> now, now, he's, now he's not Does he still zombie. come back from the dead? Please? <laughs> Please? When I watched Glad that, it, rise. it had been so long since I played League that when I, when I watched Arcane, I'm like, hey, I know Heimendinger. That's about it. <laughs> oh my And he God. didn't make a single I... turret. What a drip. But don't say Heim- Jim, please don't say Heimendinger. Yeah, don't <laughs> Heimer Dinger, Heimer Dinger, don't say Heimendinger. Heimendinger, sorry. Yeah, that, that's, oh, that's how long I can't Heimers believe in my day, but we're not. I, really can't, yeah. I can't believe they got me to like Vi and Jace because I remember going into the show. I've, I'm just thinking this bitch has punched me in the head like a thousand times. <laughs> Jace has blown me up. So I hate you all so much. Fuck Echo. I hated all the people that I know was going to be in it. And like within 40 seconds, I was like, oh, okay. I could see tonally like they were going for something completely different. And I was just blown away with the show. Can you guys get Gary to watch that, please? Like, he, no, I don't know why you guys haven't hold, held him down. Like, Impossible. hold him down and make him watch that show. He they needs to be watch able to reference characters like, fuck Andor for a second in terms oh, of like, wow. <laughs> just, in, compa- in comparison to this, like, I mean, with Gary, you're never going to get him to watch hours. Andor. <laughs> Well, You're never going to get I through think, with him with Andor. I think it is much but more Arcane likely we get, should watch. we get Gary to watch Andor than Arcane. I don't think he's going to watch Arcane. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, man. I, I, you I have to that's, pay him. That's a shame. That's a shame. We can, he's we got, can he's got a comic the, book or something. The what? Star Wars bias yeah, with Andor, book. but I think Arcane is just like, you got to talk him into that one. It's just like... Just to have them as references. If we did put like screens into a comic book and they play like 10 minutes per page, maybe... <laughs> that's the way to get through to them we have the we oh, have the man. abilities mm. um all right so yeah that's your intro which means we're gonna now skip to the discussion because most of this is incoherent rambling about like stupid comments this is where it gets to the the juice right oh i love me some juice this brings us to the real thing I'm wow. targeting to Jack. <laughs> you know, oh, I just, no. I just, oh, Rings. <laughs> Yay, Lord of Rings. People at home can't see it, but I just skipped like. I was going to say, there's no way you just. 
I skipped a lot. I hate video essays. It's 19 minutes? Dude. You skipped 10 minutes? minutes? No, more than 10 minutes. 19 minutes? 19 minutes? We're 19 minutes into the video now? We have, we have oh, 19, one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. All of that was incoherent rambling from the profession. By the way, I do, I do love the Gollum inspires like a sense of endearing. Like everyone's just like, oh, there he is. Look at him go. Yeah, <laughs> look at him go. Yeah, go Gollum, go Gollum, go. Gollum, go. Yeah. There's so much you could say. It on wasn't this his fault. The game and he only shit. manages like ten minutes on it. Apparently, because uh, like this is the thing I checked through, and I was I was like, this was the part I found interesting. So maybe it's just me, but right, you know, don't want to spend ten years on on a video all about Gollum, possibly <laughs> on Zelda. I'm not here to defend the concept that reviewers don't have to finish games. No, um, I'm here to okay. point out the tactical stupidity of mm. using that concept to defend a video that game. That seems from like a, a interesting misguided approach. Point of view. Well, obviously, I imagine the same for you, but it's like, wait, what's what is going to be the argument? Well, there is no. why, would, why wouldn't you talk about the principled position of whether you need to complete a game to do a review of a game? Why would you go? Yeah, are you no, ethically you, responsible? Yeah, just brush it off that. instantly. Instead, it's like, no, you don't want that, okay? Well, <laughs> you super really, I'll, I'll, I'll super straightforward you you argument. Want. You don't play the game enough, you get things wrong, and then the game's reputation suffers. Is that, did you do something wrong, or should that be okay? Should that just be fine? I think Elaborate it's right on both that, positions. I think it's fine for you to have the position that that is a fine thing to do and the human error should be expected sort of thing, but I also think it's fine to be like, yeah, yeah you should avoid that at all costs and you should condemn it when we find it, that sort of thing. But, you know, that discussion doesn't get had. We have a different one in this video. Also, hi, John. Hello. Hello. Hi, hi everybody. Hi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't know who so... you have or have not met here. So everyone just shout hi. 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 There we hi. go. We did it. Everyone's met each no. other. Now. Uh, all right. We've all met. <laughs> Wasn't that right. fun? Uh, the real question a... is... Uh... Sorry. Man. There is a link for you, uh, John, to the watch together. We're checking out an opinion about games. Oh, gotcha. So the real question is, uh, is Gollum going to win the argument here? I think so. He's won every <laughs> yes. one so far. Play. Big mean reviewer what didn't like it. You didn't even finish the game. Is often screamed through a veil of assumption it's by really gamers really furious that a product they're hyped for got a score. I mean, you can't be this incredulous when a lot of reviewers yeah. do not finish the game. And you can tell. Yeah. If you are a game reviewer, then asking them to finish the game generally is not, it's not unreasonable. And it's like, can you review the? Can you use the product before you review it? You know, loaded with assumptions. It's, I'd say, well, it's loaded with one big one, which is true, right? Which is you didn't complete it. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah. the one that follow through from that is the the less you play, like the more you play, the more information you're going to gain about the game, the more comprehensive your understanding is going to be. That's pretty intuitively. Mm -hmm. That just makes a and lot of sense. Yeah. Unlike film, where you can fucking watch the first ten minutes and then use footage from all of it because you have the file. A lot of the time with games, people can tell how much you completed from looking at your footage. It's like, wait a minute. Yep. You've, wait, you've, wait, you've this only is got the level the one sword. Yeah. The That's right. Something you unlock seven minutes into the game, they don't even, like, now, even mention it, you know? like This, this was something that was an issue in uh, Jim Sterling's uh, Final Fantasy uh, review. The 16 is the new one? Yep, or 15? Yes. 16? 16 is the newest Whichever one. Everyone we're on. Final Fantasy New was all of Jim Sterling's footage was from a particular point in the game. So it's like, oh, oh. Well, hmm. I think that was because that was the crux of the point that Sterling w was making about the game and and not liking it. But it was strange, nonetheless. Someone just imagined like, the Cuphead reviews, like, what are you, the tutorial, right? Or <laughs> was that just gameplay? I can't remember. Uh, talking about the like, famous clip thing. The, about the, 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 was that the, the, yeah, well, that wasn't a review, right? That was just footage. No, that or... was just, no, that that was was just, just something that got uploaded fun. for some reason. <laughs> they were Why just poking they... fun at him. <laughs> making fun. Why did they post that? <laughs> to make fun of him. I don't know, but <laughs> thank you. Thank I'm you. Just saying... Why did why yeah. did the original like the the company that he worked for? Why would they post that thinking, yeah, this is good. This <laughs> is good. People will love this. this. It does look reputable at our jobs, yes. Any Cuphead footage is good Cuphead footage. Wasn't that, uh, <laughs> then there was the Doom Eternal one, right? There was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Same guy. Oh, yeah. Same guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good old Dean. <laughs> He's very or bad at video games. Deem too low. Hell, sometimes they ironically say this about games they haven't played, attacking reviews of stuff that well, isn't does, even out. Does, well, doesn't matter. they didn't play them because they were waiting matter. for your review to see if it's worth playing. Well, a lot of the time, you're going to have access first because you're yeah. press. Uh, but even then, 
People don't need to have even played the game to have the perspective that you ought to play a game to completion before you review it. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. what does it mean? Does it like the principle develops in real time? It's like, you need to have played <laughs> to completion every game that I personally have played. And with all the other ones, I can't have an opinion. Yeah, like, you them. can't review my review until you've played the game fully? Like, no. I, there's I plenty we can review that. Exactly. I think it's I think it's like a basic expectation of a reviewer that they had played the whole game. Like, that, uh, like, if you want to be extensive and play it several times, that's preferred, but at least finish the game once. That's like the base requirement, I'd say. Out yet. This argument is treated by many phantoms as the ultimate gotcha, the holy grail of self-soothing justice. Yeah. It sounds like they got you. <laughs> sounds You're very, like very, you very upset. Uh, you sound a bit big mad about it. Yeah. If no, not Jim Sterling. The they never get mad. <laughs> prove a reviewer didn't a finish bold. a game or just <laughs> convince themselves of it. They can discredit said review completely. Of course. Well, no. The, the point would be that the review is discredited itself. Like the they're trying to point that out. It's, they would uh, say that it's, there's something wrong because with it. It's rare that they would simply say, you didn't even finish the game. But even if that's something that's being said, it's not hard for people to pick up what the point is. Like, oh, so they fucked up, or they've got things wrong, or they, they're they not very good, and they they couldn't beat the later levels sort of thing. Which is another yeah, thing, by the way. The most passionate fans don't want to hear you talk about how hard the first few levels were and how you didn't like that. They're going to be like, um... Okay. Well, part of the it's... part of the problem is that um, people have it's the reason why people do harp on this stuff. Like we were talking about with like the Cuphead gameplay. If that's your mode of play for that game, that's going to be pretty useless. The information that the perspective you have on that game is going to be pretty useless for most people because you're just not playing it at the same level that they are. And I'm not even talking about like a you know an extremely high level of play, but just like a normal average level of play. And it's, and people, you know, when people buy these games, a lot of the people who are going to be looking at these reviews probably have some expectation of playing it to the end. Mm. So you, you probably need to try to mirror, you know, the experience that those people are going to have and, and want to get information about from you. And the only way someone can discredit something you've said that's incorrect about a game is by having more knowledge than you have, which is usually exactly. coming from them having played the game, which they usually yep. can't do because you're press and you have it early. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's relevant yeah. for Armored Core just coming out because already having people on it's like, the first boss is too hard. This is a bad game. It's like, are we still not, have we still not arrived at the point where it's like, oh, FromSoft game, that's probably going to be a hard game. Yeah. And just, and just imagine all the games that you've played. Like, if everybody's played a, a MGS5, I've not played all the way through it, but imagine reviewing the game after playing like the first two hours versus the next 50. MGS5 like two, is like. Two, Hundred hours long or something. I don't know. Yeah, I never yeah, finished but like, it, and I have fifty hours. I don't in even game. know if I finished it. If I got to the point that <laughs> I was didn't the finish end. it, that was uh, a, I didn't game. The, when they started recycling the missions. I was yeah, I was, I that's thought, right. Okay, I lost. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I came to a yeah. point where where I thought I was done, and I was like, okay, now here's more. It's like, wait, what? I thought we were, okay, and then I finished stuff after you got Skullface. I don't even remember. Of like, like DS2, where it's like, oh, Dragon Rider again? It's like, yeah, but he's on a really small platform. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And he just falls that, off that it. Was, you're like, oh. That was an old uh, SNES game trick where, like, after you defeat all these bosses, they would just have a final boss rush at the end and just recycle every single boss. Like, almost oh, every game did yeah, that. Yeah, the, they did that in Devil May Cry 4, but that's because the game was, like, horrendously unfinished. The oh, entire yeah. back half of the game is backtracking through the same levels as a different character, and then you also get boss rushes of all of the old bosses just over again. Is that the one that? Metal Gear Solid yep. Five just reminded me of something that is related to the way that games are reviewed. I I could be wrong about this, but as I remember it, a lot of the initial reviews that came out for Metal Gear Solid Five were the product of a like a a, a five day long, eight hours per day. Uh, like boot camp where they yes. had to play yep. the game and try to complete it within that time and so plenty of reviewers would have needed to mm. it was the chicken hat that made you invulnerable yep. um, and, and, and so you think about the idea of um, what are the optimal ways of essentially creating and presenting a review to people playing a game under those conditions where you're in a rush to get it done would be like another example of how the way that you go about it can sort of change your experience with the game, the information that you pull from the game, mm -hmm. and what you're going to provide to players who aren't going to be playing it like that. Um, it's, and, it's, uh, it's really important, and it probably ought to be encouraged more in reviews 
some level of disclosure about the way that you went about it. Not necessarily for circumstance, like, not just for circumstances like that, but how many times did you play it? How long did it take you to complete it? Like, this information is not gonna, it's, it's never gonna be unproductive to be mm -hmm. clear about how much time you've spent with the game and, and the, how you did it. And the environment having... that they were put into, like, you know, this kind of super fast uh, kind of expo, like, where you get gift bags and you're kind of like, you got a paid uh, hotel and, you know, uh, food rushed, and uh, everything rushed, like that. Uh, like, that, that, yeah, there's, there's a certain energy to that. Like, imagine watching the same movie by yourself on Netflix at home versus watching it in a theater that cheers at every uh, major event who's like, who are like shouting when, when uh, their favorite hero shows up on screen, things like that. You're going to get two very different well, experiences. From watching those. it like, in a theater with the people who made the movie set to your left and to your right yep. after they mm -hmm. paid for you to come here and paid yep. for yeah. your room and they're watching you and, and looking everything. at you the whole time. Did you like that? Wasn't that a funny joke? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> La laugh. Laugh at it. Laugh at it. Aren't you <laughs> laughing? Isn't it fun? Look how much everyone's laughing. How come you're the only one in here not laughing? Do you yeah, you're not going to get a bag. bag. You never you're not going to get an an honest opinion in that from someone in that situation, like with all that pressure, like it's, it is, um, well, yeah, yeah it's I'm like, 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 talked about the cultural element of just the quicker, the better every time for everything. Yeah. Get it out quicker, 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 quicker. All right, with uh, reviews that everybody feels very much oppressed, especially for these, uh, outfits, right? Like journalist websites, especially the smaller ones that there's like a real pressure to get it out as soon as possible. You know, that the embargo date is the date you want your review out. Because later, people don't care as much, people are less interested. You lose out in those tasty views. Your service isn't as necessary. Yeah. It's and, like the uh, difference. It doesn't work for games. doesn't work for games. Like, imagine watching uh, Home Alone at 4 on DVD. It'd be the worst experience ever. But what, uh, being like Rich Evans, watching it right next to Macaulay Culkin and making the fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> would be the most hilarious thing in the world so it's just like yeah. it's all about context especially with yeah i got i got kind of, kind of caught up in games like uh you know when i went to expos and stuff and played overwatch before it came out people would stand in lines for three hours to play like two matches of that game and then when it came out uh you know people got bored of it you know it was a good game for a while and people were really excited for it but it, the environment of like oh my god you gotta wait in this huge line and and uh wait hours to be able to try this amazing game but when it's released to the, the public people were waiting for hours to play lawbreakers <laughs> <laughs> and that I game remember. died really fast yeah their triumphant invalidation won't make the review disappear and it won't stop them being so fragile they get violently angry over a reviewer what is violent you're angry yeah. about uh, i dude. mean but also you're getting angry over their reactions yeah so. i'm so but i'm so tired of it no one yeah. cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. You know, also, guys, Jim Sterling's the one who, um, well, Jim Sterling has opinions regarding violence and who it's okay to enact it against, so I don't really care about their opinion on well, what at this point are we saying? If someone says, say. like, this review is shit, you should fuck off, are they like, whoa, violence. Violence. Wow. No, what do they <laughs> consider violence? Imagine, imagine the reviewer just starts out by telling you how his morning went. It's like, it's not relevant. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm interested in your morning, Theo. <laughs> I'm not interested in my morning. <laughs> and I was there when it happened. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I got up. I made some coffee. <laughs> I saw a little bored. Yeah, Seven out of ten. So they'll be left with annoying and hollow feeling in their terminally irrational minds when they find themselves irrational. unable to move on. I but get still, it, man. They believe but in the you're upset. Power. I guess it's, it's just really uh, funny. Uh, guys buried in By the way, I cut out <laughs> loads of just ripping into annoying comments. That's what. Well, we're twenty minutes into That's a twenty-nine minute video. Yeah. Why are we gonna be so dramatic? Either he's just, like, what, he's just been bitching so far. What is this? He hasn't made a point. What does the script look like? Is it just internet people are freaks like 20,000 times <laughs> repeated? <laughs> the, the truth's got to get out there, okay? Accusation. No. The sheer pointlessness and ineffectiveness of the argument isn't what's stupid, however. No, that's not what makes you didn't play the game a fucking imbecilic way to defend a video game from a review. But it would totally be... F this is the thing that annoys me about the video. It's like, can you not accept a single possible time where it would be valid? Not one. Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah, where someone plays it for ten minutes and then does a review and says and 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 presents it as being pretty comprehensive. Surely everybody would agree well, yeah, at like that you, point. You kill oh, a couple of hollows in Dark Souls, and then you say like the combat is absolute shite. You just kill a bunch of things that can't even move. 
Well, or, you like, know, um, if, if we're talking about uh, this tutorial. game, like we're talking about uh, Tears of the Kingdom, if you said, yeah, no, I, I completed the the opening like Sky Islands, and then when I got to mm -hmm. when I got to land, that was it. I was done. So, yeah, you're missing <laughs> you like know. five, six game mechanics you can't even use yet. Well, but you're then you're missing gonna... like ninety five percent of the game, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. So I was like, yeah, uh, but no, it's probably... stupid. Every time, wanna... are you going to talk about that part? I don't think so. If you do, how? Did you watch videos on it instead of playing the game? I, 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 yeah. What makes it a strategic own goal is the fact oh. that if they got what they wanted and they forced every reviewer to play every game to thorough completion, it would be <laughs> far more likely to lower a score than raise ah, it. Ah, sorry, what it was. It? Wait, what? Yeah, so it was, what? I guess. It's that bad. the case. What? The, I think the keyword here is forced. Because yeah. the way yeah. that it's being contextualized is that the reviewer is, you know, they've done what they wanted to do. And then someone says, ah, and sits them down, chains them up, and says, you must get to the credits before you can say a thing. And of course that would be unpleasant to the point where it would infect your own playthrough. But what people are advocating for is, can you please have integrity, accuracy, and honesty? That's what they well, want. Yeah. yeah. I know that nice. there's going to be goobers who are just saying it to discredit you and everything, but... No, the can we just... We move past those guys and yeah. actually get. You don't have to care people. about the random freak on the internet who says nonsense. You don't like the guy in your YouTube comments. You don't have to care about him. I promise. Yeah. You should have evolved past this a long yeah, time ago. I was about to say that on the ago. internet. You gotta have thicker skin than this. No matter what you do, internet. he's gonna be there. And like, imagine. Cool. Giving a, a review is like, yeah, you know, I watched the first hour of, uh, you know, the the latest Marvel movie, and it is pretty good. You guys could, could should go see it. I give it a, a t an eight out of ten. It's like, <laughs> that's the thing. Or or watching half the episodes of a show or something. That system should be approved of, um, by basically every reviewer if they're going to have this kind of point of view. And it would be insane if you were to, because we do it these days for TV shows. A lot of reviewers review the whole show based on the first few episodes because that's like what they get yeah, given, uh, which is already I won't weird. Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion was getting decent reviews based, which is already pretty terrible. You yeah, know, those first couple episodes, but wow. But if they'd seen that last episode, would they have been as positive? Probably not. Uh, um, well, maybe maybe they would have been. They they weren't quite sure what the tide, you know, where it was going <clears> to turn. Okay, under, under that, yeah, I, I, I just, I thought that Drax arm would really pull people out, you know. Yeah, that well, was, it yeah. did. Yeah. It did. <laughs> that, was, yeah, that broke so many people. You've been Hopefully. watching a Mike Flanagan uh, show all the way up to the up, right up to the last episode would be very misleading because which, his, which his shows are great usually up to like the last episode. Which one? Which one? Well, I, I might be in the minority opinion, but I, I didn't like. I've not seen all of them, but I love the two, uh, Bly Manor and um, Hill House. I did not like the last episode as much as the rest. Uh, Midnight Mass, I think the last episode was nonsense. Uh, I've, I've heard, I've heard that one's Bly's like the worst. Ending, yeah. But mm, yeah. Uh, Hill House's ending, yeah, I agree. Yeah. But Bly's but... ending, I like. Hill House was. Uh, ah. I understand why they did it, but they should have went with um, the, the, the proper ending. They should have like committed. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Eat liver and onions. I didn't like liver and onions before I was made to eat it, and I fucking resented liver and onions afterwards. You can't improve someone's opinion of something by cramming it down their throat. But yeah, but that's not what people are trying to do. They don't yeah. care about yeah. Don't opinion. review video games and fuck off. It's like a false yeah. premise. Was it crammed down <laughs> your throat when you reviewed it in the first yeah. place? Trust well, I'm me. saying that you need to be like locked in a dungeon until you complete it. They're asking you to play it to the end. Yeah. To develop a more comprehensive understanding of the game. That's it. Do they care about your accuracy more so than your opinion? This yep. is such a weird analogy. This is more like an analogy of like making a first person shooter fan play a sports game or making a strategy game fan play an RPG or whatever. That that'd yeah. be a more appropriate analogy. This is no if you're gonna actually provide a complete analysis and review of this game you should probably have a pretty good idea what it, what the entire game plays like there's so many just simple thorough. aspects to it just when you say any broad statements about the mechanics or the soundtrack or the levels or the enemies or the combat and you've not actually consumed all of those things from the thing people start getting a bit weird about it like oh and i, I guess i uh because i thought i had guessed right but no what i thought the point was going to be was the more that somebody plays the game, the more likely it is that they're going to understand the mechanics so well that they might start noticing flaws that would otherwise <laughs> yes, pass exactly. by somebody who's not as familiar with the mechanics, you know? Which like, doesn't need to be a problem, more... <laughs> of course. Well, I mean, it, 
I think everybody would generally consider it to be a good thing because it's based yeah. on a more comprehensive understanding of the game. Yeah. But it seems the point is no. If they had to play it longer than they wanted to, their bias would start to seep in to the point that it would infect the review, which is a weird point to make that you're so compromised in terms of your yeah. bias. Yeah. It would be impossible for you to 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 be accurate anymore. I think it's nuts that um the the counter argument is yeah, well, I'll become so biased against it, I'll give it an even worse review. Like my whole All issue right. with you so oh, far yeah. was be, how you're too biased in a bad way. No, that <laughs> that's on that's you, my guy. Yeah, you fucked up. This is worse for you, not me. No, part of the big... <laughs> I'm just like, madder at you now. <laughs> <laughs> like, we should be trying for some level of objectivity, not you just being a bitter mm. asshole, yeah. you know? Well, then someone, someone just points out a simple mistake. They say, oh, you said this was this, and it's actually this. It's like, fuck you. Next time I'm going to say even stupider shit just to annoy you. Like, yeah. Okay? And, like, if you're really just falling off a game that hard, you can still put out what you have with the understanding and the intellectual humility to say how much time you put into the game. Exactly. Fine. By making them sit at the table all night and finish the plate. I guarantee you that if I felt forced to engage with Zelda's broken weapons and ass backwards controls more than I felt I had to, if I felt obliged to play more of the bits I thought were convoluted wastes of time, I'd have given it a lot lower than a 7 out of 10. Backward ass fucking logic is this when you're like, you don't want me to give it a more thorough review because it would be more negative. Yeah. It's like, I was wondering about that's that. Good. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a not fuck if it's more negative or if it's more accurate. Exactly. But yeah, not necessarily. Surely there's yeah. got to be some instance where playing it more would improve your experience. I mean, come on. Because you in come to understand that... what you were doing wrong, for example. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, it's the same reason why if you, you know, it's not quite the same because non-interactive, but you watch a film twice, sometimes you can benefit greatly from that experience. <laughs> and, and we've... You know, when it comes to really good films. A lot of people almost... soured on Endgame on their second watch. That's a good I feel example. like you... I feel like you don't really know a film until you rewatch it. That's when you like you take I, your I, emotions I, out of it yeah. and get the truth. And the oh, fact why? that this guy is like like uh, appealing to this thought process for video games is crazy to me. We well, don't even like, finish it the first time around. For an easy games example, <laughs> Dark Souls One. Uh, I've seen this is anecdotal, but I've seen both myself and so many people on their first time through that game get to the bell gargoyles, get just rinsed over and over again <laughs> for <laughs> hours, <laughs> and hate the game. They hate it. Then they beat it and they love it. Yeah. Like, something starts to click after they are good enough yeah. to beat that boss and suddenly they're in love with the game well it happens sometimes that you can play a game for a very long time and just be completely out of sync with it yeah. you just don't get it you you aren't in rhythm with what uh is the most optimal experience uh with that game and then the mm. longer you play it you just start like oh shit okay yeah now i get it you know that happens to click you're robbing yourself of those potential eureka moments with a game mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and then you're the less freaks like it. me. Well, yeah, it's so funny, right? Fight or... okay. uh, if you suggested that could happen, that 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 could yeah. happen, you could enjoy the game. That's it's insane. Why would you ever say that? I'm just gonna hate it. You're like, oh, yeah, you can have a better understanding of it and like understand why you like the things that you like, why they work, why they don't work, and it's such a narrow-minded like point of view. I don't get it. This is such a weird take too. Like, it is is this kind of take the idea that reviews need to be positive to talk about like the idea that we, we we must praise zelda game because it's a it's a zelda game like it I, almost I sounds like yeah here is that sterling is very heavily invested in the conversation around it and particularly i guess nintendo fanboys specifically getting mad about the review that it's so mired in that that it's almost impossible to move past that to get to the fundamental conversation which is do you need to complete a game to review it properly you know why should you do that what are the arguments against it it's just too mired in the meta mm. what benefit is there to not completing a game unless you're specifically trying to just describe your first impression well if you're a reviewer time. not much if you're me and <laughs> yeah. it's a terrible game many <laughs> 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 no, but it's... for a reviewer uh um, yeah. yeah i don't see how ever finishing a game is going to be worse than not finishing it. Yeah, yeah. this is right. about like I how mean, backward this is. More context. You just have to accept this argument of if you were already not liking it, you are going to like it less. But then again, that assumes that the point of playing it more is to necessarily have a positive review of a game rather than a better review of a game. Is so, exactly. 
maybe the um, maybe the element here is because we've talked about this in the the cinema aspect with what the duty is of a reviewer and what a good reviewer uh, what a good review is. When we go to the you know video game side, if we were to ask Jim Sterling, what do you think is the duty of a good video game reviewer? What should they strive to do, and what makes a video game review a good mm-hmm. one as opposed to a bad one? And maybe Jim Sterling is operating on a completely different like goal or mindset of what a video game reviewer needs to be doing. Well, something that maybe maybe uh, these types of journalists were trying to cover more or less every major release rather than doing the thing that uh, I like. If they went to video, for, yeah, they need well, to go to some more video game festivals. All right. What, well, what I mean is that I, because you know, I oh, no. <laughs> for instance, would feel compelled to cover every single game no obviously it's not every single journalist individually is going to do it but in the case of does does sterling review like a lot of games in a year or only like five or six in a year because if there's that pressure as well of you want to be making sure that you're doing reviews for every major release that just limits the amount of time that you have available and the passion you're going to have interest in each of them that's that's true are you going to be particularly interested in every major release that comes out uh, exactly so if there's that too and I, I just want to touch on what Reg said, like the requirement for a reviewer. Like if, let's say it was a list of three to five things, don't you think finishing the fucking game would be on it? Like that's just like such a base requirement. <laughs> well, and the, the, <laughs> the, the sort of empathy I can give is when you deal with a game that's enormous. And it's like, what does it mean to complete it? It's like, I understand yeah, that. Okay. I understand. Um, but as you can see, uh, as evidenced on the screen right now, uh, one thing I know the the controversy surrounding this whole review had was that 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 is a low amount of hearts, is it not, for a Zelda game? I'm gonna have to ask my Zelda experts here, like metal. <laughs> Sorry, I just tuned out for. You're if Last you ask me, sentence. I'm like I I'm I'm like linked to the past Zelda. Yeah, I was about to say I played... I'm like twenty. Yeah, I think you can get <laughs> you into... gotta get all twenty. I, I think you can get into two in rows with, with your eggs. Well, that was something that um, uh, Sterling got asking? picked up for, basically, as controversy on the review, is that there's a shit amount of hearts in all the footage. Oh. Meaning... Yeah, you, can't, you, you, weren't, you, you wouldn't even be able to get the Master Sword with these amounts of hearts. Mm. Um, it just tells you how much you played the game, doesn't it? At a yeah, game. yeah. You, you need to do yeah. a, a, a bunch of, uh, uh, what do you call it, the shrines. That's right. There's a lot of them, and then you get all the... Uh, all the parts yeah, I... for that, and here's the thing: Tears of the Kingdom uh, has a lot of shrines. Some of them are pretty good, and some of them are fine because they vastly improved those shrines. I think over the over Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. So count, there's a lot yeah, of 32. things you can see and also talk about in that. Also, that I've you been uh, probably want to play. Just got a message from Kibakins. He has a live EFAP <gasps> anniversary. Coverage on efap.me. Oh, Forward yes. Apologies for starting a half hour early. We did mention it was because we uh, <laughs> need to get going as soon as possible. We're going to have to be up for 24 mm. hours yeah. at least. Yet. <laughs> Those vinyls look good in the corner, man. Nice. nice they thing. do. I, yeah. I'm really digging the aesthetic of oh, uh, yeah. this EFAP yeah, anniversary. Yeah, yeah. I really, Lens. really like it. It's, pro- it well. it's probably my favorite, actually. I it's really love it. Cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah. really I'm good. a big yeah. fan. Great I palette. really like it. Of course, yes, uh, like the that. vinyls are still ready to be purchased, but not forever, folks. Links in the description for that as well. And a thanks yeah. to uh, Ebikin's going to keep a live note of everything that happens. And this is on efab.me forward slash 250. You want to get uh, information on everything that's been happening. Great, straight there. In a, in a very aesthetically pleasing place, let's be honest. This is like shit. It looks really lovely. It's a, like prof- this is, it's a professional, yeah. well, a professional gig. All right. Yoda Ain't amateur fall. hour. Anyway. anyway. Take Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun, for example. It's a very good game. I gave it a 7.5 and its fans didn't bitch about it. Like the similarly oh, scored, but not quite as good as <laughs> Tears of so the bitter. Kingdom. I had a lot of nice things to say about it, but a lot of complaints as well. Chief among them, the fact that it's a limited weapon and enemy variety meant the game ran out of content long before it ran out of levels to put them in. Bolt Gun starts off hilarious and exciting, an incredibly fun pairing of the ludicrous 40k and the over-the-top 90s style shooter. There's a fucking button dedicated to yelling fanatical threats, a press F to show Contempt button. Oh, it's you'd like perfect. that. Perfect. Go on. 
But over the course of hours and hours... I was about to say, the argument has been made yet. We're waiting. <laughs> It'll be here yeah, in a second now. Yeah, all right. The yeah. gameplay, while never diminishing in quality, grew more and more exhausting. The further I got into it, the more tired I became, the more its little minor flaws began to bug me, and the lower my opinion sank. For me but see, that's fine. If you, yeah, yeah, that's fine. If you that's play it for an hour, and you're settling on a 10 out of 10, then you play it for three hours, and you're like, actually, I'm over nine. Then you play it for 10 hours, and you're like, this is kind of a six. That's it's fine. Kind of like, I'd call that new, important information. Yeah, the new of the yeah, yeah. new information creates new opinions. Like, it's, it's this guy's insane. <laughs> Yeah, and you can you can describe stuff in review. You don't have to give the entire review like you, how you felt at the end of the game. A lot of games don't really hold up through the end. Sometimes the ending makes the game even better, but a lot of times it's kind of like it kind of falls off a little bit. Maybe the last boss wasn't yeah. great, or maybe the last bit kind of seems repetitive. Great example. Um, I'm kind of again a minority opinion on this one, but uh, Alone in the Dark 2008 has like an episodic TV show format. It's got a lot of flaws. Not the best game in the world, but. For the most part, it has a pretty good pacing until the last act of the game, where for no reason whatsoever, you have to search the entire like GTA style open world area and burn down like 30 uh, evil roots <laughs> for no reason before you can get to the last act of the game. And it's like the, the biggest slog of the game. But had you not played up to that point, not reviewed that point, you probably would have gotten a different experience had you yeah. it, because you don't realize it's even in the game. That's like the last couple hours of the game. Yeah, you don't get a full experience. And I just, I can't imagine uh, looking at a review and someone says, like, uh, my enjoyment factor was lowering the more I played it, and me going, like, well, then you shouldn't have fucking played more of it, should you? And then your review <laughs> would have been better. put out a positive review. Don't you know that's your job? That's being positive. The so funny player is just going to go, huh, so this is just going to, like, sour quite quickly. Then. It's so, right. it's so I think funny the video because you just. Way too I think that's what it is. With the view that the that the you know whoever's getting mad at Sterling over the over the review, is necessarily saying, well, you should have played it more because then you would have thought it was better. That seems to be mm. baked yeah. into every single argument that's being made. I think that's what it is. Like, what's the best possible way to get a good review of the game? And like, if you're taking an approach that's going to give you, a, you know, potentially a negative review, I don't want you to get that. I, uh, I, I, I think that's I think it's as simple as that. self own of the Zelda fans. Mm. Yeah, if, if we ignore like the frothing idiots online, you have to assume mm. that these people who are saying you didn't play much of it, implicitly what they're pl pointing to there is you were inaccurate about something because of your lack of familiarity. Yeah, and you wouldn't have exactly. been if you had played more. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a kind of a weird, weird thing I've been noticing, especially with bigger reviewers. Like, has anybody been following... Vaguely related, but has anybody been following the uh, Linus Tech Tips drama recently? Yes. Somewhat. Yeah, somewhat. Nope. Uh, like one of the things that came up, like uh, Gamers Nexus did like a whole expose of all, all these in mm. inaccuracies and kind of like biases, like where they would review things that they were uh, sponsored by higher and they, they, they like took a prototype, a very expensive prototype, auctioned it by accident and they didn't get it back and a bunch of other stuff and just like continually uh, misrepresenting stats and performance of various different bits of hardware, which, you know, thousands if not millions of people have been influenced by their their reviews of video cards and gaming hardware and all this kind of stuff right anyway one of the things that they kind of said i think linus said this and his kind of knee-jerk response was that uh how he needs to kind of read the room while he's doing reviews to kind of like review it properly and that's such a weird aspect it's like why would hardware performance uh and your estimation and analyzation of that hmm. matter at all what other people think like if anything you should practically be isolated from other people's opinions because maybe everybody else is getting it wrong maybe everybody else has got a sponsorship or isn't testing it properly if you're actually properly reviewing a, a graphics card and getting you know yeah. fps on high you know on medium and low that should be pretty objective and you shouldn't it shouldn't matter if everybody else loves it or hates it you should you should be able to independently verify what the quality of the thing yeah. and, and, and great You've highlighted a time where it's super important because this comes down to like people buying products that are designed to function. Like that is the primary purpose. At least with entertainment, there's an angle that even if it's shit, you yeah. might still like it or whatever. But um, you know, we still have examples in history of how these things matter. As far as I'm concerned, like um, I, I don't have as many of the details anymore. But as far as I'm aware, Total Biscuit's the reason Dark Souls made it to PC, which was always like a huge achievement because people fucking no. adore Dark Souls. It was huge, and so is From Software on PC now. Um, and likewise, the only big significant breakdown of Soma that was on the internet when it came out was Joseph Anderson's, and he fucking had no idea what he was dealing with when he played the game. 
I knew so many people in the comments of being like, oof, good thing I can dodge this one. Like, oh, that would have been bad. It's like, oh, God, this is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this that sucks. Like, no. Well, <laughs> that the, sucks. The money he cost frictional. And that's the thing. It's, uh, it was done with inaccuracy and clumsiness. It's weird because he's not usually like that. Like, uh, he pissed everybody off with his Mario Odyssey review, right? And he got, didn't he get all of the, what are they called? Moons or something? Yes. Something like that. I think it collected every single one. Yeah, and and that's commendable to me. The fact that you would do hyper completionist, and then I feel like you you have a strong standing for what your opinion might be, even yeah. if I completely disagree with it. Um, but like Soma, I don't even think he played through it uh, more than once. When it's a game filled with choices, which is an interesting thing to do. Uh, when you want to do like a definitive review of it, because he's just he just found it so unpleasant, I guess. But. In any case, uh, this is the motive behind a lot of people, and to just dismiss them as the crazies who will get a worse review if they keep complaining is so fucking bitter. Yeah, yeah it's just funny to me, just th talking about this now, just thinking back to the Resident Evil 4 coverage we did, and just playing through the game like four times. Yeah. <laughs> Every everybody was like, oh. And then even the just putting little challenges out there that have nothing mm -hmm. to do with the game, but just see what's going on. And what... While I was doing this, it was, it was like in, uh, what was it? On oh, the beginning, when you wanted to kill both Salvadors on professional or super professional, whatever it was. Yeah. And you just have to do it over and over again because you really want to do it. And then you realize, oh, when I shoot this one uh, zombie man over there, there's like 15 different things that can happen every time. No, dude, we learned yeah. so much about the mechanics it's... of that game by setting ourselves difficult challenges because you have to rely on mechanics and therefore it's like... Yeah. Uh, how do I get him to reliably, reliably stagger? And then you're like, we, well, you, you can't, um, you can't <laughs> unless really. you do, you know, this many shots in this place with this gun at this time. And it's like, oh, okay. And then you actually get a whole map of the mechanics in your head. And if someone said yeah. like, yeah, but that made you hate the game more, right? And like, <laughs> um, it may that have you learn the game more. Well, it may, it may have made me give it a lower review than I had before I figured out how everything works. But I don't see how that's a bad thing. Ooh, yeah, honest. because Good you know how you have and put in your review. And it just I mean, gives it, replay it, value. If the idea of a reviewer is to have the general gaming population be more almost blissful in their ignorance for the real quality of a game and its mm -hmm. mechanics. I don't know if I'm going to go along with that. It's almost yeah. like a like a mildly abusive relationship where you're like, okay, if you if you demand that I will play more of this game, I'm going to not acknowledge this game as being as highly rated as you want me to rate it as. It's like, what is your, even your purpose at that point? If, it, if that's if you're treating us like, how dare you ask me to play more of this game? I'll rate it lower because I will not like it as much the more I play it. It's like, what, what do you realize what your what your purpose is? <laughs> yeah, it's really unrelated. You can, make, I mean, that's what Mala sometimes puts puts us up to. It's like, hey, you all play Gollum and stream it. And it's like, fuck, why? And then it's just all just a really good time uh, overall, even though the game is piss. But it's just just good things like even if you if you let's say your content brand is like oh man i can make so much content out of this while playing the game and figuring stuff out and then make a review on top well that's crazy and then you guys made this whole super cut out of it that people were enjoying and then we cover it here on efab it's like i don't know we all had a pretty good understanding of that game i think so i just, it's just i just see positives and playing the game to the fullest at least once i don't know no negative for that at all <laughs> Familiarity, as this game would appreciate, breeds contempt. And while I still like Bolt Gun, I honestly wish it were a few hours shorter so it didn't outstay its welcome. Thanks for the Bolt Gun review, I guess. <laughs> Red Fool yeah, huh? is a more extreme long, but perhaps a better weird. showcase God. of how demanding reviewers spend more time with a game doesn't serve that game's interests. My first few hours with Red Fool... How can the game's interests? It's the consumer's interests. <laughs> yep. How can it Seriously, not serve he, the game's interests, though? He thinks reviewers' job is to praise games, not actually review them. I think that's it. That, like, that, that's pretty much it. That it, it serves a game's interest because it means that it would be easier for developers to make good patches and balances to a game if they get the most comprehensive information possible on what is working and what isn't working. So, I mean, yeah, you could even make but an argument that it do. isn't a game's interest to get these types of reviews because then they know what to fix. Seen they know how to make a, a better sequel. Mm -hmm. yeah, see this happen yeah. a lot with game patched games like Darkest Dungeon 2, 1 even. Those games went through a lot of iterations based on high profile community feedback. That game yeah. kicked my ass. Most people don't remember that, but there was a period where people hated Darkest Dungeon because they added in corpses and a couple other mechanics that people weren't really on board with. 
and Fuck it wasn't corpses. until like a lot of feedback that they finally removed corpses or they no they didn't remove them they made no, options are still there you, you still can make it optional still stuck. yeah yeah you can turn them off if you want to which are you sure yeah they added as optional i believe but there's there's powers that people have to like get rid of corpses what it, would be the point of those powers you, you have the option in one they i in two i think they're right. mandatory they didn't add it as uh, but two is like almost a completely different game at that point but yeah mm -hmm. in, in one they were introduced and people were really mad there was actually i think a period when it went into the negatives in steam reviews and then they made a couple different things optional they also added like a less punishing mode and everything radiant mode or whatever it was and that's back up to nine point or i'm gonna nine out of 10, so i'm gonna be like I, I guess throw a wrench in the conversation and say I think people were wrong to be mad about corpses, though. Uh, I think they're a very important part of the game and make it function and what makes it function. I don't mind corpses, but I'm losing my mind with that sanity shit. Can't manage it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the whole That's game. Really important. <laughs> I know. I like game. it. No, no, no. I, I wasn't listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying I suck. That game whooped my ass. I'll, I'll get back to it. Though. God, I remember Darkest Dungeon one. I think I I, I, I named them after people. In chat, and I think and called one, I, I named one Mauler, and I think I had six Maulers in that game. <laughs> I remember I, the I had, I had two Fringies actually, the Plague Doctor. I put 600 <laughs> hours in that game. It's fan fucking tastic. What about the second one? Uh, the I second played... one is pretty good. Very, Ooh. very good. I might even it's say very, it's very different. I, it took, if you play a lot of the first one, the second one is going to be very alienating. I would argue the second one's better because. Uh, there's a certain aspect that happens, at least, at least me playing however many hours I played. I didn't probably play as much as you, but there's a certain kind of just sort of stagnation that happens in the first game where you get your characters up level and you don't want them to go crazy and die or get, you know, syphilis and, and you know, rot away or whatever. So you kind of like just kind of you kind of stagnate and the dungeons keep on getting harder, but you don't want to go into them because then you lose everybody and, and there's permadeath and autosave and everything like that. The second game you embrace that because it's kind of a roguelike game where you're constantly replaying and then trying again. And so there's a bit more, there's a bit more of a, just, just go ahead and do it attitude in the second game. You don't stagnate as much, but that's my opinion. I actually think it's quite the opposite personally, because in darkest oh, dungeon one okay. in the middle difficulty. So like the normal difficulty that people will play on or radiant, there isn't actually a fail state in the game. You can lose runs, which amounts to a loss of time, but you cannot actually lose a run, which means uh, that's part of why the game's allowed to go as crazy on you with the RNG as it is. Like, you know, it's possible for you to enter a room and for a character to die before you get a turn. Torturous. That, that is the way it is, precisely because you can't actually lose a run on normal difficulties, and those are really fringe cases. And so, like, you're losing essentially time investments, but it's not particularly substantial time investments at a time. Meanwhile, with two, each individual run is its own separate thing. So those sorts yeah. of RNG swings can cost you an entire run. And runs, as compared to other roguelikes, are really, really long. Like, that game has really long runs compared to other similar roguelikes. And so yeah, you can I... lose a massive amount of time. I beat, uh, it was during the beta, but I beat the boss once, and... Um... It was like a, I think like a couple hours, I think, um, versus potentially like ten hours working on a, on your your best characters and and one. So personally, I think that it was a very difficult decision. I think I, I remember seeing the creators talk about again. We're kind of going off topic, but the, the creators saying like this is a very different game, kind of trying to kind of treat it as two different games. We took some pretty extreme measures. I personally think the roguelike thing is was a as much as I miss the city building and stuff like that, I think the roguelike thing definitely makes you kind of more emboldened to take risks to kind of go forward. As as I played the original, I was terrified of running into like a star, a star creature from another plane, just like immediately wiping my party. That was a that was a real, very real threat in the first game. Talk of my life. Yeah, I really appreciate <laughs> their willingness to change formula in the second game, and for the most yeah. part, I think it went really well. I think there are some fairly substantial hang-ups in exactly how things are put together like run length for example character right. balance is a bit of an issue and there's a few other things in terms of the mechanics of each individual run but uh, i have a lot of respect for them pivoting and th the moment to moment combat in each uh like fight in darkest dungeon 2 is miles better than darkest dungeon 1 because they learned and, a lot from one and what's actually really cool and this is you know, the same things happening with path, path of exile is that they're kind of treating them as two different uh experiences like you can go back and play all the dlc of one and it's still a fantastic game but two is now a different experience so if you like two better you can play two path of exile two is coming out and they're going to be running both path of exile one and two simultaneously so if you like poe one better you can play that if you like poe two better you can play that and they're going to be both 
active services that that have different mechanics and different you know active dodge yeah. and everything like that so i, I actually like that idea okay, cool. where you're not just you're not replacing a game you're adding another different version of the experience that's kind of what pissed me off about the forest and sons of the forest because i feel like the forest became obsolete when that new game came out but i don't actually really like the second one as much as the first one and like mm. uh, nobody plays the first one anymore. It'd be cool left if we had two, both kind of those options. He left it at one and two. And yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah there's probably so many examples. examples because it added everything in. Yeah, mm. anecdotally supporting that. And then so Overwatch many of... two made Overwatch. <laughs> 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 like so many of my friends after two came out, they played a whole bunch of Darkest Dungeon two, and then went back to Darkest Dungeon one for a while. I they, joke about mm. uh, I joke about Overwatch two as the the one sequel that was canceled after it was released. <laughs> what a I mess. mean, yeah, the, the like the big selling point of that was the campaign mode that they yeah, yeah. Basically yeah came about on, that. Right? Yeah. Sorry, Absolutely. see, well, we um we kind of got into the sequel element that we're talking here uh, twice when we uh, ventured into Dead Space and Resident Evil four. Um, whereas I think we pretty much agreed, at least the three of us, that. The Dead Space remake replaced the original in a good way, um, and the Resident Evil 4 remake is very good, but it doesn't replace the original. It yeah. is, is different enough. Offers in its a different experience. experience. Uh, yeah, yeah, a yeah. different enough experience that it's what. No, I'd still say it's worthwhile to play the original. It's just play yes. the original Dead Space before you play the new one. Yeah, they're both still very good. Yeah, if you're going to play the both of them. Yeah. I was going to say, by the way, a lot of what we just talked about is all stuff we know because of how much we've played the games. And we know yep. all the inner workings yep. of them <laughs> because uh, we've said this before. But like, if you watch me and Metal, or if Theo's there as well, sort of thing, going into Bloodborne, we'll tell you some of the most specific and fine detail things that happen in that game, and you'll be like, "Good God, they hate it!" And then you'll find that it's like <laughs> our favorite game of all time, or at least one of them. <laughs> like, yeah, I remember that's about, why you know those details. All you know? The time. Yeah. It was a point that you brought up earlier, Metal, about uh, when you were playing Resident Evil 4 Remake, these very specific challenges you put on, your, on yourself to, and, and yeah. like the benefits that come from that. But, I mean, you know, when we talk about the broader things that you can gain from doing a review, it's as simple as playing it on normal difficulty, then hard difficulty. That's super useful information. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. If you only play it once, you don't know that. You don't have a point of reference for how the game changes depending on how hard it is. And often when you play it on a harder difficulty, that's when you can start to notice a game either excelling or breaking. Yeah. Like, you can notice buckling. Because the mechanical constraints the player's under are more difficult, and difficulty yeah, exactly. tends to show the flaws. It does. And in the, the world that Sterling is advocating for, you miss out on that, uh, that yeah, possibility. Uh, not only that, but you yeah, should be fucking word. thankful that you miss out on it. You're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you, don't, you don't want it. You don't want that world, you fools. <laughs> Is Sterling like uh, Tom Cruise and uh, talking to uh, no Nicholson? No. Nick Nicholson, he's like, he's like, you know, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> uh, it's so weird. We watched that recently. Good film. Yes, that's a really good movie. Great dialogue, of course. Highly recommend it. Full. I didn't hate it. I felt it was a bland, mediocre, minimum viable product of a game, but it was relatively inoffensive to me. After playing it a little while, I came away thinking it was dull, but more or less serviceable. Then I kept playing. I kept playing until I found out how fucking repetitive it was. Yeah, but imagine yeah, but if you it, hadn't. Yeah, yeah, imagine imagine if, hadn't. if it was really good when you imagine kept playing it. Imagine if you hadn't, though. Yeah. I feel like that's... Isn't that even a worse point, though, that you realize, oh, if I had stopped... I might have given a downright misleading. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, this goes both game. directions. It's like, are you happy mm. that you give misleading reviews because you don't know how familiar you would Whoops. be with games? Mm. Yeah, isn't this a isn't this a great reason why you should play games longer? Holy yeah. shit! This is what I mean. This, this video just completely <laughs> fucks itself. Yeah, you should be <laughs> thankful no that I have no integrity. You're like, okay, <laughs> you know, wait, all right. right. I kept I playing think until I Jim found out. Jim should uh, review games and not play any of them and give everything 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah. That way, the 10 out of 10 scores Everyone's are protected, happy. preserved yeah. forever. Cool. No one will, uh, no and, one will ever and be unhappy. That, <laughs> that way, you can put out a thousand reviews a day and you make all the fanboys happy. It's like, yes, you gave it 10 out of 10. I agree. Right. And then anybody who disagrees, it's like, well, what do you want? I didn't play it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking we'll just about. Great. Actually, play and review ten games, and then just change the visuals every single time a new game comes out of any of those reviews. And nobody will notice. Yeah. Not make much difference, and the fans will be happy. This, the, you know, everyone's happy yep. now. We did it. We solved racism.
And yeah, someone's just made me away back in the day. Uh, I know we've talked about this in the previous years, but um, Sinuous Sacrifice, right? Hellblade, uh, Sterling Games. Yeah, yeah. Game right. One out of ten. Oh, the bug. There was a game breaking bug in it, and that's why. I remember when uh, Prey got a four out of ten because of a of a very rare save game bug, and IGN got pissed. Yeah, that happens. Mm. The fact of the matter is, when you're right, you're right, and how can you ensure that you won't be wrong? You know. Mm -hmm. a, a right statement, regardless of how much you've played or how little you've played, is still a correct statement. Uh-oh. You're going to drift into the world of Jim Stilly's perspective on everything I say in my review is correct because it's all subjective, baby. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. <laughs> like I agree that it's subjective, but, like, that doesn't make that true. Well, it's it, there's a lot of things you could say about video games. Well, and anything that is like, oh, that's you can't just say that's subjective. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, like as if that somehow matters to the things that I've said <laughs> that are attacking your argument. Fucking, I hate it, man. This is why I'm I wish not... they would just separate it, and so we'd have an understanding of what they're talking about. Because this is just this person is just rambling. Like, there's no thought process. The things here that they're contradicting themselves with, you'd f catch that in a script normally. But this just seems to be like completely just how they feel about it like there's no actual research or anything done here did they even elaborate on other positions like at the beginning the parts that you skipped wait uh what, what's in the skipped section is mainly responding to comments that are taken out of like comment sections that are insane you know like did you... they explore the other perspectives though like like why you shouldn't actually like why you don't benefit from them reviewing like the, let's the, put it they, this way this is the best faith section of the video <laughs> oh boy. Oh. Wow. Okay. Wow. While I came away thinking it was dull but more or less serviceable. Then I kept playing. I kept playing until I found out how fucking repetitive it was. I kept playing until I found out it had nothing under the surface beyond yeah. the most good. bug in basic good. 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 Game. You have nothing under the surface. Your review is now good more job. accurate. That's neat. You did yep. it. High five. I kept playing until I found its embarrassing enemy AI and laundry list of bugs. I kept playing until this inoffensive this game. This is your had job. That's your job. It's about to say. That. <laughs> cool. That's what you're supposed this, to do, man. This At this is point, how it's like, you get your money. I did Find a health inspection bugs. for a restaurant. It was fine. Then I started checking the freezers and I found rats, dead rats in rats. the freezers. <laughs> I wouldn't have found them if you guys not complained. <laughs> it's like, okay. God. Exposed its weaknesses to such a degree, I felt downright insulted by the thing. What started as Redfall is okay, I guess, became, with time, Redfall is fucking shit. What's the problem? So this the is good. The problem is, see, Nintendo fanboys, you don't want me to review Zelda more comprehensively. You don't because want that. Because then the number Otherwise, out of ten Zelda will go would be downer. like Redfall. That's right. The number would the number would be lower, and that's you don't want that, do you? You want, that. You want number be bigger. So in this weird <laughs> twisted, this weird twisted uh, uh, kind of viewpoint, you basically play good games less and bad games more to even out the score. <laughs> that's basically what what's being said, right? It's, it's more of a this is the there's been many attempts over the years for Jim Sterling to shut up people who uh, say mean things and this is the newest strategy and I've just found it absolutely baffling like you don't want me to, be, me to be more honest and thorough because you wouldn't like the results it's like a threat <laughs> and also isn't this like a really bad thing to, to put out there that publisher that potentially uh, less less than up and up publishers and developers might think like hey if we front load all of our content, it doesn't matter after the first couple hours because the reviewers won't even play it. That's a really bad precedent to set, I think. I, get, I just can't cause... get over the fact that we've, we've basically just had uh, Sterling admit that I could have reviewed a game positively that was bad, and that's better. It's like, why is that better? I thought that the most important thing, surely, would be accuracy. Surely. Exactly. Hey. That's what you're there All for. The time. Accuracy, integrity, like the honesty. That's the thing, like a trifecta that people will absolutely love about videos, whether or not they agree with them. Mm -hmm. I, feel like I wonder if there's an asylum somewhere full of people who have been broken by Jim's <laughs> low scores of their favorite games. <laughs> like, well, I wish this if only he didn't play them. <laughs> with Breath of the Wild, because that was given a seven, right? Or six? Seven or yeah. six? Something like that. Uh, and the same oh, thing happened yeah, again, yeah. and it pisses everybody it's off. Seven. Which, yeah. um, you know, like, it's something that's worth there is definitely, there can definitely be when it comes to particularly hyped up video game releases where a small contingent of people get pretty rabid 
about anything like lower than absolutely glowing praise and particularly get fixated on number scores. Yeah. People can get Elden really, Ring. really, really fixated on whether a game gets like an eight, for instance, that an eight is unacceptable because video game scores are so skewed. Yeah, uh, they're really <laughs> mad at me about Elden Ring. Yeah, like that that definitely exists, but I mean that exists for basically every Everything. game. And can we not can we not let that ruin our ability to have real conversations? Yeah, like you, you don't you know? have to dignify these idiots with a response. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, but by doing this, not this kind I mean, of response, you you have you have <laughs> demonstrated yourself to be very big mad about big, about this yeah. topic. Yeah, this is definitely an emotional response. This video. There's definitely a, a fervor, especially about uh, the Zelda games recently, too. I remember uh, Breath of the Wild. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I had some problems with it, too. Most people I know really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I'd probably say it's a good game for sure, but I didn't like it as, mo as much as most. But the just the kind of environment around the reviews were crazy. I remember Pro Jared. This is pre-Pro Jared controversy, so they had nothing to do with that. I remember he reviewed it, and, it and he said like a 10 out of 10. Um, and he said, oh, there's a couple of nagging issues, but they're so minor and not even worth mentioning. And I shit, I shit you not, either the next day or the day before, he had a one-on-one -on -one interview with Reggie from mm. Nintendo. And it was like an exclusive interview and everything like that. Okay, it's like, I really can't take your review mm. seriously if you're that kind of cozy with the, are, yeah. are you going to trash their game? And then I talk to Reggie, hey, Reggie, I really respect your work and your games are yeah. great. <laughs> immediately like there's a price to honesty and that's just yeah. sort of like welcome yeah. to life it's just one of those life things it's, yeah, but uh, it's a reviewer thing though like if you're a reviewer that's a choice you have to make do, do you want to have honesty and integrity or do you just try to get paid like you have to make that choice eventually and people like that they just expose themselves it's difficult too because if you see uh you know let's say you really really like the witcher 3 and you got kind of cozy with uh cdpr and and you know, everything like that like i i i'm an affiliate of gog for example if gog did something really bad i would i would feel a little sting of guilt criticizing them but i probably would because i i count my honesty and my integrity more than a couple bucks of of uh every once in a while from somebody clicking on an affiliate link it's not that not that big of a deal it doesn't end my life or my career if i you know criticize them but i could see getting really cozy with cdpr and then they drop uh cyberpunk 277 and they're like oh what do i do now do i violate that relationship it can really affect you your opinion subconsciously or you know, directly sometimes and yeah, it's dangerous. It's really dangerous if you want to keep their objectivity. You have to kind of, you have to kind of keep your distance. Keep, keep even people you like at arm's length. Mm -hmm. It. I've been party to some fucking dumb attempts to discredit a negative review too. Final Fantasy XIII. One of my earliest reviews to send the community into hysterics was discredited by some because I said I hadn't beaten the final boss. I'd gotten to that final area, I just did not want to fucking bother playing that last tiny stretch because I had loathed everything up to that point, and it really didn't oh. matter to me. No, what are you good oh, for then? Well, I mean, then you kind oh, of, you, then people are criticizing are you, here? you then. <laughs> I mean, it's just <laughs> the job. It, if that were in the video, you know what I mean? Like, as long as you didn't fucking comment on it then. What did you do? Because it makes me think, like, what did you do? What did you say that pissed everybody off? Yeah. You played what the whole game, you didn't fight one boss. Did you claim yeah. to fight it? Did you claim yeah. that you did the whole thing? Did you, did you talk about the story and conclu conclusively said that's bad, even though you didn't see the end of it, because you just <laughs> didn't do the rest of it all I'm the way saying, at the end you there? You were right there, man. You were right <laughs> there, man! <laughs> Matter to Final Fantasy fans who delighted in what they perceived to be a silver bullet. Not one of them stopped to consider that if I hated the game after 50 hours, what on earth would make me turn around and love it after 51? A better more understanding. Maybe more anything. experience, you cunts. Like, this is so simple. If one just hour just... doesn't make that much of a difference, then just fucking do the hour. Yeah. You're a game reviewer. But this, this all assumes every single person that ever says anything is like, if you played it more, you'd like it. Maybe they just be if you played it more, you'd be more accurate. That's all. Yeah. Imagine playing oh, Bioshock Infinite and then skipping the ending and then commenting on the story. <laughs> <laughs> the ending would absolutely either make or break that story for you. So critical. In morons, as a concession, I did watch the ending cutscene on YouTube afterwards. Oh my good. god. You <laughs> as a oh, no. concession. Oh, it's such kindness. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, merciful. I watched the clip, though. You. Oh my god. Oddly, it didn't make me raise the score. Okay, 
Okay. That doesn't. Why doesn't do you consider matter. that said like a victory? Like, haha. Yeah. Showed you. It's like showed them. Uh, I, I didn't change my mind. I don't know why he didn't just power through and beat the final boss. But if Jim's opinion was one that I sought and it was consistent, like I could get some value out of a, a video of that review you know where nuts? it's like okay at least he played 99 percent of it like i you probably can deliver a good sense of what it's like to play generally but like with certain games like if you if you were to like review final fantasy 7 before you even get out of midgar it's like <laughs> yeah. there's so is, much there is wait 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 wait. midgar is from final fantasy 7 uh seven. yes yeah. there is there is a car in the parking lot where i live and there's a license plate on the back of the car that says Midgar. M-I-D-G-A-R. Is that what that's from? Uh, uh, Midgar, be, yeah. Mid Midgar specifically, I think is from FF7. It's based on Midgard, which is Norse mythology, I believe. Yeah, that was I'm aware of, but okay. The, yeah, the, the one with that, without, the mystery, without the D. Yeah, without the, mystery the D. Mystery solved. Midgar. Yeah, um, mystery solved. Now I know what that car license plate is. On that topic, right. by the way, wow. uh, if someone was to review Bloodborne's bosses and they had Old Hunters attached and they were playing it all and they said, listen, I can review the bosses. I may have missed a couple at the end, but I've, I've got it. And it's like, which which couple at the end? It's like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, Maria and Koss and Ludwig. <laughs> You'd be like, you, you missed, you missed. <laughs> like his, I can see people being fucking furious and be like, whoa, calm down. I fought like fucking 18 bosses. Is that not good enough? Oh, no. It's like, turns out, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, it is. Go ahead. For those who don't know, that's just the, those three, three of the best bosses in the whole game. Yeah. <laughs> no, was gonna, there was a. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna make a cheeky reference and say, um, about the whole not playing through the end thing. Like, uh, imagine if you got a Roger Ebert review. It's like, yeah, I watched about seventy-five percent of the six senses. Yeah. It was all really predictable. Uh, it really needed like a twist and and you know something to kind of really tie it all together. I felt that kind of kind of boring. Really, it's like. Dude, there are some it's films not... or stories that are told that really don't like everything doesn't click right in until that like latter third sort yes. of thing. It's yeah. the crescendos, the climax. There's so many different ways to do it, but like a lot of the times it's it's essential part of the story to see how it all ties together. Might even or, say, or... Yeah, the or... pledge, the tune, and the pristine. Ooh. There you go. Ooh. Yeah, especially uh, you, you That's really... another one, that ending there. Imagine not seeing the, the... Dude, prestige doesn't make any fucking sense yeah. if you don't watch the last yeah. third. I, I didn't even want to wow. reference it, but like We're both about... reveals. Imagine so skipping out on both right? reveals. Imagine if you were playing Mass Effect and then you got to Earth and you're like, Yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. and then you go on the internet it's like wait what why is everybody what's everybody so well, up and arms yeah, about bioshock and you give up at hephaestus it's like that's as far as you get just like you haven't you you're gonna review the story and you haven't uh... you know sometimes the ending might not change your opinion sometimes it might change it dramatically yeah that's always a possibility why remove yourself why limit yourself in this way there, there are movies where the ending absolutely makes it. There's some movies where mm -hmm. I, I did not enjoy it up until the ending. I'm like, oh, wow, that makes the whole thing way better. And there's movies, and I won't name the names in case you ever want to watch it, but there's movies where it's, it's, it was all a dream or it was all in the, in the person's mind. And it completely kind of deflates the entire, all the events of the film. Yeah, you can so. obviously go multiple directions. Someone just mentioned Hot yeah, Fuzz. Mentioned Imagine you stopped when he first sort of gave up on the investigation. Went back, yeah. just oh, chilling yeah, out. Yeah, be like, so oh, many examples. The Imagine film just chilled out. Hot, Saw, point, the ending of Saw, the first Saw movie, you don't get to see the twist. Like it's just there's <laughs> so, every, every movie ending twist would just be talking about a movie that fucking needs that final. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's all the help it can get. Jeez. Oh man. <laughs> Another review written by someone who didn't finish the game. I think the outlet was IGN. I could be wrong. It was a long time ago. But it came out that their early copy of the game was busted and they couldn't play the final third. Regardless, okay. they published a review anyway. Confident ah. the Okay, so <laughs> I mean, like, that, that could you be a problem. That... I'm fine with it if you make that clear. Yep. Well, apparently yeah. you knew that, so it seems like they made that clear in that review? Question mark? Maybe. I wanted to it check. Could, but... It might be something afterward, right? But maybe. Yeah. Just tell me. Just tell me. Yeah, that's it. Just tell me. If you said, like, I'm reviewing all of the bosses in Bloodborne except for these ones, and I've heard they're pretty good, but this is my opinion on the, all the other ones, you'd be like, all right, you know, mm. I, I can't take issue with that. That's fine. You made it clear. 
they played Wait, was so, enough. So people are mad at Jim because he wasn't disclosing these things. Well, it's, it's that... so simple, dude. It's it's this Zelda well, game is a it... seven out of ten, but you haven't played more than like ten percent of it. I don't care. Right. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> it. That's as far as it goes. And a lot of people will be like, you know, th there's going to be people who'd say you'd like it a lot more if you played more. There's also going to be people who like you. The way you talk about the game, it sounds like you know nothing about it. You need to play more of it. Like those two factions exist. Right. It just Which seems like it would be worthwhile to load your statements a lot with. To be clear, I haven't because when uh when we did the forge on it, I was the one who hadn't completed it, and I feel like I said like ten times. Bear in mind, I haven't completed it. Bear in mind, yeah. this is where I'm at. You know, bear in mind. Disclaimer. Oh, this would here. all be subverted sure. by or counteracted by uh, just calling it first impressions. And that's the thing. If you play it Zelda really for would, ten percent of the mm -hmm. whole thing, that's probably what you should call that. A lot of it just comes down to being clear about what you're trying to say and where you're coming from. But I think I I get the impression that if pressed to talk a little bit more about the perspective on Zelda, that Sterling would say. Yeah, I didn't complete it, but I, I think that, but this is it, right? This is it. This is my statement on that game, and that's that's it, and I'm done. Um, rather than rather than admitting, I, yeah, could be wrong, could be completely wrong about a lot of things. I could be wrong, but you know, I have limited time. There are other things I'm more interested in. I, you know, I, I feel like it would yeah. be much. Wouldn't have much posture. to add. A little bit of like earnest honesty can go a long way, instead earnest of just like honesty. this petulance. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. This this is pretty. <laughs> this this is a strange video. <laughs> it's some it just it denotes such a sense of bitterness, like I said earlier, because uh, I can understand the confusion sometimes. Someone would say like, "What's the what's the equivalent of getting to pass the tutorial or something in uh, in Bioshock versus Elden Ring?" And someone might be shocked to find out it's like probably killing Margo, like that's actually mm -hmm. completing the tutorial. Of El I, I imagine some people would be like, "That's insane! That can that took me like thirty hours." And it's like, okay. <laughs> but like that's the truth i don't know what to yeah, tell you man, that, that's just reality yeah if like you, you haven't experienced anywhere near what it has to offer when you've only done that i'm sorry if you have mm. limited time if you have limited time then just play like some of those you know sony cinematic like action adventure game maybe not go to war because that's pretty long you know play, play Uncharted <laughs> yeah. or something and do reviews of uncharted because you can beat those in like 10 15 hours that's more suitable for that but they take on yeah. these games that actually have like extensive information and yeah, then like, they don't do their job Zelda is a hundred plus hour game, you know. Oh, it's a chunky boy. <laughs> I had a lot game. of lots and lots of streams of Although that I, game. That was crazy. I think I mixed up Margot's wetness with is it Margot in the first? Uh, it's Margot and Morgot, and then Mergo is in Bloodborne. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All, of, all of that. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I can see how you mix that up. <laughs> Someone said Margot. Get Robbie. it right. Margot Mar Robbie, the fellow. That's what I thought you were boss. saying at first. <laughs> I'm assuming you mean Margot, right? The funny thing so, is, it, you'd be able to understand what I'm talking about easier if I just said, yeah, the, the tutorial boss, basically, the first, not yeah. the the guy at the front with the horse, but yeah, the big, big boy yep. that everyone got stuck on, but as soon as you pass him, you're basically free and clear, you start going real fast. Mm -hmm. One Enter thing a that content I... drought where nothing is worth doing. Oh! I didn't say that, yeah, no. he said that. <laughs> yeah, I said that. <laughs> no good games, no good games I love all. all games and everyone. They're so. beautiful, and I play them to completion yeah. and then review them. Hooray. Yeah. Okay. You, you know, IGN... Time, clearly. IGN's a, a meme at this point, but I will say the one thing they did do that was actually pretty cool, when they were approaching a very big game, like a big replayable game or like an RPG that has like like hundreds of hours of content and they weren't able to fully analyze everything, by the time the embargo was lifted, which is quite often like a week or a couple days, uh, they would do this kind of cool thing, which you can only really do in a written review, but it was they called it review in progress, where they would post an early version of the review and state exactly at what point they're up to and their impressions so far. And they would update that article over time until it was a complete review and they would score it at the end. And I thought that was a cool way of giving you an early impression. If, if you absolutely need to know what they think of the game so far on release date, they'll give you that. But then by the time that if they're actually finished, they have a fully fleshed out, not rushed, fully thought out review after they played the whole game. And I think that's a cool compromise. Again, you can't really do that with videos unless you re release multiple videos because YouTube doesn't let you replace videos. But that's a kind of cool compromise, I think, in that regard to be able to kind of work on it over time and update it as you get more of the game done. Probably was. After all, nobody whined at them. Nobody pointed fingers. Nobody said they hadn't played enough. Did they make that clear in the video? If they did, then that's yeah. probably why nobody complained. 
The difference between me and them, they gave the game a high score. Oh, that's what it was. You Funny. you know that you can uh, like, be correct uh, accidentally? Like, you can yeah. say the correct thing for the wrong reasons, and that doesn't make it okay. Well, and also, like, right. don't pretend yeah. that we're in a world where as long as you give a positive review, everybody will let you cycle past with, like, shitty reasoning. You know, this, the, the toxic positivity thing has to be pushed every once in a while, because it's a real thing. It does happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, I, I guess what I'll concede on is it's easier to get away with a shitty good review than a shitty bad review. Probably. Yep. Mm. Yeah. But that gets flipped I... depending on the t like you know like a, sh a really bad review of Gollum, but that you change you you call it bad. Like you'll get you'll get away with that. Who's gonna notice? Yeah. Who's gonna care? What is this cartoon? He Man, right? <laughs> Does anybody? Know? Is He Man? Yeah, yeah. Ah, I don't. I don't watch He Man. Look, look, what's can, that guy on can... the left? Who, who is he? He's uh, he's very he's very um he, creature he's, of the black lagoon. It's he's, uh, he's terrified. He's a, very, he's a very expressive and interesting <laughs> looking fella. You can tell that it's He Man what because he's looking it's at fucking it? hideous. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I mean, I love everything and all people. Apparently, it, it's is he Merman? Is that his name? Okay, uh, maybe yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that by looking at him. And, and what's the guy on the right? Who's he? Oh. Uh, uh, I'm thinking Frank. Kevin. Paul. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's going to be Kevin. I, I don't Beast, know about that. Beast Lord or Beast Master? Or... Oh, oh, Beast Paul. Man, is it? Beast Man. Beast Man, yeah. Beast so. Beast Man, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, right. Merman and Beast that. Man. Okay. Daring today, aren't we? Uh, oh, Daring today. <laughs> Skeletor. I really like Skeletor. Skeletor is Skeletor's the best Skeletor. character. Usually. Skeletor gets yeah. a really Fuck like you, it. he mad. laugh is the, the best king. thing I've ever heard. This podcast then, stands for Skeletor <laughs> and, and his cousin, there, the there. Horned King. <laughs> there's a guy called Mad at Arms, is there, as well? Cool. I'm sensing a lot of Fisto. Fisto is a character, right? Fisto? Oh, Fisto. He pissed so hard. Pretty I'm sure really Fisto is a guy in that. this. I like Skeletor. <laughs> because that's what it's really all about, isn't it? No, the end it's of the not. Day. It's oh, not is. really <laughs> about whether or not you played the game until the end. It's not uh, about how much you played, be. it's about no, how much you agreed with their uh, preconceived. Well, that, that, doesn't, even, that doesn't follow from off. being explicitly positive then, does it? If you have to well, agree, then it goes both ways. Just because you're cynical doesn't mean that everybody else is. Besides, there, like just the there are so many reviewers is, who have huh? such respect on this fucking site for how they may take a controversial opinion, but that they will justify or they'll put the work in. Yeah. I don't think they yeah. exist. You know how, that at the beginning when you write the script. Get your references, make sure you have all your information and proof, and then you well, get to talk about how you feel about it. The hypothesis. Well, it, it yeah. is interesting that... I mean, have you, have you ever once considered that you might not be very persuasive on this subject? No. <laughs> that that might <laughs> no. be the problem. No, he, he me, hasn't yeah, thought about that, Chris. But allow so. me to... Or, 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 he thinks this video is awesome. Have you, ever, have you ever considered that... Let, let's say that we assume that your, your conclusions are correct in these instances, that maybe you're not going about it in the best way to convince people what? that what you're doing is right? I come up with these yeah. crazy <laughs> theories. Yeah, I'm a fool. <laughs> The notions of what games are objectively good. <gasps> I could show them a 100% completed save file and it wouldn't make a difference. I think it would. I, I think would. it really it would. For once, people um, wouldn't tell say us really why it wouldn't make a difference. And tell us why. If it, and if it didn't make a difference, then you've spent how many years on YouTube unable mm -hmm. to garner a somewhat good faith audience yourself? <laughs> oh, okay, my dude. You this suck. is so cynical. <laughs> They'd find something else. Oh. As I pointed yeah, out, well, at that point, will. what the fuck is the you point of this video? Sizable? And fuck yeah, it, why sizable? even bother? People are mean. One There's always argument. gonna be someone who's gonna be like, eh, I'm stupid, and I'm gonna blame you for it. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. I don't even have a big channel, and I know that happens. How long you have you been on this platform? What is happening? Yeah, but you learned that from just gaming as a kid, like Age of Empires as a child. People like talking shit. You you get thick skin from the very beginning, and you just learn that's the internet. There's nothing you could do. Well, yeah, when people are unfiltered. The These point, people are just like. The point huh? that was just right. made is like, oh, you know, even if I was to do the thing they're asking, they're just gonna be bad faith anyway, no matter what. Well, then you suck. You <laughs> suck. Like what you were saying, you suck ass at arguing. Then if you have no way of battling this problem, then just get. Don't talk about it. You're not well, equipped sorry, to deal with it. The landscape has been laid now, so that there's just always bad faith. So it's like, so what was the point of this video? If if that's all the point is, just there are people out there who aren't nice to me. Okay, that's it's, crazy. Uh, can can I give you? A, I can, imagine no why. can I give you an example? I'm going through the my Iron Man video, the number one 
criticism. I had that video like a hundred times. Is oh, you can't compare Riri to Iron Man. It was, she doesn't have her full movie. When my entire point is that you don't need a full movie. You just need good writing. You can flesh someone out in a single scene. So, so many people yeah. said that. Like I wake up every morning to someone, oh, you can't talk about Riri. I'm going to have to address it in like a podcast or a video of some kind. And I'm going to make sure I have all my references. So I have a make list sure. here of all my favorite cameos and like, you're going to compare it to that. Like, make sure to be very bitter. And at the end say, even <laughs> if, even if she had a whole movie, you guys would have been saved anyway. So fuck me. T'Challa, Thanos, both of them didn't have their own movie, you know, and they were both yeah. fantastic. T'Challa was better in his, in, in his um, introduction movie than his own movie. Like, he there's was so many counters yeah. to it. T'Challa yeah. was great. And there's a million work. counters to it. It, it. Just, yeah. So, but I like, don't know. I can't take this person seriously. She's how the, how the fuck are you going to come out here with a video that the subject is people are mean to me on the internet and I don't like <laughs> it when like half the premise of your channel is being really inflammatory. Yeah. Like Jim is I, really I, inflammatory. How do you come out in that ridiculous suit and still have thin skin? Like, I just don't understand. You, like, you just... What? Oh, because it's a replacement for a good personality. Oh, like, what goodness. is common talk? Vain, fat cousin. I don't get it. Is he Bane's? <laughs> No, Vane, Vane. Oh, right. <laughs> the glasses. The Vane's fat cousin, man. The glasses remind me of Vane. And also, yeah. like, I can't I can't understand how you've been almost reviewing games for professionally for almost 20 years. Almost reviewing you games is a good way to... <laughs> 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 uh, that was almost the review, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just, like, 2006, I, apparently, I, I, I know them from, like, all the way back in their uh, Destructoid days and stuff like that. It's like been around the bush for quite a while so i don't know how you don't develop that skin early enough i'm i've only been doing it for like seven years and i i i've gotten both ways i've reviewed things poorly people have been like you just didn't understand it. you didn't play enough or didn't watch enough i and there's a couple instances i i streamed a game and had mildly positive impressions of it somebody bought the game on my recommendation just having streamed it for a couple hours and like i didn't like it and they like they dm me and it's like i didn't like this game I'm like oh, i'm sorry sorry I... <laughs> and then and, and uh, another one happened it was like i mildly re recommended a movie as part of a uh, a genre and they're like yeah i sat down and watched this with my dad and i didn't like it kind of explain yourself and i'm like what and i, <laughs> I, I kind of liked it you didn't know what to explain yeah it's just very funny. Another recent video, these people have such a warped view of reality that they think their opinions are reality. This is why they flip out over Not reviews me, and though. disagree. Not me, though. I was going to say. Who cares? What, what always you know what's wrong with these bad faith commenters? They think they matter a lot to them. Like, yeah, I don't care probably. about some guy on the internet who's wrong. Do you know how many <laughs> of those there are? There's a lot of them on the internet with them they don't think you're disagreeing with their opinion they think you're fighting the objective mm. truth of the fucking mm -hmm. universe oh, shut this up. revelation about their mindset <laughs> has only really hit me in recent months but it explains so much like the amount of times we've laughed at people saying <laughs> yeah, the reviews the should be objective great, getting yeah. angry because they you can think they're just be more accurate for fuck's sake well, that's all people think people think the things that they say and believe are true or accurate crazy more than 11 not like, damn, people, who do? people think that they're right people don't knowingly hold in things opinions that they think are fucking wrong. <laughs> what it's a surprise. Just, we've gone through it so many times where it's just like, you know, when when it's like Peter Parker is uh, characterized as a serial killer in uh, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, people be like, no, he's not. And it's like, excuse me? Are you trying <laughs> to be like, oh, my opinion's objective. Ooh. It's like, no. What, no no I, references. <laughs> no, Paula, that's ridiculous. That's a, that's a ridiculous analogy. You've made it ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous, and I reject it. I, I, I refuse to engage with that. I, but when a hypothetical can't happen or is unlikely to happen, I, I just I don't take it seriously. Well, I mean, it is a relevant one. Like, there is information about a game that you can get right or wrong. That's possible. I mean, it, it, it can be simple things like saying, yeah, I really enjoyed playing uh, Tears of the Kingdom. I love the part when Samus blasted that cannon. That was really cool. <laughs> uh, I wish Samus would blast my cannon. Oh, yeah. I mean, what? You can, because she's you can... a good shot. And she's really efficient with firearms and destructive devices, so she'd do a good job. Just the point like being, it's just incorrect. Informa you know, she doesn't appear in that game, so it's not even, it's not even right. And what, and what do you do with that? It's like, you can get things right or wrong. That's possible. Yeah. 
There's too much opinion in this review. On the uh -huh. surface, not uh, that, that's who's saying that. That's not a that? thing anyone has ever seen. Never seen, 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 that, argument, yeah. never yeah. seen that statement. <laughs> we often get that criticism. Oh, <laughs> too much there, opinion. they have too many. They have too much opinions. All oh, right, there was that old video of like uh, the per purely objective review. It's like this is a video game. You can play it with a controller. Oh yeah, they're, and, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. Um, it was pretty it, frustrating. Obviously, the floor of the video would just be the follow that logic a little further along. There's still a lot of things you can state as fact about the game, about anything yeah. really. Yep. Just just watching this, ju just watching literally this still screen. It's like, okay, you can get up to 32 something hearts. You you can fight the flame Gliok boss on the bridge of Halia. Uh, mm -hmm. It takes about 33 to, you know, 50 shots or whatever. I don't know how many, but, you know, things like that. You can actually, you can well, then the compare. Like, oh, provide you all of it, you know? Oh, absolutely. So many you, you, could, you could write, a, actually, if you researched a lot of wikis, you could probably write a pretty thorough review just based on secondhand yeah. information if you wanted to be lazy about it. But yeah, it's it's interesting. And you're right. You're One right. of them would be an interesting thing to do review a game just by third hand information oh, or anything. Yeah. Something. And then yeah. don't reveal it until the end or like yeah. a week yeah. or a month later and just be like, yeah, by the <laughs> like, way, this review you guys loved. Uh, <laughs> and truly randomize uh, the footage too. Like you grab an hour yeah, long yeah. play and then chop it and then have a randomizer pick what order the clips go in. That could be <laughs> really could be cool. Fun. Yeah. yeah, could be interesting. This it sounds stupid to accuse a review of reflecting the reviewer's opinion too much. You already let us know that was not the issue they took with you. It was that you're not finishing the game and you've got inaccuracies. It's as straightforward as that. It's nothing to do with you having, having an opinion. Play, this is this really is like just flailing about, <laughs> just yeah. sort of acting on every single thought that's coming into your head as soon as oh, it arises. Get me wrong, oh, it is fucking stupid, but thought, we can rambling. understand the logic from their perspective. You've just told them the sun is green. To these, you oh might God. have though. You might have said the sun yeah, in Zelda yeah, yeah. is green, and, and then they're like, it's, "It's not it's green." green it's... You know? <laughs> Maybe it is. Types of Zelda fans. A seven out of ten isn't just a conflicting opinion. Nothing so trivial. It's, it's sacrilegious. Okay, yeah, yeah but when <sighs> if if your seven out of ten is built on the foundations of several inaccuracies, then yeah, people can be like, "That seven is inaccurate." Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's when Sterling says in response, oh yeah, I'll give it a six if you carry on. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> in the Matrix, it needs to be uh, yeah. stamped out, oh. burned off, fucking killed oh on my sight God, because it's a holy terrifying wow. anomaly okay. that introduces we, the threat can we chill out a little bit? <laughs> no, this guy's I, buried in salt. This I, guy is I don't so care, good. get over it. Of what uh, they know to be true turning out to be false. When gamers TM get mad over review scores, they don't TM. think. Well, who, who else is mad here? Like, a, it's, it's, oh. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm mad. <laughs> Everyone's mad. Everybody. Their arguments through, they don't consider how illogical their stated desires are or how infantile they sound. They're lashing out <laughs> How could you say wildly. That? I do, I do love that. It's like, don't you understand? <laughs> You're illogical and infantile. <laughs> that, that's both said. Those two sentences back to back. How could you possibly say that? You didn't watch this back. You didn't re script this at all. You just picture the person who plays a shit ton of this game, checks the review, says, uh, "I really feel like you didn't get a good grasp of this. You need to play it more. At least get get to the final boss. Like, I think this is a shitty review, and the game is far better than a seven. And it's like, do you understand how infantile you're being? <laughs> <laughs> like, Jeez, <geez>, sorry. <laughs> okay. So triggered, man. That's the thing with um, a lot of criticism, criticism. It can always like reflect easily. It's like, you're so fucking mad, aren't you? And you're like, um. <laughs> that's, that's why I brought <laughs> up the Riri. That's why I brought up that example of Riri to add to this, where like, it just means you didn't even watch the video or pay attention because my main point is that you don't need it doesn't you know it doesn't have to be your full video movie it, like you just a cameo can be enough a five minutes can be enough but people's like idea of criticism is just so like lazy sometimes they just don't really put any thought into it mm -hmm. madly at a threat to their objective truth deep down they don't fucking care how much tears of the kingdom i played they truly yeah, don't they, do. <laughs> they, do, they only care yeah, they that what they, they think do. is real is real and they will claim anything hey, no are. matter how unreasonable <laughs> to chop up some so onion dramatic? i don't know <laughs> dip that reality in gravy and shove it down your fucking throat <laughs> <laughs> i don't know I think the last thing you down your throat is more gravy just so we're clear so. and then cut back to this like I said, it's not about 
whether the game was finished. It's not about you proved nothing. Whether the Don't pretend like you, you can just anything. keep claiming that forever. It's cope. It's, it's see, not about finishing the game, like, but like, it is though. It's like, no, it's not, but it is. No, it's not. <laughs> see, I'm, I'm telling you, this like, is my issue right we're now. We're talking to. You. We're talking to anyone. <laughs> How meta how meta is it that we're not watching the whole video while uh, criticizing? My <laughs> god. <laughs> Spent enough arbitrary time in the game before giving their opinion in a review that ultimately won't matter. Oh, is that oh, where we're going ultimately now? Ultimately won't None matter. It oh, it doesn't wait, matter, guys. Okay. We, we did it. I, bingo. What do you, bingo. Why do you I got make my bingo this? card. It doesn't matter. None, nothing matters, so I can do whatever I want. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, press delete on the video if this is your last channel at the end. You know what I mean? Yeah, seriously. Wait, what's the whole point of you being of a your channel work. on YouTube? Just like, it doesn't matter. If you just say like, um, you know, it ultimately billions from years from now, no one's going to care about this review. It's like, okay. <laughs> I may have been mildly inaccurate about Tears of the Kingdom, but conversely, the sun will explode someday. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Checkmate. Internet so in trolls. Yes, the inevitable. So you know, in entropic heat death of the universe means that I literally don't have to <laughs> care about anything. Yeah, this ultimate cop out. It's ridiculous. And That's we'll it. only have the power that the fan base lends it. A fan base that is, as always, just tiring. Because the fan base is fucking exhausting. It's good this That's though, the same it? thing. You're getting some exercise. Hmm. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I had yeah, it knocking about fine. in a box, a Hyrule What's Warriors box happening? set for eight years. Uh, discovered it by accident, didn't even know it was part of the set because I was mesmerized by the scarf that's in it. Um, and it still still works after all, all that right. time. Uh -huh. So it's a nice little memento is... okay. of Hyrule Warriors, the best Zelda game on the Switch. Ooh. I'm going to go back to feeling right, terrified off, right? and intimidated. I don't know if that pisses people off. Zelda fans, let me I'm, know. It has to piss people oh, off. Yeah, yeah. That, that sounded like, like a burn. A, it was the, a Dynasty Warriors The idea Warriors that the Hyrule Warriors, Warriors games are better than what are very well regarded entries in the Legend oh, okay, of Zelda yeah, series. Enough. Yeah, that's got to piss people yeah. off. Intimidated by the scary, Terry Zelda fans. Whatever will I do? While maybe they you'll are make screaming. another video about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Script it this maybe, time. maybe you'll show them how tiring and how much you don't actually care by making yet another video whining about it endlessly. Maybe. And who knows? shouting about a review for a computer game on the internet. I called but it I a mean, computer you're, game. You're mm. shouting about people shouting at you about a computer game on the internet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just we'll keep going. The cycle continues. That's it, so, by the way. Okay, this good. Is a waste of time. That was terrible. It really was. I feel like we learned nothing, gained nothing. <laughs> I just, I've never heard the argument before of don't make me review it further or I will lower the fucking score. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm okay. turning this car around. Like, <laughs> yeah. I am turning this number down. Winnipeg. I'm turning this car around and there won't be any Cape Canaveral for anybody. And oh, this, no. this is like a... Slapping him on the back of the head. Back, that's it. Back to Winnipeg. Did he make a single point that entire video? Or at least like, uh, anything? lots of angry. I got that. Yes. Very, uh -huh. very angry. Big mad energy. All this needs like is like a, a Skeletor rant at the end. Is like, if you if you get mad at me, I'll review the next Zelda game a four out of ten. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, though. internet. Anything but that, Jim. Please don't. That's just... Um, I, I found it funny. I think even it was in the same take, like 10 seconds apart. He's saying on one hand, um, fuck, what did he say? Uh, well, he, <laughs> he says uh, the, the fan base, they're so exhausting. And then, like, says uh, so that tired. Hyrule yeah. Warriors is the best Zelda on the Switch without substantiating it. And it's like, dude, you know you're saying a provocative thing there. Why it's do you think the fan base yeah. keeps keeps coming well, at yeah. you? Oh, you don't substantiate anything, um, though. Rules for the. I've yeah, noticed this. Oh, well, it's just you pretending that you don't want to have the fight when you really, really, really like it. You clearly enjoyed it more than talking about Absolutely. the actual stuff. Yeah. yeah. He just says so no chase after thing. him he over the, the Zelda opinion, and then he's just like, "Oh, you guys just won't stop, will you?" <laughs> so like, exhausting. Also, stop saying wacky things. Perspective on yeah, the Legend of Zelda. I mean, come on. Don't have this opinion that um, it, it's the the Jim Sterling in particular is one of these people who want to say things and not get any 
um, like response to it. They want to say things on social the media. Works. They want to say things on Twitter. They just want to put it out there, and they only want to be listened to. But mm-hmm. the moment they get any sort of you know pushback for it, they act. Oh no, all these people. Oh, I can't believe it. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, ah, and that's right. all these angry white men in the replies. Ah, and they do the whole song and dance. And that's what's so shocking. You right. would think you would learn how the internet works very early in your internet years, like not uh, have to I, take it to this. I think this is all deliberate. This is the equivalent of spitting out the worst hot take Twitter's ever seen and then locking the thread. This is that. <laughs> this is basically the video equivalent of that. You, well, yeah, this absolutely. is the lull, all the angry gamers in my replies. Yeah. yeah. Just don't say oh, stupid no. things publicly and you'll be fine. Yeah. Like, well, they they can't do That's not possible for Twitter. I can't believe people <laughs> are angry at, at me for saying such outrageous things. I'm going to mute this thread. <laughs> oh, shit. It's like, okay. Muting muting this thread, and I'm gonna let the gamer boys seethe in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, to so tell me how you. Also, you're I have a channel. channel. Please subscribe to this uh, thing. That's a thing that people like to do. Right? Oh yeah. Well, I, on the yeah. topic, uh, there's another video that, that I've been made aware of called "You Don't Need to Finish Games." Now, this one I don't think is is less so about Some reviewing. Some people don't need to start games. <laughs> That's what I'm about the experience. Don't review them. But maybe we'll agree with this one. Who knows? Maybe, maybe. It, it does happen every once in a while on EFAT. Let's give them a shot. Absolutely. <laughs> Good start. Plus. Whoa. I like plus. Okay. You don't need you don't to finish, need to that, finish game. that game. Oh, these colors. So, oh. Uh, I assume we all balls. agree with the sentiment in isolation. You don't need to. Yeah, don't need yes, to. that's true. Yep. Neither for survival or you know, is anything like that. Yes, it's it's not no, a requirement. Yeah, okay, sounds great it. start. Right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. far, so good. Thumbs up. Yeah. When I was a kid, Mario. we didn't have a lot of hey. money to oh, buy games. So <laughs> oh, is this going to start? Oh, this come is on. Start off with some long ass <laughs> anecdote about oh, oh when this I was classic. this, just, when twenty was... years ago, blah blah. When I was in Thailand, I, was this, I didn't know boy. they had a penis, whatever. But I'm not gay. All right, <laughs> like I just don't. It's gonna okay. be this long thing, and at but, the end, but, okay. it's not gonna matter. Well, Mario played video games. Let him All be. Right. Uh, go on. Thirty six. Yeah, give, give the story ago, a chance. Mario. You don't know that it'll be pointless. <laughs> Time wasty. Could be awesome. <laughs> when I was a kid, we didn't have a lot of money to buy games, so we rented. We didn't have a lot of money to rent games often, so I'd conveniently forget to remind my parents about return dates, then get chewed out about late fees a couple of days later. Time constraints I had as a child when it came to playing games sparked a very early obsession with finishing them. Before the five day period was up, I had to beat that game. Childhood trauma. Text was very necessary. All right. Um, (laughs) But yeah. now I have money, so I can just keep the game and finish it later. End of the video. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I needed to get all the secrets. I needed to make sure I could keep up with the kids at school. I couldn't lose to Lewis and his uncle at Nintendo telling yeah, him how to unlock Yeah, fuck you, Lewis. Fuck Lewis. Yeah, <laughs> Lewis and your, and your uncle. I've always been the kind of guy that likes Lewis, I guess. I thought Lewis was chill, but I guess other people don't like him. That's wow, fine. Lewis. Pretty sure he spat in your food once when you weren't watching. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. yeah, I bet Lewis's uncle touches him. Oh no! <laughs> Zooey, Where did you get that from? Cheating scumbag. High school was delicious. Gator. I didn't have a lot of money to buy games, so I pirated them. We didn't have a lot of bandwidth back then, so I'd conveniently pretend not to know why the internet was acting so slow. Then- oh, so you were the asshole who ruined yeah, everyone's lives. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. He's not telling the truth. Did, he stole games too. Tell us I just about like that. The idea that <laughs> as he said, like he slowed the internet for everybody and didn't tell anybody. And he also cost his parents money when he wouldn't let them like, return <laughs> games that he rented. He'd just be like, whoops, oh well. He's probably and stealing yeah. his neighbor's Wi Fi too. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have enough money for this thing, so I stole it. I feel like this is the clean version of this backstory. There's a real dark side. Yeah. Out. <laughs> chewed out I sold the cast and organ and later. Oh, I'm so <laughs> <game>. <laughs> And misunderstanding of ethical pirating I had as a teenager when it came to playing games sparked an adolescent obsession with finishing them. Because okay. any game would take a week to download, I had to beat okay. that game. All right. Text on screen it. is necessary right. because I, otherwise yeah. you might not have heard him. Like Dude, you've been bitching about that for years, and they're still doing it. It's the so first like, oh anecdote made the point, man. Yeah, but now he's explained yeah, how but... it went into his adolescent years. This is a yeah, great story. We had... We're a minute Three. in anecdotes. Hey, hey, hey guys, I, I'm sensing a theme here. I don't know if you picked it up yet or not. But you had to beat I the think game. He's talking. Yeah. 
Okay, yes. <laughs> you think oh, yeah. he had to beat that game? I had hmm. to beat that meat uh, game. Ew. <laughs> I had I needed to, to get all the secrets. Lewis's I needed uncle. to make sure I was <laughs> in the know with my friends at school and on Skype. I couldn't risk getting spoiled on the new Mass Effect or be the one person in the call everyone had to. Do. Oh man, it just goes Lewis. to show you how old it goes to show how old we're getting. When it's like, oh, when I was a kid, I when I was an adolescent, I didn't want to be spoiled on the new Mass Effect, and I'm like, oh fucking oh, Christ, no. am I getting old? <laughs> yeah. I thought you were gonna say like a, a like Majora's Mask or some shit. And he's like, no, the Mass Effect games, like Mass mm -hmm. Effect two and three. I didn't want to get spoiled. I'm like, oh god. Guys, I think I'm getting older. <laughs> See, if Gary was here, he'd be like, spoiled in the new Pac-Man. Don't come risk No, that. the new Pac-Man 2, the revenging. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like when you see these, it's like when you see those threads like, uh, oh, the vintage Xbox 360. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> I remember yeah, playing Sonic on 360 in 2006. <laughs> those were the days. <laughs> Spoilers for, I needed to make sure I was caught up so I could watch those videos on the games I wanted to play. I wanted to be included. I wanted to belong. Aww. This is, this is hey, man. This, this is, is a two-minute sob story about he's <laughs> broke and lonely and he wants to beat Lewis. How much it seems like your uh, video game experiences were determined by the people around you. Yeah. Seriously. Which is uh, kind of a shame, isn't I'm, it? Uh, yeah. Cool. I'm definitely one for like, I really want to get Gears of War so I can play it with people, but I don't think I ever was like, I've got to get Gears of War on the day so I can complete the so story. I fit in. Lewis! <laughs> I waited until Lewis last year. Gonna play, play it without me. <laughs> Lewis no, and his uncle are having fun, and I don't get to have fun. Like half Lewis the, and his well, uncle. Half the fun of video games are them being immersive, and you need to have your own unique experience with it, and then you can share it with others. But like this whole idea that like I don't know, I feel like this guy damaged his his, his playthrough with these games. Oh well, yeah, his his well, uh, I, I relationship think, uh, with gaming it, is a bit. Uh, yeah, skewed, that's what I was gonna right? say. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. It seems like he's ramping up to a point right about how he lived. I doubt it. He overcame. He was conditioned to to beat video games and play them to an obsessive degree very quickly, and then he probably didn't get the most optimal experience. I'm guessing that's what he's ramping up to. It's funny because uh, there's actually a, a good point in here, but he's kind of missing two other really viable options. One is, uh, I mean, he's saying like either rent a game or piracy. It's kind of like a pretty weird binary. There's also lending people games. Like if you have any friends, you can you can borrow a game for a week and and try it out yeah. and give it back to them. Oh, those or, were the days. That's yeah, what I did or, thing today. That was what, fun. What I mm -hmm. what I did even when I was working a lot Don't less break that job. Shit. Uh, especially like you know, get shout out to GameStop. They actually had a I had a pretty good thing going. I was able to buy a brand new game at, at full price, beat it in a week, and trade it in for like forty bucks. And I was that that made the next game considerably cheaper. And if you just kept that up really yeah. fast, you could you could actually get new games for not nearly as much money. They oh, had so cool you, deals right, like so that for proper gamers. I know yeah. you did a lot of like trading in used games and stuff. Yeah, if you do it quick enough, they, they'll actually give you quite a bit. They used to at least give you quite a bit well, of money I mean, back. You can, you can bring up the discussion of how like used games and the, the way that GameStop does things can be uh, kind of bad for the, uh, for the industry. Yeah, I mean, obviously, after the first sale, the, the publisher gets nothing. Well, it's so just GameStop that's... keeps making a lot of money. Meanwhile, you can have a lot of people playing a game and then the developers don't get any. I mean, it's part of, it's part of what ended up essentially prompting the massive, massive, massive overstretch that was the Xbox One. That's and, uh, true. That was, uh, that was and true. And online that... passes. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Mass Effect 3 had that, didn't it? The online pass where you only the new games had the online pass and there was like content that was... Uh, yeah. They, they had, like, the, they'd quite often have like a one a one time code. Even by the time Mass Effect 3 came out, they, you had like a pre-release code that you could use one time to get that whole other character and that whole other story. So that, that was an issue, but it is it is a product, so there is no like legally no reason why you couldn't resell it. So as uh, much as well, it, well, sure, but but then you they'd argue there's no argument you can make really against us doing online passes and stuff. It's a product yeah. that we're selling, so we're going to do it that way. I guess I'm just I find yeah, like the the whole used game ecosystem of like GameStop trading them in over and I'm pretty sure Total Biscuit talked about it. I, in fact, I think I was uh, one of the ones that was a little bit more controversial for him. Was it well, yeah, because that's uh, that's how many people were game. able to play new games. So, well, yeah, yeah I, cause nobody would argue principally against the idea of like lending games to your friends. That seems totally reasonable and normal and as expected. But an ecosystem of used games being traded in over and over and over again, and a middleman making a lot of money while none of that goes through to the developers when it feels like it ought to. I guess that's kind of yeah, it's, yeah. If it's if it's kids in elementary school giving it to their friends to borrow, that's one thing. But when it does become like a part of the market itself for its sustainability, 
It's an and issue. I know that Xbox One tackled that head on and they got completely <laughs> roasted for yeah, that. that. And then, and then, then, the, then Sony. Out, it was bullshit. Yeah, yeah, and then Sony responded with that, like, here's how to trade games on PS4. And he's like, hands them a, a game cartridge. Thanks. You know, it's just yeah. like a really cheeky <laughs> response video. Well, yeah, it's such a middle finger, yeah. Yeah, the PS4 uh, decimated the Xbox One because of that. It was such a huge hit to well, them, even I mean, though the we, Xbox. Would be yeah. real. The Xbox One has dealt permanent damage to Xbox as a brand. They've they haven't yep. recovered from that. And that was back. That was no. ten no. years ago. That was ten years ago. Ten oh, years Jesus ago. Christ. A decade yeah. ago. Yeah. And I still remember crazy. when that shit came out. Everyone but, uh, rightfully lost their fucking minds. But then there's the the options of like, yeah, DLC is bound to your account. If you really liked, uh, you know, Dragon Age or Mass Effect, you might want to get the DLCs when they come out. That's that's income that developers can work on. And the and the, so it isn't. It's certainly better than piracy. <laughs> and there's, I would say, it's certainly better than pirating the game altogether. Is is buying a used copy or lending it from a friend or whatever. Even though, yeah, technically the developer after first sale, the developer doesn't get anything. College was a super different story. I had money oh, to buy games, more. and after an entire childhood of <laughs> not being broke. able to, took a victory lap through the three Why game stops so in my damage. hometown. I didn't really leave a lot of my <laughs> bank account Get those good, days, huh? so <laughs> I'd conveniently tell myself it was only another week until my next paycheck, and chewed myself out when the bills came around later. The buyer's remorse I had as a college kid sparked a deep-seated obsession with finishing games. I bought these games, and I needed to squeeze every dollar out of them. Because they burned a huge hole in my wallet, I had to be Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh, this one's different though. This is three This is three rows. The other one's just say. two. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a plural, that's why. I had to yeah. beat those games. Yeah. But you have so much more time because you just own it forever now. It's been so you don't have to, minutes, like... And I don't know about you, but I, uh, at least in console games, obviously when you're kind of bound to them forever with Steam, you know, like they're parasites on your Steam account. But uh, with console games, I used to keep my favorite games. I would just keep a copy of Deus Ex Human Revolution because I wanted to play it and revisit it yeah, one day. replay like, value. Yeah. Well, yeah, you did, day it when your power's out? you did it because you had to beat that game. <laughs> <laughs> to beat those games. <laughs> I needed to make I sure hope that's the last I didn't spend my money for no reason. I couldn't bear to look at my shelf of games and see this huge backlog of frivolous spending. I couldn't stand the idea of my friends making. <laughs> you, you're lying to me. You would never. You never. <laughs> two and a half serious minutes about, about it. it. Yeah. Two and a half minutes about his shitty yeah. budgeting. Like his shitty well, budgeting. From the yeah, we, we've <laughs> all, <laughs> all of us here, I'm sure, had a library of games where we would look at them and be like, "Oh shit, I still haven't Ed, played that yet." Have you, have you seen? I'm looking at them right memory. now. <laughs> well, yeah. No, from, I mean, I'm talking about back then, not right now. Free Steam. Every you free Steam. Uh, you mean. Dude, even my fucking grandma would have one right now. That's just everybody <laughs> <laughs> like on Steam. You get That's given games is. that you're never going to play. But uh, back then, you know, a list of 360 games, for example, you'd be like, oh shit, yeah, I bought that one in the bargain bin. I never played it, huh? Yeah. I don't think right. we were having yeah. an existential crisis looking at the fucking folder, being like, oh god, I gotta play You guys it. don't understand. You go, you go to the cafeteria and you're like, hey man, have you beaten, uh, gotten to the Reaper in Mass Effect 2? You're like, Oh no, I'm still I'm still in the act two. It's like oh, and oh. They, like walk away and like don't, and don't make eye contact. <laughs> <It's not raining. laughs> <Clouds> <laughs> then Lewis makes fun of you. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Lewis was right. It. I wanted to validate myself. Well, maybe that's the problem. <laughs> maybe that's maybe the problem. The you speak, I mean, the maybe the the foundational issue here is that the way that you are seeking personal validation mm -hmm. isn't well, a healthy or like virtuous thing right well, maybe we haven't gone to the big argument yet we well, don't oh, the know. dragon age armor in mass okay. effect 2 yo i remember oh, that shit that was oh, really cool wow i assume yeah, rax's point cool. is that it's not going to be about whether you finish the game it's about something and more it's deep in your psyche your soul. yeah purchases had a purpose Oh, but doing YouTube videos? Incredibly different situation. What the I had money, that? I had drive, I had passion. I wanted to talk about all kinds and of thoughts and opinions going I had well, on I... games. Okay. I didn't have a lot of time on my hands, so I'd conveniently forget to do my homework and ignore my regimen, then mentally self-destruct later. Then... Okay. Oh, well, that's not good. Your life seems like you need to reevaluate some of your choices. <laughs> Budget <laughs> and mental care. Here. That's it. This is... <laughs> The desperate need for approval I had as an adult sparked a consuming obsession with finishing games. Before I could talk Put it, do it, do it, say it. Put it on the screen again. Do it. <laughs> One more time, I know already. Do you have a problem? 
about it in a thoughtful, powerful way. I had no. it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> Three on. minutes of your 19-minute video. I needed to scour for every Thank detail. You. I needed to make my writing so airtight, so on right. the mark, no Not one like was going to make anything. fun of me. I had to stay ahead of the he had curve. To, to metal, he had to finish those games. <laughs> he did. He did do it. Would we have picked that up? again, Metal. Center, Ironically, this video to... makes me not want to finish this video. Yeah. Oh, this video. oh my goodness. <laughs> guy B. sucks. And year after year, with every failure to accomplish what I had set out Campact. to do at every stage Get of my life, my oh, this. Games, <laughs> my <laughs> this is the part of the video where he just says, so I'm a complete failure. Fucking <laughs> oh, oh, I'm hearing. me. I'm alone. Tell me more about your bum life. Like, what is this? <laughs> is this the 20 minutes you skipped in the last video? No. <laughs> <laughs> Tricked. ...would turn to guilt, because if I didn't finish the game, what was the point Shh. of spending all this time on it? The money, the bandwidth... Dude, you got some I don't know, man. things to figure out. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you do have things to figure out. I remember when I was God, young and I didn't, damn. you know, prioritize things in my life, but, you know, you get over that, hopefully, eventually, maybe, ideally. I, I don't know. I can think of plenty of games that I enjoyed thoroughly and I didn't finish. Plenty of GTAs I didn't finish. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever beat Skyrim because I'm too busy fucking around, like, you know. I never beat Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I bet so many people. It. Yeah. Well, I bet so many the, people uh, just fucked around and never actually finished. I didn't care how it ended. I'm I busy. I didn't care about the story. And it's <laughs> their story's <laughs> fault the, that I never uh, cared. <laughs> legit. I completely agree with that. that. Like, 10% of the books that people often have on their bookshelf are the ones that they actually read. The like, a huge amount of books that people buy. Go on red. Yep. What's what yep. is the stat? There's definitely a stat for that. Like this is, pre this is pretty common. It's kind of weird that it, how the way that it's being presented here yeah. as like a, a sort of this strange obsession that developed throughout your yeah, life. But <laughs> it sounds like a about how many, problem with this guy for sure. Yeah, but but think about how many Kindles you'd have to buy to fill up a bookshelf. That would take way mm. more. Oh, the <laughs> denial. How could I run? Do you not like physical books, Rags? That sounded like a. What? Sounded like a. You, no. How, many how did you pull you that away from my car? <laughs> no, how it did almost you... seemed like you were talking about space efficiency, you know, storage and whatnot. That if well, you got a Kindle, you don't have to worry as much about storage space. And no, it, no, space. the opposite. Well, Think about books... how many Kindles it would take to fill up all that space. It would be it would be nonsensical. Oh, oh, right? It'd probably be like with a books. thousand Kindles, right? Yeah, be... but with books, you could do it, you know. And I wouldn't want a thousand Kindles on a bookshelf. I would want the books that looked nice. Yeah. Made, made me yeah, appear... But... Only appear it learned. Make, appear well, yeah, well read. Yes. But in reality, the books in the book uh, always look good. I think what you want yeah. is that they have like lettering that when you put all the books across, it spells out, I had to read that book. <laughs> <laughs> I had <laughs> to finish <laughs> my homework. I had to beat the shelf. <laughs> uh, I don't know. This, this guy's flawed. This, I would, I would uh, respect this video a lot more if this was all built up to I have to finish this intro. <laughs> He's like, I don't think I'm he has writing, a for that. I'm writing this video from an insane asylum. That's where I ended up. I just wanted to <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. know how it got here. I yeah, there's so hope. Therapy. Finish therapy. We need You're to so wondering how I got here, you guys. I was able to tell you a little story. I was able to smuggle a pin into my room. <laughs> Because if I didn't finish the game, what was the point of spending all this time on it? The money, the bandwidth, the denial. Oh, the fun How you had along the, the way, of course. No. Because the that's what gaming is about. Bandwidth, bro? It, yeah, like, but it, it, I mean, that's a that's a life lesson, though, Rags. It's just, not about the destination; it's about the journey. That's a yeah, that's a I have a, no. It's about the bandwidth. Like, what the <laughs> what's, this, what's wrong with this guy? It's not about <laughs> Do you the like destination. Games? It's about the bandwidth. <laughs> it's about the bandwidth you consume and steal from your parents <laughs> along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking up I'm the Wi-Fi. How much of my parents' money can I waste in my vain pursuit of playing video games? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm I just am a man. I'm, I'm a good son. Sorry. Run a successful YouTube channel if I wasn't covering the newest game within a week of it coming out. How can I call myself a fan of these series or talk? How can I call series? myself a gamer? Series? 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 Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I, I think, think series is also plural, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You just say series for plural. Yeah. Siri. <laughs> Siri. <laughs> With two eyes, yeah. Talk to my friends about games if I never finished them. Oh How God. could I justify the thousands of dollars? Four minutes. See, some people think <laughs> a gamer's life it. is an easy life, but this is proof that it's no, one of the most difficult uh, existences. Gamers really are impressed. Of the runtime. Mm -hmm.
Gamers are oppressed by their friends, by their parents, by, by the college. By Lewis. <laughs> like this guy. By Lewis. By Lewis and his fucking <laughs> uncle. Yeah. Almost they all hover over his shoulder. Lewis is like that, the ghost in Bly Manor just hovering over his shoulder at all times. <laughs> Lewis, please. I'll finish Simpsons Hit and Run, I swear. So Lewis, much, please. Man. I know this oh, is a man. big old tangent, but looking at this uh, still frame, uh, unlike narrow streets in Japanese cities, like a vibe, they're kind of... Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with all here. the signs, the neon and everything, it's like a really, it's, it's a cool they're vibe. They're really cool. I like it. The Endgame Ronin scene, um, they had that same vibe to it with the tight, narrow streets. Well, because this is uh, the Yakuza games, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's like uh, Kyoto yeah. and yeah. Tokyo and Those stuff. And, and it's actually funny because it's, it's probably more up. just true to life because this is just an alleyway. But you get into games like you don't realize just how scaled up GTA is because those they have to make the lanes wider so you can you can dodge your car around other cars easier. They, they, you don't realize just what kind of like a normal size, you know, mm. proper to scale alleyway would be like. It'd probably be pretty close to this, actually. Mm. Good point. One of my I'd favorite say... games is uh, Shenmue, and it's got oh, yeah. terrific um, world design. Like, it's very authentic Japanese neighborhood that you start off in. It's really cool to just explore. I would oh, crazy ahead of its time, too. Yeah. Japanese. Japanese. <laughs> if it's even real. <laughs> uh you know i love shenmue um it, it's it's it, i wouldn't say it's like a super fun game but the the mechanics behind it are kind of incredible for the time like you can actually every single npc has a schedule and like they'll actually i followed this one guy i think it was like the the burger stand guy or something like that he closed up shop walked to the store z zoned into the store grabbed some um groceries then zoned out of the store then you can follow him back to his specific apartment. He has one specific apartment he goes back to. Just like the detail oh, uh, of nice. every single NBC in the day is really, really cool. He doesn't just walk yeah, around well. the corner and stand there. Nope. <laughs> like <they just> <laughs> <cut it out. laughs> also, it is, is actually is nice when you search for those details and they pay off. Is the yeah. subtitle here an attack on the Sterling video? There's no reason. hiding commentary. My goodness. Uh -huh spent on my digital library if I hadn't touched more than half of it. What was the point? What was my motive? <laughs> Why can't I stop? I'm sorry. What's happening? I'm just I can't so serious. I can't anymore. Guy needs meds, man. I don't know. I actually said so to you much. guys, like, can I truly review he films that I haven't seen all of them? What am I supposed to do? All of the films? <laughs> if I haven't seen all of the film, how can I begin to talk about the film? I don't know. You better just, I don't know, jump off a brush. I don't know. A brush? A br bridge. Jump off a bush. <laughs> Jump off a brush. Just find Aim a for the really bridges. Brush. <laughs> Feeling this there way. So eventually, one hero. existential crisis after another, you start oh learning a lot about yourself. Existential the differences crisis. between who you are naturally. By the way, Theo, is this not your favorite video essay of all time right now? I'm so checked out, dude. I'm <laughs> gone. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I love this. I said nothing it. for four minutes. Absolutely I love the art style of this game, though. Which, which game is this? Is this, this one is of the Fire, is Emblem. Fire Emblem? Oh, wow. Well, no, yeah, nice armor. Three houses, which I didn't complete. You have so, much whoa. content you can have in four minutes. I know, that's uh, not, well, you know, only for a little bit. For a day, it was pretty tough when what I What did Lewis think about you, know, you not back. finishing this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was pretty disappointed. I mean, you spent, uh, you beat know, the fuck out of you. on that game. Don't look in any mirrors. Second, like can... you go to sleep after a night of not completing a game. He's just sitting there waiting, looking at you. <laughs> I like the idea that you just end up in this horrible nightmare scape, you know? <laughs> like, There's when Lewis. You, when... you better you know, lock your doors, bro. You hide away, and then he's just there always. <laughs> Turn the corner, he's there staring at you in the shadows. You can't it's look like in the, any mirror until you beat the game. <laughs> the, ghost of, the ghost of unfinished games past, you know, just like a modern Scrooge tale. Oh, man. You have dabbling to back in that. Game. Okay, Lewis, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, I've been it's me. Back into it's recording me. Lately, and Love let me tell you, you can say so much in four minutes. Like, <laughs> yeah, you can get so much done in four minutes. Well, imagine that this whole section was uh, growing up. I always felt like you have to finish a game. And that's yeah. it. That's all. It Maybe is. if you well, really I think, feel uh, like it, you can include a little bit of stuff to back that well, up. Well, how can how could have been twenty seconds? Complain about about a long and long. How can you do that, Mola? <laughs> I just did. Yeah. Yourself. You saw how. Just wow. did it. No, you do it again. What? <laughs> <laughs> it was again. <laughs> again. That's right. Again. If I did it again, I'd be much longer. You could have reviewed Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania in four minutes. You could have.
Yeah, just said it. You just say it's bad. Just say it's bad. I did exactly. say right at the end of the script. I said Ant Man bad. <laughs> ah, yeah. right. That, so if you want, if you want to watch though. that part alone, that's fine. <laughs> there you go. You said, you said not great, right? I think you said like eh, not great. Pretty, pretty not great. Yeah, something like that. Pretty so, not yeah. great. <laughs> Ant Man is a six out of ten. External factors contributing to who you've become. I've done a lot of thinking, figured some of it out. Have you? If you've ever experienced some something like oh. those scenarios from my own life, I have something no. important to tell you. Here we go. Okay. You don't need to finish that game. What? Yeah. Oh my <laughs> god! We did it! What, what, what is the time period of this game and what is she wearing? Uh, They're in like a castle, oh but goodness. she's wearing glasses. She's a, yeah, she's like a, modern she's got, like, designer this, glasses, yeah. And she's look at her hair. She's got random like pink and white it's, braids mixed it's what anime. the fuck is happening in anime, it's anime. yeah anime was Don't a ask. mistake <laughs> true, <Don't> true. Ask. <laughs> is so obsessed about nowadays people gatekeep and invalidate each other's opinions based on how far they made it ah, see, so it was all oh come on it was it was, it was, all, it was all relevant theo because he was talking about his own sort of troubles when it came to being part of the conversation and now he's saying that part of what influences people is gatekeeping, so it all it all was relevant, right. important information. I feel sure. the opposite. I feel like we just found out the true motivation for this video. I like, want some people back. claim that you don't have a good perspective if you haven't finished the game. It's like, oh, mm. claim mm. them. Being up to date on a long running series seems to be more important than caring about its trajectory, its quality, and the conditions it was made in. Are you people sure? Are so you reckon? You think so? Is you you really think that? I'm gonna press X to doubt on that. That's a game. I don't know about that. What the Lewis thing? How how you know how often <laughs> how often is it that you know if you gave a perspective on yeah you know, well I mean Tears of the Kingdom right that's relevant. It's like oh have you played the Legend of Zelda the Legend of Zelda two Link's Link's Adventure Awakening uh, uh, Link's uh, Transition uh, Awakening yeah uh, and then uh, <laughs> a Breath of the Wild. Um, they Wind Waker, uh, Twilight Princess, <laughs> all of those games. How often does anybody actually go to interrogate you on how many games in the series you played? You know, I think that's happened to me like about never, and I'm <laughs> I'm pretty and I'm pretty entrenched well, into these sorts of spaces. I'm not gonna be interrogated. It's like, hey, have you played this of the series? This one of the series? Uh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Anyway, moving along. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I guess we'll talk about something else like yeah, humans let's do. Talk about the one uh, you did play. <laughs> oh, that was you one think... of those songs that was on uh, like Windows XP that came with it, wasn't it? Like humans do. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, that wasn't oh. a pinball game. That was one of the games that was on Space Windows. Cadet. Yeah, there was Space Cadet. Yeah, Space Cadet Pinball. Yeah. But I think that bundled within the Windows XP like music player, there was like ten or so songs in there, and I think one of them was like humans do. Breathing out, breathing in. Afraid of missing out on the real impact of a sequel, they'll prevent themselves from playing it until they beat the games leading up to it. Well, but that can I mean, be well, valid. That's not, it can yeah, be valid. That's not, yeah. Exactly. That's not necessarily. I wouldn't a bad recommend thing you play off. God of War Ragnarok without playing the one before that. Well, yeah, it, exactly, because mm -hmm. it's contextual. Continuity. It depends on, yeah. you know, like some games present themselves as essentially being, again, with Zelda, right? You can jump into any game and you don't really need to know what happened in any of the yeah. other games compared to a serialized narrative, you know, franchise. And even Same without the Final Fantasy. And even without that, you know, you might want to be like, yeah, you know, I, I kind of don't want to play Dark Souls 3. I want to play Dark Souls first, or even Demon Souls. <clears throat> I want to go through it chronologically. I would recommend just to it. see how the mechanics That's upgrade. Should do. There's just a lot the of reasons why you, Exactly. There's a lot of yeah. earnest reasons why you would want to do that beyond the pressures of society. <laughs> like, yeah, like, um, Devil May Cry, I always remember loving the third one for the mechanics and, like, all the weapons and, like, abilities that you can that you can blend together, but liking the aesthetic of the second one because Dante was older, a little bit more mature. I didn't want to see him as a teenager. So it's hard to get, like, the, um, the right blend sometimes. I would just never recommend playing three then one for Dark Souls because you, your expectation is going to be all backward while... Yeah. Jumping from one to three is basically what everyone did, and it was designed with that in mind. So if you, you know, if you was like, you can just play three anyway, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, you can play three anyway. That's fine. Just saying, it's also valid to not do that. We're really so quickly, which ones do you recommend? The way what was that? Blood, blood uh, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and the third one. Those are the three. Well, Mahler would all recommend of them outside two. of Dark Souls two. <laughs> that, yeah, okay, that's what I want. Two is the best, oh, from what yeah. I hear. You should only no, play Rag, two. stop. Only play two. It was supposed to be our friend. Rags. Well, I heard it has the best. It has the best hitboxes. 
<laughs> yeah, and and the it's, best lighting it's, too. It's funny. I can give you an example. I've watched your reviews on Dark Souls 2, and I've never actually played the Dark Souls games, but I understand gaming enough to understand that hitboxes and the mechanics involved are essentially like they're they're really critical to a game's like function. And um yep. the fact that those things can just be completely ignored when someone's reviewing Listen, it, it's, the, it's insane. The hitboxes in DS2, so important. the fans it's of the game just call them fun boxes because you never know what's gonna no. happen. Fun boxes. Fun boxes. Oh I'm, I'm gonna write a four hour essay <clears throat> saying hitboxes are implied. Oh no. <laughs> <Boxes are implied. laughs> Start with the first five minutes of the video hour. should be about your childhood trauma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had to dodge that hitbox. Oh, no. People are so afraid of missing out on the real impact of a sequel, they'll prevent themselves from playing it until they I feel beat like the there's a, a broader conversation to be had about people feeling like they're missing out on the big relevant cultural moments. Yeah. Um, I feel like, like it's a completely separate conversation. It is. It is. It's a separate <clears throat> one because it extends beyond video games and whether or not you've completed them. I think it just stems from people's desire to be part of the conversation always, no matter what. Well, I would uh, say it's even probably more. That should more... happen organically. You don't want to force that. When it comes well, to Dark Souls just... as well, like the, there's the sense of should you be playing it with any information or not? And a lot of people yeah. will tell you you shouldn't. They'll be like, well, fuck you, I can play it any while. And it's like, no, 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 I'm not saying you shouldn't because I think it's the best way to play. I'm saying there's an experience you can only get doing that. And once you don't do it, you can't get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like why I tell people whenever they say I'm lost in a video game. And I'm like, well, maybe kind of cherish the fact that you <laughs> can get lost in a video game because, man... There are eventually there will come a time where you will never get lost in that video game again, and that is not an experience mm -hmm. you will ever be able to get back. And that's the thing: if someone says like, "I hate playing video games," always like, "Okay, okay, fine." You know, everyone everyone has their preferences, but being treated here like an obsession that's killing everything. All right, <laughs> that's calm down. ruining lives. <laughs> he gave me trauma. Damn it. I think a theme with these two videos is people's strange relationships with video games and like how different everyone's could possibly yeah, be. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. I find that really strange because for me, it's like you, you, you have to find a way, especially if you're a lifelong gamer, it changes over the years. <laughs> and you have to find a way to like make sure that you have a healthy relationship with games. Like I was well, addicted to League for the longest time and I needed to get the hell away from that. And like <laughs> acknowledging that is important. me right back in. No, no, no. Arcane... Well, uh, Shout out to Arcane. I really love that show. But no, no, it's I, just, just balancing it. It seems that the uh, the end point of that big story should have been. And then I realized, who gives a shit? <laughs> like, <laughs> crazy. Uh, I, I would really I, actually I like that if he brought that out. But no, he's a CC. Well, no, it's going to occupy the next 15 minutes, I guess, of um, just ugh. making the point who fucking cares. Out of doing the thing again. With, He'll probably with, finish uh, it with that. With Lewis, right? Changing the name of it. <laughs> the one that just stood out to me was like, was Lewis Party 7. <laughs> <laughs> League of Lewis. I didn't even check the chat. I didn't realize I knew that. <laughs> they made right, seven Lewis, Lewis parties. <laughs> <laughs> the first six Lewis parties were really good. You had to expect oh, they'd make yeah. a seven. Yeah, it just it made sense. I almost want to start. Louis. I almost want to start keeping a tally of how Lewis often Lane. video game video essayists tell me something I don't already know, mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. that isn't already very apparent. You guys should have a checkbox, like, for these things, definitely. Just, like, ready anytime you go into it. I don't know about you, but Mark Brown told me about Mario's jump. I had oh. no idea. No, he didn't. That was the thing. Well, was didn't the, yeah, us. that's the meme. The meme. <laughs> like, he just it. wouldn't tell us, damn it. Tell me the secrets, Mark. <laughs> was leading up to it. We're so desperate to be a part of the wave, we're insistent on buying What's the this new video thing about? Sorry. I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, we're figuring it out like, as we go along. Okay. Do you, you don't think <laughs> up your pocket. You don't, this is JC Vasquez, you don't need to finish games. All right, you don't need to capitalize too, but here we fucking are, so let's carry right <laughs> oh along. Oh my god. Holy what? Shit. God damn it. We are bold. five minutes in. I mean, I mean, you're, you're, you're right. You don't, you I'm don't covered need to in fur because I'm a no. dog. I don't think you're okay. appreciating the storytelling here because, like, in the beginning, the first five minutes, he was saying, like, I, I need to finish games. But then at five, like, around the four and a half minute mark, he was saying, like, you don't need to. That's, that's a setup and a payoff. This is storytelling. <laughs> this is art. I'm sure that this is leading us somewhere. I'm sure that this isn't yes, a waste of time. JC Vasquez is They'll prevent themselves from playing it good. until they beat the games leading up to it. We're so desperate to be a part of the wave, we're insistent on buying the new thing and beating speak it as yourself. fast as possible yeah, so that we're writing yourself, at the I was, I was gonna say, like, yeah, I guess <laughs> that would be bad for anybody who only plays games for the oh, cultural aspects. Yeah. Those aren't gamers, then. Like, those aren't, like, I don't give a fuck about the culture. Those, those are, are like, I like the game or game, yeah.
Like, come yeah, to terms with the fact that you're not actually Barbies. interested in games for their own sake. Yeah, man. Uh, Very top. And the truth is, this is a reality we didn't necessarily force ourselves into. It's well, not some the of nature us still of haven't creation. forced ourselves into it's that. the nature of business. <laughs> I the get the feeling my childhood wasn't unique. Even nature. if you didn't rent games, I'm willing to bet your parents or whoever bought you video games weren't gung-ho about it. Even if they loved weren't games themselves, they were also hopefully thinking about other aspects of your development, so what you have yeah, I, I remember. Um, I remember when I was in my room and my dad burst in and he said, "You gonna fuck that bear in Baldur's Gate?" And I said, "Yeah, dad." <laughs> What the fuck is he <laughs> rambling about? I didn't get yeah, any of that. What was the point of so that? So it sounds to me like he's saying, like, hopefully your parents didn't just give you video games and ignore you in all other aspects of life. It's just like, is that what um, happened to him? Is that why he's so? I don't know. Because <laughs> he was saying, like, you know, hopefully they they you know explored other aspects of life with you. It's like, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you know. Dad, yeah, dad, dad came in and said, like, GC, are you gonna finish fucking Sonic right now? You better finish yeah. that game. If not, I'm Locked gonna get the... fucking Lewis right now. He's gonna oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you. Yeah, man. Is it, are you Lewis? Son? Oh god. <laughs> Locked in a room to trying to play finish that was game what before you the deadline. Had to play. From a very young age, we're taught uh, video games need to be finished before we deserve to have another one. Oh what? True. Oh, my base oh, parents. Dude. I so not really. Well, my yeah, parents didn't but... fucking understand video games, so... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to be telling me, you got to beat Bowser and the Mario before you can have the next Mario. <laughs> They're trying to it teach more, you a lesson was, about you know, perseverance. I, mean, I feel like the more common example is, you're just not getting another one for a while. This is the one that you've got, yeah. so... Yeah, you know, that was $60, it. or I guess back yeah. then, 50s or whatever. Well, I guess now, well, because we're old, disgruntled old men on our porches, yeah. yelling at the new gamers. Yeah, back well, then it was $60. The thing is, Rags, in, a, in good old Australia, if you went to EB Games, is more expensive than you go to Big W or Target to buy a video game, by the way, in Australia, just in case you didn't know that. Um, I didn't know but that. <laughs> back in the day, uh, often video games that were new would cost like $109, like in the mid 2000s and stuff. It's fucking what? crazy. They actually haven't gotten that much more expensive over here, technically, it seems. You really had to commit. Now. You yeah, know, really need those boxes. It's exactly. It's just like, yeah, it's just that yeah, shit's dude, expensive. You gotta, you gotta get as much out of it as you can. It, yeah, it wasn't about beating the games. It was just about like it was the same with movies. If you ask your parents about what TV shows, like, it's like oh, you don't you know, get another one straight eat. away. So yeah, yeah the it. replay value. You gotta, you you gotta really eat your vegetables it. before you get you know dessert. It wasn't like that. It's just. It's just the game. It costs a lot of money, so you got to get as much out of it as you can because you're not getting mm. another one for a while. Yeah, yeah. Your way, parents so... were like, "This is expensive," and there's this element of don't make you know quick, frivolous decisions on purchasing. Really think about what you're going to buy before which, you buy it. Which is not a bad lesson to learn. It's no, it's traumatizing. Yeah. Well, you must beat the Bowser. I part, that's why I gravitated towards fighting games because it's it's especially if there's like you know it's a solid game. This is replay value for years with that. Like how many people yeah. played Smash Brothers for years? Oh yeah, Melee was, was so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Melee is that legendary. Was yeah. Melee! legendary. I'd say right now. especially when kind of like the... uh, not knowing yeah. exactly how to unlock all the characters, and so the surprise mm, yeah. of doing different things and being like, "Oh my god, oh, another yes. new person!" Oh, yeah. <laughs> new challenger. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah the, the mini mode games. <laughs> I would spend hours trying to beat those mini mode games where they'd give you some weird handicap with the computers or something. And they, there's so many different modes that you can mess around with. Just replay value is something you should look for in all the games you play. It's kind of this it's guy, I don't know. an interesting phenomenon that's being described here because the more money that I was able to make to just buy games, all that happened was, yeah, I just didn't beat as many of them. There were some that I bought that I didn't complete at all. Mm -hmm. It's just pretty normal, but it seems like it almost got carried through here of like, holy shit, like, I, you know, I've got to beat every <laughs> single fucking game that I buy, which is, it's so strange. Is that actually like a problem that people have? No, him, like, just him. I just I mean, refuse to believe that the average player of his generation knew what it meant to complete these games. Like, nah. I was, I was yeah. kind of expecting this to be about obligate completionists. If you've ever met anyone like that, who they're like, I have to do everything in the game. Yeah, perfection. Yeah. Like, I have to get every achievement. I have to find yeah. and do. Right. Forget that thing. Yeah, how many so those people how many, are insane. Yeah, how many hundreds of pigeons are in GTA Four that you have to shoot? Yeah. Screw that. <laughs> Finding bottles and stuff all over the city. Forget that. I'm trying to drive and like crash into things. It's it, yeah. I don't know. Or in the case of renting, there's a finite amount of time we have with this game, and our limited understanding is we may never see it again when the time is up. It's probably why kids are so good at video games. 
beating games was our job. Yeah, and right. I'll fuck a kid oh, up in a video game. Oh, oh, sakes. Oh, <laughs> dude, okay. this guy's got a really limited view on like childhood. Not everyone's childhood was like yours, dude. Let's <laughs> not chill out there for a second. It was our job. It was our don't job. What's I, mean, I, I, you know, I, I don't know if it's controversial, but like, a lot of kids suck at video games. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure I'm I sucked really the ass at fucking, well, like, a lot of games it. when I was younger, but thought I was great. <laughs> you have a lot of time that's, to that's invest in them, like but you generally you know, suck because you're a kid. <laughs> but the thing was, you weren't very good, but you didn't know any better because you weren't yeah. mired in, like, the, in the sort of landscape that we're in now where it's very easy to sort of compare how good you are to other people. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine that? Well, dude, they, everyone had that moment oh, where they thought they were great at a video game, checked out the best person at it, and then they were like, online. oh my god. Or the first <laughs> yeah. time you stepped online, and all of a sudden, oh exactly. shit. I need to get my, <laughs> oh, yes. I need to get yeah, my shit together. Out instantly. Yeah. Also, they're doing terrible that things to my mother. That, that's <laughs> my first... <laughs> My first proper TV, like you know, flat screen TV, was because I couldn't see anyone in Call of Duty. I was just getting murdered left and right. Just couldn't get a single kill, so I had to get a proper TV. But yeah, you live and you learn. And uh, I don't even know what this is assisting overall as a point, but I guess we're about to find out. Doing it well, we'd be rewarded with more of them. And school was where we could show our efforts off. Knowing more about a video Nobody game than someone else gaming. when you're 10 years old. I mean, we talked about everything in my school, not just games. Yeah. Okay. Old is like being Christ reborn in the minds okay. of other right. children. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what? Christ, Christ reborn? What? The that social is... currency of the millennial childhood is that of a video <laughs> game. Holy shit. Children. It makes you the center of attention for a week until the rest of them catch up to you and you raise them on to Mount the. You know, you didn't have to share so much. I'm just saying. Like, uh... <laughs> like what, what if you were the kid that was getting bullied for playing video games? Like, hey, hey, Jimothy, did you play? The, did you finish that game? It's like, no, no, I, I don't. Even, what are video games? I don't know. I, what I'm, a I'm video cool. games? I've never heard of those. <laughs> it's uh. It's like trying to make this all sound so much more grand and weighty and personal. Than, yeah, yeah, than really making it so emotional. Like you almost, you almost really want just a normal, like down to earth video to just be like, we all played a lot of games, and uh, sometimes you get a sense that you really need to beat them. You know, it does seem like a dramatization <laughs> of uh, just justifying that he doesn't finish all games, which is fine. I don't, I don't finish most no, of the games yeah, I play. Yeah, nobody. Nobody holds the perspective that you are obligated to complete every single game that you buy. Like, that's not a perspective well, but that people he, have. He threw in that one tiny bit a little bit ago about how people expect that of you when you review them. Like, oh, 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 oh get into that. Go well, in, because that might have I mean, been the motive for the whole video. Them, yeah, that's, oh. that's, a different, that's a different conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with the premise that you don't need to finish a game to enjoy it. There's plenty of games I've enjoyed that I haven't finished. But yeah. if you, is he going to now pivot to the review? I don't know. Views? Is that. Yeah, I guess I don't well, pre I mean, prefer that conversation. I find it more interesting than I felt I had to finish them because Lewis would well, give me a spanking. <laughs> all, all of this is going to be irrelevant to that conversation. Yeah. This be a yeah. Time if that's where we're going. This is like pure pressure stuff. PTSD. Yeah. Olympus, welcoming them as your fellow gods. Holy the nice shit. lesson <laughs> our parents were teaching us about valuing our possessions also reinforced this idea we were getting at school that beating games was cool. Like Sunny D in the fridge and McDonald's every um, day cool. No, okay. Oh, I thought Look, that was like a bunch of rappers. Right. Sunny D in the fridge. <laughs> and I was like, who the fuck the were fridge. they? I don't remember. I don't remember Sunny D in the fridge. Some fucking how this Monday. hasn't been addressed. So let's address it. Completing a game is a task you set yourself. Like when you play a game, the game is a task. Completing the game is completing the task. People like to not leave things unfinished. Like mm -hmm. naturally. Well, it's spoken like a true robot. I guess you never had a childhood. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Sure, whatever, man. Because me, I completed a life. game, and then I'd come into school, welcomed by Lewis first, and then everyone else as a king, a god king. Yeah, yeah. okay, man, sure. The, the, how the many hall, people... The hallways many... parted, everyone got on their <laughs> knees and bowed to you. Dude, did you, yeah. did you actually do Mario. Super Mario Sunshine? It's like, yes. I tipped that we, we box upside down. Like... I finished Mario and just pussy was dripping everywhere. <laughs> I, I wasn't even let into my friend's house until we compared gamer scores, you know. That, that exactly. Was just... Yeah, there was that club where you could only get in if you had a hundred thousand gamer score. Uh, there was a special room in the back for the million gamer score people. Oh, good days, okay. good times. 
If there's one thing I know the games industry is good at, it's finding ways to turn children and teens into loyal consumers. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, uh, generally, it's like the goal of games. <laughs> like yeah, that's old product all creation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We want them to buy our stuff and then keep buying our stuff. No, it's just this I, I, particularly. I remember the the famous jo uh, Steve Jobs speech where he's like, "Nah, you don't need to get the next iPhone. It's fine." <laughs> In the late 90s, <laughs> early aughts when I was a kid, and yes, I am nearly 30, looks can be deceiving. Why? Game Why? Companies you look were like you're nearly 30. <laughs> he does look like he's nearly What did that add? I don't like, know. Okay. I guess he just wanted to say I, that he looks good. It's, uh, there you go. It's all right. It's like, yeah, sure. I, it's a, okay. It's also a weird choice to use previous footage from another one of your videos while you're doing voiceover, but the voiceover yeah. doesn't match your lips. It's kind of weird. I'll, I'll allow him a pass. He's had a lot of trauma. Oh, right, Realizing yeah. on the way Lewis I and... played games, <laughs> games with obtuse progression, games with secret levels and new things to discover, and games too big to finish in a rental period were their Ugh. bread and butter. These were ways to keep players renting or convince them to just buy. And the master Sorry, there's generation... a lot of content in that game. I, I, do, I don't even I know what to know, say man. about this. Like... What do you say? Yeah, there's just. <laughs> Also, doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense. The the copies are bought by, say, Blockbuster or whatever, say, and the, and then they have to pay royalties or something for every no. single like rental that they do. But like, how no, weird. they they buy it they buy it once. Uh, the the company gets one copy sold, and then Blockbuster can make money forever. Like, I, I have a good example of that. Like, I bought I uh, rented um, Chrono Trigger way back in the day, and I really really liked it. Later on, I bought it. It's fine, but yeah, no. I don't think it's like some conspiracy. It's like yeah, let's have them rent until they can finally buy the game. I feel like yeah, you guys that's... would um, verbally slap me if I said, like, I've been thinking a lot, and I noticed a lot of games have, like, secret levels or collectibles or big levels or sort of, like, difficult levels. And, and it's an attempt to really just make you play the game a lot more. Like, yeah, okay. And? <laughs> it, it would be like, so this is the beginning of your thought, right? <laughs> like, you've got like, way yeah. more to say, please. It's like did a lot. Value, to get basically, kids to buy, beg their buy parents Sorry. to buy them the new Crash Bandicoot or the new Spyro or the next Banjo Tooie, and no, I don't want to rent Banjo it. I know I'm going to like it. But what no, I Banjo, Banjo Tooie was a sequel, but yeah. you said the next Banjo. The next Banjo Tooie. Kind of yeah. Oh, maybe statement. that's what threw me off. Yeah, yeah. that's a strange yeah. thing to say. I don't think they expected was for the kids to dangle what they knew in front of each other's faces to use the fact they had mm. games and knew a lot about them as a form of social status. Or maybe they did. Okay. What? I don't know what's happening. Done with, was, that, that? was that like a conclusion? Or? What was the, what was what the was point, the point of that? Now the actual video. <laughs> we're, we're, seven and, we're seven and a half minutes into a 19 minute video and I don't think I've learned anything. Dude, His we've set the foundation. Trauma. That's that's all of the foundations. I think it's not to show like an ad from the 90s. Um, yeah. Dude, there's no way. Whoa. This is Timmy. Timmy knows how to get the Dude. coolest, newest video games first. But now someone else is as cool as Timmy. <gasps> is it Lewis? Someone else. <laughs> 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 Someone play just release games until midnight the next day. Beating games wasn't. Oh god. Okay. Fine. The, the, Captain right. Midnight so, does have to take like this. Trust me, nuts. But it's okay. Just cool. His Brand sucks too, but it's more relevant than this guy's. I will give you that. Yes. Brand yeah. consumption was cool. We were either Nintendo or Sega kids, or Nintendo or boring. Say something. <laughs> really? Stop Nintendo telling me what it was or like Sega to be a kid. kid. Like, did you? Did you Speak know this video was going to be this way? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is one of those why are you the way that you are yeah, moments. Was this today. specifically just to torment me? <laughs> <laughs> I can torment multiple people at once. I don't know what like, what if there was no point? What if it was all the video essays preamble? This is oh. a this is also very kind of narrow minded in that he kind of expects that everybody's experience with video games is exactly yeah. like him. So it's like, speak right, for yourself. Cool. He keeps saying these limited statements where it's just, what are you talking about? I feel like all of us could describe a different experience with video games at the age he's talking about. It's just it's yeah, useless. I mean, he, yeah. He, he's a, his, his stuff is ranging from N64 days to Xbox 360. Uh, but, back in the PlayStation days, you could get a, a demo disc with like 20 demos on there. You like, keep you busy for hours if you're worried about the, the money factor. So there's plenty of other options. There's a, yeah, a rental wasn't the, rental buy wasn't the only option or, Weird. 
PlayStation kids. And if you're a little younger, either Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 kids. You'd think people it. would grow out of those childlike conceptions, but teenage adolescence has a funny way of making us feel a lot smarter without doing much of anything different. Okay, we are at the point now where I'd be okay. like, what do you guys think the fucking point of this video is? <laughs> I have no idea right now. I have no idea. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to think the answer to that is ads. I figured this was going to be along the lines of actually talking about, like, reviewing games. and the Because I didn't realize that there was ever a perspective that you had to complete every single game that you bought. I didn't know that that was something that people felt strongly. Mm -hmm. As we got older, the words used may have changed, but it was the same dynamic. My teenage years were when the console wars became a Seriously? monolith. You know, this is spoke like the Vietnam shit for Movie Bomb. Oh, no. <laughs> He's going over every stage of his fucking life, just I, telling us how he felt about video games. He's, is his no point, point that, like, he's a crazy person? Everybody is very passionate about gaming and that we have, like, different cultural flashpoints of crazy things happening. I, I don't really know. If, if, that, if that was his point, he'd be willing to explore different points of views other than his limited perspective of video games and childhood. He keeps limiting it to, like, his perspective. Like, I don't think that's it. I think this guy is just a fucking rambling idiot. That's wow. pretty much the conclusion. <laughs> a, a much more like uh, the kind of hint of that, but not really explored to be like, did marketing back in the 90s kind of feed, create that kind of feeding frenzy that influenced the, the sort of peer pressure that created this sort of, I got to finish this or else I'm going to be left behind. Well, that would be an interesting idea, but he doesn't explain that at all. 90s advertising essentially creating and capitalizing on the console war is a big topic that would be worth but it feels like it's not the same topic. No, not really. Like, yeah, just really aimless. You know, the so whole far. Sega does what Nintendo don't and creating mascots that would essentially compete with each other and trying to undercut each other and being hyper competitive. Yeah, they were, they were really aggressive too. Uh, the, the advertising companies between Nintendo and Sega, they would absolutely just dump on the other console. The advent of the internet. Oh, Shad, are you here? Yes, oh, man. Oh Whoa. my God. Beautiful. Mr. Sword. Welcome, hey. welcome. Welcome. Hey. Welcome. We are approaching hour three of our 24 hour extravaganza. Nice to Whoa. see you. It's nice to be here. Though I did. I, it's guys. funny. I've hung out with you more this week than I think Fringy and Rex. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wow. That's the streaming world for you. Right. If you scroll up, there's a link to a watch together. We're currently listening to um, uh, uh, Mel. That's why don't you right. summarize what we've learned so far? <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> Nobody knows. I'm just Lewis. Of Lewis. 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 No, we've learned, Lewis. We've Lewis. learned about yeah, one of... man. We've learned about one man's trauma with video games. Yeah, a lot like, of trauma. Fucked up his childhood. One was. man being tormented by Lewis. It happens. <laughs> Had to finish every game, otherwise he gets beat up by Lewis. <laughs> essentially five minutes of explaining how he felt like as a child he had to finish every single game but then he realized he didn't that's basically but yeah well, that's, happened so far. that's the revolutionary uh kind of conclusion and how much it affected his life games. you missed the best part though shad is at the beginning four separate times he said he felt based on the events of his childhood that he had to finish the game mm -hmm. he got increasingly yeah. serious each time with words on the screen Big, did did he explain text. what he felt would happen if he didn't? Death. Death? Uh, shame. <laughs> Banishment. Shame. All he, of would, the he, shame. Would, he basically uh, he couldn't be... Like, he couldn't <laughs> live, almost. Like, it was... Um, Banishment to wherever a, he, Thrawn was banished. He put a great deal of importance oh. on um, being, like, validated by his gaming experiences uh, compared to how, like, other kids, you know, like, viewed him and you know, how he socialized regarding that. So it was very hmm. interesting. Hmm. Is he mentally stable? No, <laughs> we're not it sure. Seems to be, he's out just, on that. I think he's mentally stable. Just he's got his priorities a bit glimpy. Well, I think we're into the substantive part of the video. That's our theory, anyway. We're about to get oh, somewhere. Right. Well, I, I love substance. I don't believe Hell yeah. Substance is great. That paired with one of the most popular console generations of all time really brought it out of people. Well. Game companies learning about internet marketing really brought it out of people. Why do you even, what game come everything everything learned about marketing? And Every, it's not it's not even a do. Again, the console war is from the nineties, like as a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. You could say it even started earlier than that, but it yeah, really yeah. like it's not like it was oh, a yeah. new thing with the PS4 and the Xbox One. <clears throat> like that's just because you were getting more immersed in those spaces at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah, he made reference to um, Nintendo. And Sega, right? That fight, but like yeah. it goes, like, it goes beyond that. 
obviously. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, exactly. It's, you can um, go back to I, like I, the Odyssey and the Atari and stuff. Yeah, it's been going on for a long time. Yeah, well, before Nintendo and Sega, Atari just dominated everything for so long. So it, yeah. was, it wasn't really a competition. It, it wasn't as fierce as some of the battles Don't worry. later on. There was still plenty of game of cringe. All the eras. Exactly. Love to enjoy. And whether or not you were a willing participant, you were in it. Most. <laughs> no, you weren't. No. No, you, you weren't. Play no, your game. Not no, give a shit. You, exactly. You, you weren't a part of it. If it just you didn't cuts care about to it. some guy reading a book on a chair. He goes, "I wasn't." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there wearing a monocle, you yeah. know, next to the uh, next to the the fire, the at the fireplace. Yeah. I sure didn't only... give a shit about the console was back in the day. I was just playing my games. Uh, oh. I didn't give a shit beyond, I legit was just like, which one is better though? I just need to know. Just let me know so yeah, I can spend it. my yeah, money better. That's know. all. I just want to know that. <laughs> had one current gen console, an Xbox 360 or a PS3 and the Wii probably. If you had all three, chances are you were an outlier, but therein lied the social hierarchy. I thought he was about to say like you were the coolest kid in school if you had <laughs> all of those. <laughs> Everybody liked you if you had all if of the had gaming all of them, consoles in school. <laughs> If well, you had all of them, it, you it, were in fact Lewis. His schooling experience was just odd. <laughs> but he's about to mention a social hierarchy based on the amount of consoles you have. So, so you were, with mm. the nerds, potentially, yes, you'd be the cool kid. But uh, going outside of the nerd crews, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Even the fucking teachers just, would be like, "Look, you pathetic shits playing with your Nintendo." <laughs> you just, you just show up and it's like, "I've got gamer score and three currencies." <laughs> it was. I still remember that in school. We because we uh, there was like a place to go where everyone would play Mario Kart DS, right? And there would be a teacher everyone saw being like, do you want to go outside and play with a ball? No? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> do whatever you want, I guess. Hierarchy. Uh, you when you're a tell teammate me about numbers, numbers. you want to be a part of everything. You're learning about yourself, you're trying and feeling lots of new things, and if there's something people are doing you don't have access to, you start to feel like you're missing out. You lose the sense of belonging in your social circles when all of your friends are talking about a game you haven't played yet, or when everyone's getting on Xbox Live to play Gears 3's Horde mode, but you don't have it. Gears 3 Horde mode? Why would you reference that out of everything? <laughs> well, because so a specific example, you know, like, it's good to Yeah, but you couldn't have gone with, example. like, Halo 3 custom games, or Modern Warfare 2 just what, online what, in wait, general? What, what it, I... I, I'm not sure what's the, the complaint. <laughs> yeah, I can Gears I 3 Horde mode. This like sucks compared to the kind of shit you could get on 360. Oh, right? okay. All right. Okay. I, mean, so I, I like to I like Horde play mode. Play it, I don't. I didn't play Gears of War. No. Oh, I played man. the first one on Xbox One, the remaster. Um, I didn't the Gears it. 3 Horde mode was better than 2. It's just the Gears Online was still better than the Horde mode by far. And then the Online for ah. Gears was already so glitchy that I would recommend COD over it, you know? A, and then Halo. That's a controversial tech, though, isn't it? Because all I heard at the time was everybody really liked Horde mode. I, I really liked Horde mode, but I would definitely say that Halo was played more a lot, a lot more online, for sure. For sure, but, but to, he's, he's just saying it as an example. That's it. Yeah, it's just I'm allowed to be critical kinda... of any example given at any time for my own reasons. Otherwise, no, I'll no, make a I'm... video about how wrong you are. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm All just right. getting your your opinion, Mueller. I'm just saying that I'm agreeing with you in that uh, this particular video, he's he's using his specific experience examples as if that's what everybody went through. He's he's basically I mean, he's imprinting extent, his his very he, very he, specific. He's view, been doing that with everything. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is. I can understand the feeling of like, ah, oh, I'd like to play that game with my friends, but I can't. But I don't know. You just get over it, right? <laughs> it's um, like, what yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, I kind of get some <laughs> yeah, of the things. The game. I get some of the things he's saying. I mean, I felt that with like, uh, I have a, f a few close friends of mine are huge Dark Souls fans, and they're able to talk yeah. about it on such a, a deep technical level. And I fucking suck at that game. And then, uh, but I, I really enjoy having played it. But like I just haven't progressed that much, and uh, sometimes they have a deep conversation about it. It's like, oh fuck, I wish I hearing, could participate. Yeah, I kind of no, feel like a loser. Hearing the detail, hearing <laughs> the detail that they discussed it in, that makes you want to play it more when you have the time. It doesn't make right. you want to bitch about it like this guy. I don't know what his problem is. He just seems yeah. to be this weird emotional response. Well, play the fucking um, game. <laughs> with everything he said, he's painted a very like a big cultural issue that's causing us all to think we need to finish games, right? I assume from the mm. title. But, uh, it's, a, it's a but it, it's a personal it, issue that he's turning into a cultural issue. That's yeah, yeah. He, he's he, he's like he's like making a, an essay about GPSs, the, the history of GPSs, and then he's like, yeah, you know, like when you take the when you take uh, Turner and uh, 
and North Street, and, you know, like like everybody does, you know, that that railroad is really difficult to navigate. You know what I mean? It's just like kind of like using a very, very specific example that affected him as indicative of the greater problem uh, or the greater solution uh, that GPS has provided. Like it, it's a weird exa example. Well, but this like, isn't a, a video game problem. This is like a life thing that you need to get over, which is yeah, like yeah. being excluded or the fear of missing out. Like these are not video game problems. These are general problems. I don't know why we're making it about video games specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's really point of the finger. Obvious, yeah, everything. Well, even even know, sports that you're just like, not, you know, good enough at exactly. or something. Yep. That Dark Souls oh thing I described earlier, I mean, I don't give a shit now. Now I'm just like, whatever. I just like playing the games that I enjoy spending time no, on. I, 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 mean, I have you ever considered I, making a video essay on this and the trauma <laughs> you're yeah. about this problem? I mean, like, well, I've, when I've, I've was gone through really my ad. I've I gone through my game so. library and be like, oh my god, there's so much fucking shit I haven't eaten or even played. I've but tried now to get I over just, that. I don't, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't worry about it, and I'm just like, what? I just want to play whatever is what makes me the most happy at this moment, mm -hmm. and a lot of that time yeah. is just firing up Tetris. Like, I, that's I why I was saying, yeah. as you get older, you gotta have to right. like balance your gaming a little bit better. Make sure you, you remember have a good relationship with the games you play. Every okay, time... so. I'm... Shadow, Every time the well, summer I... came around, people would make the memes about how Steam was going to rape your wallet, right? Yeah. <laughs> how it goes. So, I'm going to throw a spanner into this philosophical <gasps> discussion right now, right? Right? Because there are some games that I purposely choose to not finish. My God. What? Mm. Uh, well, I know. This is shocking. This is shocking stuff, right? Uh, so, interesting. I, I think you guys were... All right. Brace yourselves, right? I've played... I don't know how many hours of Skyrim. I'm like hundreds, <laughs> if not thousands, right? <laughs> What's so Skyrim? Funny Skyrim of what? Yeah, yeah. Skyrim. Me and Rags were okay. just talking about that. Yeah, Scar. Oh, Skyrim. 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 Oh, we we're just talking and, about that. And oh, I, was, I, was, I have That's never, Skyrim. I've never completed the main storyline. Me and Rags mm. were saying the same thing, like an hour. Really? Ago. Oh. We, yeah, it's so yeah, funny they say that. Skyrim. It's one yes, of those we... games that we're too busy yeah. just fucking around in. I don't care. So how yeah, many you know? I, I finished the story. But, but also, I've I've done that on purpose because I've noticed mm -hmm. a weird phenomenon when I finish a game. I feel like I now know kind of th there's no mystery anymore. Mm -hmm. yes, a sense yes. of wanting to discover. And yes. as a result, it actually kind of makes me check out of the game. It and takes so, away. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and and hmm. so as long as I don't finish that main storyline, there's a sense of mystery still of something left to be done mm -hmm. that causes me, man, if I start a new playthrough, oh, there's so much I haven't finished the main storyline. And, and even though I go through all the stuff that I've already done, but then you go off it doing random side things anyway, and it becomes a really different playthrough. And then at the end, I still choose not to finish the game with that character because I don't want it to be over. I just I want the experience to keep going. Yeah, even right. as you're messing around just doing side quest stuff and like leveling your guy, it's still looming over you that there's this quest at the end and like there could be a greater meaning to all this. Exactly. If you just beat it, if you just beat it right away, it makes the the you know messing around and like you're less motivated to do that. Why why do I want to get know, a level 90 this when I know it, there's no It's way funny. Anymore. I think there's a lot of guys that have the same experience when it comes to beating things or beating mm. it. I just, I just can't believe of all the games in the world you brought up Skyrim. We're both yeah, 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 saying the same thing. It's so funny. What? Well, uh, this happened to me with Fallout 4, is after I finished the main quest line, I was like, I had this feeling of emptiness. It's like, oh, it's over. Mm, and yes. I've really played it since. Well, so wait, I've if there was just on... like 10 strict levels in some kind of game that was much more linear, you'd stop at 9 so that the next time you play it, you know that there's one that you haven't played yet? Depends on I, the game. Maybe. I might, it might really depend. On, if it's an open yeah. world RPG like that, it really uh, like has the same effect to me. Like, so yeah, Skyrim. Like Skyrim uh, is a great example because it's so but, distracting. But same thing. I, I'm doing the same thing with Elden Ring. I purposely haven't finished Elden Ring. Um, and again, I don't want the experience to be over. So now I, when I go back to it, I'm going to start a brand new character, go through everything that I've already done before. And I'm motivated to do it now because there's still that sense of mystery of how it could end. And I know that it has heaps of multiple different endings anyway, and so that's you can keep going that way. But. So I, you're discussing the benefit of not finishing games, and I mean, I, all all that makes sense. This guy is just having like a existential crisis or something. <laughs> like he's just, this is, he's not doing what you're doing. Like this guy, you missed the beginning of this. He's just got well, a because weird like relationship with games. The conclusion he's going to reach at some point is you don't have to finish games. It's like who said you did, man? Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's like yeah. this, this is a philosophy I already live. This isn't new news. Haunted.
<laughs> multiplayer Haunted. itself feels like this distant place where everyone else is having a new kind of fun you can't afford to maintain. Sometimes it was- What does this got to do with finishing games? Again, this is a broader thing. This is just fear of missing out in general. Which means yeah, that the video homo. itself feels like homo it's already- the video. It's too narrow and too broad. Like, we're all over the place. Yeah, exactly. It's simultaneously all about you while also being about a much bigger topic than yeah. games. It was so integral to the stability of your friendships that not playing the same- Okay. There it is. There it is. There it is. friends you have. There it is right there. Wow. Yeah, that, okay. that was not the case for- I had several things that me and my friends were interested in beyond yeah. individual game storylines <clears throat> or yeah. multiplayer experiences. Uh, I, I, I'm, I was with him to an extent with the whole, like, it feels bad when your friends talk about how much fun this thing was and you don't have that game yet, so you just can't play it with them. But the idea that it would, like, fuck up the friendship or compromise. change it, yeah, yeah like, no. Pathetic. Completely pathetic. Well, at that point, you need better friends. It's really yeah. fun to be able to talk to someone who's like 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 uh, you can league of legends for example if, talking to someone who's who's as high level as you and actually can understand it at the same level it it's really satisfying but just because you can't do that doesn't mean you can't enjoy the game like you can always build up to that but this guy this is i don't know he's taking this really way too personally yeah in games as yeah he friend. seems to think like if you haven't played the games that your friends have played you're like locked out of a conversation like can't, can't you just mm -hmm. go like oh, i didn't it's play kinda... that game but i learned how to play piano like <laughs> it's kind of like the opposite actually <laughs> i would say that you're attracted to the games that your friends play not that you're excluded from being friends because you're not playing the same games if you yeah. if all your friends uh you look at your games list and are your friends list and they're all playing halo 3 more than likely you're probably going to think about getting halo 3 because you want to play with your friends it wasn't it wasn't like a sort of like an exclusion or, or uh, if, you know, you're being marginalized because you're not playing Halo 3. You want to enjoy an experience with your friends and people you know. So and if you didn't have just like a, yeah. Halo 3 and your friends Andy you and say, I don't want to play with you anymore and drop you in the dumpster, that means you got a shit <laughs> friend. <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah. If your friendship was <laughs> based friendship around was tied by a game. video game. Like, geez. If it's tied to a game, like, that's it. It's, come on now. Maybe you need to reevaluate your friends and, like, your whole relationship with games. Yeah, and, and yeah, for the most part, like the most you get is like, "Hey, uh, you want to play some Resident Evil 5? Like, no, nah, I'm I'm playing a you know big big uh, big team deathmatch on Halo Three. It's like you should really get Halo Three. We could play together. That'd be basically be the conversation for the most part. <laughs> That's the yeah. true friend who friends. says like, "Hey, man, yeah. I got you a copy yeah. of Halo Three because you're poor as shit, that, and I'm not exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Come play this game. Let me lure you over to this side. Get this. Uh, you know, there's yeah. so many different ways people try to. Those are the real friends. That's such a good point." This guy seems like he doesn't understand that because if these people cared about him, no if, Lewis, if, Lew, if Lewis if Lewis gave a fuck about him, like he would explain <laughs> this to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know what he did to this guy. It would be oh, you have like Mahler you know, as a friend. He's like, hey, you want to play Gollum? It's like, no, yeah. not really. And then I buy <laughs> everybody you Gollum. I have a copy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's love you come into school, Gears of War 3 releases, and Lewis is there, and you say like you can't afford it, and he just goes, ooh. <laughs> you can't sit here. You can't sit here. I don't know, man. Sorry, you, this, you don't uh, know what happened. We were to Dom. <laughs> for our friend so uh, yeah uh, maybe that's true maybe this is act we're laughing at it but maybe that's his real reality yeah well as i was gonna say he's like, that's unfortunate if you had those friends yeah. i guess yeah that that's yeah he, kind of sucks. he does talk of now i feel bad for experience <laughs> he talks of his school experience as if everybody experienced the same thing mine was <laughs> much different i mean the school yeah. that i went to in the early grades a lot of kids from uh financially um lower class or lower middle class uh, families and they were just not a lot of people were playing video games like it was just me and a few other people um but but i get like the uh him saying that games are a sort of um social currency at school like i remember when i got a game boy color with pokemon red and i went to school with it and i like all the kids are gathering around around me like oh my god mm -hmm. like, that's so awesome not everybody has um, it so yeah this meant you weren't hanging out with them anymore not on purpose, That's just that by circumstance. It might not seem like this was all about beating the game per se, but remember where these feelings developed from? This panic, you'd lose your credibility if you didn't know what happens, this- We didn't agree on that. I never had <laughs> yeah, that. I just <laughs> never, this, this, That's all you to me. This is projecting. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Shut up, Shad, you don't have credibility. You didn't beat Elden Ring. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Shad, you <speak. laughs> 
I do, I do like it when, you know, you stay in something previously in the video that we're all like, no, that's insane. Then later on, it's like, no, knowing that, we can conclude. It's like, no, no, no. Now that we've agreed on this insane <laughs> thing I've said, we can move right along. Desire to be included in what was being talked about. Video games were a fad, and the internet shortened the lifespan of how long those fads would be in style. If you didn't beat Red Dead Redemption in the two weeks it came out, your friends were already moving on to something else. Oh my god, Jeez, man. Two weeks. Damn, bro. Two weeks? Isn't I that game like... That game is huge. Yeah, no, I was about not, to say. Just, was I, I'm like All I fucking, know about that game is it's I feel massive. like an alien listening to this guy, because like, my friends played Audio 2 and I didn't, and then they would be like, it's really good, and I'd be like, cool. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. 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 Let's talk about well, some other things. Know, friends. Just, it's really noted. Like games, games <laughs> lasted for a while, even while the internet, yeah. you know, e even in the like, yeah, it, it's, it's just. And if you have someone, if you have someone who hasn't finished the game, you finish already. It's like, oh shit! I, I hope you finish it soon so we can talk about it. Yeah, that's like, it. They, you can't wait. Like, you, I, the, well, but it, then also, here's a crazy concept: you could have somebody talk about a game that you haven't played, and you can still listen to them and engage with really? them. It's insane. Yeah, that's yeah, entirely it's, possible. Yeah. So there's so many it's, variables, but this game just there was precedent okay. for this. It's People did it with film. It was nuts. And yeah. books. Well, well and I'll, I'll, shows. And you shows. bring up you bring up an important thing there, Mola, because if I was to try and steel man it, I would say the only type of experience I can really relate to what he's saying is with TV shows. But it's a bit of a different experience because yeah. I, I hang out with a lot of reviewers. And so if we want to really talk about Ooh, all the spoilers in, in, a, in a soaker, right? Like, well, like on FNT yeah, or hanging out with you guys uh, who want to review a movie that's recently come out. Then I do feel a certain pressure. It's like, oh, I better, yeah. better watch that so I can. But uh, it's not, not to the sense where I, I don't Good know, games. feel like I'm going to be left behind or, or something like that. With games, there's still the gameplay element to it. Where if, with movies or shows, you get the whole story revealed. Like that's spoilers are much more damaging. With mm -hmm. games, you can hear the entire story, or you can hear about the boss and everything, and still want to play it to explore the mechanics. Well, there so, are like, also the other ways. Mechanics. Yeah, there's other ways to experience games as well. You can watch mm -hmm. watch throughs or play yeah. together or whatever as well uh, to be good. somewhat informed. Because well, well, it's also interesting, right? Because I did not play Last of Us One or Last of Us Two. Um, but I'm, I remember having conversations with uh, Muller or, or, or like about, or maybe I was just watching it with, uh, when you guys were reviewing it on EFAP and I felt like I was part of it. Oh, yeah, that, it. the coverage um, of the gaming. Yeah, because the coverage was extensive and yeah, I've never played the game, extended. but I felt part of the conversation because mm -hmm. I was just engaged about the controversy of Last of Us number two. And comparing the game to the movies, and, yes. or sorry, comparing the game to the show, that actually really helped. Seeing what they changed, what they didn't, because like I didn't mm. play it either. So being able to have that filled in, whoever did that, perfect. It's kind of isolating this problem as if it's something to do with games, but it really can be applied to any shared interest. Like, actually, hey, hey, did you see that that Pickers game yesterday? Yeah, that was crazy. He threw the ball in the place, and it and it and they got a point. Wow, that's nuts. Hey, did you catch that episode of Seinfeld? Hey, did you? Uh, uh, did you read that book that was a, a you know New York Times bestseller? Yeah, Fifty Shades of Grey. Isn't that a great read? You know, such said no one, but it's just it, it's not really like indicative of games itself. It's just any shared interest that is currently being shared or discussed by mm -hmm. the people you hang out with, which mm -hmm. could be literally anything or about anything or anybody or yeah. any, any particular industry. And, and and holy crap, I remember. Actually, yes, I was on an EFAP talking about Last of Us 2 because it was the last EFAP anniversary stream and oh. we were reviewing... <laughs> who's, the, who's the fat guy who was like... Fat Gerald? Jim Sterling. <laughs> yes, and... Sterling, that guy. Um, oh, okay. and, and I'd never played the game, but we were able... Like, I, I had no problem engaging on a substantive level about the commentary he was making because he was saying really stupid things as well. Um, and so you can still be part of, you know, the conversation, the interaction of a game without ever having played it. Uh, I've experienced it firsthand with EFAP, um, and it was the last anniversary stream we did. There we go. But I guess maybe that's what we're ramping up to with this video, that it's eventually mm -hmm. going to get to, you know what, and the that's crescendo. okay. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. Maybe we're jumping You're the gun. being included yeah. in a discussion closed. It wasn't <laughs> in the fairy tale high school bully kind of way, but beating games had gone from making you cool to being accepted. 
Is it Holy hard shit. to believe the industry <laughs> I, would capitalize? Where did Damn, you grow man. up? I was going to say, man, what, 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 what sucks, fucking man. fantasy school was this? <laughs> and if you didn't play video sucks. games, you were just going to die alone. His childhood <laughs> it was messed up. His school sucked. Like, this is just, just a terrible situation <laughs> he was born into with games. I don't know. Capitalize on its biggest demographics, worst anxiety. Limited editions, pre-order bonuses, DLCs. Okay, this is a whole other thing that we're getting into yeah. if you want to talk about that. That's that's a different conversation again. Extending the story, or in some cases, providing the ending to the base game story. Online functions at a monthly premium. Season passes wow. guaranteeing you- Wow, on Xbox, yeah. Mm-hmm. Miss out on future right. developments, oh, utilizing underhanded methods of making pre-owned copies of games impossible to use. It became harder and harder to keep up with the rest of the community if you weren't buying the new release and tunneling through it for the sake of being part of it. Even now, God, I just I can't like, you okay, Theo? I was about I to ask you, okay, Theo? When no, I'm, I'm not are... okay. My soul is. Uh, <laughs> so uh... this video is just about FOMO, not. Yeah, yeah I was about to yeah, say this, yeah. this video could just be, yeah. literally be called FOMO. It's got nothing to do with you know. whether or not you need to finish a game. Yeah, a I lot of the comments agree with it too. Uh, a lot of the comments on this video are like yeah, hyper positive, so I, I'm just like, this is not a video essay. This is a <laughs> vlog that people are finding and agreeing with. Yeah, it's Ten it's kind of funny. You can solve a lot of this by just having a casual interest in almost all games that are coming out. Like even if you don't play them, I, pretty much anybody can mention any game to me, and I'll be like, oh yeah, I heard that you can do blah blah and blah, and that it looks like blah, and it sound and blah made it, and and it's like you have a, a casual interest in all games, and therefore. No, you can never be left out because you know a little bit about everything. Like it's not—it's mm -hmm. not too hard to keep up with the industry if you actually—if you actually enjoy the games and things coming out. Well, feeling like I'm missing out on a game my friends love convinces me to buy games without a second thought, compounding into a sunk cost fallacy I've built up since high school. I Holy you need to like lie. better pass <laughs> your. Don't lie to us. <laughs> we have the footage. It's from childhood. <laughs> Liar. Yeah, no, I just imagine like, he just needs to properly balance all this stuff. If Free and Rags like see a movie and fucking praise it to high heaven, I if someone said like, isn't it bad, Mola? Because now you feel pressured to go and see it. We're like, what? No, this is good news. I'm that means I'm probably going to like the film. I don't know. Like, why, why, why are you putting it this way? It's like I had to finish it. I had a sunk cost fallacy of knowing that if I didn't complete it, I fear I would never be able to discuss with. It. It's just like, dude, you need to calm down. When they it's say like, Red Dead Redemption 2 is neat, and then you go, hmm, I might pick it up. And then they go, yeah, that'd be neat, because we could talk to you about it, maybe play the multiplayer. Okay. It doesn't need to be some satanic Lewis-dominated version <laughs> of this that's awful. <laughs> like, it could just I, be I just mention, yeah. I just mentioned, like, Lewis and all his friends are, like, surrounding him while he's on the ground in the playground. It's like, hey, hey, JC, did you, did you buy Red Dead yet? It's like, no, no. It's like, open up your phone, buy it, come on, do it. <laughs> I want to see you do it. Lewis what are you pussy doing? I think we should uh, fill in Shad. Lewis was his childhood friend that started this whole trauma for him. So Lewis just like holding court, like Still a mongrel calm. Like he brings people in. Like have he has he played the game? Yeah. At this point, Lewis is a slender man like creature that appears. Yeah, he's a wild <laughs> people's man. nightmares. They haven't finished the he, game. He Why did so you do it, Lewis? A scientific study waiting to prove video game backlogs begin at around the same time a video game enthusiast gets their first job. And maybe you want to make it up to your younger self and fulfill a desire which was never indulged. Maybe you're like me and bought every game you pirated as a kid to justify your own conscience. Or maybe, like many of us, you practice retail therapy and get yourself something you like when you're going through a rough time. I don't... Retail therapy? therapy. What's that? What, retail therapy? What, what is that? Apparently, when you uh, buy when something, you, it's you, an American you thing. Happy when you buy something. Look, I experienced that oh, today, guys. I bought two new swords at a medieval festival, and it made me pretty darn happy. I just, mm -hmm. I'm, I, 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 you hold the sword, and I just smile. It gives me. That makes sense, I guess. I was imagining like going into going into Toys R Us and just like talking to the cashiers, like, "Yeah, I've really had some problems. Like my friends keep on making me want to buy." Things. I think that's what like, he's Sir, <laughs> please <laughs> leave. <laughs> Chad's version. <laughs> Then you realize you've spent hundreds or thousands of dollars on a huge list of games you kept assuring yourself you'd definitely play. Dude, you need someone to talk to. <laughs> you do. You need he is. He's talking, talking to an audience. Talking to the world, because that's what the internet yeah. did. It allowed everyone to share all of their trauma. Mm. This, this is, is his therapy, therapy. session. <laughs> and so YouTube your therapy. backlog and the sunk cost fallacy attached to it is born.
Beating games isn't your job anymore, though. Playing games is what you uh, do Jim in your free Sterling time video. or in between class <laughs> and work. In other words, you can't devote an entire week to them without taking a few days off from, well, everything. But what's the point in buying and playing games if, if you don't beat them? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> what is this? Like, what are you saying with the imagery? So what yeah, the I know, hell am I guy... supposed to do now? <laughs> Seriously. Die? I think we figured out like four minutes in that this was like totally personal, just emotional. You, you, just, and, like, you know that there's just some guy who's healthily played games his whole life, probably all of us, just watching this and being like, what in the fuck am I listening to? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about you guys, but like when I when there was a game that's kind of running on a bit, I, like GTA 4, that game would never freaking end. Um, mm -hmm. my, my reward for being that game was like, oh man, I can try something new. I can get a new game and play that. Mm. I kind of would make that like a little game and that's that's personal it's probably not applicable to everybody but my kind of reward was like wow i finished that i'll get another game i can try that so he's like saying like he's like i can't stand playing games for seven hours seven days a week i gotta get a, a reprieve and like you know well, curl up in a ball on the floor and he's he's just not enough time between all of the worldly responsibilities that we have and playing video games but i gotta play the video games otherwise i'll be alone Huddled right. over on the ground like this guy, <laughs> screaming to the heavens, "What the hell am I supposed to do now?" It's so it's dramatic. So depends on it. Yeah, I don't know. Why, like you can't if you're talking to someone and they've played a game that you haven't, just ask them questions about it. Because exactly. I'm sure the, yeah. the person who has the game would probably be quite happy to go into detail and yeah. explain how a game works to a person who hasn't played it. Yeah, you can get help without spoilers. It yeah. could be a benefit sometimes to have a friend. Like sometimes it sucks to be playing a game and you don't have anyone who's played it. I, like, I don't yeah, know. It's, you know? It's, the it's, idea that you didn't talk to people about games that you didn't play at any length at all is like alien to me. That's mm -hmm. that's baffling. I can't relate to that at all. I definitely yeah. talk to people about games that I hadn't played and to them about games that they hadn't played. It wasn't that's... like this crazy thing that would end the friendship. That's I don't understand. Like, hi, Frankie. How usually you how you, you get into new it. games. And then you talk about how you want to talk about Bioshock, and I'm like, I haven't played it. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you don't beat them, right? It's like losing out on an investment or something. Because that's totally what I'm doing. A game is an investment, I think. Because uh, if I it depends beat it, on how I you. Can... Yeah, you could argue that. You could argue that with everything you choose to entertain us, right? See the way that he's delivering these lines. He's he's approaching a revelation. See the pause right. of like, but it's an investment. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, like yeah. figuring it out in real time. It should truly be treated as just fun experiencing, not an well, no, investment. It's, it's been, it, yeah, we're, we're ramping up to a realization, I think, hopefully. For, I've been saying that for a while. So <laughs> I feel like the, the content there. of the video is going to be in last, the last two seconds. And so, like, two well, no, seconds. I think, uh, I, I think we're about to pivot into the inspirational part of the video essay. You know, the part where it starts where to he, get more uh, He figured it all yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, probably right. okay we're, not, we're not nearly at the end. We've still got seven minutes left, but we're getting there. God fucking damn Move it. on to the next <laughs> one. If you ask me, the presence of a backlog implies we've never grown out of our childhood habits. We've what? Whoa, what? That's... bro. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Speak for <laughs> yourself. <laughs> Having a backlog have... is the normal state of affairs. Yeah, that is very when normal. Saying, when there's things like Humble Bundle, which I still yep, am the subscribed Steam to. library and the sales. There's, I have... You can know, only build up a backlog. entries in my Steam library because of all these dumbass things. I, I, I not all of them. Yeah. Like Humble Bundle, just over time, just add it up, add it Absolutely. up. Absolutely, they're making them. The I'm buying the them faster Off than I can now. play them. Yeah. If so I was to go back in time and tell my young self that I'm going yeah. to have way more games than I will ever even like play, yeah. I'd look would at myself never like it. a crazy person. Yeah. I'd be like, what? Why would you buy a game and never play it? And I'm like, listen, adulthood's complicated. Yeah. All right. yeah. Yeah. Steam would have screwed up all our childhoods. Like we're lucky we got it at the right time. Like there's way yeah. too many games, way too much. And like, it's impossible to not have a backlog in this day and age. This we guy, have Steam banned Lewis, about. so. Damn, you can't get to yeah. it. Isn't this isn't this point kind of antithetical to his whole his whole video? Because he's saying that like, oh, because we we have the fear of missing out, and we got to buy all these games that we're still doing the same thing as our childhood, so we shouldn't buy more games. Isn't that we... kind of antithetical to the fact that you can you can try games out and not finish them? Because that's like the whole premise of the video, right? 
I mean, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but like, is he familiar with the idea that you have a wish list and then they come on sale, but you don't have time to play them, so you buy them to play them in future and then you forget about them? But this is a thing yeah. that can happen. We're a very reasonable that. thing that can happen. You yeah, want to grab the deal, but you don't have time. Happens yeah, to me I... a lot. I have such a huge backlog when I look at my <laughs> Steam <Yeah. laughs> games. A lot, of my, a lot of my backlog, I don't even consider backlog. It's just things in my inventory, which I got randomly oh, you know with what? those bundles. So we'll just highlight it, yeah. Everyone has a backlog from the moment they're born because of free-to-play games. <laughs> they're always yeah, there. Yeah. They're in your library That's if true. you want them. Oh, don't mention that to him. His brain He's like, no, that fucks everything up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> We've found ways to add importance to something which should have never mattered in the first place. Our money-driven society taught us to yeah, play yeah, games. There it Boo, is. boring. Uh, capitalism. Boom. Boring. Me of Paul Marx. We, we could learn a lot from the answer. Carl Marx now. always no. finished his game. <laughs> 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 Once we Close start friends. to understand how Close expensive friends. it was. Dude, the socialist ants couldn't even kill Kang. Okay? I don't know, man. They can't do anything I right. I played games because they're fun. I don't know how this guy oh. can put those things like into that. That's such a crappy statement. If our hobby is suddenly we're measuring cost versus experience and seeking to maximize our profits by mil You know what? I can't take any of this seriously. You fucking subscribe to the humble monthly bumble and you get like a billion games per day. You, you yeah. can't like the idea that money is the reason that all this is happening well, is you like buy nah. a game pass and then you get a whole bunch of games that yeah. you can play. Yeah. Um yeah. Gaming... Or you have friends who just gift you them. There's very it's there's no His friends don't do that. Is. Yeah, not There's... him, not this guy, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, there are so many great free-to-play games as well, and... Yeah. It just, yeah, like, it's so boring to listen to someone be like, you see, it's the it's the cost that's attached to the games, it makes us feel as though, and you're just like, shut up, I mean, I shut up. Like, I feel like a much simpler explanation is we have finite time on this planet, um, yeah. we gotta make mm -hmm. choices about how we spend that time. Yeah, we yeah, often to... make half choices, half measures, where we're like, I'll pick up the game now, I'll play it a little bit now, I can't I'll complete it before I go on holiday, but I'll try, and then you'll forget about it. Yeah. There's all kinds of things that yeah. happen. And yeah. until you retire, generally speaking, from a, from being a child to an adult, the older you get, the more money you make, but the less time, free time you have. So that ratio is going to get a little tighter, so you're going to by by just logistics alone, you're probably going to have more games to play than you have time to play them all milking the game for everything it's worth. And if we don't, well, that's our fault. We made a bad investment. Some no, why? Why do you even <laughs> do in this? If, if there's a game, there's so many games I haven't even completed recently that I've played on Steam, that if I, I don't look at them and feel shame, I look at them and I'm mm -hmm. like, hmm, will I pick that up again? Maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure. He's like, oh, you know, this, that, and the other. But like the idea that I should have a fucking Lewis shadowing me all the time is absurd. <laughs> Something didn't hold us long enough, and now it's money wasted. It's not, though. You paid money to play a game, and you played it. You enjoyed something until you were... So you presented the crazy person just to say the rational thing. Is that the point of this video? Tired of it. That's normal. No one expects you to cash optimize how you go bowling, and quite frankly... Yeah, nobody does. So why did you say it? Nice flailing. It's just therapy for him? That's Maybe. what this is. Over the head with my ball if you try to rush me. And likewise, there shouldn't be an expectation to beat a game just because you spent money on it. Yet, some of us still push through a game we don't like and- Hey, don't show hit the uh, Simpsons. Fuck, <laughs> Sunshine. <laughs> Mario Sunshine, yeah. That game's awesome to play. Yeah. Hidden yeah. Simpsons yeah. Sunshine. It, <laughs> just to knock it off the list. You better believe the industry took advantage of this mindset too. The last decade has been 10 years of re-releasing old the games. The last decade creating... has been hang 10 years. On. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Damn. But hang, the idea that like Dead Space and Resident Evil 4 that just re-releases is annoying. The amount oh, of well, fucking work I, that went into those is incredible. I'm just, I imagine yeah. you might be talking about like remasters of uh, the, because it feels like remasters became very popular with uh, the eighth generation in particular. Remasters okay. would be a, a fair argument, yeah. They they've, been remastering, uh, still. they've been remastering and re-releasing games since the 80s, at least. Like, you know, how, many how, many, how many times time, but... have they redone Tetris? They did uh, the entire like first four games in the uh, the Super Mario Brothers, uh, you know, series for the SNES. They did, yeah, they've the been All doing Stars, remakes. Yeah, yeah All-Stars, which is a great collection, by the way. But yeah, yeah, it's like, it's done a new thing. Yeah, it's probably, you know, a little more common now because there's more games to remaster. That's just kind of an obvious thing. There's more games remasters. So there's going to be more remasters. Monthly subscriptions for instant access to your very own backlog and massive sales to drive up purchases. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is, why is he saying this like a bad thing? 
Yeah. Subscribe That's to cool. a service, get access to a huge library of games. That sounds like a good thing. Yeah. Pretty it's cool. seen games as a service become a popular way of keeping players invested and begrudgingly getting through bad content to get to new content. What? I think you made that up. Is he, is he doing the, the thing where he presents the TISM argument and then says it's not that? <laughs> do, does he, I, I don't get it though. Is like, does, do they think that like the, you know, Microsoft creating Game Pass and their primary model is, haha, now these fucking guys are going to be playing these games that they hate. Just to get to the ones that they like. <laughs> just to get than, to the ones they like. <laughs> rather than, this is just a good way to get people to be in the Xbox ecosystem and play the games that they want to play. And in fact, it relies on people playing. Like, the system doesn't work if people are playing every single game. The system works because people are only playing a handful of those games. Because if, right. if everybody was playing every single game, it would make it to, like, to, to where it wouldn't be sustainable. Yeah, to have to every single out. game on that platform. Because people wouldn't be buying any of those games anymore. There'd be, like, no individual purchases. And this it's, not like the, it's not like the system where they have, like, the best games locked behind this stupid thing where you must complete these crappy games before we'll let you play the good ones. It's Because no, that's exactly. what he's implying. It's, it's very he's odd. Like, I think he's implying... Uh, he's showing Destiny 2, so I'm assuming that's relevant. Destiny 2 does have, like, DLC behind DLC to be on DLC. <laughs> and, like, yeah, but that's, content and stuff. But that's specifically yeah. that game. Well, Most the thing about like that. that, though, is the, the point of a live service game is to make sure you're only playing that game forever. They want you to play that game and nothing else. They want you to be hyper-immersed in their ecosystem to the exclusion of everything else. Yeah, I'd right. say that's like a very different phenomenon, you know, fear yep. of missing out baked into live service games and season passes and everything like that. They want you more and more and more and more invested in one game because you yeah. want to keep up with the conversation about that one game. You're invested in the community of that one game. I, I, I think that honestly that this this whole premise of this video is just kind of kind of missing the forest for the trees because honestly the reason why we have such a great uh, huge backlog is because games have never been more affordable and more plentiful than they the, ever in history. You can buy ga great games for five bucks, for ten bucks on sale for two bucks. You know you can mm -hmm. get them you can get them on Steam, you can get them I on mean, GOG, yeah. you can get them on uh, UPlay for some reason if you ever want to use UPlay. You know there's there's a, all these different like platforms. Get, yeah, Game Pass. Game Pass, you get like access to a hundred games at a time or something. So, oh well, uh, you get new games for no additional cost yeah. from Xbox yeah. anyway. Yeah, it, it's a ro it rotates out every every few months or whatever. But you get access to potentially hundreds of games over you know the following years. So yeah, we just have a it's so much more affordable to get a lot of games, especially with the sales and stuff. Generally, like you know, you go, you go to you know if you back in the day in the 90s or whatever you'd buy a, a brand new n64 game for 60 bucks and that price would not go down very quickly it would take years to go down eventually it might go down to 40 bucks or whatever but uh, or you can get it used maybe but yeah <clears throat> the games are extremely affordable and plentiful nowadays so it's really just a, a a not even that unfortunate it's actually a nice side effect of it it's just you have tons of options to play now we um yeah we kind of went past it but i do want to it's just it was it was on my mind i was trying to think about it you know when you said like he would even start to buy games he'd pirated previously to try and clear his conscience. I was just thinking to myself, no, like, why I would you phrase part. it that way instead of, I wanted to support the games that gave me so much entertainment back in the day? You know what I mean? Everything's yeah. a self-report with this guy. Yeah, he's like, like he did it because he felt as guilty. They often are. Yeah. <laughs> this whole um, video. <laughs> in any case, on that note, Mr. The Movie Cynic, that, that was very subtle and nicely said. Uh, you're going to yeah, have to... Really have to gonna get on out of here i suppose you've uh i, I don't know you're going to sleep you're going to do things in real life i'm not sure uh i actually have a uh a gaming situation going on i'm gonna oh go play God. some call of duty <gasps> of all things Ew. yeah you don't have to yeah, I know it's you. um. Is Lewis yeah, forcing you the, to do this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lewis it's the only way I can him. hang out with Lewis, like your boss. Blink doesn't. torture. <laughs> all of my childhood friends uh, live across the country, so it's the only way we can all hang out and play. Oh yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, right. and it's the only game we can all agree on anyway, and we all just kind of sit and complain because uh, <laughs> twelve-year-olds kick our ass. I feel like I like the idea that you know half Real the people will agree on game. great games. The only game everyone agrees on is probably shit. It's like, oh. yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, all right. Thank you for popping in, sir. Appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure we'll catch you again yeah. in the future. Yeah, so we'll catch you guys later. Um, enjoy the rest of this vlog self-report <laughs> therapy session, whatever. You know it. And uh, happy anniversary, you guys. Thanks for the invite.
Thanks, dude. You betcha. Sure. Thanks for coming. Bye. Have a good man. See ya. Yeah. Oh, thank God he's gone. Ugh. Oh my goodness. Oh, Jeez. The absolute oh I thought he'd minute. never oh, no. leave. Rax was still alive. Ah. Oh, oh no. no. I love everyone and all things. Because I was gonna say, like, I God, you know no who claim. I really hate is Mark the Cyborg, and I'm so glad that he oh, yeah, that turned guy. up Can't old and Oh hey. Ew. 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 If he turns up, I'm gonna Vom. Oh my god. Really, really. Oh, I really appreciate oh. his presence. What a oh, jerk hello. that guy hi is. There. Oh hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I sure do oh, like hi, Mark. things. Oh hi, Mark. Oh, no, it's like Good he doesn't friends. want to talk to us. That's fine. You know, I can understand that. <laughs> may -may. Fair enough. Fair enough. Maybe. You know, you could have just gotten bullied by a bunch of his friends to buy, res uh, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 or something. You don't know. <laughs> that does, with the amount of footage we had of that in this video, I feel like that was a particularly traumatic <laughs> experience for this, yeah. this man. It's like, I don't want to buy it. <laughs> that was the one that did it. Um, Mark, if you can hear us, we can't hear you. And, uh, as you're getting that all fixed up, there is a Watch Together link. You're welcome to join us as we uh, go further into this adventure. Right. <gasps> now I can hear you guys. There you go. There we go. Ooh, yeah, I, I was on a stream using Restream and I had to reselect my mixing board in that program. And I think it broke Discord somehow because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I definitely use Discord more than I use a web solution that I've never once used ever. Well... I, we have friends like that, Gumi friends who use like insane archaic technology. They're called Adam and Sitch. They use uh, uh, Zoom. Oh, oh they good. Zoom. Uh, yeah, they do. Oh my goodness. And they pay for it, Rags. They pay for that. They pay for they it. They pay for it. You know, yeah. well, I, I don't like Why? shaming many people, but that is embarrassing. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even what? know you could pay for Zoom. Those losers. I didn't either. Pay for what? What are they getting out of it? I don't know what they're paying for because, because when I pay itself is when I pay for Discord Nitro, I get a shitload of stuff. Uh, yeah, and if yeah, you, you don't get... pay for it, you get all the main stuff. I just, you know, I just, I just don't get it. Of they course... limit you to like forty-minute calls if you don't pay for Zoom. I think. Oh, oh that is true. <sighs> yeah. He's fucking. Anyway, off to this wow. video. <laughs> Continuing it, Mark. <laughs> link right there for you if you need it. Cool. It's seen digital storefronts compete with launch window discounts and the growth nice. of the sketchy gray market where people can make haphazard additions to their libraries. It's seen game design philosophy change to cater to a completionist mindset and focus on keeping prices. I mean, some of it, maybe. I mean, some I don't have a... Sure. Wait, hang on. Why have we demonized the completionists? They can be normal people. Yeah. Can be. Sometimes. <laughs> can be. Well, it's just some games are like this, sure, but other games are definitely not like this. Yeah, but also the completionist mindset is another way that can add greater playability to a game. I remember when me and my wife were playing through uh, the new Tomb Raider. or well, well, the old new Tomb Raider. Anyway, the, the first <laughs> of the reboot Tomb Raider. That one, right? Um, yeah. Like, oh, very fun game. Didn't take too long to get through the story, but my wife was enjoying the game so much that she wanted to keep playing it. And the thing that offered her, you know, greater playability was going through and completing all the achievements. And uh, and so she just went back and started going through hunting for all the achievements she got. And so that actually gave her greater value, having that completionist kind of uh, goal. And so... so an interesting thing to bring up in the context of achievements with Lewis's video is there is a subsect of people who feel like they have to be rush their way to clearing every single achievement. And it's big in the PlayStation community because there's a specified trophy called a platinum trophy that you get when you finish every single other trophy in the game. And I know people that will flat out pl play games that they don't like to full completion because they feel like they had to get the platinum or they didn't really play the game. Oh, and they'll, they'll, yeah, they'll say if you didn't get the platinum, then like you didn't really play. You obviously didn't really love Horizon Zero Dawn because you don't have the platinum trophy. Like, well. <laughs> As someone who did a lot of achievement hunting and had friends who were obsessed with platinums, I, the, even even the most obsessed, I didn't see that sentiment around at all. It, it would be seen as like you're not you're not as uh, good at the game as me if you haven't got the platinum. I do that sort of sentiment, but but like like a sense that you yeah, haven't actually the played the game fully if you haven't got the platinum. Some games platinums were retarded. You know, yeah, the same for the really LMG, where it just goes well beyond like any normal person's enjoyment of a video game. So, I don't know. I, I, there's, the, there's some games you can kind of make that argument for. Like, anyone here played Diablo 2, I'm assuming? 
Yeah. 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 A bunch of people, not, I'm assuming. Not with, not with achievements, but I played Diablo um, 2 quite mm-hmm. a bit. Yeah. If basically for me, I felt like if you didn't play to the point where you actually got a character strong enough to duel and like go into the PvP aspect, then you didn't experience the game fully. If you just went through normal nightmare and hell and just killed monsters, you didn't get the full experience of the game. So that's one game I kind of have that that feeling with, but it doesn't apply to like all games when it comes to just achievements. Because for I think that's like a distinct aspect of that particular game where you have to get strong enough you actually want to do the PvP aspect to it. I didn't do PvP professionally, but I just play on with friends and, you know, kill each other a bunch, collect ears, you know, have a laugh, then go back to the main game because... No, not professionally. I just mean like in the, the games, like there's... You go to the custom games or, or the um, public games and you can get duel rooms all the time. There would be fights and public oh, duels see. were yeah. the most intense part of that game. You'd go in and you just get one shot thinking you're strong. You'd reevaluate your whole build. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I, I was never uh, going back to achievements. I don't know if that was really uh, the point of the video, but I, going back to achievements, I never was interested in, in chasing achievements. The only exception to that, I think, was probably, I want to say, Soul Calibur 4 or 3. God, there's so many of them. It was either, I think it was 4, I want to say. Soul Calibur 4 had a really, I don't, I've not seen this anywhere else in any game. They actually unlocked content based on the quantity of achievements you you got Mm. so uh you Mm. could customize you could you could take any character build from any of the fighters that and and make your own completely custom character and i actually like recreated the entire cast of the lord of the rings you know i made a gandalf character with a with a staff i made a a, you know aragorn character with like a rapier (laughs) and all these different other characters and uh it was it was pretty fun and you could actually customize them visually but they actually would lock uh custom visual customizations for those behind uh, milestones of the quantity of, of achievements you got so i would actually specifically find the easiest achievements to, to accomplish and get like 20 30 achievements in order to get more customization gear it's very weird but that's the only reason i ever did it hmm. proper incentive yeah i find achievements and trophies like any kind of meta game system that's usually at the platform level can be really good if you're into the game anyways and it can give you a real like as 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 shad was saying a moment ago it just it gives you that carrot on the stick to chase after if you want to just yeah. get some uh, time I like into those the challenges game. yeah so you know but, and, uh, and not like fire the rpg a hundred times type ch- i hate challenges like that i find them lame but where it's like you know go through a particular area without using the obvious thing that you use to win easily it's like yeah hmm. fun challenges ones that actually test your skill like not yeah the, the repetitive ones are just so dumb fire this gun 20 times yeah I'm busy like, work i don't like that yeah, yeah, yeah never, it's just uh, you roll your eyes at them immediately as a gamer ever heard of a game called my name is mayo so it's a, okay it's, it's a it's no. a playstation it's a playstation network game that is famously just a buy this game and get an easy platinum because it's a game where all you have to do is tap on this jar of mayonnaise to win and you can get the platinum in like 10 minutes and it's sold like hundreds of thousands of copies oh because there's people just for the game of school yeah yeah mm. just that was and, the avatar game like that um yep yep uh yeah yeah you know what's funny is about, I think, yeah. king kong the official video game that was one of the ones because you just have to complete the campaign and you get a thousand yeah. g if yeah I a lot a the lot Terminator of the game where they gave you only yep. golden as well <laughs> but that's, yeah these these were all games that achievement hunters would get because they're like easy money sort of thing and you know, yeah the currency of social coolness because everyone thought you were really cool the more gamer score you had True. where i think yeah. that platinum trophy chase though has become a problem <laughs> in, in sony's design is they've now stopped tying difficulty to achievement so you notice you do not have Mark, to you're quiet oh, oh am i sorry I can, uh, yeah be... turn yourself up a wee bit i think you're i think okay, you're better? quiet better no any different yeah, uh, a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's better, a little yeah. bit better. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, but yeah, what I was saying though is the um, the the achievements in Sony games are no longer ever tied to difficulty. I believe so. You don't have to beat God of War on Give Me God of War to get the platinum trophy in God of War. And I think the reason they did that is because so many casual people started like freaking out because they couldn't get the platinum trophies. So they wanted to make it so that well, you can throw it on very easy and still get the platinum. Uh, so it's more. They always want to nerf it down. Things. Like, uh, well, the the there, games? Yeah. there is a lameness to it when it's like mm-hmm. uh beat on the hardest difficulty but then there is a there's an increased layer of lameness when it's like beat on the hardest difficulty and don't take a single hit you're like what yeah those are really are like or, a time limit ones where it's like you beat on expert difficulty you know 
uh, extra, extra die death mode. And it's like in 20 minutes, You're like, OK, or when you have to beat it on the really hard difficulties and it's like 10 gamers core It's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for Thanks that. So much. The, 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 the damn tutorial gave me 30. So like, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Players busy long enough to void refund mm. periods. It's required the redefinition of a refund to protect consumers in however small a way it does. The pride, the need for a. I just think that's normal. I don't even see that as a bad thing. The fact that I wish did that happen more. That um, there's more attention given to the new markets as they evolve and an understanding of how things reflect that going forward in times. The same with piracy, right? Like, and everything to do with the React stuff. So like companies almost don't even want to get involved because it's so insanely complicated and strange, but they will as soon as enough money changes mm. hands, right? Or, or yeah. enough, enough is stolen. And yeah, when it comes to what, what is the nature of refunds when it comes to video games, it's like, I, I, I don't mind the idea that it's like, we need to restructure the whole thing to figure it out. It's like, yeah, just get it done. Figure it out. Get it fair. And as flawed as the Steam refund system is now, it's still tremendously better than the old one. The old one was, um, wasn't there a game that prompted it to happen? It wasn't like No Man's Sky or anything, was it? I, I don't it remember. No I, Total yeah. Biscuit used to talk about it, and I think he, he actually fought to get a, a, a like mandated refund system. And, and it's, I think now it's like two weeks or two hours, whatever, whichever one happens Something first, like that, right? yeah. Which, but it's like a flat thing. Like you can always get a refund as long as you meet that criteria. The only time you can kind of get screwed is like, I've had this happen before where, do you ever run a Steam game and it keeps on running even after you close it? I've had that happen like once or twice. And Some that'll, saying, that'll um, bone you. Arkham Knight was the game that made it happen? Oh, Maybe. Okay. Maybe, uh, yeah, because you need it in place when a game doesn't fucking work. <laughs> it's like, yeah. refund now. I think either a game can sit in your library for two weeks unplayed or you play two hours of it, whatever comes first. Yeah. And then, yeah, your refund is invalidated. And, and I think a GOG, uh, not to toot their horn, but I think they have like a pretty much a flat 30 day. 30 day. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty fair. Time. Well, as well, like... if you go over two hours in Steam, can't you like do a personal appeal? And if you can explain it and you have a history of no refunds, they'll give it to you. Yeah. Like, in extreme situations, I think people were actually able to get No Man's Sky refunded even after right. two hours. It's possible it might be happening for Armor Core 6 because I actually tweeted Oof. a Steam review of it where people were saying, yeah, I just I just died to the tutorial boss for four <laughs> hours and I can't even refund this game. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. That, that first boss is pretty hard. It teaches you how to play pretty quickly, though. Apparently, well, 20, June 2015 was when they implemented their Steam policy. I don't remember which game kind of prompted that, but acceptance and now a misplaced urge to be responsible. We've attached so many odd values to an insignificant part of playing games the industry has with every breath reinforced and ingrained into the culture of gaming. Got so this is the problem. Uh, did he just include achievements alongside like valueless things that we've attached to, to video games? Because a lot of people see value in them. And to be fair, some of them are really fun. Like I, yeah. yeah, that can be some fun ones. Oh yeah, beating to, to finally be going after that achievement and then to do it and to hear that little plunk yep. <laughs> pop up at the bottom. Yeah. It's one of the most cathartic and satisfying things you'll ever do in your life. I hate that like, I, I just said it. that itself. But well, people downright have fucking nostalgia for that that sound effect now. And it yeah. pops up plunk. in like videos for fun things. Yeah. <laughs> it's playing it's the obligate achievement hunters who are the weird ones. Yeah. Games isn't about increasing our net worth, literally or figuratively. Playing games is supposed to be a relaxing or invigorating experience. No, it isn't. Boring. Um, it's supposed to be whatever the hell the game is. Yeah, to you, so I mean, different thing. yeah. depends on you. I mean, depends on the experience you're looking for, but not yeah. necessarily. I mean, games, he doesn't really want to relax the game with the competitive games. Yeah, he, yeah. Doesn't, he doesn't understand the difference between an investment and a cost. Like you're not investing in a video game, you're but you're buying really. You're you're buying it, and the the value that you get out of it is, did you feel that it justified the cost that you played? Because you're not playing to finish the game and get every achievement. You're playing to own the game and play the game, and well, yeah, uh, be you, The thing is, it's so broad again. Because when I buy, let's just say the newest whatever, pop it in and start playing it. It's like, what are you expecting? It's like, well, I, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I, I guess I hope I'm, I'm engaged. I hope I enjoy this. I hope uh, that maybe I get through enough hours that I can feel that the price was actually not at all a knock to my account at all. I'm like, oh, okay. But what if you don't like it? It's like, 
Well, I mean, you know, I guess I might be able to refund it, or I might go further on my... The, the, the amount of experiences that come out of it, and he's sitting there like, we've cynically, as a capitalistic society, turned video gaming, which is supposed to be a wonderful experience where we, <laughs> you know, have art and humans coexist together in a wonderful equilibrium, but now instead we constantly <laughs> think about our our uh, investment cost portfolio and our network. It's like, what are you talking I mean, you about? Can, you can forge <laughs> out your own right. values in a society that isn't perfect. <laughs> just, well, you can you, do that. You've got some guy who's just like, oh man, I don't know if I should have paid like $20 for this when I've only played it for a couple of hours and I'm bored. And then he's sitting next to you going, this is capitalism that did this. <laughs> like, All right, calm down. I'm just yeah. saying. You know, yeah, I'm just saying I that I should have bought the other game, baby. Yeah, and video games were born in the arcades, which would charge you like 25, 50 cents per life and would purposefully yeah. ki uh, kill you. In fact, even mm -hmm. a lot of arcade games would have, would you take damage by using special abilities? So it isn't a new thing to want money for millions of dollars of R&D and development, you know, and, and actually make profits on your on your entertainment, work of entertainment. It's been that way for a long time. For however long it remains so, if a 200 hour RPG doesn't keep me invested for its entire length, that's fine. Maybe it says something about how I feel towards the game itself, but not me. It doesn't make me that kind of person. Finish what? The, that uh, kind of person? Means you didn't like that game enough to finish it, or you were you're doing the thing that Chad was saying you did with Skyrim, where you you, you play it and you enjoy it when you play it and you kind of don't want to finish it because it's an experience that you sort of want to leave open-ended mm -hmm. or hey you just didn't like the game enough to put the time in to finish it so you moved on you just get bored and move on exactly yeah i, th like, I think one of the even... factors sorry go ahead Mel. these are not questions i'm looking to counter but i guess i have to when he says like this doesn't say anything about me it just says something about me and my relationship with the game it's like that might say something about you it doesn't why are we having these conversations? Like yeah, it's a relation yeah. that reflects upon you kind of implicitly. It doesn't have to be negative or positive or anything. Like what what's happening? Where did this come from? <laughs> like, I thought we were just gonna talk about why you don't yeah. need to complete peer games for reviews. I didn't know we were yeah. gonna be going. Bring back Lewis. Serious. Yeah, Lewis, Lewis was Lewis made me laugh. Like he yeah. had a narrative at one point and he just got off the rails now. Like I don't Lewis know how he's a, gonna tie yeah. all this back in. Yeah, it's he can't really decide whether he wants to criticize the current monetization and the achievement score hunting, that sort of, you know, achievement culture versus peer pressure mm -hmm. versus uh, 90s marketing where it's like, you've got to play this game because you'll be cool like Chris. This, hey, how cool is Chris? He's awesome. He beats mm -hmm. games. You know, it's just yeah. like a really weird jumbled mess. He, he's I'm not exploring not... other perspectives either, just his own. Like everything seems so limited with this guy always. Every aspect of this video. I promise I don't mean this to brag about how cool I am, but I did just finish Baldur's Gate 3, Whoa. and the only reason I played that wow. game... cool guy. The reason I played so it... So cool. Is because Sorry. I saw... <laughs> wow, you're awesome. Cool guy. I saw the video Regs made on Divinity Original Sin 2. I tried to play it twice, and it didn't really pull me in, but I could tell there was something about it that I did really like. So when the early access for Baldur's Gate 3 came out and I was making videos for G&G &G and needed things to play that I could finish relatively quickly, I was like, okay, the first act of an RPG, I could probably do that. Really enjoyed it. And now I, I would honestly consider going back to Divinity because I, I now like Larian's work. I've played one of their games to mm. complete it firsthand. So that's a game that was in my backlog that I could look at as, oh my God, that's a game I just wasted money on. I invested all that time and I didn't even, I didn't even get out of that first beach town but it's like, oh, well, well, no, but clearly, clearly it had some effect on me. And I did want to continue trying to connect with that genre of games. And I just did. So, you know. Right. And you might pick that game up later on, you know, so, yeah, like still have it. finally Complain finish it. Yeah. Finishing a game isn't even important to understanding it. Most of us walk away from playing a video game saying more about how we felt playing it than about the ending itself. And some the fuck Um, doing? I mean, I don't, it, I, I don't know, my dude. Louis. <laughs> do most of us do that? I, I, Did you, I, I, you just made that up? I, it's more so just like, what does this have to do with anything? Yeah, it's yeah it's like, we don't need to finish games. Most of the time we talk about how they made us feel than the end of the game. Yeah. What are you but talking discussions about? Discussions are worthless about them anyway, so why even play them? That's what it sounds like. It's like, okay. What point do you think you're making? This is so fucking weird. It, yes, we have feelings toward the thing, whether or not whether or not we spend 10 seconds or 10 hours with it. Why would you even bring this up? I think yeah. he's just a 
pining. He's just he's kind of just talking about some stuff that he's thinking. <laughs> he's just rattling around it's, in there. It's it's funny how Shad and now Mark have only seen like different parts of the video. But yeah, even with these tiny parts, they can figure out. You didn't yeah. need this full thing. Like you need two minutes of this fool and you can figure it out. <laughs> In, in fact, just... I was watching when I was picking up my dinner or something. Oh, yeah? uh, oh cheater. Cheater. <laughs> <laughs> he talks about, he talks about retail therapy. Oh, sorry. Um, he talks about retail therapy, but it almost seems like this is just his own YouTube therapy, convincing himself that it's okay that he has not finished his entire library. Yeah. Which well, you know, like, it's fine, but... <laughs> I think Free mentioned it. If we weren't in a strictly, like, whether or not, you, you talk about investment, right? And you talk about it from, strictly from a capitalistic point of view. We would have it from a time point of view anyway. Of, like that's, Of course. And so would he just be like, this is the fault of chronolism, this and we need to move of, on from it? Yeah, this is the fault of cause and effect. This is the fault <laughs> we need of to mortality. understand that we can just do anything. Because you're always going to be making trades between the things that you do. Always, even if there's no money, there's time as a as a commodity in and of itself. If you want to put it that way. Mm -hmm. Feel anything? They don't have to. There's no guarantee they will, and finishing them won't change that. Now that we're older, does it really matter if you know every secret or cool fact about a game? Nobody fucking agreed no, with you when you said that already. Guys, now that we've come to be older in the past 10 minutes, don't you think that we've, we've figured out we don't need every secret? It's like, what? Yeah. 10 minutes or ago, I looked at like rags an and I said, what a fucking fool. Cool. Eight year old cool. and correcting someone on some anecdotal piece of trivia, not the most annoying thing to do in the world. No, this video is what? one of the more annoying things in the world, but that's... this is. Why are you annoying. venting now? I, I like that he's just like, uh, assume that we agree. It's like, not that we agree that Saren did nothing wrong. Can we go, Can we all just move on and cool. say that? <laughs> On what uh, on Theo just said, it's like, isn't it evident that he had a video on Sonic and someone in the comments said, you know what you said, fun piece of trivia for you, you were actually wrong about that piece of trivia, it turns out it's not <laughs> Sonic, it was Shadow that did that in the bubble, and he's just like, <laughs> fucking asshole. What, what, do you get meaning out of doing that to people, correcting them, is that it? Well, you yes, fuck. I do, so... <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, yeah, it's just like, I'm okay, sorry like, your review was shitty. Something. <laughs> it's just like the Sterling video. It's just fucking defensive bitterness. It's like, let yeah. me be wrong. It's like, yeah, I, I am letting you be I, wrong. I'm correcting you. Be wrong in the yeah. privacy of your own house and don't drag us into <laughs> You're the one who made the decision to be wrong on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. The Sterling it... video was especially just like, yeah, let me be wrong and don't be bitter about it. Or also, I'll play more of your games and rate them lower. By the way, <laughs> this game that you don't like is much better than the games you do like. Ha. Huh? <laughs> right, don't say stupid things publicly. It just comes. Don't make back. me play the game more. Or I'll get more familiar with it, and you wouldn't like that. Yeah, so <laughs> number might go downer. It's so hard for some yeah. people to understand that when you say objectionable things online, people object. Mm, like I don't yeah. understand. Nuts. Easy to have a conversation with our friends about games, despite the disparity in our play times. Haven't you wanted I mean... to suck? That's it was never hard. Still stuck on that. He's still stuck on that. Because... This is the root of his all his issues. He like, went through a lot, dude, okay? He went through a lot. <laughs> Someone in the mouth for invalidating you based on how much time you've wait, put into what? something? Wait, okay, wait, what? yeah, let's go back that? there. Hang on, what? hang on a minute. It's easy to have a conversation with our friends about games despite the disparity in our playtimes. Haven't you wanted to suck someone in the mouth for invalidating you oh, based suck. on how much time you've put into something? Like, I'm not, no, I thought he said suck someone yeah, in the I mouth. Yeah, we all did. I think we all did. <laughs> like, oh, wrong suck vowel. Suck someone in the mouth. <laughs> Wait, so, yeah, his statement is, haven't you ever wanted to sock someone in the mouth because they've invalidated yeah. your experience based on your play time? It's like, well, were they right? Well, yeah. Also, <laughs> even if they were, no. I wouldn't, I didn't. Yeah, don't that's, never, that's never that's made never me want to suck someone them in the mouth. Video game. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. I want to punch like murderers and rapists, not people who talk bad about <laughs> video games. Okay, I would give him like a, a quarter point though that he is actually showing punching while he's saying that. Yeah, that good for him. Put has been very purely irrelevant. incidental. Yeah. When you get a oh, comment wow. that says, "I don't care what your opinion is because you've only put ten hours into Zelda," I'd probably be like, "Yeah, that could be fair." <laughs> like, well, and then yeah, he's like, like, "Wow, I just want to fucking punch them." I'm like, dude. Unless you should, uh, you make, <laughs> it's then on Jim though to make a compelling argument as to why his ten hours in Zelda gave him a reason that he feels he can argue his position over people who have put fifty hours into the game. Because I don't necessarily think that if you haven't put as much time in as like I haven't put as much time into Overwatch as some of the people that have been playing Overwatch since the day it came out. But I think I can still give some thoughts on Overwatch and what I liked about it and didn't like. 
and I can justify yeah. that with things that are in the game because I I played it. You know, like I'm not. I might I'm not have valid things it. to say with one second in the game. It's yeah, just I've the... never played. I've never played yeah. Overwatch, but just from someone who's played, you know, first person shooters, give me like thirty seconds in the game, and I could probably come to some type of opinion and like have yeah. something to say about it. it. Doesn't mean I'm gonna be, you know, have this extensive knowledge on the game, but you can still like bring something to the table. Well, yeah, you know, people you will do this quickly. To you well, forever. the journey to the journey to two hundred hours begins with the first thirty minutes. That's true, yeah. and uh, not only would it be like a essentially a fallacy oh, of some kind <laughs> to be like, you shouldn't be talking on this because you don't have enough time. It would also be a fallacy to be like, my opinion's better than yours because I've got more time in the game. It's like, no, it's going to be about what you guys actually said and how accurate it is. Just like we've been advocating since fucking second one of the previous video, and so that's just all people care about: be accurate. The reason, the reason I used Overwatch as an example is because a few years ago, IGN famously did a re-review of Overwatch that was a 10 out of 10, and it was written by a person who was clearly an Overwatch fanboy. So I was just <laughs> like, guys, like you just you just let an Overwatch super fan decide to put another number on the game three years later. Like, what's why? How is this? How is this content? Do they even justify the numbers, like some type of criteria or anything? Because it just gets people riled up when you throw a random big number up there. Well, By the end it, of it, his his summation, like I do, I, I don't remember it word for word, but in like the the abstract on it is, he's like, well, while Overwatch has a significant amount of problems, some of which still haven't been fixed since the first year, I right. just I just am so overwhelmed with how much love and and amazing happiness I've experienced in this community and playing this, and I'm just like, dude. Right there, he's done. <laughs> Skip over right, to problems yeah. and tell me about how you feel. Are you right. not even pretending to be serious? Yeah. Aren't we fully aware we'll never be able to play every game in existence and lead healthy, functional lives at the genius? Nobody wants you to Damn, finish that's every crazy. single game. Do you like how he, he qualified it, by the way? We couldn't possibly play all the video games and be healthy. It's like, no, we just couldn't <laughs> play all the video games. You could have just stopped there. <laughs> it's not possible. It's not possible. So yeah, many, why is this being presented as like the conclusion to be drawn from this big essay? <laughs> Rambling uh, bunch you know, of nonsense. We, we, we don't have to play every video game ever made. Haven't you ever thought about that, guys? No. What's actually cool about the, sh the sheer amount of games now, you can actually kind of just focus on your niche. What if you like very, very specific types of games? Now you've got more of them, so you can actually just focus on the games you like the most. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's such a wide variety of experiences on offer. You can always find something that you're interested in on mm, the yeah. sorts of things that you want to spend your time on. This Kinda... is the revelation, you guys, after having considered for a long time that maybe he does need to play every video game ever made. Remember when um, he mentioned <laughs> Jesus Christ back then? Didn't he? Is this the video that he mentioned Jesus Christ earlier on? Like where he's talking about video games and his friends? Yeah, he said you'd be seen yeah, as like, yeah. the God of Olympus God sort of things. It, it feels like it was fucking three days ago, but uh, yeah. <laughs> See, that was he hasn't made video, a point yeah. since then, too. That's the craziest thing. Well, doesn't it's it feel ever. like uh, you make all of these crazy different points and then you're trying to tie it all up and you say the most agreeable possible statement in the world. Let's agree, guys. You can't play all the video games. And then as he was writing it, he was like, oh, fuck, what if you could? Uh, uh, you can't do it in a healthy way. There we go. You can, everyone can agree with this, right? Right? It's just like, was that what the video was about? <laughs> like, mm. I didn't catch that. An agreeable this video. video kind of reminds me of the meme where the guy is Walmart. putting a bunch of card cardboard flames around him, and then he's like rolling around in the fetal position, like as if he's, <laughs> oh god, the house is on fire. Like, uh, but I, I don't even want to be like mean because to me, he's just like a seemingly nice insecure guy who's just kind of talking his way through what he's, he's nice feeling stuff. turning he's it into a video out. he's thinking yeah. out loud for sure i want to be yeah. mean. well it's the kind of thing that um i remember thinking this about i forgot what the name of the video is but donkey made a video about how bad like uh reviewers are you know like mainstream ones and it was just like fucking hell i heard all these talking points like all of these better explained 10 years ago by total biscuit what the hell's going on it's like well Cycles, man, and there's people who haven't heard all of those points. There's people who don't even know who Toll Biscuit yeah. is now, and there's people who didn't know he was when he was actually in his prime. So, you know, and you, just, you need to recycle them again because apparently this guy feels like all of this stuff is relatively new. What he's talking about, and we're all sitting here like, what the fuck? There are yeah. people <laughs> starting new gaming channels right now who are researching game analysis and going back and watching Total Biscuit. So, like, how is that different from sourcing a book you read on something? Oh, I Are wish it bad? worked that way. I feel like most people oh, yeah. don't tend to go back to older channels unless they're already familiar with them.
a I lot of people the... just don't research, period. They're just like, yeah. oh, well, stream of consciousness. I'm sure it'll be great. I, I can't see it being impossible, though, that there's a 16-year-old kid that hears about Total Biscuit, gets curious about it, goes back and watches some videos, well, and hey, by the time he's 19, he has a good gaming channel. If there are any 16- yeah. to 19-year-old gamers in chat right now who have never heard of the name Total Biscuit, go find him and watch all of his yeah. top popular videos about good. gaming. And if there are any 16 to 17 year old gamers in the chat, this is in a chat for adults, <laughs> just to be clear. Yeah, I, I I'll go to a bit what I just it. said to actually, if you're any age, check him out. He's awesome. Yeah. No, he's, he's great. Yeah, he's yeah. actually my, my number one inspiration for starting a channel. He was, he's awesome. I actually got to meet him in person briefly at a, after a panel. Super cool guy. Um, mm -hmm. Was he but, a biscuit? Uh, just so I. <laughs> He was, no. he was he was he technically was totally a biscuit. He was oh. totally a biscuit shad. But remember, I actually, in, uh, I actually... in League of Legends, they added the total biscuit of regeneration. I think right. Yeah, the total Ooh, biscuit yeah. of everlasting. Yeah. Yeah. Those oh, things are Starcraft Two has his voice as an announcer pack. You can buy. Oh yeah, that's right. He's also uh, he plays the mobster in uh, Awesome Knots. He's like you know, Ash, yeah. He? Yeah. 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 I love the co-optional ganger in that game. Like Jesse yeah, Cox plays a character funny. as well. But uh, no, no, I I would love for gaming discourse to take a couple lessons from Total Biscuit, maybe not a social media, but uh, you know, from his gaming discourse was amazing. He was one of the most. He tried to like self correct. He would he would be responsible with his with what he said. He would try to take his job seriously as an industry professional, which is pretty rare nowadays. He's got so uh, much more integrity. Yeah, he's practically the poster boy for integrity on YouTube. Yep, absolutely. At the same time. So why do we still give so much reverence to such a small part of our hobby which has bred such awful rhetoric? Why do what? we let unethical industry what? practice and child-focused marketing push us to treat every purchase as a lifelong commitment? Nobody does. No Who one does this. you. Just <laughs> screaming into the void. <laughs> lifelong <laughs> purchase, bro. Marketing even. even. Even the like, the hyper-capitalist monsters that just want to turn everything into money would be like, lifelong. I don't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> No, give us, give us eighty dollars now, and then another eighty bucks next year. That's what we want. Why do we stress it? Let it go. Play until you're satisfied, and don't feel bad about not finishing it. It's served its purpose. We've <laughs> forgotten the primary purpose of playing games. Is I can't wait for you to what? tell yes, me what. Tell me, you <laughs> fucking dad. Yes. I know what this is. You know, after all this video, I have no idea what he's gonna say. This is how little it I probably won't play even... games. Because I feel like when people say that, they don't even say something really agreeable like, you know, having fun or, you know, socializing with your friends or something where it's like, okay, not necessarily, but that doesn't make me angry that you said it. But a lot of the yeah. times they say right. something where it's like, oh, you made me angry. This would, as you just said, there are easy answers. If he goes with fun, I'll let it pass. But let's see I'm... what he does. ...to play them. It's not yeah. to subscribe to a fictional world for the rest of our lives. It doesn't come with the price tag of needing to interact with every piece of media it's related to. Another industry practice, great for quantity. That's the point. This one coming what's from. The, what's the reason? <laughs> yeah, now, now he's talking about how yeah. when you buy it, you get compelled to consume third party stuff. It's like, well, you know, the most common reason you do that is because you're super invested in the fucking world to begin with. Yeah. I was actually talking about this on um, Friday Night Tights about how, you know, back in the day, Star Wars was so fucking, you know, engaging and top notch that people would be like, I wanna I wanna play games related to this. I wanna read books related to this, comic the books. Lord of the Rings that. games. Yeah, Lord of the Rings has the same thing. The These days epic. though, be like, do you wanna see Ray in a video game? It's like, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> see who? I don't wanna see Ray anywhere. <laughs> I wanna see on our poster. No uh, lucky few, she's getting a movie. That that'll have a game, surely. I think even Daisy Ridley's like I I kind of would like it if I had another big role to be honest if I, if I could pick. <laughs> she's broke. Like what are they gonna do? Her and like Amelia Clark is cursed, and Ray. Or, or she's Daisy gonna Ridley's just make a new Jedi Order. She's gonna train a bunch of Jedi's. It's gonna be great. Uh, Yay! I mean, more I Jedi. Mean, that's, that's just what the Star Wars fandom want to see. That's just what they want to see. <laughs> Honestly, I I Ray and Finn deserve some type of redemption but disney just doesn't have the talent to do it they if they they haven't learned anything from that so i have no faith in that movie at all nah yeah no i don't want to see finn or ray anymore they had their three see, movies. i don't want to see star war anymore i don't want to see the away. star wars the star war needs to end <laughs> and for season three when we need to have peace give peace a chance and we'll just have star wars i want to see star peace Ahsoka's yes. going to suck so bad that they're going to not make Andor Season 2. Andor's going to be the one that suffers. Well, Andor already I, suffered. I'm pretty sure it got uh, scuttled down it, from... 
Like was it gonna be five seasons at one point? Is it gonna be five to two? I think it was at least three, and now it's two. Yeah. How many people said they didn't watch it because of Kenobi and Boba Fett? Yeah, that combo right there was. It only makes sense. It should have come out after Rogue One. That would have been fine. Would have been. Yeah, when people can remember who this guy is. (laughs) Yeah. Hey man, EFAP community, start telling people to watch Andor. If There's we only so up, much we can do, okay? Yeah, <laughs> that show has had some really, really good word of mouth, like in general around the internet, from what I've people seen. People tried. So that's yeah. Good. yeah, yeah, because like the biggest word of mouth project seemed to be like Squid Game, Arcane, Andor to an extent. Like it does mm-hmm. work somewhat, but it can't. It can't yeah. survive if it's just Don't word of mouth. The, yeah. the biggest problem I find with Endor is that you have to get through this sludge known as Disney Plus to get to it. Like yeah. we've heard so many bad things about how you know they they take a movie down, their own Disney Plus original movie down after three months. They take their own Disney Plus shows down after five months, and then and ninety percent of the new original content is garbage. And you like you dig through this sludge and you get to like one or two decent <laughs> pieces of media and and you, they don't do any physical releases on any of their content like yeah. i would love to buy and or i'd buy and or tomorrow but I a can't. friend of mine a friend of mine who who i do some screen with the AJ, AJ. he he has and or on blu-ray that he got in an asian mall that you know, like they did a really <laughs> good transfer of it it's, it's in a steel book it's like legit and i was like what where do you like i'll buy that right now he's like no nah. he's like you can't and it's like it's just <laughs> it's <a fun laughs> mall. Yeah, Pacific Mall type deal. Oh, oh, wait, are you from Toronto? I was like, wait a minute. This guy said Asian Mall. This guy's got to be talking about P Mall. I don't care where you are in the world. I heard you on the podcast. Yeah, yeah Toronto. Like you were from Toronto. I just didn't want yeah, to yeah. say it. I said it no, about I, I knew. I, 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 I thought. <laughs> yeah, no, I, was, I, I remember that one of you was Canadian, but I, I couldn't remember who it was exactly. As soon as That's you said uh, the Asian Mall, I'm like, he's got to be talking about P Mall. Yeah, I'm in Toronto. I'm Canadian as well. Yeah, John's Ooh, in hello there. <laughs> BC. I'm from America. I'm yeah. Not. I'll I'll buy the uh the back alley uh, version of uh of Andor and then just like track down the writer and just like slip a twenty into his pocket. It's like here you go, buddy. Good job. I just want to back up what Mark was saying. You could find anything at that mall. Like yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's incredible. I, I think it would be kind of crazy though if Netflix did uh, like a physical Blu-ray of Arcane and and uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners and mm-hmm. Disney Plus did oh, that'd a be awesome. of Andor or something it's something that make it expensive make it only for people who want to get it and just see how it does because I feel like if a lot of people end up buying it you might be like oh maybe that's one of the things that they watch which they, they should care they should about. test that out with Arcane Arcane is the one that's yeah. worth the risk make yeah, it proper give them a nice box set yeah. and like the real fans will come. Hmm content related to something you like, but built entirely on strategies (laughs) to drive invested players towards being guaranteed buyers. We're cautious of spoilers for games we picked up once months ago, played for two hours, and keep telling ourselves we'll go back to someday. As if we (laughs) owe it to ourselves to avoid being part of the community around those games until we- No, why why can't you have a single good faith interpretation of any of these things happening? (laughs) I was just thinking the same thing. It's the same thing over and over again. It's never elaborating a point. Because that that conversation comes up all the time. When someone says, like, blah, 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 and you go, whoa, you just spoiled the end of RDR2, I haven't played it yet. And it's just like, well, you should have played it by now. And then there's a bit of a back and forth. And the ultimate thing is just like, yeah, probably. I probably should have played it by now. But I'd appreciate it if you can find a way to make your point without mentioning the spoiler. And then the other person's like, yeah, sure, okay, fine. Like, well, I mean, genius like... combine this notion with the notion of backlogs, and that's more lost purchases of games than what? anything being like guaranteed from having people get into on the ground floor, as it were. But also, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a prequel. It's, it's not even, I just, what he's saying is like, oh, your obsession with spoilers is like, making you stay out of the cultural conversation for no reason at all and it's like maybe i fucking like it when i get surprised leave me alone jeez yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> well, like you know john, john marson lives spoilers for red dead redemption 2 wow no. about <laughs> it more. and in the same breath we stress how important it is not to gatekeep each other no matter how comprehensively we know a specific people no you can gatekeep no no gatekeep <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> okay it just please depends. gatekeep Please don't yeah, the fuck out of the things you love. Piece of media. Listen to how silly we sound. We can't talk oh, about um, Speak to you for yourself. <laughs> Hi. Every time. I'm sounding very silly. About something or look at anything about it because we played it a couple times and really want to try it again someday. And even though we're super interested but don't have the time or really the desire to go back to it at the moment, we won't let ourselves indulge in said thing in other ways we want to right now. That, I don't. Anyone want to decide I'm for that so one? So lost. Yeah. Uh, I'm no. not very interested in trying to figure it out. 
He doesn't have a point. I said that from four minutes in. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? That was the trauma it's, section. It was so important. It's, it's, it just a, seems to be the, the most idea interesting part. Like, his childhood trauma. Isn't it, isn't it lame that I feel the yeah. need to hold off on engaging with something to any extent until I, you know, played the game or you know, I guess extend it to watch the movie, read the book, or whatever? But I mean, it's again, that's up to you. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing to try and abstain from as much as possible until you get to play it yourself. Like you said, you know, you don't want to get spoiled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, mm -hmm. this, uh, this video could be titled, um, it makes so much more sense if it was titled Dear Steam Library. <laughs> 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 this is why I can't play all of you. <laughs> Dear Steam uh -huh. Library, where do you get off? <laughs> <laughs> What kind of weird, self-inflicted punishment have we invented for ourselves? What exactly are we afraid of? <laughs> Being someone who talks <laughs> about this. It's you! It's this guy! Stop doing this. Stop rejecting in this video. No, no, he's got the collar now. He's popping the collar now. There we go. <laughs> doing some Yakuza cosplay. This is such a... I'm, I'm wow. looking at that, that part. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. curious. curious. Wow. Wow. Leaf. Stop saying we. God, Start saying I. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> there is a lot of we in this, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there is a lot of we in the top left corner as well. In this. <laughs> there is a lot of we in the top left hand corner there. Yeah, exactly. Wow, I can't yeah, believe can't, can't, can't We are that, gamers, man. you guys. We are one. <laughs> we are going to touch a wiener. So gamers <laughs> unite. Gamers rise up. Yep. I, I can't believe that bearded man is, uh, is only thir is 30 years old. I can't believe this. Crazy stuff for the sake of making videos you'd assume i'm acting like i've liberated myself from the clutches of nefarious marketing strategies i don't know maybe a little you sound like you've reached an enlightened level of your life and all you've yeah. said is you know you don't have to play every single game like whoa <laughs> i have no idea what are the point the of these hell? clips and toxic <laughs> he said it's all standing in front of a wall of games not true my need to beat <laughs> games is the worst it's ever been oh can you imagine oh, making a two-hour yes. story analysis of a game and- Maybe all of your analysis is actually detrimental. Maybe you just need to be normal. Not getting to the end. Or if someone in your comments wanted to have a discussion with you and you had to clarify you never finished whatever it was you were talking about. The stigma exists whether or not you adhere to it. And I know plenty of people wait, who won't- so, Wait, hold on. Huh? Can, we, can we rewind like 15 yeah. seconds? It sounds like he we is can. now talking about it in the context of reviews. My need to beat games is the, yeah, the worst point? it's right, ever I mean, been. Can you imagine making a two hour story analysis of a game and not getting to the end? Or if someone in your comments wanted to have yes, a discussion with you and you had to clarify you never finished whatever it was you were talking about? Yeah. So the first thing I just wouldn't do I don't think I would make a story analysis without finishing the story. Oh, I Thank thought he you meant, yeah. have you ever yeah. finished watching, or like, like you watch a two-hour story analysis and you don't finish it? I didn't. I, I thought that's what he meant. I thought he meant the, writing the story. Why analysis. the fuck would that's anyone? Yeah, I, why I, would you analyze a story for two it, hours without yeah. having finished the story? That's weird. Because yeah, he said in the comments, you know, you don't want to engage with something in the comment section of a video, presumably that you've made about you know that game because you you haven't finished it. You don't know everything about it yet. So it does seem like it is about talking about things that you haven't completed. It might Which be, is it, fine. Well, because in their context, that. you could do it, right? Like, you could do a two-hour breakdown yeah. of the two first episodes of Ahsoka, and you'd be like, yeah, but the whole season isn't out yet. And you're like, yeah, I'm analyzing the story yeah. as it is right now. Exactly. Yeah. But if you were if you were to say, like, I played halfway through Bioshock and then did a full a story breakdown, I'd be like, what? What would be the point? <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> like, it might be just a desire to consistently be thought of as a person who knows what's going on and knows everything that's happening in the industry and what the good games are and why they're good and what the bad games are and why they're bad. Well, they that that become posers, man. They, they just, they pretend they've played a whole ton of games that they might've dabbled with. They might've played a demo of, they might've played a beta of, <clears> and then they act like they're an expert on it. And I think that, that, that that's honestly, it's a much bigger problem when a YouTuber does it than when a random person in comments does it. Oh, though. Okay. A I'm real gamer will sniff that shit out in two seconds, though. Like if, the, a real gamer will sniff that out. And I don't know why they would even take that approach. It's just, you lose your credibility instantly. If yep. your video was about why you couldn't keep going, then I would consider that a valid take as well. But if you really wanted to do an invested full breakdown of a story, but you didn't want to consume all of it because you couldn't be asked or something, I'd be like, that's a really strange approach. And then you I, again, it's just don't value you your opinion. Then yeah, I mean, wouldn't people are gonna obviously find you to be 
inaccurate. Obviously, but I feel that your perspective is incomplete, and I mean yeah. they have a reason to because you have incomplete knowledge. And they're that's just like, true. yeah, but it's my perspective regardless. And you're like, okay, but that's their perspective well, again, regardless. You, exactly, you just got to push on ahead regardless. Mm-hmm. You got to truck on and not be too insecure about getting those kinds of responses because you will. You always will. Yeah. Uh, I just, just, sorry, go ahead. Just, no, I was just gonna say this just seems like it's born of being uh, frustrated by being held to a higher standard because you have a megaphone and you're talking about video games, you're going to be held to a higher standard and knowing a lot more about knowing your shit more than the average person who may or may not have played the game. You're now saying I'm an expert. I'm making these long videos and giving reviews that could potentially affect people's purchases. And so people will hold you to a higher standard. This is, this just kind of seems based on, I don't want to have to be held to a higher standard. I want to play a little bit of games and not worry about if I'm a completionist or if I know everything about the game, it just yeah, seems yeah. kind of silly. I, I think it's his internal framing of I'm a video game expert, so people will expect me to be a video game expert. Therefore, I must have the correct opinion and I don't have time to play all the games. So you've just got to deal with the fact that I'm not going to finish these games, but I'm still going to be an expert because I'm well, a video I mean, game expert. <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say the thing that people probably value is not like purported wide sweeping knowledge about absolutely everything, but not very sophisticated knowledge on anything. It seems to me that people really like uh, expertise on specific things, you know, like a focus on a specific genre of game or a specific franchise or, just, you know, just more like limited focus. It seems more valuable to a lot of people yeah. than like, than just being like the I'm the every man with sort of general, well, then general knowledge. Yeah. But like, if you say you got expert knowledge on everything, it's just not, there's not enough time in the day to be an expert on everything. Yeah, and all you really need to do is just be be honest about what your experiences with the games are. So that that's why it often helps okay, if you do, exactly. if you, yeah, if you do make content and you're comfortable with streaming, streaming while you're playing the games that you're covering, I think is it's been helpful for me to be like, okay, I'm going to really commit to getting through this game and, you know, actually forming some opinions that the people who are watching me are going to think of as insightful. And that you can't hide when you're forming those opinions. I mean, as we saw on the, the Ragnarok episode, when you're when you're forming those opinions, people can really see quickly if you you know what you're talking about and you're approaching things in a fair manner and actually focusing on the things you should be focusing on. Because if not, you're just going to sound silly and be like, oh, this game sucks. Or like whining about how hot everything is without using any of your upgrades. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm. So many ways to expose more. yourself. No one would do that. No one that's would do that. No one has madness at the <laughs> utmost degree. The stigma exists whether or not you adhere to it, and I know plenty of people who won't start on a video until they get to the end of the subject matter. The way I play games for videos is the same way I play them for fun. I'd be having this conversation with myself or a friend if YouTube didn't exist. Actually, in the process of making- I can believe that you would talk to yourself about this. Mm -hmm. it's, there's actually some introspection <laughs> possibilities here, talking about how you Ooh. how you felt, how your whole life came together, why you feel traumatized by Lewis. I nearly said Sean for some reason. Sean! Sean! <laughs> Sean! <laughs> How many people? But yeah, Great you know, time. you didn't have to put it in a video. Just saying, I'm just saying it's an option. You know. Making this specific video, I have talked about it with a friend or two. That's actually how I got started. A friend of mine told me I should just write down how I feel about games and then put it online. It's a tough. Oh, your, friend's a, your friend is a not well, a great Rags, friend. Remember, he described <laughs> his friends earlier. They're people who disown him if he doesn't yeah. have the right games. So. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. Shit on them. Your friends are really not good friends. Yeah. His friends <laughs> Imagine the friend was like, hey, dude, record one of your rants and put it, on, put it online. Do it. Yeah, dude, just totally unfiltered. <laughs> no He's like, wow, script, do you think, do you think it's insightful and worthy and, and people would approve him? He's like, yeah. Yeah, 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 I do. We all do. <laughs> You're saying he was peer pressured? He was peer pressured into making this shitty video? <laughs> just like the games is that what you're saying mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know maybe yeah yes yeah press upload after you buy rdr2 coward oh jeez. fun but it's different now that my visibility is approaching a considerable milestone imposter syndrome is kicking it alive i don't want to be kicking it alive kicking it alive know, that's well, an odd that's it. Well, thing the expression is that something is dead. You, you kick it, and then it's like, oh my god, I'm alive. And I'm alive. It. Thanks for kicking me, Doc. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me that he would be, you know, getting senses of imposter syndrome because it seems like this guy has some pretty severe social anxiety that he just, mm -hmm. just 
dealing with him. Well, and his friends were mean to him throughout his whole yeah. life about video games. Mm -hmm. And it does seem that way, yeah. What is imposter syndrome but being afraid that you're a poser? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> off base with my analysis or miss something in my retrospectives. I don't want to end up with the worst take on the internet and get laughed and at yet, behind here we are. <laughs> <laughs> it always comes down yeah. to him being laughed at or like being like exposed or abandoned in some way. Yeah, Mr. Enjoy knows everything, everything for what it is. Don't yeah, take you the, can't you know, enjoy blah, blah, blah. thing. I think yeah. he has just discovered a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, mm. Yeah, it seems like if you don't want to put in the time and effort and the worry of being fact-driven and having all the details, then just fix your format. Do an impressions format or doing, here's yeah. how I feel about this game. This is my ex personal experience with this game. And I don't, and be just self-aware. It's like, yeah, I did not read the wikis. I did not look at, mm. you know, 10,000 hours of gameplay and study every move. I just played the game blind and this is what I felt like it. Let me well, know what you feel in the comments and just like, that's that's your new format because you're not going to put in the time to be exactly fact, factual and specific about everything. And, yeah, and shock we're... horror. Uh, I was just saying, and shock horror, you know, what he could also do, right? If he says something that ends up being embarrassingly wrong, he could just own it and say, oh, I yeah. got that wrong. Uh, you know, thanks for pointing it out. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm glad Strive I know what the great better in the yeah. future. Well, yeah, it's it's yeah, not a the personal format attack it. because you got yeah. something wrong. Yeah, and it's, it's not the fine. end of the world that you get something wrong. Exactly. You, like, you really got to learn to actually Just take that out. on board. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and see it as a valuable character building thing. And uh, it can actually be a tremendous positive by being wrong because it just enables you, you know, now you know how to be more right. And so... Too many people are afraid of it. He doesn't have a normal relationship with video games. We all do, so it's hard to even see his perspective. Like this is it, really it isn't something a normal he's relationship. Yeah. You're right. This this isn't a normal way of, We're of all... like, playing video games or yeah. relating to video games yeah, or art really consumption big. in general. It's just bizarre. It's strange. Yeah. It's weird. It's Everything the... you guys are saying are making sense is making sense. And I'm just thinking, like, if he's listening to this, he wouldn't have it click. Like, he just wouldn't understand what we're saying. This is what we call the. This is the bad friendship meta that we <laughs> Yeah, his, into. his relationship with video games is way too heavily influenced by things beyond the art mm -hmm. itself. It's, yeah, it's, it's also just like know. wanting to have your cake and eat it too. If you're going to do retrospectives, you got to be factual or people are, are people going to call you out on it. Well, yes, you don't, you don't have to like make videos on things, but if you do, like, yeah, you're, you're making arguments, you're putting them out there, you got to expect some pushback. Yeah. Especially if you get things wrong, of course. Like, mm -hmm. you can treat it as much as you want of like, yeah, it's just like me having a conversation with my friends, but it's not because a bunch of people who don't know you, and don't like, they're going to watch it. And that, feelings. I don't, yeah, that, well, they're, they're just not going to be nearly as interested as like your friends are in it. your personal perspective, like how you feel and your history. They're not going to be familiar with that. Like, you're presenting it to strangers. <laughs> of course, they're going to be critical yeah. if they, especially if they don't know all of this. Because, like, if they watch one of your other videos, they're not going to know about all of this, potentially. No. You know, all of this being baked into it about how you had to rent video games and then, it, like, and then Lewis and everything and how it instilled in you this <laughs> desire to... Or maybe he starts every, every video, video with that Lewis game. story. He probably starts every video with the Lewis story. Lewis, Lewis, did this to me. <laughs> Lewis and his uncle. <laughs> the theme of his channel. Lewis I'm starting to wonder about Lewis. Seven Eastern on We've talked UPN. a lot about him. What if he's the hero? What if he was the one that was trying to get this guy on track? And he's just trying <laughs> yeah. to sully his good Lewis name. I think we need to hear Lewis's I've side never of blamed, the story. I've never blamed Lewis on any of this. Lewis is bl the Lewis blame on this guy. Us. But I mean, are we even <laughs> sure that Lewis is real? Or is he just a figment of his imagination? I just, I just, you can make that shit up. Say. There's a channel a called mechanism. Lewis, and this is a video called My Truth. <laughs> <laughs> my side of the story, or my response. It just begins with, you may have heard of a channel and a video called You Don't Need to Finish Game. Oh. <laughs> I do. Oh, and on uh, admitting that you're wrong about something, nobody's going to dislike you for admitting no. that no. you're wrong. In fact, probably the opposite. Yeah. And so, like, doubling down is the worst thing you can do. And that's just no, pure you, ego at work. If you tell me I'm wrong, you're a paid actor. Or <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, in my own face. Huh. I guess it isn't so different after all. I guess the problem's been here since the beginning. What if the thing <laughs> I'm thinking about right now about a specific game, if I vocalize it, what if there's something I missed? What if I that, end up looking happens. silly Dude. for saying it? What if I- Oh no! Oh no. God, your friends will leave you. You're like, yeah, friends. They, yeah. <laughs> You'll you about to find out who your real here. friends are. Yeah. Your dog oh, will leave you. Here. 
and see if any of them compel you and maybe go back and play the game again or don't. That's it. I'm just, ma- I'm just imagining his like dog looking at him. He's like, oh man, those facts are wrong. And just like shaking his head and walking out the door. So like, everybody's disappointed <laughs> <Yeah>. him. <laughs> and it gives me a way to avoid that. Everything needs to be perfect. I can't join the discussion if I'm not done yet. I'm not valid until I finish it. Uh, I'm not well, afraid of getting a the factoid incorrect or mistaking what showed up in which game. I was right. I'm scared of being wrong about how I feel. Oh my I think god! To an extent, insane. we're all scared of being wrong about how wow. we feel. Wow! No, oh. it's turning That's it around. Cute. It's coming together at the Ooh. end. It wasn't about how you don't need to be finishing games. You know, it was it, the, the the story was about what you needed, not what you wanted. And what you needed was realizing that. The opinions of others dictate your life. Lewis, he's hovering over you, a specter, <laughs> casting you in shadow, casting, following you, Lewis whispering in your ear about how you're not good enough, how, you, you know, you're inadequate, your perspective is inadequate, you haven't played enough games, and you need to oh, break God. free from Lewis. It's, it's... you got to break free from his hold. I Sorry, I, I want to finally ask, who the fuck is Lewis? I missed oh, it. We can answer that. Uh, this, this is a live image Lewis of Lewis is on everywhere. screen right now. I got him on screen. Lewis there. is Lewis Boom. is nowhere that's... and everywhere. That's Lewis. <laughs> that is what's hovering yeah. over this man right now, traumatizing him since <laughs> childhood, making sure that he has to finish the games or he's not going to be invited to the birthday party. That's it's like get exactly. up from your PC he without having finished the game you're currently game. playing. This, yeah, this is seriously. Was, this, did you get platinum on like Modern Warfare 2? This uh, this photo <laughs> was taken uh, when this this girl got to chapter 19 of this game that said so the final chapter, and she's like, oh, "I'm gonna go out and have some food." And then Lewis was like, "Are you? Is that what you're gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> is that How hungry are you sure really? about that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, sure okay, valid? yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, okay. I hope yeah, nothing sure. bad happens right. on the way to your dumbass restaurant. No, it's true. A lot of people pointing this out. Lewis and ER have never been seen in the same room, so I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> something to think about. That's what ER is up to these days. I, I see. Think. I see. ER's a dirty Lewis. If he if he manages to jump Whoa, on today, we've got to call him Lewis every once in a while. Oh, he doesn't even know. <laughs> he doesn't even know what's coming. <laughs> He's even like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I can imagine like a, a, a Fight Club style ending where, you know, spoilers for Fight Club, you haven't seen it, but... Um, wow, like, spoiling Fight spoilers, Club. Spoilers for Fight wow. Club, what? So, so uh, maybe I shouldn't say, I was just thinking like, you know, it's like, yeah, and then Lewis told me to buy this game. He's like, wait, who's Lewis? There, there's no Lewis in here. It's like, he never existed. And you're like, what? We are all Lewis. Like flashback. <laughs> I hope he didn't make that shit up. <laughs> Lewis is a legend at this point. <laughs> You know what? It's like Socrates. It doesn't even matter if he was a real person. What really matters is the lessons and the ideas and the philosophy mm-hmm. of this person. And, you know, the person doesn't have to be real to really change the world. So you know. maybe it's the ideas and what they represent that's most important. Yeah. Right. Lewis in my and heart, right? the, the trauma yeah. of Lewis transcends that. In my heart, <laughs> Lewis is real and alive and he's out there right now and he agrees with all of us. Mm-hmm. Is Lewis joining the team of philosophers and EFAP uh, histories? <laughs> Because it's kind of funny, right? The one will just be called yeah. Lewis. <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> at, at, the, at the end of the video, it's like, in our in all of our hearts, Lou is. Thank you for watching. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and by the way, hitting this point with 20 seconds left to go, I think Theo said the last two seconds, so you were fucking wrong. Oh, no. The last 20. I was so close. <laughs> miles away. And I don't think we should be. 18 minutes. Oh shit, it was yeah. the last two oh, seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 18 minutes. Theo was Andrew correct. Was count. Oh, I should never have doubted God. Theo's predictive 18 abilities. 18 minutes preamble. <laughs> Your video sucked ass, dude. It, it I, is, don't even know, I don't even know what to say. About it is that. infinitely funny that it's like spends all this time setting up a straw man that nobody ever fucking says just to be like, you don't have to be that way. You're like, yeah, I know. You don't have to be the lowest. You don't have to. It's yeah, not no, your fault. It's not your fault. <laughs> you could you could literally cut this into down to five seconds. You could do the the first time he does like I thought I had to beat every game, but I didn't. Yeah, but I didn't. Didn't. <laughs> just, like, also, yeah. my friends were shit. But that's okay. I mean, it's like that was that was pretty. I was about to say it's fascinating, but I don't know if it crosses that threshold. No, it was fascinating at the beginning. It's mildly interesting. It's interesting. It's not fascinating because, again, it just so much of this just was strange. It was bizarre. That was a very weirdly structured. um, Yeah, that's it. It kept the narrative, the narrative of the trauma and everything, and stuck to that. We could roll with that. But then he just went off the rails with all sorts of. It is intermittently interesting. No, intermittently curious.
Okay, yeah. That's I like it's it's <laughs> few videos ever reach that high accolade to be intermittently <laughs> interesting over a period of 19 minutes. Well, that takes Lord. us to video number three, and I'm rather excited about this one. Oh no. Um <laughs> it's a bit of philosophy, actually. Oh, oh no, yes, really? I love philosophy. <laughs> Oh, That's why I figured, Theo, you might want to stay for this. <laughs> yeah, maybe one, I'll actually. stick around. Okay. Um. Well, so does anyone need to go? Because I got to make room for two more peoples. Two more. Two more. Aye. Um. Does any? Can anyone leave at least temporarily? Because mm -hmm. I think we got Shad for another hour, and yeah. uh, he's probably going to want to at least see a bit of this next one. If you oh, guys all right. temporarily, if need be, like, I'm, this is my only plan for the day, so I'm just playing Armor Core Six and being on EFAP. Oh, well, if I'm... um, if it's all right, Mark, I will totally grab you back in. Just, I would oh, keep yeah. you if we were allowed more than ten, but Discord's a dick. No, no, as Brooks can attest to, we Canadians are very polite. Although we're, we're no. both... hey, hey, Mola, you know, oh, there's a, a, a okay. chat program that allows more than ten. Is Zoom? Oh my God! To be fair, how much to to wait, 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 wait. To, how be, much? Fair, to <laughs> be fair, to Discord, you can get more than ten. You have to be in a server, though. You can't be in a normal yep. call. Yeah. But then all oh, the layouts yeah. don't work. Yeah, the also, layout gets fucked. Yeah. Having more than ten people. In a I know there is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, you know, there's a point there. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, then, if we're ban hammering temporarily, of course, uh, Mister. I'll Mark. I'll take a hit. I'll jump off as well. I'll, I'm, but uh, maybe I'll come in later if you need some. I was going to say you came in a bit yeah, uh, right, late, John. Yeah, so you'd be come back to tomorrow back. and visit Absolutely. us. <laughs> <laughs> I will be doing my best to defeat the clean sweeper, but I beat Balteus. Metal might know what I'm talking about. The clean but, sweeper? Uh, oh, maybe not. I might be ahead of you. That, I, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, the armored core boss. But uh, yeah, this game's game's really good. <laughs> It's it's very yeah. difficult though, but but very good. I mean, anyway, I can I can also make some space. I mean, I'm not doing anything else. How long are you gonna be up for? I don't know, probably another four or five hours. <laughs> we'll try and grab you for a little bit longer for now, then, Mel. I mean, I'll be there. And then you have to get up well. really early to join us, okay? I mean, really I'm early. In, in you have to finish this. Stream. Are you gonna send Lewis otherwise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Say that like Metal he's not you in your know. house right now. Oh shit, Lewis! No, yeah, Lewis is calling from inside the house. I'm just imagining now metal cozy and snug in his bed, and Lewis standing over him, <laughs> staring <laughs> at him, peering into his soul. Did you beat Armored Core Six, yeah. Metal? No, I only did one stream. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, he's coming. Oh, came out yesterday. Stream. Everyone's an ostracizing Metal. You That's couldn't do more than that. You couldn't play Sorry. for every waking hour of your life. You had obligations or other things you wanted to do. Wow, pathetic. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> well, I'll just be here watching always. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my. laughs> Right. All uh, right. I'll hop out now, though. But um, yeah, see you guys again later. And take it easy. Bye. 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 See you later, man. You? See you later. Well, I'll flew right. off then. Or did anybody else leave? I I don't I didn't get who was leaving. Well, uh, one sec, because we're getting we're getting Mr. Sitch in. Uh -huh. right. Oh my god. And I think the plan is to get that Adam guy as well. Oh my goodness. Gross. Oh yeah. Right. But we'll Aren't see. Like I don't know same? if he's around or not. We'll find out from his boyfriend as soon as he comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Join loser. Whoa. That's the nice way of putting it. Uh, the um, nice way, wow. Yeah, you don't you don't want to see me when I'm Lewis. I get real fucking <laughs> <laughs> Um. Uh, all right. Well, we'll give it give it a sec. Oh, does he not know how yeah. Discord works? <laughs> what do you mean you have to know how? Did you get and... other online friends that know? How to oh, you heard me say that he's gay. <laughs> no, <Nah. laughs> like, I won't join. Among Sitch, the highest of accolades. Sitch, is he's Adam waiting on Zoom for an invite. Is Adam on the way <laughs> or nay? That's what I'm looking to find out. Oh, oh wait. Ooh, oh, oh, there he is. Hello. Hello, Hello. Sitch. Is is Adam coming or nay? Hey you. Uh, I mean, I messaged him. He's he's around, so he'll respond. Sitch, to I don't know if you know Sitch, but Mole's yes. been talking a lot of smack about you. He's been saying <gasps> I've that you... heard you talking smack about Zoom. Okay. I know. Yeah, I, well, <laughs> they've been saying that you're like the <laughs> Zoom simp. That you, guys, you know, Zoom is like shit. Zoom is so bad. We were talking really about it to your face. Shit. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I like I like awesome. that Chad here. He's trying to stir the pot. I heard you also oh. smack talk in Zoom. Okay, it's don't try to pretend like you're like the trying to stir it. But uh -huh. okay, 
Zoom oh, is both yeah. good oh, and gay. Oh, there we go. There's my <laughs> official stance, and I'm uh -huh. sticking to it. Uh -huh. Well, right. listen, there's nothing wrong with being gay, so I agree. Oh, a little well, bit of homo okay. in the morning. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Okay, but a little bit of, little bit of anyone love, here you know? still uses Teamspeak once in a, a while. Homo in the morning. That's yeah. one of the big radio shows. Teamspeak, there Teamspeak you go. is like uh, grandpa. I still use it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, grandpa. One of mine has its own server, so we anyone use that uh, that still use AOL Instant Messenger? Oh, obviously every <laughs> day. MSN. Yeah. MSN. In the yeah, old day. Serving as a way of ah, what the fuck? Who's skipping around? Oh, so what happened? The second oh, I was do it. Because it was playing for me, and you guys were all talking a lot. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, I was wondering who's talking about. No, no, not for me. No, <laughs> it was playing on my end. Oh, God, I just saw the this, title this, of the video. That's, yeah, this opening oh, still is already like sending, sending like fight or flight reflexes. We, um, so. we have covered uh, <laughs> Wisecrack in prior uh, E5 episodes. It's never been good. They, they. Mm. They're a special team that makes special. Hey, teams. I'm special it's, it's, because... Wait, wait a minute. Look, it, look at that logo. Is that like a donkey? But also, it's the horse from uh, like it's the knight in chess with bunny ears and a monocle. That's cool. Is that oh, the logo? That's sort of what that's cool. sort of what donkey ears are kind of like. That it's a, a oh yeah, yeah 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 right. That's 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 true. So it's it's a donkey, but it's a knight, and he's wearing a monocle. That's kind mm. of charming. Mm. Why why is crack <laughs> is one of those uh, poorly named channels? Uh, I think. <laughs> The leaf and mm hand -hmm. thing is kind of cool too. Not bad. Um, oh, all right. What the better health logo? Was it? Oh. Yeah. See, sponsored. By, yeah, down there. Mm. It's right next to the wood. The the, the logo. It's very better big. Wise crack edition sponsored by Le uh, better help. I was we about to, to say better help. <laughs> we, we need to we need to call them up after this video. I'm thinking, man, jeez. <laughs> Um, Damn tell, man. tell, uh, little bit Adam to mess me on Discord and then we will cycle if, unless he's busy. This yeah. video is brought to you. Ah. Uh, well play. Are you okay? Unwieldy Did Lewis get you? Playing. But okay, so let me intro this. It's called The Trolley Problem is a Joke. This was made, okay. uh, aware to me by a super chat, actually. They said they released this and I put it on my, I should check this out joke. in the future to see if, uh, blah, blah, and, uh, you know, I don't even want to say anything. I just want to let the video go. It's such a video. <laughs> okay. All this right. video is brought to you by BetterHelp. Should it run now because it's not funny. The, oh is it not god. working? It's going. Oh my god. It's going. Yes, there it goes. Yeah, All right, if it's not working for you, just rejoin. That should fix it. Chocolate donkey. Depending on who you are, oh, the trolley problem is either there we go. It's best now. or worst thought experiment in all of philosophy. For some... I don't even who know says it's how the worst? it would Anyone? have gone Any... that. I didn't know that there was anybody. I didn't know it was a polarizing one in terms of yeah, people considering it, the best or worst. What? This is mental. like once you walk into the philosophy factory and you start <laughs> learning about how thoughts are made, then <laughs> they give you the test and you're like, trolley problem, yay or nay. And if you say nay, they're like, all right, we don't have to bother. You need to do something else. Um, uh, you don't belong here. If I can you know, put it in fine. like really blunt. Yeah, if I can put it in really like simple terms, it's that philosophers are generally these days not convinced that the trolley problem has much explanatory force, but rather it's just an assessment of the persuasive force of a given like ethical idea. Okay. So it's not used for like the resolution of like any ethical issues or ethical dilemmas, partially because it has really low resemblance to real ones that we encounter, but uh, it's just sort of a test of how we think about morality and I what think, is intuitively persuasive. I think we encounter the trolley problem constantly in life. Mm -hmm. Everywhere, yeah, just on a lower scale. The trolley yes. problem oh, yeah. is basically the ontology versus consequentialism. Is it, based, it, yeah. is it action based or outcome based? Yep. And so, yeah, the, the the idea that I could see someone taking issue with it at the fundamental of like, which simplifying it too much, you think you have answers as a result of this, but you don't actually because there's so much more to consider. In which case, I feel like anybody would say, of course, there's no one example of anything that would like fully encompass any kind of deep philosophical question. But at the same time, I don't think the trolley problem is pretending to be anything more than it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, yeah. it's a pretty simple thought experiment, right? It's not like the only thing that can help you guide you through life. Yeah. It's not like, it's you just, know what I mean? It's not the uh, only philosophical principle you need. I guess maybe if he's I'm being, being charitable, he's talking about its use in the field because I'm sure, maybe. as I'm sure you're familiar with, there's so many permutations and people just yes, keep making permutations. Hmm. Well, because the most, the most well known one is the, the doctor, right? Taking organs from one person to save five people yep. as like mm. a, a variation of the or problem like that. The variation where you're on an overpass on the, the same Batman. like trolley situation or with the Batman, Batman and everything. Yeah. Yeah. A sadistic <laughs> choice, Spider Man. Or like one. the variation where you are the one person tied to the tracks and you can somehow make the decision to 
turn the uh, trolley. Oh, I haven't you. heard that one. That's that's. I thought that's an interesting. That was what Brooks just said. I thought you were saying like the Fat Man one, where you 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 can push the Fat Man. I, I thought you said like and your Spider Man. It's like why, 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 why would it matter if I was Spider Man? The comics say you don't kill. You have, you have the Fat Man one, but then you just have the Fat Man, but also Spider Man's there. So you just got to. Just like, wave yeah, it at you. You can do it. You can push the fat guy. The, train tracks by <laughs> <laughs> the one where you're the single individual tied to the tracks is really funny because it really polarizes the question as compared to how it usually goes because mm -hmm. of self preservation in people. Done. It's an incredibly clear way to make the stakes of moral philosophy understandable and practical. For others, it turns ethics into a watered down thought experiment with no basis in reality. Gaining massive popularity with The Good Place, popping up recently in a not With The Good cabin. Place? I thought it was just one of the most well-known. Apparently it yeah, gained popularity recently because it was shown in these TV shows slash movies and it was like, okay, I was guess. It? Okay, really well okay. Known. okay. Uh, yeah, I always I thought, I thought, it, was thought, really it, well I thought known, it was well known. I thought it was well known, yeah. I wasn't but, aware of that. But, yeah, I, you know, I learned. This, there's value in it as well, well beyond just thought experiments. Watching people, I remember, has anyone seen Vsauce's um, take on all of this? Yes. Really, uh, really fucking good videos, and it's not just because of the fact that people have to sort of wrestle with the idea, but that they um they tried to set it up so it it was spontaneous, it was believed by the people participating, but at the same time they had to do precautionary stuff like we could do some serious permanent damage to people if we don't do this carefully, because that's right. That consider the ethics of even conducting the experiment with real people who didn't know. Yeah, and it's uh it, the fascinating part, of course, is watching what people do, and of course, freezing is something that happens for a lot of people, and then. People who would just charge forward and they're like, I know what I have to do. I have to do this. This is what I do. And then some people just stare and they're like, I, I feel like if I touch anything, you know, I might fuck things up worse. So I'm not going to touch anything. The, the, you know, and watching all of that and talking about it, like, this is what I mean. The value of the trolley problem is it, calling it a joke, which is the title of the video, by the way. It's just like, um, I don't know, man. It's a lot to get it out of it. It just makes me think that you're stupid. I, I thought of a one example. I don't know if it really follows in with a trolley problem, but imagine, wasn't it, uh, which flight was it? Which uh, the plane that crashed that was supposed to hit the tw uh, either the Pentagon or the, or the two towers, wasn't that uh, rumored to have been taken down by some of the passengers? Or was that, was that a conspiracy theory? I don't remember. I, the, wait, no are you idea. talking about Flight 93? Was that the one? The the one where yeah, the, the, the passenger pass stormed the cockpit and then it crashed in yeah. the field in uh, Pennsylvania. Right. So if if that's I think I do if, remember that. Yeah. So in that scenario, supposedly from what I remember, what happened is that the passengers heard or somehow understood that these terrorists were going to use the the plane as a weapon, and so they took it upon themselves to redirect the plane into into the ground, basically to prevent potentially worse worse effects now they didn't necessarily have all the information that the trolley problem would have but wouldn't that kind of be a similar scenario a moral scenario where like they can face potential uh like certain death or potential potentially like more damage to other people sure a yeah these, these... are a meaningless death pretty much those are these situations yeah. come up a lot mm -hmm. um yeah like i said in all kinds of different ways it doesn't necessarily have to relate to death but it can relate to harm it can relate to different kinds of harm maybe not even physical but no, it's everywhere, these kinds of choices. I, look how yeah. many things we've discussed, and this guy said like 30 seconds worth of bullshit. It's hey. already like, <laughs> this, this is going to be a great video. Clear. Look at you, pre, prejudging it. You're Lewising it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Serving as a way of understanding Joel's actions in the season finale of The Last of Us, this thought experiment has become one of the biggest examples of philosophy in popular culture. Now, for Joel. those of you who haven't taken Philosophy 101, or for those of you who took it at 9 a.m., the trolley problem is a demonstration of a major philosophical conflict. The one between consequentialist ethics, which aim to maximize pleasure, minimize What's pain, this and prioritize- This is uh, Shyamalan's movie. Uh, yeah, I'll see uh, it, a, a knock yeah, at the door. I forgot its name already. And I covered a knock it on at the door. Channel. I'm knock gonna be the like door, I think. vaguely pernickety right now, but he's conflating consequentialism with utilitarianism. Utilitarianism is a form of consequentialism, so uh, wow. he's kind of correct, but he's not fully called correct. out. I was gonna say, Sitch, you got nothing to say so far? Are you not outraged slash agreeing? Uh, well, we've covered this guy a lot. He's really super woke. I don't know if you did. You guys watch South Park a couple years ago when they had like all the episodes making fun of pajama day and uh like the woke stuff that was going on bring did like he right. this guy did a whole <laughs> series on those south park episodes where he'd watch that and he somehow came to the conclusion that south park is making an anti-capitalist message 
And so it's just like I don't know this. I'm just used to this guy's like stupidity. He's just so overwhelming to me. But I, I don't know that I. I feel like I've never seen a video from. Maybe I have from what like no South Park. Yeah, I've seen you saw those episodes. Did you or did you not? Uh yeah, but I I don't remember watching a video about from this guy like this channel about it. That's all. No, but what do you have to say about Pajama Day? Be moving. You remember like... South Park like having an explicit anti-capitalist message in the last uh, year or so? I I don't remember the episode exactly that you're talking about. Okay, don't worry about it. Wow, South Park episode expert completely fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, though. Why are we even it? here? Yeah, I, thought I found it to be the opposite because there was an episode where Butters like he's trying to get the hot dog stand that Cartman yep. was in working Chicken as a balls. business. Yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Cartman is just like a lazy asshole that doesn't want to do anything, and he's mm -hmm. blaming everyone around him. I mean, it's, it seems to be a pretty pro business pro-capitalist message is putting out. Anyway. Philosophical sorry. conflict. The one between consequentialist ethics, which aim to maximize pleasure, minimize pain, and prioritize actions that help many people over those that benefit just a few. Your family must choose to willingly sacrifice one of the three of you in order to prevent the apocalypse. And deontological ethics, which <laughs> what the prioritizes fuck? more- Yeah, I mean, Damn. that's that movie. We'll see it someday, yeah, that's maybe. That's the plot. <laughs> moral duty on the basis of rational deliberation and is more about universal truths it's than not practical. always rational deliberation that's certainly not the fucking example he's given here <laughs> it was not rational in the last of us applications find someone else there is no one else we didn't tell her we didn't cause her any fear there no. won't be any pain no you take me to her pausing for the sake of copyright yeah right? yeah yes also, everyone can see The Last of Us. It's very good. It is. Remember how when we were watching it when she said we didn't tell her? It's like, okay, cool. Oh, uh -huh, fuck. <laughs> now, now, <laughs> yeah. now, you guys now, were sitting on pins because... and needles on that one, Sultan. <laughs> well, it's yeah. just because now it's like, okay, so, and then Joel, it's all going to play out exactly like the game. Yep, all right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> that music, man. That mm -hmm. music was amazing. In that yeah, it's a great sequence. Where you take me to it right now? There are lots of versions of the problem. Up. But the main gist is something like, imagine there was a trolley headed down a track that was going to hit a uh, bunch of people. And do you we need to could... pause? Is this like a long sequence? The problem of, here is I can't know? tell with his editing whether or not he's covered yeah. it or not. You I'm, know what? I'm I'll pop sure. up the, the protective screen just in case. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Switch it. Have you guys seen The Good Place? Uh, I've seen I've parts seen of it. Two seasons. Yeah. Okay, I, I like it. I don't know. I, uh, I know it's I kind of contentious, it, but... but... Then I stopped, which isn't a great sign when I just... Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, I think I'm done. <laughs> it would only kill one person so basically what's happening you do nothing and I'm lots of people lot. or you switch the tra tracks i'm doing who's shit oh is someone trying to pause somebody sitting on their space to... bar what's going on <laughs> I, I think someone's clicking the screen instead of clicking the button at the bottom no, yeah I click the button it. not the screen the screen is, is a troll <laughs> and i fucking hate it and i hope they fix yeah, it someday that, one that screen is a trap man don't touch it this can whoever is user uf wfa what the fuck's going on on the tracks was your child or your best friend, or yeah, Guy Fieri. Name yourself. In which case, the only ethical thing to do will be to let the crowd die to save the Lord of Flavor. Now, in case you're more of a visual learner, here is an example from The Good Place. I mean, on the one hand, if you I mean, that seems pretty pure, visual to me. What you just presented, yeah, like, that was... yeah. <laughs> it's really yeah. not a hard no, dilemma to present. You, it's yes, so it's true. really oh, simple. It's just not really visual it. aids. And that's oh, the reason why it's so popular is because it's so simple. Oh my yeah. God! I swear who to God, who is doing that? I'm going to kill you. Who is it? I, do who? we need to do? Do we need to do like a pause check? Well, for reference, <laughs> user I, I, I am user Consider. TW. How these I don't know. I'm not user whoever the fuck is messing around. <laughs> user fuckface, find him. How, how come? How, how can you find out what user you are? It has an underlying professional. I'm your user. Why are you? Yeah, you can fill out the name when you go in. It was W F. APS, I think, was the one. No, yeah. Which one are you? All right, let's find out who it is, and we should shame them. The odds of the fucking day being W Faps. W I am H R Y K I. Okay, I name myself. You can click on your little face and name yourself. We don't need to. Oh my god, dude, guys, guys, guys. Apparently, apparently, it was Ma because his controller cable hit his space bar. Damn it! That's hilarious. He tried to blame me. Why did you do this, Mark? <laughs> oh. it's, 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 so, was pressing it's actually Lewis on, I was on, not. on that DM. He's been strangling Mark because he didn't finish Armored Core yet. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, but as we were talking about, why this is popular, it's like, yeah, it's super straightforward to understand, and it just it gets yeah. people the opening level of just thinking about stuff. 
because yep. it yep. might yep. be like yep. i would never kill someone over someone else and then you're like okay but what about the trolley problem and then they're like oh my god what uh, why would Damn you it. Me? the trolley I've... problem and its infinite permutations aren't like the best thing ever for discussing ethics in like a substantive way but they sure give you a good look at your moral intuitions i feel like they, they pry open the, the level one you know they're good for yeah, that yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> God. This problem nice. has recently oh become less speculative and more practical as designers and programmers making yeah even more relevant today than ever. Yeah. Autonomous yeah. vehicles consider now that the how trolleys these are starting to think <laughs> the trolley is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> they have a mind of their own crisis situation. For example, if a self-driving Tesla detects a person at a crosswalk in front of them and determines it doesn't have time, it detects a child and speeds up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It won't feel anything if I'm Make sure it's trying to at least give it a painless death. <laughs> the crazy thing is that that could be computed in there at some point in future. It could be. It's like, if I hit them at 29 miles per hour, then they're going to be crippled and probably bleed out slowly. If I hit them at 60, they'll be instantly killed. It's like, oh, oh. my god. You're right. Oh, no. Stop. Is it better to Ruthless swerve computers. and hit another car, potentially hurting many, or just simply not using real children for this the test? Port? I it's don't know. It's ridiculous. It's There's so, plenty it's of orphans so... out there. It's so PC, are... isn't it? Yeah. This yeah. tip is not based in reality. Soul. We need, yeah. Guys, it sucks to say this, but a self-driving car is definitely going to kill someone at some point because of a programmer's Wikipedia-level understanding of ethics. What? 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 Isn't... Dude, what, what do you mean? Do you what? know that people die not... from just, like... No. It's not the programmers who are going to be making those. They're just going to yeah. put it into the machine. They're not going to be the ones who decide the ethics of the self-driving car. They're going to program its parameters, and what do you want them to do? It'll probably also, yeah. be a lawyer. People, <laughs> people <laughs> die for a hell of a lot less than that already. It, what do you mean? It might be, like, something that actually starts getting legislated. You know, like, what yeah, a self-driving yeah. car must yeah, do. I well, and I no, love that he's, he's saying this as though he has the correct understanding. Uh, He'd know how to program right. them. He'd know what decisions Wikipedia. to make. I've read more than Wikipedia, so yeah. okay. Like, you guys don't know how they program these cars. They have the programmer goes to Wikipedia, he types in trolley problem, <laughs> he copy pastes that into the AI. <laughs> Okay, it's like it's like ChatGPT, and he just puts it on the car. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. the programmer like didn't get any Seriously. guidelines to uh, go by to do that. What does, like, he, what does he want to happen? I don't know. I guess he wants a professor to be programming it. Even though that would I'm probably not... be included in the programming. He wants a professor in every test. Do you think they're probably deliberating over this? Yeah. Because it's an issue they're having to face. Well, this is what yeah. I mean, though. He, he's like pretending as though. You'd, you'd be like, who should I hit? The baby or the two adults? And he'd be like, oh, well, the baby! I, he'd be like, obviously, you should. Wait, hang on. Let me go to Wikipedia. <laughs> 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 yeah, that'd be good. Like, How ugly like is I... the baby? Like, obviously, uh, <laughs> programming and, and stuff and reading cameras and you know, judging distances and using, you know, Z buff or whatever to figure out how close you are to that object versus that object and then detecting faces. That's all extraordinarily complicated and could never be put into, like, Wikipedia, right? But I'm thinking that if there's ever going to be legislation on, on cars like this in terms of what kind of priorities they have, it's probably going to be something similar to was it Asimov's rules for robots where like you cannot ever wow uh, you, you cannot Sorry. ever like harm a person and like you always take people always take priority over objects and so if it was something like that i'm not saying it'll be exactly like that that's kind of you know the but the three rules like an irobot basically well but, Some, but something the, like the that the, so, the problem is that it, it we're past that right with the yeah, self-driving yeah. car the, the, more, the more relevant one would be there's somebody there your car can swerve but that but, might well the trolley problem is past it that's the uh, point yeah, exactly. It's 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 not. It, this is about questions where somebody is going to be harmed no matter what. Who should be mm. saved? Should it be the driver? Should it be the person that you know? Someone other than the driver? Do we make calculations on multiple people potentially being injured versus one people being dead for sure? I felt it's it's part of the problem is that the rules for robotics <laughs> is not very helpful anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, what, it, my favorite trolley problem like is. Is deciding the outcome of hydraulic bomb versus uh, coughing baby or whatever. <laughs> that meme. <laughs> hydraulic bomb. Yeah. It's just uh, such a weird way of uh, framing this because it, it's like as if the yeah. the um, AI engineers are saying, "Well, somebody's got to die." So who are we gonna kill? Wikipedia. Well, like, well, no, no. The... the the idea is you stop the fucking car if anybody's like yeah. at risk. And then like... that's what I was about to that's what I was about to say. Like, I think the only priority would be to prevent any. To, to prevent yeah. as much damage as well, possible and to not endanger any more 
uh, subjects as possible. So like if you, I, if, it yeah, if it detected a car to the right, it could not proactively try to swerve into the car to the right. It could not endanger any more than what is already yeah. in danger. It would slam but, on the brakes as hard as it could. Well, yep. no, but the, but the the problem that's being talked about, right, is that somebody is going to get hurt for sure. So who should it be? That's what they're talking about when it comes mm -hmm. to self driving cars. As well, in, if somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to get killed. Does it save the driver? Does it save uh, the pedestrian? Does it save the other person in the car? These are the kind of problems that we'd be talking about. Not like especially no difficult. At all. We're, we're past that point. Especially yeah. difficult because at least in the trolley problem questions, we'll often know a lot about the people. You know, like uh, their age. Usually, their age is appealed to in their number, but in real yeah. life, it's like you're gonna scan the person in front of you and find out if they're of a particular age, and then decide they can die. It's like hmm. exactly mm -hmm. how how is a car gonna make those calculations? And then it would be like, should the principled position be that the car always tries to save you no matter what? Like, is that right. something that people would accept, even if it means that a lot more people get harmed because it's always gonna save you? Is that tenable? So yeah, I don't. Yeah, and, yeah I... and I don't. I don't think that the auto driving car is necessarily a good fit for the trolley problem because it isn't quite as binary. You're not on two rails. You're not guaranteed to kill one or the other. Well, so, mm -hmm. uh, it, real ethical dilemmas are rarely that binary, right? Yeah. 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 Like the, close, yeah, but, the, yeah. Uh, the closest thing I can think of is like a, a, in a non trolley thing would be like um, fictional, obviously, but like at the end of um, the Dark Knight where... Oh uh joker mm -hmm. creates like an artificial trolley problem like you destroy one boat, boat full scene. of civilians or one boat full of of uh prisoners and he also adds another spice to it. it's like if you don't choose you know you cannot be guiltless by uh by an action if they you don't choose i'll up. kill them both yeah so that's like a kind of right. an artificial problem but that's kind of like that i could see somebody really twisted truth doing something like that well also i think but you're I think completely you're... right in real life with the cars they're just going to if if it detects someone like in front of them and it detects cars on either side, it's just going to break. It's not going to try to make some like complicated moral decision about crashing into cars next to it or anything. Yeah, because I, I just don't like understand. I don't, this all just seems so pointless. I don't know why they wouldn't just program the cars to not get into accidents. Yeah, it's dumb. Yeah. So dumb. This is why they need to hire you. Exactly. See, I'm the one who comes. I, it just seems so simple. Yeah, and obvious we don't, we don't to me, need Wikipedia but... Andes. We need rags. We as we saw as well. Yeah. Rags. You see the test rags. footage where they were running over children. They just had fake children. Just make it fake people whenever you bump into them. <laughs> Teach well, cars yes. not to crash. It instantly, it instantly teleports the real person away upon impact and replaces them with a yeah. mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> Problem <laughs> solved. It's a ninja vanish. Ninjutsu, yeah. <laughs> Poof. Um, also, Adam is ready to come in. Oh talking, my goodness! Which means fine. another contestant must be hammered in the face. Fine, wow. I get the message. It's fine. I'm leaving. God, no. Goodbye. I'm gonna hide from Wait, Lewis. Who? You want <laughs> Lewis? Um, <laughs> Lewis will find me. You want to come back later, or are you gonna go to sleep because it is like getting close to I... that time, isn't it? I don't know. Oh, wow, are you his mother? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, Just five more minutes, Just five more minutes. Rags, minutes. the reason I wanted to go to sleep is so you can come back in the morning. <gasps> wow. The thing is, everyone oh, else, oh, no. those are the hours where ahead. nobody will be around, okay? Wow. Oh, no. Filling in for the, uh, the... Yeah, no, I'm probably going to be back tomorrow, so uh, you can you can do... You can have all those fake uh, times that can come in now, and I'm going to steal all the glory tomorrow when I'm back. Oh. All right, well, I'll see you there then, mate. It's been fun. Too. All right. Of course. See you later, dude. Good Good see you later, later, man. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Peace. Peace. A side note, uh, there's a great, uh, really fun board game, uh, card game, actually, by the guys who created Cyanide and Happiness, if you're familiar with that comic. Literally yeah, called, literally hazard. based on, like, uh, yeah, they've been joking hazard, but they also made a trolley game where literally you, you create two tracks, and oh, there's, like, and you have to, like, choose, like, okay, you could either save your, your, your truest love or kill the next Hitler, or and then you add like you know. Oh, also there's like a, a bunch of orphans and a bunch of zombies who will attack you if you don't kill them. And there's like you just keep on adding more and more stuff. It's actually pretty mm -hmm. pretty fun, and it's Had, obviously not like very cool. Or something <laughs> like how do you uh, basically, win? Basically, uh, the, there's a trolley operator, and he has uh -huh. to he or she has to decide who to kill, <laughs> and everyone else is arguing on their side. Like, oh, kill the other guys, kill the other guys. You don't want to kill uh -huh. your puppy, right? It's, it's really funny. You should check. Oh, it out. that actually sounds awesome. You should do it on yeah. stream. That'd be a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, it's a shame it's a... that the trolley problem is a joke, and we would be <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're not there yet. Yeah, he hasn't said God. that. It's just in the title. So know, far, it is just I'm the title. I'm using meta yeah. knowledge. <laughs> meta gaming. can peer into the future. Yeah, I was about to say, you come back Recipe. in time. One who pees is a peer.
hitting that for a second. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, but should a classroom example be used to solve what actual an problems? Anatomy of the frog. What, what's going <laughs> no, on? Yeah, anatomy of the frog. <laughs> Stuck with okay. it. Oh, no, I don't like legs. Because I, I got that pit drop there, and it looks like it's a, a power lifter. It's, it's belly cut open. I don't like that. It's just a diagram, Frangy. It's not yeah, actually it's not real. It can't hit you. But yeah, it's, it's just a picture. Yeah, it's just. But... It's just fictional. It's not really a frog. They, dude, it's so fucked up. They have human skeletons in these classrooms yeah. just, just strewn Where? around. This stock footage is bizarre. Look at the That's teacher. So I don't believe he's a teacher. No teacher looks like that. And then you have four of these clearly adults who are in this yeah, classroom yes. <laughs> learning about the anatomy of, a, of the frog on these desks that are like um, these I wooden old like, well, this, this could be a university, but I don't like a university with these kinds of desks. Like, okay. and, and they're, oh. all, they're all women. Hey, there's only four. Yeah, with that. It could be more than okay. that. I don't know. It's and just. Why? Do you hate it's women now? Four. Yeah. Well, I mean, not now. I always always did, but I don't know why. You, know, you just. It's just, it's strange to me that you well, could have chosen four of anybody, and they happen to well, at least to the stream. Smile, so you know. Adam. Brandon, uh, hi. How you doing? Am I late? What's We're learning about not, frogs. We're right? talking about We're the trolley about... problem. The yeah. frog and trolley problems. I mean, oh, frogs nice. and the trolley problem. Frogs you, boiling. You'll love it's it. It's always about the frogs bowling, is boiling, isn't it? Nope. No, bowling. It's about yeah. them going bowling and having Ooh, a yep. fun time. <laughs> Take the frog heads bowling. Take them bowling. Alrighty. Oh, I like that. Like a Goes back I know that. You know, like, it's, it's Camper a, Van it's Beethoven, right? Frogs. That's it's right. Like, Look at you go. Look at that. Right. Wow. Now, now, now we're, we're going to a new idea. The new idea is it's a show about uh, uh, four frogs who are friends and they're bowling. <laughs> I have um, a little bowling club, and they're part of a this, league, and over the course of the season, comedy. we learn a little bit about these oh guys' lives, and we learn about their lives only when they congregate to, to do bowling, and they occasionally have adventures in the bowling alley. This can is, one of them... This is the can one of so them be called... Uh, adventures you have in a bowling alley? Can one well, of them be sorry? called... Uh, oh, sorry, I'm cutting off people. Sorry. No. Well, it's, it's just now... now Because I, I think, Rags, did you say there's not many adventures you could have in the bowling alley? Well, I said, no, no, I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said there's not many adventures well, that you do have in a bowling alley. Well, here's the thing. What if the wrong bowling, alley? bowling alleys do you go to? What if, yeah. what if the bowling Bowl alley? Okay, listen. Bowling right, isn't right, an adventure. No, 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 no. I mean, um, but, in this in this case it is, and also the bowling alley. <laughs> oh, in this case it is. There we go. <laughs> Boom. The bowling alley is a gateway to another dimension. The bowling alley. Uh, oh whole shit! Of, yeah, there's a whole bunch of crazy adventures that happen in this. There's a Narnia alley. in the oh, back of the. Right. Well, if you're a frog. Oh, now. Yeah, like the, no, the frog gets pulled a into a alley. portal, and he says, "Oh no, a Narnia!" Oh, 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 oh like no, fringy, uh, fringy, like, fringy. You know how the every bowling alley has Daytona, like the the Daytona arcade game. You could have like fictional, you know, time uh, video games and stuff like, and time crisis and stuff like that that sort of act as gateways to these crazy new realms. And this is all happening while they're just doing their oh, bowling. Fringy, I think you're missing. I, I think that what, what we I'm need missing? to do instead Please was instead of having the arcade machines be the gateways, you know, those freaky, weird ass animations they play <laughs> on the bowling screens <laughs> oh, yes! from when you get like strikes and oh, splits. That, uh, those are what, places well, that you can go to. Rags, My it feels God. like they're treading a little bit on um on Meat Canyon because he did that for one of his. Oh, did he? Or, yeah, where oh. where uh there were the these crazy you, like the the shitty sort of pixel like three D renders, just the weird out, ones, yeah. And uh and they were sentient, and then uh the character I can't remember his name. But what's the character's name? God damn it, help me out here. Someone in chat has to know. It's uh Melvin? Of... Yeah, that's right. Brother that's of the name, Joker? Right? Macabre, Macabre Melvin or whatever his name is. Yeah. Melvin Macabre. Or... Like that. So Macabre. we don't want to step on its toes to I will say I, I kinda like this concept of <laughs> a bowling alley that has all of these adventures going on. Or it could just be more mundane. It could just be you know, they talk what? about life. I don't know. There's a certain mundanity to a bowling alley that's really appealing because it's just we, yeah. you go to a bowling alley and when you go to a bowling alley, you know exactly what to expect. There's going to be bowling lanes. You're going to go there. You're going to get your special magical bowling shoes on. And maybe maybe you can get some cheapo like fast foody kind of stuff like you're at the ballpark and people mm -hmm. will chat. Maybe you can get a beer or whatever. Very mundane. You know exactly what to expect. But that's where they get you. You don't know what to expect from this bowling alley. Okay, I do they, like uh... the idea, Rags, of you have to get a certain uh, score 
to get the right animation to hop into a different dimension. Oh yeah. So or like, like, certain, like you're getting uh, chased by like monsters minutes. or something, and you're like, you gotta hit the split to get the right animation uh, to get us uh, out. Uh, of that, here. That'd be that would be really <laughs> funny actually if they did it, and then they bowled it, and they thought it was a strike. It was like strike. This will get us to like I don't know, like a wonderful paradise. It's somewhere and then the thing awful. Doesn't fall over. Yes. Oh shit! It's nine. It's fucking nine. <laughs> they get dragged yeah, into exactly. this crazy. <laughs> also, I, you know what? I need to write this down. This is gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is gold. This is a billion just, dollar I'm not, idea. Yeah, right I'm not even kidding. I'm uh, pulling up Microsoft Word now. Just to and make they're sure also frogs. Because why? Yes, not? The frogs, frogs, frogs in a like... frogs in a bowling alley going on adventures. Adventures mean... every week. Can well, the main character they... be called uh... like the bowling club? Hmm. Uh, I was I was thinking the main character could be called Nico, and you could call it Nico. Let's go bowling. Oh, one well, could no, one could be named wanna, Nico as a reference. On. But... I don't want to try to no. There's a guy who works there called Nico. He works okay, there, you there go. and he's that's, that's a good the... enough reference. He's yeah. We don't want, we don't want to tread on GTA sh shoes too much with this concept. <laughs> anyway, we have keep like going a long with this name, video. like that's, the that's fabulous okay. adventures of Frogaton J Frog. Is everyone in this I'll, world I'll an anthropomorphic animal, so or is are they just frogs uh, in a human world? I like the idea of them just being frogs in a human world, and nobody really cares. Nobody minds. <laughs> It's so. Oh, it's maybe it's a little bit absurdist. Like um, it's a little absurdist. Like well, Xavier, yeah. renegade angel. Oh, backstory. Like you found out that they actually came originally from one of the alternate bowling dimensions. That's what bowling is. All they know, <laughs> right? Maybe. <Yes. laughs> well, maybe. Maybe well, I'll put a question mark on that. Anyway, I don't want to delay us too much because we, oh we yeah, of course of, this video is way more interesting. We yeah, get, we should uh, go back to it. We get Adam caught up. Adam, you love Wisecrack. I've heard favorite channel. Oh yeah, this Kami. Yeah, he's the best. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> well, we're listening to him talk about the trolley problem, okay? And he hasn't really said anything yet, so you, you've not missed much other than establishing okay, it. Okay, good. Programmers, Wikipedia. I know. Look, level the trolley. Understand. Everyone knows the trolley problem. Who needs to? Establish? Yeah, it's a oh. joke. That's the point of this video, okay. apparently. I don't think it's very okay. funny. No, it's not that funny. It involves death ethics. Let's just sit in that for a sec. Okay, but should a classroom example be used to solve actual problems? That involve actually existing people. Is so that's a really Probab weird question. Probably not, but, well, but no one uses it for that. But the thing is, like, if someone <laughs> was to conclude, you know, you choose the one instead of the five, and thus we will program that into the car. I feel like we've skipped loads of steps here. It's like, whoa, hang mm -hmm. on. And that's not what the trolley problem is meant for. It's just an introduction. You build on it. You change the... It's so yeah. weird to say it like that. Like, should it's a classroom not, example be used for practical? It's like, maybe, well, maybe no, not. It, it depends it, it, on what's going on here. Again, it's it's one, uh, it's one example. You can use other um, thought experiments to help you. This isn't the be all and end all. It's not like, all right, I figured out what I think about the trolley problem. Life figured out. I got it. <laughs> Nailed. I don't yeah. need to read any books. Right. I don't need to think about it anymore. I got it. I figured it out. I mean, what is the point of all the permutations of the trolley problem if not to highlight that the trolley problem isn't the be all and end all? Change one it thing, never, maybe your answer is a little bit different. You never pretended to be, though. That's the kind of defense I want to yeah. make for it. It's like, trolley problem sitting there, this innocent little trolley problem. Like, I'm just an idea. I'm on its own. I'm not saying I'm anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm an idea. idea. And you can't kill me. Have fun talking. Me. Have a little chat yeah. about some little little philosophy. You know, just have some fun with your friends. And he's like, No, yeah. it cannot be done. <laughs> It'd be like saying, also, you know, do you kill the dog or the frog or the dinosaur or the dodo? And you, you you're like, Oh, I guess we could talk about all that. And it's like, dodo. by the way, yeah. you understand that whatever you figure out at oh, the end yeah. of that, there are more animals than those four. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. No. That's, no. Is that how hypotheticals work? I mean, it's just like it's a little bit cringe, but yeah, you know he hasn't it's said a... as much cringe as he could have said by now. So we'll we'll give him a shot. Maybe he's obvious, obvious, on the wise it's obviously scale. it is obviously just a hypothetical limit case meant to provoke a discussion about exactly. morality. I'm so cool. I, yeah. I feel like this guy, his argument is going to be like, well, nobody would actually do this. Put five people on one <laughs> track and one track on. It's like, yeah. I know, you know that. <laughs> well, I mean, you draw it back even further. Why would the trolley problem have even happened? It's like, well, if someone had said, "Would you ever kill a person?" Then someone goes, "No, never." Yeah. You're like, oh, hmm. right. Oh, really? Yeah. And then you start thinking about like, what if, what if this cool. happened? You fall in right And then the genius trap. says, "That would never happen." No, it's the point. Listen, of we need, oh, oh, we need oh, to I ask Wisecrack how he would feel if he hadn't eaten breakfast yesterday. Because I'm uh -oh. not sure he can really answer. Uh -oh. mm. I'd feel uh -oh. breakfastless.
example of what ethics is supposed to do. And can it actually teach us anything about the real world? Let's find out. Well, it this teaches us things about ourselves. Oh, that is the uh, you, that is the base source video. That is the one. Yeah, yeah. Lady. Ready yeah. to kill. Okay, before we get into it, are you ready to kill? I, are you uh, ready to kill? Is a different red, question. That's a bit yes. reductive. Uh, oh wait, <laughs> he's somehow. Uh, I can't believe it. He he made the trolley problem reductive. He. he well, <laughs> Yeah, that's that's strange, right? Because it's the reason why the doctor one is brought up is because it changes things a lot. It goes from like it it goes from a, a very deliberate act that is against you know like the, what's what oh damn it what's the name of the principal the the what's the oath that's, doctor that's cool. one Hippocratic oath yeah, that one um it's you know like it's that's got my all problem of... with doctors they're just a bunch of hypocrites oh my god <laughs> all right we can proceed. i think we're going into an ad by the way <laughs> no. in an ad oh no an ad yeah. video sponsor well what's better it for? if you ah, huh. anxiety you need better help oh just my god if lately. you can't this in the trolley problem. dude this is for the guy from video two <laughs> so <laughs> here's the got tormented by lewis I, I don't know much about BetterHelp, but I don't even know much about the original like controversy. Is it a better service now, or I'm what's, sure what's it's a better oh, service right. now than it was. That, it would yeah. have to be. Well, that, that controversy yeah. was huge. Well, you, you say like that, it. but do they do they just? I'm go willing from, to bet like, on you... it. <laughs> do they just go from? Better? Yeah. Do they just pivot from? Are you ready to kill? You might need better help. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Yeah, I, I am. Also, wait, hang on. <laughs> I said surely it's better. I didn't say it was good. Is it better to kill than not? Muller answers. Is it better at helping. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's it always is better, better to, to kill, kill than not. And I've talked about <laughs> that's this before. A, a but time to kill. So yes. Someone who struggled always. a lot with depression in my life, and going and seeing a therapist has been a really huge help for me. Um, mm, that's great. I kind of wouldn't be at the place that's I great, was today. But look where it brought us. That. So I'm. Still feels weird Two to me that row. this is a uh, sponsor. You know what I mean? Like, I there's something about it yeah. that just feels strange to me. Um, is this the kind of service you... that you want to advertise in a YouTube video? Well, I, think, I, think I feel, feel like so, there's like, a certain you, gravitas. Are you, yeah. are you comfortable with advertising mental health services in a YouTube video? I'm just not yeah, prepared to be able to recommend that. I'm a guy. Yeah, Why well, does this guy feel qualified? I'm just a dude. All the sponsorships. I, I, mm. I, uh, if you listen to his wording clearly, I, I, I couldn't quite hear, but it sounded almost like going to a therapist helped him, but he's not saying he used better help. He's just saying that his therapist that he got through traditional means helped him versus right. better help, which could be anybody. That's and another, no idea. there's a lot of ethical aspects. This was kind of ironic, I guess, considering, which is interesting, considering yeah. the trolley problem is an ethical. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do I, do I make $5,000 on the sponsorship or do I potentially damn people to poor <laughs> mental health? Helps network of more than 20,000 therapists are ready to listen to and help you. Now, after you take a brief questionnaire, they'll match you with a therapist whose expertise fits your needs. Yeah, like, see, even that, you know, model, yeah. you can work like a, with a, a brief questionnaire. Wait, wait. Really? That's you it. want an LGBTQ plus therapist specifically? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess, I mean, yeah, I guess well, so. Well, I, I mean, guess like, I, I don't see a problem. Like, I mean, I don't see, like, if somebody wanted a Christian therapist or like a Hindu I therapist or anything like that. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but okay. I could see why somebody might want to have that option. Yeah. Whether or not it's, it's what's what's good for them is another question. Yeah. Yes. Or, yes, or you know, a seeing point. a man or a woman or, you know. It's been discussed before, right? Like a therapist shouldn't reaffirm you, they should challenge you. More than likely. Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, I mean, right. if you want actual help. Yeah. But hey, it's fucking just... no way I'm getting into talking about what therapy should be. Right. <laughs> like, fuck <Yeah>. that. <laughs> just whose skills might not otherwise be available in your area. You can message them I don't at want any time and you'll receive timely and thoughtful responses. <laughs> Plus, you can schedule your... <laughs> Today was really rough again. It's like, did your friends not play with you again? Because <laughs> you didn't get kids <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I just realized... This is so Did devious. You Nowadays, together? you could just hook this up to chat GPT. Yes, you could. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> Imagine if you found out that your therapist yeah. was a robot. That's oh, no. I mean, Every day. It feels like, really, like a science like, fiction short story, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, okay, but what if it actually ended up yeah, what if it legitimately worked? working what and it works? <laughs> like, would you complain? <laughs> Look well, at her, I think right? Well, we're getting into some real existential kind of questions. Glad you mentioned that movie. Oh, I love her. It's great. I love that movie. Your choice of I, secure phone or video sessions to receive counseling. I'm here to listen. Tell me more about what you're feeling. 
<laughs> and then meanwhile, and in, in, in the inner recesses of, it, of its mind, the AI is. You remember that that bug, that like uh, that beetle and Family Guy that was rubbing his hands together, like good, yeah. good, <laughs> just <laughs> getting all the <laughs> information. The human will never see this coming. Uh, in real like to... time. And in the event that you and your therapist aren't a perfect match, you can easily switch to a new one for no additional charge. Okay. So join more than 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with BetterHelp by visiting BetterHelp.com. Does BetterHelp. this explain a lot about society? Maybe, maybe, maybe. not. I don't know. Wise therapist. Or you can just click the link in the video description. Now when well, you do, no, you'll fine. get 10% off your first month. So that's BetterHelp.com slash Wisecrack. It's like it's pressure to up. use this service because Seriously. it's like you get you like you get a discount if you choose this service. It's like ah, should that be like the reason that you go with one service over the other? It if feels weird. Therapy? Feels I don't weird. Know. The whole thing, right? Of like, yeah, sign up to BetterHelp for the discount for your mental health services. It just seems none of it. Maybe know, the, whole, this is... the whole thing just doesn't yeah. seem. No. Maybe mental health is something you should splurge on a little bit. <laughs> you know? I, I don't know. It's I think it's just the hard thing for me to overcome is the idea of like I make YouTube videos about like films and stuff, and here's my suggestions for like yeah, you know, like a, a service to to get mental health. Like I don't know. It just I don't know. It just seems. How like about explaining why he's qualified for that? Like it's just Wait. it's such a weird thing to be able to do. It. This it's is just not seems... a video about movies, though. This yeah, is a video, video about, about the trolley, trolley problem. problem. It, it okay. is, Are you ready it, to kill? He but, knows deep but, within the recesses of the human mind. Look at his eyes. He's ready to but kill. He, he Look at him. That it was the good place that prompted it and used a bunch. Of, so it feels like it's it's media adjacent, if not directly stemming. Why is crack is media adjacent? Yeah, look at his hat. It says house plants. Okay, is, that, he's, is that like a, he's what's, wise what's the meme there? What is the meme with house plants? I don't, I don't I, get I it. I couldn't tell you the answer. Is it like the house plants are good for your mental health? I was, I was about to, I was about to speculate on what it means, but I actually have no idea. <laughs> like, how do you... I have no he's idea. innocuous as a house plant. I can imagine like the. Uh, like, okay. I can imagine the review is like, yeah, I'm really depressed now, and I'm not, I'm thinking about anything things, but I saved ten percent off oh, my don't first say month, that. so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, back to the show. Yay. Now, some philosophers would end back the video the right now by answering the question, what is the trolley problem good for, with a resounding, absolutely nothing. That's Who? retarded, I'm sorry. Says, who wow. says that? Uh, Anybody, yeah, provide specific. me the names. <laughs> it has, Give me a list. It has, good it has zero value. Zero absolutely value. nothing. Say it again. Really? <laughs> zero it's value. Seen, it's not seen as the most valuable thing, like, of, in the true. field of moral philosophy, I want to state, but... You know? Yeah, he's not framing it in a way where we can actually like understand what he's trying to say. He's just making it seem like nonsense. Well, <laughs> hopefully you'll give us the That's reason why it's worth absolutely like, nothing to some people. Moral philosophy as a field is like past it, if you know what I mean. That that's kind of they're the working reason. on the more complicated stuff. They look at trolley yeah. problem like baby blocks. Yes, which is fine actually in that context. To say honestly. it's nonsense, yeah, that's completely fine. Elaborate. While not speaking on the trolley problem specifically, in his book, Ethics, philosopher Alain Badiou thinks that examples like the trolley problem are excuses to disengage our own subjectivity from the messy actuality of ethics. For him, all ethical what? thinking takes place within a situation. So unless you or someone you know has ever been in a position where they've had to push a fat man off a bridge onto- See, I already knew, because it's not about being in the exact one-to-one -one situation. It's just a thought experiment and it applies to all things in life. It can. Well, now now it, just, now it just makes yeah, me wonder about the nature of this. hypothetical, like, if a hypothetical is not the situation, ever. Like, it's, yeah. you know, when you bring it up and you're just sitting in it comfortably compared to in the actual situation in the heat of the mm -hmm. moment. But, like, there's still, sure, surely that author would agree that, like, there can still be value in pondering a hypothetical, even though you know that it's not the same conditions as in, in the real world. I feel That's like true. I no, we implicitly wrong. accept yeah, that our emotional impulses have some like difference from our moral rationality, right? Of course. Feel, I would argue that hypotheticals like the trolley problem are designed to make like almost two intuitive positions fight each other. Because you might be like, I would yeah. never ever hurt a person. And you're like, not to save that guy? And it's like, I don't know, no. Not to save two of that guy? No. Not to save your son. And the mother's like, oh me? shit. Yeah, it, it forces exactly. you to reassess your position. And like even with it, you know, at as lowest forms, it's still effective. Just yeah. to be able to understand where you stand.
It's like it's yeah, why when you get reformulations, like when you're the single individual tied to the tracks, you'll get people saying things like, I want to believe that I would pull the lever, however yeah, that manifests right. in this scenario. Which, by the way, uh, is my but, conclusion about the trolley problem. I want to believe I'd pull that lever, but I don't know if I'd freeze. But the, fact that, in... yeah. the fact that the question would even evoke the, I want to believe that, is an interesting, that's yeah. interesting in and of itself of recognizing... I want to believe that I'd do something, but I'm not sure that I would. That can yeah. be really useful. There's so much to explore there. To... Exactly. It, that's, it, you're getting at it again. Like What the pro trolley problem is really good for is exploring moral intuitions, and that's what yeah. the reformulations mm -hmm. are all really good at as well. Why do we think, think the way we do about certain things? Why do we intuit certain things as more moral than others? And how do those change when the circumstances change? And how does it change when we think about it a bit more? Yes. You know, like that, that just because it's the first thought that came to your mind doesn't mean that it's necessarily the the right, like that you don't necessarily know where those moral intuitions came from and it can prompt you to explore where they came from and build like a more rigid, a more rigorous um, foundation. Yeah, so I, it, it, this is what I mean. It's a difficult, this is an uphill battle. To well, no, I even already argue, the, even the video useful. itself disproves the idea that the trolley problem is valueless or a joke because of the fact well, that you have to explain all of how it. it's not exactly. worthwhile. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Well, it's, it's weird because it sounds like in the beginning when we were making jokes about like, why aren't they running over real people with cars to test this? It's like, well, no <laughs> it's like these are hypotheticals. Unless you do it in reality, it doesn't matter. It's like, yeah. well, that kind of defeats the point of a <laughs> that's hypothetical. The whole fucking the point, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Just, what's the point of talking about it ever? I don't we're know. Gonna, we're going to go to that extent. Well, listen, I don't want to ad hom Mr. Elaine Babadou here, but he is a big advocate for returning uh, to communism, according to. Oh, I, don't, I, don't, well, so, the thing is, just, I don't know anything about the. I don't know any presumptions about the uh, author because I don't even know if it's being stated accurately. Yeah, you never yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. That's the annoying thing for me is I don't trust Internet Man's recital <laughs> of what philosopher says. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Especially that hat. Where it killed him but stopped a train from going off a cliff, then honestly, who cares? In other words, you can't do ethics hypothetically. And for yeah, what? you can. Literally, you literally can. Definitely you can. Literally like, can. If your only argument is you can't because it's not real, I want to. I just want to kill myself. What like, is ethics? Like, they don't understand like, what hypotheticals are. If like that's the only conclusion. How would he feel if he hadn't eaten breakfast? I can't do it because you it's can't not eat happening. breakfast hypothetically. But like, oh my God. seriously, if he's trying to argue because you wouldn't have the mental state that you would have in the real situation, so you can't actually think about it. It's like, that's so stupid. Of course you can still think about it. Even... And there would be people in real life who, when put in the trolley problem situation, would be like, all right, I'm pulling the lever. I'm doing it. And then they pull it, and then they watch what happens, and they try and own that reality. The fact that that yeah. person exists, mm -hmm. you don't go, well, that was different than thinking about it earlier, wasn't it? You'd be like, yes, it was, but I don't know why you're devaluing the idea of us talking through it and thinking about it. Thinking I would about say it that. can help you. They could have a thought process behind why they pulled the lever and why they didn't. Like, there's so many things that you can explore. Yeah, if you want to erase the idea of the tro uh, trolley problem, the trolley problem could potentially get you mentally ready to think about moral decisions like that. If you just mm -hmm. erase that, yeah. you'd be completely lost. Like, how do I, you know, if I, it, like, for example, I there's mean, something about to hit, you know, a baby versus two older people, you know, or you could argue well, the baby has a whole life ahead of him, the older people are, have lived a full life but it's also two lives versus one you know you thinking well, and arguing about you know whether one's better or worse could kind of prepare you for that moment a little bit at least there are or, so many or, or, or the baby you can look at it this way the baby has zero chance of reacting and defending itself the people even though they're old they might be able to get, get out of the way i'm gonna right. you might end up choosing them just because there's a chance that they will either dodge or survive or you know, just adrenaline will kick in and they'll get out of the way. That's not happening with the baby. You know, you're going to run right over it. Right. That could be their thought process in the heat of the moment. And even that is something you could explore. So it's just well, there's so many ways to do it. It's just crazy. Aren't all ethics taught to us hypothetically through culture? I was about I mean, that's to what, say part that. Part of like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you have to learn like society through movies or people directly <clears throat> telling you this. They they tell you these ethical lessons with the hope that it you know goes down to the children or to the person through culture and then they mm. you you know they're going to do that when they're actually faced with a situation that's the only way to like well, teach they, ethics is hypothetical well, there are, there I feel like the straightforward yeah, way of doing like, this would be like we always have to punish those who murder right and we'll just take a life and you go yeah and you go but what if they did it in self defense and then you're like imagining that and then they go whoa 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 that's worthless cuz that's hypothetical like what? you have to make the decision when the moment comes, not now. Yeah, you can't, you can't do it now. You have to wait. Time. You have to get case studies and then follow <laughs> these actual cases and then go grab. When it's in court and all the laws happening, you just bring in a whole bunch of students and like watch this play out because this is real. We can't do hypotheticals; they're worthless. 
It's just there are so many like philosophical practices that are essentially about trying to prepare yourself for when the real situation arises. Right. Like well, yeah, I mean, like that's like object. the that's like the first day of almost anything, whether it's first aid, whether it's bungee jumping, whether mm -hmm. it's like any practice. You 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 go into a classroom and you learn about things hypothetically, and then There's later on you might go out and do them. I'm it's not, not like, all right, you want to be a brain surgeon? Well, Johnny over here, we gotta you know repair his brain, so you know step up to the plate, Bucko. Like, no, there's probably a bit of learning involved before you start poking around someone's the amount of protex. people who've given up kidneys for family members, how is that not, mm -hmm. like, an exploration of stuff like this? Yeah. It's, it's what I mean. It's like, I find this so weird, this dismissal. I'm gonna ask a strange question that I don't really expect to get an answer to, but does anyone know Kill if this guy is a virtue <laughs> ethicist? I have no idea. I don't know this guy. Either. Okay. He's a communist, I think. What is apparently he's a communist. <laughs> Uh, virtue ethics is more concerned with the content of an individual's character rather than the outward expression of that in actions, because the like underlying point being a good person will do good things, if that makes any sense. And it's about the temperament of your character well, rather than virtue your ethics actions. is your, your boy Aristotle, right? Yep. Yeah. It seems like this guy and is a more um... recent revival as well, but yeah. This guy is either deliberately or not conflating uh, getting to the heart of an issue through a hypothetical with over oversimplifying it, like reducing it. And it's like th they want to just get lost in the weeds and stay there <laughs> rather than, you know, uh, come up with a decision whether or not something's firmly right or wrong. And like to add to what uh, I think Sitch was saying, like a lot of like movies like these are constantly like hypothetical scenarios that are being given to us because fiction does that it sort yeah. of distills real life and then we talk about whether and or not the character of... was virtuous when they did what they did yeah and it presents you with a situation it's like what if this happened to you would you go this way would you go that way what's the right thing and to nobody do? says like yeah but dragons aren't real dude <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah whoops this conversation Sorry. just stops when that happens it's like what do you think that is like just like a pure lack of imagination when they don't want to engage with hypotheticals it like always felt like the brain's like walking reaction. off because it makes them uncomfortable, yeah. and so they'll find any straw to grab. <laughs> That's what I'm describing. I feel like there's some knee-jerk reaction where they just shut down. But what is it? Like, do you do you not have the creativity in your head to like be able well, to the, picture it, this? Or do you just not want to? Like, the way out that for some reason people don't like taking, but it's right there, is to say, no, I'm not sure. I have to think about that. It's just, I don't hmm, know. That's is a very That's all they have to say. Fine answer. All they got to say is interesting, you know. And then, yeah, instead they choose this they, they pick a line in the sand i don't know what, your hypothetical so is good because it wouldn't happen yeah that mm -hmm. would never happen dragons aren't real like that type of shit is like so Allegedly. brain numbing. it's so annoying when people don't want to engage with a hypothetical yeah, like, like, come you on just... like why are no. you a boring asshole yeah. <laughs> they're afraid of being caught in a contradiction that's why they don't do it uh they're yeah. often yeah people are super overly afraid of traps and things like yes that. If they follow I mean, their intuition, and the next thing you know, you're like, "Oh, contradiction! Look, you contradicted yourself." Oh. We can't. And people like anymore. this guy, they yeah, they project. They yeah. they say you're the one that's not engaging if you're uh, um, refusing to, or if you're entertaining hypotheticals. It's like, well, what about the complications of a real life situation? You're ignoring all of that. Like, like for the purpose of this, yes, we are. So, what's your answer? <laughs> yeah. Uh, on that note, Mr. Shad Swordman. Higher uh, is going to have to leave us. I believe. Nice. Unfortunately, so. Um, you in Britain right a, now? Yeah, I am. I had a big long day uh, at a medieval festival. Lots of fun. We're going to do a, a Shadowversity meet and greet on Monday. Jeez. But I'm pretty hammered. I, I'm starting to crash. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to duck out. But no problem, sir. Quite, very much enjoying the conversation. I'm going to come back and listen to it. Oh, Peace sweet. Out. And also, of course, if you find time, we're going for another 19 hours. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> so if you want to yep. jump back in, let me know. We'll find a spot. But until then, thank you 19. so much. It was nice been a pleasure, you. guys. I'll Have catch you around. See you later. Bye. 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 Later, man. See ya. See ya. I was gonna. I was gonna say. Sorry, man. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna start the video back up. So. You... Oh yeah, just gonna mention. Um, I think probably like a one of the best criticisms uh, against something like the trolley problem is it just it's so abstract, so it may not be applicable to everyday life. But I, I'd argue that most philosophic, uh, I don't know what you call them, but like just the these problems, these philosophical problems that people have created are very abstract. Like I go back to one of the base, most basic ones is the uh, 
uh, Plato's cave where the idea is like if you were locked in a cave without any ever seeing the outside world and you were basically fixed in position and only you could only see uh, the shadows cast by firelight and like your figurines and stuff would basically create your your whole world and you never knew anything outside that firelight shadow um, would you ever know that the the world outside existed that's like mm -hmm. a uh, 2000 year old or so uh, you know philosophic question and of course that probably never ever ever happened in real life but it's a really interesting way to explain that if you ne only saw a simulated reality would you ever know true reality beyond that mm -hmm. and uh I, I i read up on that a little bit just kind of getting because i'm new to philosophy i didn't study it in school or anything like that so i, I in a video a couple of years ago i compared that to you know the movie the matrix which kind of asked that in sci in a sci-fi context you know if you oh. never saw the real world but only saw a simulated version of it would you even believe that there was a real world out there or even have that con that concept so I think it's a really interesting uh, way to kind of just open your mind a little and ask questions that are otherwise too abstract or too unreasonable to ask. Like, of course, yeah, nobody's gonna lock somebody into a cave and show them firelight shadows or whatever, but you could, th theoretically you could. And if that's uh, mm -hmm. all you ever experienced, maybe you believe that's reality. And the Matrix thinks it's more about Baudrillard's works from like much later in time. It's yeah, it is, of course, Baudrillard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I tried reading. I tried reading uh, Simulacra and Sim uh, Simulation. That's a really dense book. I yeah. think I kind of get it. Yeah. I, I did mention Baudrillard's work in my video as well. And man, I I am not really a huge fan of that really thick, <laughs> uh, dense philosophy. But I actually kind of find it interesting that the Matrix kind of goes against a lot of Baudrillard's ideas in yeah, some they, ways. They completely misunderstood what they read. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny. It is pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, he hates the film for that. But yes, the experimentation exploration is value in and of itself, even if the question's really mm -hmm. dull and dumb. Imagine the hypothetical, you know, like the pushback on hypotheticals being unrealistic. If you just said, like, what if, right, hypothetically, what if a serial killer killed you and he didn't do it quickly, he did it relatively slowly, how would you feel? It was like boring, so you'd be like, I don't know, bad. <laughs> and then they're like, well, it's a good True. hypothetical, right? Because it could happen. See, real killers exist, and you could die. It's like, yep. Well, the the point of hypotheticals are often supposed to be thought experiments, and the point of an experiment is to try to control all the other variables. So you're just mm -hmm. testing one specific thing, and usually yeah. with these hypotheticals, the reason they're so weird or abstract is because you're just trying to really hone in on one element of a person's thinking as close, yeah. like as specifically as you can. So, like, yeah, of yeah. course, they're going to be like nonsensical situations because, in reality, that's never the case. But that's what you need well, to just... explore someone's morals thoroughly. And exactly. as soon as you create the, as soon yeah. as you create the scenario, they get so offended by the idea of like, oh, this, yeah. that's the that's not that would never happen. Mentality uh, triggers it. Well, it's it's yep. it's a lame attitude because you can sort mm -hmm. of hide in the abstract haze of all of these different variables instead of trying to dig into each of those individual variables Correct. to figure out what you believe. Right. Yep. People don't like being cornered, even if it's in pursuit <laughs> of like a. An, of I'm just an answer, an a concrete yeah. answer on something, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it's exactly what Adam said. People, they can sense the trap, and they're like, oh, well, the hypothetical is I don't like this. This is a yes. hypothetical. They, they don't even want to go there or another, let you go there. People just another another commit to prediction is inconsistency. So, yes. Sometimes you can commit to a, a hypothetical that gives the opponent too much wiggle room to just kind of like ignore you and try to, you know, you can't really lock them Run down. Away they don't engage anything. anything. Um, exactly. You know what, one? What if Baller, hypothetically you had to answer this question? Baller, this is a, a, <laughs> what? just right. The robot. Oh, God. The robot. Oh, yeah. The robot. You gave that motherfucker <laughs> wait, wait, too oh. much wiggle room. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know you had no. Your... It was Mahler's choice of analogy versus just right when he debated him. And I... it was a good strategy, but just right just fucking refused to engage with it. And it was of basically course. gave him way too much wiggle room. I was trying to fucking build bridges there, not own, you know? I know, I know. <laughs> You're trying to be civil, but you chose a path that just gave that asshole too much wiggle room. <laughs> I remember, I was just like, oh my god. Because I, I think I remember you mentioned because that sometime. Like, I was that. gonna bring up, like, it, it's always seemed, like, almost hostile. Like, everyone sees hypotheticals as an attack. They're like, you're trying mm -hmm. to get me to change my mind. But it's like, if someone yeah. just tells you again and again and again, I fucking hate ice cream, just hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. And one day you go, what do you hate about it? And you're like, those cones are disgusting that they come in. Like, those, <laughs> the, like, wafery, like, yeah. And it's like, okay, mm. so you don't hate ice cream then, do you? It's like, yeah, yeah I do. It's like, what if you bought it and it didn't have a cone? 
And then they're like, that's, a, that's <laughs> insane. That, that is an insane hypothetical. Cone? That would never happen. 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 What the fuck is wrong with you? Get out of here. I hate you. What wacky I'm upside getting, down world is that? I'm getting flashbacks to your talk Magic. with XQC. That was oh that was an oh extremely infuriating <laughs> talk. <laughs> like, how did how did you communicate with that creature? Like, what was he even saying? I mean, the vault is up. Okay. <laughs> I watched it. I watched that thing twice, man. That was hilarious. Ethan like choke slammed him. Dude, that was actually a really relevant example too, because what he was, you know, his hypothetical was like, there is this problem that it's like, what if it didn't? Okay, this problem. What if it didn't? Okay, you, you're, a, you lose. You're bad. You, you do it. You, you stop. <laughs> you're it's just like, dude, I'm just asking you a question. Like, he's just okay. Calm down. And then just so many, so many contradictions. Like, you know, yeah, law is sacred, but it's like, ah, I don't fucking care. Whatever. Go on. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> this is a gotcha moment, isn't it? I'm not gonna give you this. You're trying to problem. gotcha me. It yeah, was like, shit. that was my first introduction to that guy, and I couldn't believe how childish he was versus like how popular he is. Like, shame on every all of his fans. Like that dude is just acting like a nine year old, but it's yeah, shameful. Uh, so Stitch has presented this as an interesting trolley problem. The idiot doesn't realize this would never happen, so I don't know why. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I like how you can tell which one the rich guy is. Only rich people wear top hats. Yep. Oh no, yeah. a trolley is heading towards a rich man. The rich man offers you $500,000 to pull the lever, which would divert the trolley and kill someone else. What do you do? I mean, uh, what's, what's one interesting one. too is that if you're a person who hates rich people, you would do it because you're making the rich man poorer. I mean, wow. you could rationalize that, I guess. <laughs> Couldn't you <laughs> use that same rationalization both ways? Probably. If no. he dies, then his yeah. money will be spread toward. He he can family. compensate the other guy's family if you save the rich guy. That could be something. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. I just love like, oh, the idea that we're, <laughs> we're talking about this and then that guy just bursts in like, this is valueless. Stop it. <laughs> rich people would never offer you money to save their lives. The concept of hospitals is a lie. Well, does I feel like does, there should be the, there should be a, uh, an option three that's like haggle where you're just like oh I'm not sure you know five hundred thousand <laughs> <No, 000 laughs> your life is only worth five hundred grand oh, oh, yeah. option D write up contract quickly yeah <laughs> like scribbling you on the pull, floor like come on come on come on come on come on you put the you pen on his you? mouth and he has to sign it with <laughs> yeah. his you pull the lever a bit more as he like increases his bidding yeah well if you had the trolley problem and. You have one person on each side and you don't know, like, just say they're all, the people are equivalent, essentially. Is there a moral weight to just even acting the pull the lever at all versus letting it, like, does that add anything? That's, uh, that's part of the conversation, right? As yeah. people mm -hmm. talk about whether it's, it's the, it's the reason why the trolley problem is always set up that the five people will be killed if you don't pull the lever to try right. and put the action of, of, uh, the idea that you're killing the one person um because people could say like well i didn't touch the lever so i'm not morally culpable for the five people that right. that's kind of well, like I part even, of the conversation i even love thinking about the the fact that they made it five instead of two because it's like two is like eh, can we weigh it a I bit more very definitive yeah, yeah. it's like, like weigh it up to five that's one. the easy one yeah. everyone thinks five is better than one so yeah so wait are you guys pulling the lever are you gonna save the rich person yeah easily okay and then i'll kill it oh fuck <laughs> Maybe he needs some better help. I don't know. Dude, I love the idea that the rich guy says, I will give you half a million dollars if you save me. And then the other guy goes, uh, so will I. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yep. yeah. But you don't have a hat. How do I know if you're wealthy at all? <laughs> I left my top you hat took my hat. That was my hat. I was yeah. wearing that. Oh, now, that, oh, now you remind me of uh, in, in Saw 6, the, the carousel yeah. trap and how that was very so It felt similar in terms of like a variation of the trolley problem of six people. You can only save two of them, and then as it goes on, they start fighting about who's honest and who's not, and trying different strategies to essentially save their own lives, and are they telling the truth, or are they lying? And yeah, it's like, those, yeah scenes, so... those scenes are pretty <laughs> interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Uh-oh. Oh, man. Oh no! A trolley is heading toward five lobsters. You can pull the lever no. and divert it to the other Save track. Save the kitty. Run the cat what do you do? Save no, the cat. Fuck those lobsters. Fuck those lobsters. Save the cat. Oh wait, there's a... Save the lobsters. Jeez. Jordan Peterson. If Jordan lobsters. Peterson is at the <laughs> lever, <laughs> he has to save the lobsters. Oh, you know, this is an the, easy well, choice. Well, well, what about if it's a cat and a dog? Just one cat versus one dog. Well, uh, Jordan Peterson, Rule Twelve: Always pet a cat, so he'd be very conflicted. Okay. The dog would have to always pet it. <laughs> yeah, if, well, yeah. something, something I'm thinking about. Well, the the interesting thing with animals is like 
lifespan versus, I guess, capability of a conscious experience. So, like, if it was a dolphin or an elephant, let's assume the dolphin is in, like, a, you know, a tub, so it's still nice and it's still, you know, <laughs> dolphin doing okay and breathing all right. Yeah, on the train this tracks. This is a dangerous tub, roadway, is, is what I've concluded. And, and the tub is tied to the train tracks. There's a rope over the tub attaching it to it. Oh, no. Oh, you're really what this is. The, uh, the conscious experience of the animal would be a factor if we're dealing with animals, right? Does does a dog have more of a right to live than, like, a, an ant? I'd probably um, save the well, elephant, because the dolphin's dogs, more rapey. Dogs can have jobs. <laughs> Seeing eye dogs and all that, you know, you might actually... Oh, that's dog, true. Dogs, it's the, think uh, of the animals, economy. Yeah. Yeah. Motherfucker's wow, got yeah. a job. Got to save Yeah, what, what if it's a... Yeah, exactly. A seeing eye dog or something mm -hmm. versus just a cat. Or, uh, I think the cats can have jobs. We have I mean, a couple, not that uh, the dog needs even more yeah. help, but not yeah, my cat. Would, yeah. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we have a couple. Have we, we have a couple uh, pest control cats that are officially adopted by a county near I, where I live. So oh, sure, cats but, can have jobs. Yeah, that's just like any cat, right? Yeah, that's yeah, the, that's the natural that. state of a cat yeah. is to yeah <laughs> kill mice. Like they don't get a badge for doing that. Yeah, that doesn't elephants count. Are able to mourn. <laughs> yeah, that's why I bring up the elephant because elephants are hyper intelligent animals. Like yeah, if it was, probably if save it was the an elephant, elephant I think. or an orangutan or uh, yeah, like a dolphin. I think a lot of people treat it that way. If they if they're intelligent beings, like it's this right. makes it pretty simple. Yeah, well, no one's like, gonna be that's like. That's why nobody yeah, cares about cockroaches. Like, well, well I was about to say, yeah, also disgusting. So. Well, yeah. but then that's the interesting thing because rats are very intelligent. But I feel like if you put a rat up against that's the tricky cat, one, that's a lot of people one. would uh, would kill the rat instead of the cat. And how much, how much of it should depend on the, I guess, how well a species of that would appropriate. Like a panda, you kill a panda, you are seriously hurting, well, like, the survivability <laughs> of pandas as a species compared to a rat. Yeah, and I mean, like, rats spread diseases that kill you, and cats spread diseases that make you love cats more. So I think mm -hmm. it's a pretty, pretty easy yeah, one. not telling me on this rat. <laughs> the, the, well, the, uh... it, it said 5 million people uh, chose on this question, and 85% would kill the lobsters. Yeah, that doesn't surprise That's me. That's it? That's yeah. interesting. I thought, it would, I thought it would be way higher. I thought it would be higher. Yeah, I thought like 99. Yeah. yeah. It would be like 15% trolls. Like 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 well, what's funny is that actually, if you look at the photo as is, I would actually say, logically, if you didn't want to kill anybody, uh, the do it toward the cat. And uh, the lobsters would might go under the rails or might get crushed. I don't know. I don't no, know I the think lobsters, but if you put them on the rails, they're doing Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you, like, if, you, if you follow the exact, you know, uh, philosophical problem, yes, but well, yeah, if you but, I mean, direct it toward the cat, the cat, the cat will run just, away. like, bolts. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, that cat looks like he's no. <laughs> well, that cat <laughs> he's is no tied down, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I love, the lobster's I, brain, you're not catching him. The lobster's brains might not even be able to handle the concussive force of just the train going over top of them, even if it doesn't touch Ooh. them. That's mm. possible. The point of all of this is that why why would you say that it's worthless to, to have these conversations how is this not this is not true ethical discussions they're all fake yeah. fake ethical discussions okay whatever That's okay lame. let's get the lobsters go and over, cats go over into your lame corner while we have fun with hypotheticals yeah <laughs> for many others he's upset for... he's just upset that communism in this country will always be hypothetical hey <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Nice. get fucked also, comrade someone's not in the watch together one of you fuckers I, yeah, it's probably me. I just uh, wow, I just Marcus. Oh, yeah. what a fake yeah. Marcus. <laughs> Wait, I was listening to you guys, yes. and then I was listening to the show and was like, "Hey, who's doing that?" I'm like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> "That's pretty funny." I got well, train tracks. Sorry, because I wasn't on the him, cold anymore. The train from going off a cliff. But then, yeah, I'm okay now. Honestly, who cares? How are you? In other words, you can't do ethics hypothetically. And for many others, the trolley Good, problem is. Oh, you're still crazy. not in the thing, you so you don't realize we're playing the video. literally what we did. Yeah, the last 30 minutes as we were doing yeah. ethics hypothetically. But you apparently we were all just hallucinating because you can't actually do that. Just well, baby I, ethics doesn't count. I, I guess he's trying, he would be trying to say it doesn't map to reality in any like cogent way. Bullshit. Which, yeah, I don't really think I buy. And I definitely don't think he means that ethics, like hypothetically like you have to do a thing for it to be ethics it can't just be discussions on it Which, but that's again, that, that is, is a like whole why, conversation yeah. about ethics practical ethics. It, depends, it depends on whether or not you believe that ethics is like a manifest is the product of your actions or if, like ethics stems from within your mind you know like that's that's a it's whole just, conversation in and of itself but it, yeah but surely even if you think like i don't think uh like that any thought can be moral or immoral it has to be have some like action attached to it but those thoughts will inform the things that you'll do, which makes them very valuable and worthwhile of pondering. It's just like a different subfield. You have applied ethics, you have normative ethics, and you have meta-ethics. 
Like, I don't know why we're trying to say that only one of them actually exists. Don't forget Lewis uh, ethics. Or maybe meta ethics does exist. I don't know. Lewis ethics. When I when I was writing my my paramedic licensing exam, every single question was just a, a hypothetical situation, and and then like five questions based around that one hypothetical situation for the question because it's always you respond to a call and you see blank and then six or seven questions about how you deal with that call so it's like how how are you possibly making the assertion that you can hypothetically teach people about ethical decisions because a lot of a lot of medical judgment stuff is just medical ethics it's like what what is the right thing to do in this situation and that's it's kind of the hardest thing to actually learn and be confident on so that I mean, the the only way to teach people is to ask them questions and have them run through the hypotheticals, though. Anyone have anything to say to that? Wow. Yeah, was, no, you like, just got to fucking kill them in real life. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. just I'm fucking killing the lobsters, man. <laughs> They're done. down. They go. Oh, fine. Plus, delicious lobsters for dinner. <laughs> No, I just actually... noticed in the uh, in the drawing here that there's like a spear poking yeah. out of the, the you brought us all great work. Why did he draw Chidi as a white guy in that picture? That's very offensive. This is an example image. Yeah, he's necessarily... wearing black. Yeah. He's got enough. yeah. That's symbolical. And helping us think about actual moral <laughs> dilemmas. <laughs> it might even have caught on precisely because it has nothing to do. I love this image. The trolley problem guy is really funny. Yeah. Yeah. He's He's oh, He's oh, God, is... Wait a minute. One of them looks happy. That Look at the one that has the, the lever that just trolley, goes into the guy's dick. dick. Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> Maybe he's just straddling it or something. <laughs> it literally is <laughs> actual moral struggles. Even in the good. Th doesn't that picture? It really makes you want like a Where's Waldo with the trolley problem. You have yeah. to figure out what the ethical <laughs> question even is. <laughs> yeah, Where's Waldo with this? Mental and helping us think about actual moral dilemmas. Like, it might even have caught on precisely because it has nothing to do with our actual moral struggles. Even in the good what? place, Mike- How does it, how do, how do, how have they reached this conclusion? I don't understand. This is how, literally yeah. just an exploration of two things you care about, and then you have to weigh up which one you care, you care more about, basically. No. Why not? How is the way that you think about morality influencing you, the moral things you do in your life? Gee, I can't imagine how those two things might be connected. No clue. Imagine, like, you know, a, a, your family invite you to a party and you accidentally double book on the same time and day as going out with a friend. And then you're like, I'm going to choose the family because I haven't seen them in a long time or there's a bigger group of them and there's more people exactly. to let down if I don't turn up. And if someone said, like, yeah, but that's not them dying, I'd be like, that's the, the fucking Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I, the probably my one favorite moment in my Baldur's Gate playthrough was a, a major question that no you had. Please. I, I won't spoil it, but it's it's a, a question of who you a faction you have to side with or not. And I found myself really conflicted by the time I actually had to get to it. And working my way through that decision was probably the single best time I so had. It in wasn't the written by Bethesda. <laughs> no, <laughs> Larian. <laughs> The demon enjoys torturing moral philosopher Chidi with the trolley problem because it's so disconnected from real life. And this is particularly painful for someone. He enjoys torturing her with her because it's so because disconnected it... from real life. Well, no, a demon would torture you with things that. Why? That. Is that. I haven't seen the show, but that doesn't seem is... right. He does it not, because not it's not connected to real life. There's no way. No, that can't but, be no. true. So, I don't okay. believe In the him. show, he's trying to teach the demon ethics. And he was using the trolley thing as a hypothetical to explain ethics to him. So the demon is like, oh, like, let's make this. This seems a little bit abstract. Let's make it more grounded. So he's making him actually drive through or appear to be driving through, you know, real people and killing them. That's why he has the blood all over himself. And the character Chidi, like his whole character is that he's always conflicted. He never knows what decision or what choice to make in life. So like, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a bizarre example. I was about to say, like, well, how does that play into, like, it's it's like, it's meaningless because it's not real. Or what, it's like, please make yourself clearer because this is insane. Someone like Chidi who died because he couldn't break free from internal deliberation in order to focus on his actual life. You're incapable of making a single decision. Look, I know I can be indecisive, but what's the harm in taking a few extra minutes to find the perfect... Okay, he didn't oh, die no. because he was indecisive. He died because a fucking air yeah, conditioner he... hit him in the head. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. That's yeah. not a good. That's, that's not, not good fair writing. at all. What's the point of that? 
I also acknowledge that I just spoiled a plot point of the show The Good Place, but it's been out for a very long time. Oh look, it's relevant to our spoiler to talk like an hour okay. ago. Well, okay. You've had a good chance. You guys should watch Good Place. It's good. And honestly, it's a pretty no, good show. I know how it ends. And if that little spoiler ruins your... Oh, just oh move on. God, I don't want to hear what you have please. to say about spoilers right. either, please. Yeah, like, I can't <laughs> believe you still on this. Are you talking? He's talking about hypotheticals, though. Well, he's about to say, like, spoilers pointless. don't actually matter. It's the journey, blah, blah, blah. Just like, get on with it. Don't want to talk about that right now. I think Boom. Yeah, but I no, my journey and leads and to a meat grinder. I'm not going to take it. Writers Adrian Rennix and Nathan J. Robinson. Is that the best picture of Adrian Rennix you could find? I guess so. <laughs> two, 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 two yeah, more. You'd think there'd have to be better photos of the person who wrote yeah. the good place. You took you took the you got the picture of Adrian Rennix with half their face covered up? That's probably Oh no, they, these people did not write that show. They're just other people he wants to cite. Oh okay. still. I thought you said they wrote something. Do you not? Your he calls them it. writers. I think that's more of a you problem than a me problem. I'm just saying. Writers Adrian Rennix and Nathan yeah, J. Writers. Robinson discuss this in a 2017 current affairs article with the subtle title, The Trolley Problem Will Tell You Nothing Useful About Morality. Oh, okay. so they're oh, dumb cool. people. Ow. <laughs> and the, the subtle oh, maybe thing it's says, a good it, thing his face was covered then. It turns us into horrible people and discourages us from examining the structural factors that determine our choices. How? How when it does the opposite, the opposite. Find this article. It turns us into horrible people. No, it helps us examine what is the most moral choice in a difficult scenario. Instead of me just knee jerking it whenever they pop up for no, you know, for whatever reason. What? What? It's what, useful who lets to do. People, free speech was a mistake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that free speech. Get out of here. Also, I mean, <laughs> he's citing just some random website to try to prove the invalidity of one of the most f common ethical dilemma hypotheticals that. You know, like it, it yeah. seems like if, if you're going to say, "Hey, this is not useful," and it's been proven, why? Maybe an academic journal might be a better, better source to cite, Ooh. or at yeah, least it's... elaborate. Yeah, elaborate I don't know who any of these people are. Yeah, yeah it's kind of random. Random people on current affairs. It's just an, ap an appeal, dumb. an appeal to authority, like just pulling up some stupid article instead of actually discussing it. Because he's already said this six times. What's the point of picking up an article? Well, ideally, he's probably going to, like, summarize it, right? And Hopefully and accurately. Ideally. <laughs> I mean, in it, they argue that if we ended up in a trolley situation in real life, we would panic, do something rashly, and then watch in horror as one or more persons... Yeah, that's the only yeah, thing that can not happen. Not if we practice yep. mentally for it, maybe. But wait, he said well, it'll end up being that people will die position. a gruesome death before oh, our eyes. Yeah. Like, yes, of course. Yes. No matter yeah. what, yes. But That's... the idea that you would try to prevent panic by essentially training yourself mentally. Yes. Or are we going the to deny that... already. Otherwise, we would have to say that that's not possible, and that's that's absurd. The idea that you can't mentally prepare yourself for something in real life. Spider Man saves both. I mean, it's literally like this is what this, this is like. <laughs> this is the concept of training. So that, like, whether it's the military, whether it's first responders, doctors, whether it's yeah, exactly. anything, the Worst whole point scenario. is when the situation happens, your training yeah, kicks exactly. in, and exactly. you do what you need to do. So you that's don't panic like, in that exactly. moment. Exactly. Yeah, but that's do you exactly. think, that's like, this is literally training, that's martial arts, doctors, martial arts, everything. Martial arts. That's this cool. is the whole that's point of, a... of training. That's the whole concept of, of training. Of Humans! Well, right? Like in Stoicism, right, the idea of meditating on potential misfortune in the future so yeah. that you understand how you feel about it you can prepare for it in the future meditating on death so that like when that time approaches you know as you're naturally sort of getting older you're kind of prepared for it like at, at, and that's again beyond the things that you brought up of just training you the training is about there is... understanding these things i yeah that's that's why wow when i okay. <laughs> Uh, this is legitimately a bizarre thing to say because, yeah, this is the you entire purpose panic, of training. Um, you you might, but if you're trained, you're less likely to panic. Exactly. It's, it's, it's the idea that by, by, medi by thinking about it, are you going to be worse off? Are you going to be worse off for having Dude, considered the trolley problem than you know, then encountering um, it? A hypothetical you know? of like, what would you do if a person killed your kid and you were in front of them with a gun? Would you kill them? Sort of situation, like a hypothetical like that. And then someone says, like, well, that doesn't matter because if that happened in real life, it would be completely different. There are people who have done it. They kill that person. They they, they yes. just fucking stone cold do that. it. Now, the idea that you're like, yeah, but I mean, that's like one guy or whatever. And it's just like, it's a fucking worthy hypothetical. These situations come up in all forms of life at all scales. I don't understand. Like, I just read ahead of this thing as well, this this whole section. I just don't understand the point they're trying to make. It's like, you probably end up with PTSD. What does that have to do with anything? 
Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Do you think there, that yeah. you're more likely or less likely to end up with PTSD if you really give these things some mental preparedness and you think about them and you ask yourself what you're going to do and you give yourself a bit of time no or difference. if you shelter Fake. yourself from the world's you know issues and potential problems and just I think that's what th that's what this article would need to argue that it, it it like that it's worse off the idea that it's neutral it's like okay maybe but am I worse off for having considered the trolley problem beforehand if not then yeah, what's exploring. the problem I think that uh like the unlikelihood, it really has no bearing on the validity of it. Like there are people, there are probably hundreds of people trained right now to respond to a nuclear attack. Exactly. Will we have, will we, will we have a nuclear the attack? Likelihood, probably that's not. It's completely irrelevant. It's about yeah. just being ready. So you, well, so in that I mean, situation, you're prepared to actually react effectively rather well, than I'll, just stopping and having to think and like panic. Like well, it's just, yeah. so let's go happens. with a, uh, let's go with a scenario that probably happens hundreds of times every day right probably more right really basal ground level kind of example um while i was working at, i think i've said told the story before when i was working in a restaurant once one of the customers started choking on some food and i performed the heimlich maneuver on them and unchoked them very wow. probably saved their life right that worked. and the reason that I was able to do that was I didn't even think about doing it because I was, I'm an Eagle Scout. I did search and rescue. I knew Instinct. the Heimlich maneuver. You right. just do it. Someone's choking. Mm -hmm. The Heimlich maneuver is what you do. You get them to stand up. You, when you see he's choking, you get behind him, tell him to stand up. You get behind him. You put your hands where they need. You do the thing. You save the dude's life. And it's just, that's just what you do because you're prepared for it. And no one else in that fucking restaurant, which was not empty, did it. Mm -hmm. And right. so and these are like it's, it's so you're uh, mentally prepared maneuver. for that situation. Everyone, everyone in the, who's watching this, learn how to do the Heimlich maneuver and learn CPR. Yeah. Learn these two things. They're super easy. They're super quick, and they will fucking save lives. So please do that. Um, yeah, you can these are very. Th this is real shit that happens. Like training kicks in. And you don't in. want to training be completely real, panicking when it happens. You don't want to be feeling you... helpless in that situation and watch a loved one die because you didn't take the time to actually learn something that could be so yeah, and... effective. There's one thing that will alleviate panic. It's knowing for sure what you were supposed yes. to do. Yes. I because... know what to do. I've yeah. trained for this. I know what I need to and, do. And, and bearing in mind that the training is designed with the knowledge that when it really happens, yeah, of course you're going to, like, it's, of course it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. But that's why the training takes yeah. that into account. Remember your training. Remember your training. Yeah, exactly. If you're nervous, that's remember you, you're yeah, trained remember for this. You are prepared. In, in military so comes back all naturally. The time. Remember your training. Default to your training. That'll get you through. That's you know, yeah. Yep. Training, training, and knowing knowing how to react with the skills that you've trained to do mm -hmm. well is the easiest way to suppress a fear response in a in an intense situation it, it's because you're not thinking about yeah. how you're feeling you're thinking about what you need to do and because you yeah. know what to need to do what you need to do it's almost like you're not thinking at all you're just yeah. doing the thing that you need you're to reacting like, um, it's that's how it should be it should be ingrained in you at that point you shouldn't have to stop and think about it and process it is it brown bears that you're supposed to stay still oh okay uh, so the saying yeah, is so with black, black back if it's brown lay down if it's white good night <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, so <laughs> if if it's a black bear, you want to stand up, make a lot of noise, blah, 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 get a little, blah, blah, blah. you want to do all that stuff. Loud noises, make yourself big, swing your arms around, don't run away. If it's a brown bear, like a grizzly bear, you lay down and play dead and you hope things turn out okay. And if it's a polar bear, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. But, but, <laughs> I, got, I, got, I gotta be honest, any bear, I'm out. <laughs> important yeah. caveat, important caveat about the polar bear is you want to make sure, and you want to check first and see if they have Coca-Colas with them. If they do, <laughs> then they're, cool. they're, they're friendly, they're super okay, chill, yes. and they'll be the your commercial friend. Ones. Yes. yes, but if they, are, they nope. don't, then, uh, yeah. Well, like, imagine you'll give them so, that advice, and then they follow no up with, by the way, you could probably simulate that right now, like lying down, or standing still, making noise and stuff. It's going to be different when there's an actual bear. And then you'd be like, yeah, I figure. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to do it then. Anyway, I'm not going to practice. Strongly, I strongly recommend watch some videos of black bears climbing up trees before assuming that you can get away from one. Yeah. Well, it's uh, the thing with, with hippos, right? Hippos are much faster than human beings. You cannot yeah. outrun a hippo. Yes. Yes. Um, well, what you I do think... is you you wait for the hippo to charge, right? And you're still, you're watching that hippo, you stare it straight in the eyes as it's charging towards you. And then when it's about like two feet in front of you, 
dodge you roll. go, whoa, and then you just dodge right to the left <laughs> or right really quickly. Now and next. then the hippo will flip over, it'll lose its balance. It'll go, whoa, and it'll flip over and start rolling around, and then you can make your escape. This is a really bad uh, article. <laughs> oh, have yeah, you read I mean, it? Yeah, I've been reading well, it. I've, I had a feeling I've about that. Kibakins actually <laughs> just sent me some great lines from the article. Um, the article says that the trolley problem may not be much different from playing Mary Fuck Kill. Or asking horrible questions like, if you had to kill one of your parents, which one would it be? And I love both of those games. I play them all the time with my parents. <laughs> the <laughs> trolley problem. Every time you, you play the questions. parent game, Rags. <laughs> like, I, can understand, oh, I can understand someone not wanting well, to. Every week I, I do it again and give them an update on my decision. So there you go. You have them keep, constantly vying for each other. It, it keeps them on their toes. It's a right. good game to play. Um, yeah, the parent one the, could be easy though. I think because I think initially I would say my dad because my dad would want me to kill him over my mom. But now my mom's in much poorer health than my dad, so I don't know if it's more complicated now. The I'll article get, like, insinuates that there's no point in talking about moral sit dilemmas in which there's no right answers in which like everything good can happen. I guess. Yeah, but, I think like, only if it's a good answer. Uh, even if you're not going to run into a trolley problem in real life, like the situation is extremely abstract in terms of what's actually happening, uh, you're going to run into a lot of situations where your agency is constrained. There's going to be a lot of situations where you cannot accomplish exactly what you would yeah. want to do, and you're going to have to compromise with lesser or, by your mm -hmm. consideration, worse outcomes. That's the whole so point of the hypothetical, and it's like they try to just skip that part. I, I um, hate the... to keep bringing this back to politics, okay? But this no, article, the, well, the guys that wrote this article and Wisecrack, I mean, they are they are all socialists. And this article is written from the perspective of, like, this idea that if, oh, if while you're concentrating on, like, who you're going to sacrifice in the trolley problem, you're not asking the real questions, like, who has the power to pull the lever? That rich Me. elite who's oh really God. controlling you. That rich elite <laughs> that put the trolley on the track in the first place. You ever wonder place. who built the trolley? <laughs> yeah. Um, the article also says, uh, the trolley problem conveniently involves making no actual sacrifices yourself, which, um, quote unquote, doing the right thing, well, almost always entails in reality. Even though There's I imagine making the very important moral decision of who to kill in a scenario is, yeah, uh, that's asking a lot of somebody. Yeah, even I, can't, I can't speak from experience. Forever. Yeah, I, I can't speak from experience, but I have to imagine that the physical act of pulling a lever that you know is going to cause someone to die strikes you psychologically differently to, like, freezing I would up imagine. and allowing death. Like, I would imagine yeah. not to not to like self-aggrandize the person in the situation as some making some great sacrifice necessarily, but it's going to affect them. Yeah. Likewise, the trolley never going to forget that moment. It gives you it still gives you moral culpability with your inaction as well, though. So even like you can't just say, well, in real life you have to make a sacrifice. It's like, well, no, in real life your sacrifice might be not pulling the lever or pulling yeah. the lever, depending on what your moral priorities are and how your how you think about the situation. So it's like, well, no, you don't just, you don't even get to say, well, I don't have any sacrifice to make in the trolley pro problem because either way you're responsible for death. That now I'm done. Um, no, it sure see, works both ways. It says the trolley problem is repulsive because it encourages people to think about playing God and choosing which people to kill. Calm down. Okay, this it person is hypersensitive. It is as Stop. irrelevant as the asteroid orphans dilemma, because who would you murder in Extreme Situation X is not even a distant parallel to the issues that would likely come up in your own life. It warps moral sensibilities and encourages us to think about isolated moments of individual choice rather than the context in which those choices occur. So, great I, article. I don't know why uh, you can't do both. <laughs> I don't know. Well, don't ask me. I don't speak retard. Oh. Oh. He's died oh. a gruesome death before our eyes. We would probably end up with PTSD. Whatever we had probably. ended up doing in the moment, we'd probably feel guilty about for the rest of our lives. Even if we had somehow miraculously managed to comply with a consistent set of consequentialist ethics, this would bring us little comfort. In other words, getting an A in ethics class isn't going to matter after you willfully choose to take the life of another. In other what? I don't, I don't so wait, 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 so wait, wait, now wait, he's wait. discrediting ethics as a whole? Wait, I, I think I need to hear that again because that sounded profoundly retarded. Uh, <laughs> we would probably end up with PTSD. 
Whatever we had ended up doing in the moment, we'd probably feel guilty about for the rest of our lives. Even Maybe. if we had somehow miraculously managed to comply with a consistent set of consequentialist ethics, this would bring us little comfort. In other Maybe. words, getting an A in ethics oh. class is- Because I think there's a lot of people, and I think I'm one of those people, but I'm not certain, who can look at a situation and say, I did the best thing I could have possibly done in a situation that was really tough. I can't beat myself and blame myself for yeah. it. What happened was a tragedy, but I did the best that I could. And I think a lot of people would look at that and be like, yeah, it's like, it sucks that it happened, but I'm not going to be like, this isn't going to be some moral anchor that I drag around for the rest of my life. But yeah, it depends not, on the person. Not, some people can't necessarily rationalize things in the same way that, you know, someone else can. I'm not mourning dead lobsters. Like, just get over that shit pretty well, quick. I'm <laughs> praising dead lobsters because dead lobsters mean good dinners. <laughs> This sounds like a response to the idea that it will prep you and you will resultedly not have any kind of like, you know, mental trauma when it's like, well, no, you can't guarantee that. But it's better to have it than not as a prep, isn't it? It can't hurt. I, I don't see how it can hurt. This isn't going to matter after you willfully choose to take the life of another. In other, other words, the trolley problem itself is some real sicko <laughs> The way it's usually sicko shit. No, oh, it's to avoid us doing. What? No, it's it's literally the 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 way that I imagine virtually every single person who um, engages with a trolley problem is so that they make the most moral decision, not the most immoral decision. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not trying to calculate what's the most evil thing I can do in the trolley problem scenario, which is just the inverse of the other option anyway, because there's generally only two choices. But I don't think anyone engages with a trolley problem. <laughs> to well, no be offense, evil. but like, if you asked me the trolley problem, my response was, "You're being mean." Um, well, I just yeah, don't understand where this implication in both the article and what he's saying is really coming from. I don't know anyone who has ever engaged with the trolley problem in that sort of way. Is he implying that it's it's an ineffective question because there's no option to just save both? Like, I, I was kidding about the Spider-Man thing, like, but... He, he's implying I mean, it's an ineffective question because it doesn't map readily to our already present uh, moral dilemmas that we experience in real life, and also because it encourages focusing on the action itself in a, like, void of context as opposed to the underlying structures that can underpin such a dilemma. The point Sometimes is, like, hypotheticals. Yeah. It's the whole point. <laughs> Sometimes you're forced to be in these situations. That's the entire point of these hypotheticals. And uh, you try I, to I just, just do that. I just don't understand why, like, entertaining a hypothetical means I can't also uh, have some inquisition well, into they... the underpinning structures of that hypothetical. If these guys Even would be the like, most... the five people are capitalists and the one is a socialist, so now it's difficult, isn't it? You'd be like, uh, <laughs> 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 Of framing it as sadism is so fucking ridiculous. Like, how yep, how nobody's... dare you put those people on the track in your mind? How cruel <laughs> even, are you? Even no, no. in the most uncomfortable of hypotheticals and comparisons, there's still value to exploring those ideas, even if it, doesn't, even if it makes you uncomfortable to think about it. There's usually a benefit to it. And to say there isn't, you're going to have to actually argue that. These guys are not doing that. And the trolley problem is flexible enough that you can make variations like that and see how mm. it changes your answer. Because... That's why it's so interesting. Yeah. It's a good framework. Usually discussed helps disguise this insanity, as it's usually implied that we can make ethical decisions that involve no sacrifices from ourselves, which encourages the idea that ethics involves. That is a thing that does happen. We do make decisions every once in a while that really doesn't affect us necessarily, but it, it, it hurts particular groups of people in some small way. Like that example I gave of you got two events you could go to, one with all the family, one with a good friend. It's like, mm -hmm. and both of them are really mm -hmm. happy to see you and you have to not go to one. Oh no. Here's a great. Here's a great trolley problem that probably happens every day. Uh, Cutbacks. You got to fire somebody. Who do you fire? Somebody's got to go. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's another one. Our moral agency is constrained sometimes in the real Wait. world. Like crazy. Who would have thought? Fire, fire the owner of the factory. Boom. <laughs> that's right. Close the whole factory down. There you go. Well, and also, as you said, like you deciding whether someone lives or dies affects you. This is a very weird framing yeah. of this whole question. You have to sacrifice possibly a lot or a little of your sanity. You make these That's decisions. nothing. Loser. Get over it. Get better help. Oh, no. <laughs> functional choices from the sidelines. This also implies that we usually act in situations where we have perfect knowledge of all potential outcomes. No, it doesn't. That's just stupid. No, it <laughs> uh, and, and plus, the whole point of the trolley problem is all of the information is self-contained there. It's you and the problem and how you engage with it, right? Yeah. That's, that's all that there is. And precisely part of the deal with the trolley problem is the limited information because there's permutations where they expand upon the information given. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. 
We're trying to figure out what matters the most. Yes. Oh, when in real well, life, that's simply not the case. This all assumes a genius. pretty bleak fatalism. Imagining a world oh, where ethical decision-making is about choosing the least worst option among a bunch of bad That's how we do it in a lot of situations. That is yes. real life. Welcome, Welcome to, to life. Like, yes. hey. The least worst how option you, is also the best option. How do you make the world language. a better place? You make the least worst choice enough times. Okay, capitalist, Jesus. <laughs> Bad ones. Veggie refers to this as humanitarian ethics, which he describes as miserable moralism oh. in the name of which we are obliged to accept the prevailing way of the world and its absolute See? injustice. What does that even? I don't. I don't think we have. To, no, I don't. I don't think going along with the trolley problem means that you're accepting that the world is a horrible place and that it's always going to be a horrible place and nothing good can ever happen. That's. A really stupid thing to say. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What does this have to do with the trolley problem? I don't I also, get it. I also don't trust this quote. Like, I, I trust that the quote was probably verbatim, but I imagine it's extrapolated out of its context. Well, to answer your question, Frankie, what he's trying to get at is that by accepting the fatalistic nature of the trolley problem, that you have to choose between one of these two tracks, you're saying, like, it's like in real life in society. You know, we walk around choosing to not have a revolution, choosing to partake in this corrupt system. Okay. Um, you live in a society. Just yes. Just being prepared. Being prepared <laughs> Allegedly. For, when you have Allegedly. Bad, I thought it was just that when you have two bad options, you just got to try and figure out the option that you think minimizes harm or comports most with your principles. I thought that was it. No. no. Maximize harm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're nihilists. When they present you the trolley problem, you say, fuck this. I'm going to go to the right. system. Like I'm going to tear the system what down. What sounds like is when we were trying to explain that Batman can kill, hypothetically, and there was always the argument of, no, there will, Batman will always find a way. Or, no, that's not on Batman. That's like, you, you shouldn't fault. concoct mm -hmm. situations like this. <laughs> yeah, Batman, like, yeah, exactly. It's the writer's responsibility to never put Batman in that situation. Like, what uh, I feel like what, what's being presumed here is like imagine someone presents you with the trolley problem and you respond in this sort of way. You don't have to like presume that the world is always going to be a shitty place in order to go along with the trolley problem. If yeah. um if they were like, don't you think if a world with the trolley problems happening all the time would be horrible? It's like, of course. Why do you want yeah. <laughs> It's so like worst case scenario. You don't really want that, being, funnily enough. Being, and yet you imagine it. Imagine a lot of things. <laughs> I know, it's, it's fucking weird. Imagine a bunch of babies falling out of a big hospital and the Flash puts one in microwave. Does, it, does the <laughs> psychological phenomenon, like, you know, when you're driving or you're standing by a really high place and you're suddenly compelled to, like, you start ideating about what it would be like to throw yourself over the side or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's, like, that phenomenon, the non-suicidal one. Um, like, is that, does that reflect upon you psychologically? Does that yes. make you a sick person? I don't know. Seek yes. better help. Be reminded of your reality. Video. It's just something that happens sometimes, you know? Yeah. Like when you look up at the sky sometimes, it just makes you feel really, really small. You just get reminded of, of like, you know, how massive it is. There's You have those moments and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes that reminder is good. That's part of the reason these hypotheticals are effective. But they're so afraid of considering anything that would make, you know, like, uh, I don't know. It's such a weird way to look at it. Instead of being prepared for the worst case scenario. It also encourages the idea that ethical decisions should be made in some top-down way by benevolent ethical elite. What are you talking what? about? What? Hey, you, you know it's coming. It's a revolt, man. <laughs> I know See, I read this and I, I, I have authority. no idea how to even respond to it. Isn't isn't the premise of the trolley problem that you found yourself in this situation? So presumably the person who tied up all the other people and put them on the track made you pull the lever or not? Like, I, I, that's kind of always the way I framed it. Mm -hmm. Now that you just walked across this situation. I didn't know that the yeah. takeaway from the trolley problem is put your faith in benevolent, like, <laughs> uh, yeah. in the all-powerful, all all-knowing benevolent. Like, like what, what is this? That's because the trolley problem is the shadows cast upon the, the cave wall by fire, and you just don't see the reality for what it is. When someone has the little I set, to escape the cave. and, and yeah. they have the trolley going back and forth, and they got the little people, and they're trying to explain it to you, or drawing, and then someone else points out, it's like, you understand, people aren't this small. You Right now, you're pretending you're like a god. <laughs> and, you're, and you're sitting there like, what the fuck, man? How Your are the people going to fit in the building? <laughs> is it for ants?
cleats, which disguises <laughs> many of the material power relations trolley problem that inform for ants. how we make ethical and political decisions. And this way, the trolley problem is less about ethics and more about Correct. training future technocrats to pick how many of us it's okay to kill with what the bro. The that is <laughs> ethics. <laughs> so wow. ridiculous. <laughs> wow. It's less about how ethics and more about ethics. <laughs> it's not about ethics and more about probably the most important ethical question that tech firms can ask themselves yeah, before we get self-driving cars. Let's make cars. sure they get it right, shall we? Instead of being like, oh, you fucking stupid trolley problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, they should be thinking about that one pretty hard, man. Oh no, Theo's Discord crashed. You won't be able to hear the cringe. Oh, is that what that was? No, did that kill Theo? Uh, makes sense. For cool new products. As Renix and Robinson argue, the trolley problem is repulsive because it encourages people to think about playing God and choosing which people to kill. That happens. What? This happens. Oh my God. People choose who's going to die in life. It happens. The thing. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so funny. It's it like, God. you shouldn't play God. And you're sitting there with a the lever like, well, but what do, if you you wanna, have to? do you want to decide then? <laughs> <laughs> you do it. It's not even like he made the point that this is why there should not be self-driving cars and we should all be rallying against this idea. He's just like, well, you know, it would be better if just everybody lives. Problem solved. I don't want a technocratic developer looking at Wikipedia <laughs> with a trolley problem to decide whether or not my baby gets killed when run over. That's fucked up. Direct people democracy. Have to, yeah. well, people had to vaguely do this before, by the way. Uh, an example I see trotted out a lot is uh, the decision to use nuclear weapons against Japan and World War yes. II. Yes. Right. Oh, wait. Are yeah. you just... Yeah, anytime, anywhere. <laughs> you, does he provide an alternative to this at the end? Like, what is the I alternative we'll to trolley out, problem? So far, this is terrible in terms of this trying to convince really us that the trolley problem is worthless. Like, this has been piss. It warps human moral sensibilities. <laughs> no, it does not warp it. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, this is like this was the thing Explored in the article that was it. so stupid that it's when Kiba oh. Kim said, sent to me and said, "Wow, this article's so dumb. Look at what he says in this <laughs> this no, video." He's like, highlighting look it. Look at what Literally. the article says. He's highlighting it. <laughs> I, I don't understand. Like, how, how does entertaining uh, in these isolated moments of individual choice take away our ability to understand wider contexts? It's that dumb yeah, shit. Yeah, the whole point is to point out the context. People are pretty smart. I can accept the trolley problem and give an answer to it while also acknowledging that these circumstances should not come to pass, morally speaking. Well, and it sounds like well, the problem they have is actually teaching people what the point of hypotheticals are, right? Because if someone says, I hate the the co big kahuna burger, and you're like, why? And it's only about the source. It's like, oh, well, you like the burger as a whole, then. And they're like, yeah, but I'm never gonna have a big Kahuna burger without the sauce, okay? So you you've just tri you've warped me into thinking oh. I would have to make that decision. And it's like, you, that, what the fuck? I, I, that's the point. I'm just trying to figure out decision. what you have an issue with. I didn't realize that you didn't understand that. I will unwarp your mind and say we're trying to split it up into different pieces, okay? I I think what they're trying to say by this context line is they're trying to say like, oh, you're concentrated on like what person, person. on the track to save as opposed yeah. to why are you in that position in the first place? Why are those people on the tracks in the first oh, yeah. place? You have to fight the system, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Challenge every hypothetical at the fucking source. Yes. God, I, I can already imagine the that system this, this wants would us happen, to fight though. each other. Sorry. It's totally what would happen where you, you, you give the hypothetical and then they say, but that's not the case, though. And you're warping me. <laughs> no, brothers, we should be fighting the hypotheticals. Have you seen. Um, the song threw it on the ground. Yeah. Have I yeah. seen the song threw it on the ground? Well, the music video. Oh, oh okay. Yes, I have. It's good. No, I have. Yeah, not. like you know when when the when he's like, my girlfriend hands me the cell phone and says it's your dad, and I said, that's, that's not my dad. Phone. That's a cell phone, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and I threw it on the ground. Like I feel like that is this video. Just... That's what I mean. That, that, as far as I'm concerned, you unwarp the mind. When the mind is like, I will never touch that hypothetical because it's not real. It's not true. I don't. It, it can't hurt me. It's not real. Like it's okay. Just delve into it for a moment. Just think. The problem yeah. with the trolley problem is it's fucking boring. That's the. That's the. That's problem. why it's the, always the base. In line. your mind, we move on. on. Yeah, the start putting lobsters the on the fucking trail. Yeah, the the inevitable like, spiraling into absurd just permutations. Now, exactly. like your mind. Because when real... he said when he says the trolley, trolley problem is a joke, I'm assuming he's talking about all versions. Yeah, I would assume so. Here's your modern trolley problem. So oh, many okay. better hypotheticals than the trolley problem. Jeez.
please. Yeah, but this is the starting point. 1950 them. called, and they want their fucking hypothetical back. <laughs> It was one of the other like major problems that he could have touched on, but he didn't, is that a lot of the time when you talk about the trolley problem, you get so caught up in just various new permutations to respond to each individual thing a person says that you lose any sort of course in terms of what is to be learned from this discussion in, in the first place. Sure. Which is a better they argument for why it's absurd, anymore? By the Yes. Yeah, where, where are the trolleys at? Yeah, where are these? Do they even exist? What is a trolley? Who knows? Yeah. High speed rail isolated trolley. moments That's what of we mean. individual <laughs> choice rather than the context in which those choices occur. It is escapist and that it allows us to comfortably drift into the realm of the implausible and ridiculous. No, comfortably drift into the very specific elements that make you decide yeah. whether or not something should or shouldn't happen. I also feel like a lot of people don't even find it like com like comfortable. No, the it's idea, not. The idea of the trolley problem being comfortable is a that's strange. I feel like often it's kind of challenging to deal with. Makes you think. Well, you'll find Gallo's humor comes out immediately when talking about the trolley problem. Wonder why. Yeah, exactly. Why is that? So that we People do not gonna die. So that we do not. That's always funny. Disturbing yep. truths about our real world moral. I mean, failings. there if are more. There are more a... hypotheticals than just the trolley problem that people can do. I assume, like I assume this guy hates all of them then, right? right? Also, like, Whoa. we're just cribbing this article or what? <laughs> yes. If you want. I noticed that, I think that was the last thing I saw from them. That they just, like, cited a bunch of obscure philosophers from, like, 500 years ago and just said, see, they said that, so therefore we're right. It was just kind of, we just citations here and there. And I, I there's, they... I just I find that it's interesting to see different arguments, especially if you can compare like one person's <laughs> argument for or against something. But when you just cite people into like, oh, that there, that's the truth because they said it. It just seems kind of shallow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. an appeal to authority. That's all that was. Yeah, there you go. Citing, yeah. citing a primary source, like if you're saying you read a, the writings of a, a philosopher from 500 years ago, I think I I take that as a better grounding than hey, these two people who we found on Twitter last week wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, by the way, this article they're reading, this is what cites the good place. So I assume that's where they got that from as well. Like the wisecrack yes. video is just based entirely on this. Basically, uh, yeah. I okay. mean, if, wow. If you saw those two guys in the beginning in those outfits, would you trust anything they say about anything? No. I mean, did the people who wrote this article just write this video and he's reading it? There was no citation <laughs> on the quotes he was giving from the prior philosopher, were there? That was just, he gave a quote and just expected you to believe it, right? That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Motherfucker, cite problem. your sources. The trolley problem really is about ordering the moral worth of different people and numbers of people and different things. And as a communist, that probably really upsets him. That there's like this hierarchy of value. Yeah, like right. we'd save the rich man because he's worth more morally. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, it's because he pays me more. <laughs> Rich people. That's why the trolley problem is so yeah. boring. It's like, why are you just valuing things? Why do we even have to? Have why are you just trolley? Value? Like, why are you valuing? Just, things? Out of a why are you just <laughs> valuing things? It's like I can't help it. It's just, value nothing. Okay. This we are in the frame of super effective. and the track and all this stuff just to say, oh, that's worth more than this. It's like, why? The real trolley problem is just how many damn trolleys are in San Francisco, man. There's too many trolleys. <laughs> Yes. Stop yeah. it. Be a better person. You can start by never wasting a second of your life contemplating. But now we're bad people uh, for like, contemplating trolley problems. Oh, yep. This is annoying. Yeah, that actually. last this, line. That this last line is just ridiculous. It's annoying. Be better and don't explore just your own cribbing, morality. The video is just cribbing the article. Like he's just reading out what's on the screen. Well, he's Stop highlighting it. it. So, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> put it in your own words. This is bad form. Also, isn't that uh, a copyrighted uh, feature there? Highlighting? I feel like. It oh, was. <laughs> don't tell. Uh, what's her name? Blair. Yeah. Illuminati. It looks like uh, Mr. Indigo Gaming is going to jump out. Is that right? Did I get oh. that right? Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. it's been a pleasure, sir. Thank you for joining us. It's great. So yeah. long. Yeah. Uh, obviously, no, we'll be always. going for a while, so maybe we'll catch you at another time as well. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Um, guys are going on for another like seventeen hours or something like that. So I'm maybe absurd, yeah. <laughs> some really close. Well, as always, thanks for inviting me on and uh, enjoy the rest of the video.
Later, yeah, take care. Care. Later, 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 man. Boy, See you guys. later. Bye, bye. Avoid trolley problems at all costs. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to be a better yeah, person, yeah. Right. Don't even ride a trolley, honestly. I've been on a trolley. Have Have you? Since you've did been you on a Did you run over anybody? I I uh, have spent much time in San Francisco, and I've been on the San Francisco trolley. So mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, but did you actually kill anybody? Way overrated, and no, we never ran over anyone. It was kind of disappointing. Uh, we have street cars. <laughs> Dude. Uh, I was gonna say, do do TTC streetcars count as trolleys? I was thinking that this entire time, like, what the fuck is a trolley? Are they talking about streetcars? Like, I think that must be it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't I know what the difference is. Sort of them, I guess. Welcome. Just the fact the that they're locked in, the concept works. Capital O opinions. Hello there. Oh, howdy, howdy. Howdy. hello. Joins the stream Great. just in time to hear about some wonderful basic ethics we're, we're talking about and how we oh, I love, I love wisecrack and I hate hypotheticals, so this is going to be great. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this what? is kind of annoying me now. Do you guys Another remember one. if for the prior philosopher he even stated the book title he was taking his quotes from? Books are gay. Why would they even bother? Uh, That's the stupid. Quotes uh, are Elaine Babadoo. Bab Babo? Bowork? <laughs> Babo. Baboon. They come from the book. Oh, the Bob did. That's still not good enough, but it's acceptable, I guess. Well, it's not, but you know. <laughs> Yo, they do this all the time. All these philosophy channels, they just read articles and papers and then just crib yeah. the thesis one to one. <sighs> philosophy well, I, Tube does this all the time. I'm surprised wouldn't, this wouldn't have been thrown out the second they read. Like, if you want to be a better person, stop contemplating trolley problems. Like, fucking hell. Yeah, that's a worthless <laughs> yeah. line. Also, uh, link is around there somewhere, Mr. Opinions. If you go past all of the trolley problems, find you'll find it up there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> trolley problems. I don't think these guys like it. I'm going to say that. I don't think they like the trolley problem one bit, you know? I'm not a genius. I'm, I'm good at reading, and I, th I think I like how that's the like the thing that he's added, and it's just worthless. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't think they like the trolley problem. Anyway, more of the article. <laughs> is, is that him asserting that, that, that he doesn't agree? Uh, well, I mean, the video is saying that the trolley problem is a joke, so I think it's just meant to be a meme. Is this the yeah. the article react equivalent of going, that's crazy chat? That isn't that crazy? I, I mean, a little bit. Yeah, like, that's, that's just yeah. lazy. Yeah. Like, like, the, al the article is bad, but this is really annoying. Well, yeah. at least the article is the article presenting yeah. the argument, you yeah. know? He well, yeah, most of what it. we just responded to was the article, not him. Yeah. <laughs> like, he just he hasn't the offered anything. and made a bad joke. Like, well, he told us what happened in The Good Place, too. Damn. Yeah, but that was also uh, from the article. That's what, yeah, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, like, he's <laughs> done fuck all. describing a scene in a show, you know? I remember like, he repeated it twice. He, did. he repeated the explanation of the trolley problem. Like, if it's hot, if you're more of a visual learner, let's move away from this visual to another actually less clear visual. <laughs> no, he did. You go, <laughs> who invented the trolley problem in hopes of sending them hate mail? It's worth noting that this problem was introduced in philosophy in order to make this exact point. It was made famous by Judith Jarvis Thompson. Huh? 1976 so paper, Killing, God. Letting Die, and the Trolley Problem. This paper is what made the trolley problem a thing. Okay. And led it to becoming a useful oh, thank trope you. for lazy professors who I'm pretty sure oh, lazy okay. professors. So first of all, it wouldn't bus. matter if she's the one that created the trolley problem as is. Like, the, you're not going to find an origin well, for the question I, of hypothetical, like, choosing yeah. life over other life. Nobody's got an origin on that one. This problem was first introduced by Philippa Foote, not Judith Jarvis Thompson. Yeah, but she popularized The article it. didn't even get it right? Yeah, I guess, but... Sure. Sure. What, uh, what, what, what year was that? Good well, job, I was, I was, I was actually going to say, you've got to be careful, though, even if she did popularize it, you, if you're going to talk about what it was created for, then you actually do have to talk about the person who made it, right? You can't yeah. talk about who popularized it. Well, it's funny, because literally the first sentence of her article is giving the other person credit for creating the trolley problem. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> like, come on, well, yeah, this is really uh... basic stuff. Is he going to mm. flip this into, and she went on to become Adolf Hitler's right, man, right hand? No, he's, <laughs> he's using her as evidence that it's a stupid thing, because she introduced it to point out how stupid it is, because it's used for lazy professors. Which is oh, boring. Okay. I don't know if you popularize the question while being used in like ethical study. Even if she didn't invent the question. Actually, ethics is like a video game. 
It's also worth noting that in a yeah. later paper, what do, you, what do you? What? Oh, I thought he was going to go and say something and interesting. This is like a video saying, game. No, and then, yeah, yeah, I, I thought he was saying like ethics is like a video game. The thing proceeds so to explain why he just Pretty said, cool. and then he just didn't. <laughs> like, oh, never mind. There's man. so many amazing ethical quandaries that come from video game stories and stuff. This is so cringe. Well, yeah, it, it's it's sort of by like, comparing it to video games, it's trying to downplay its value, which is pretty lame. Yep. But even then, I don't even understand what you mean when you say ethics is a video game when it manifests in real life in action. That's ethics, right? But you would accept that that's, or is he just talking about like ethics class, like at university? It's so funny though, right? If if if. Nothing. If we rewind, but be before World War Two, and someone said, "I've got a big bomb that could like almost wipe out a place," would you use it to prevent a war from happening, or would you not? And then he's like, "That's fucking video game shit." <laughs> You're like, okay. You, didn't you know like what? Video game really tested my ethics and my moral fiber. World of Warcraft. No. World. You're sitting there. Like... You're in Stranglethorn Vale. Wow. Are you gonna kill this level thirty piece of shit human paladin? Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyone who plays as human in any MMO should die. Oh, oh, or are you gonna just wave? Are you gonna wave and just walk by on your little horsey? The thing is, like, with video games, though, it's something that people have pointed out plenty of times, is that even in video games where the choice doesn't matter in terms of the consequences, what really is relevant to the player is the thoughts that they have about the choice that they made. Why did they make that choice? Was that the right choice compared to, you know, the alternative that was presented to them? And could, are we going to say that's not useful either? In, like, video games like Mass Effect, where you're sort of like, hmm. I feel like there's, I a really, about that, you know? I feel like there's a really not scary video game in which this comes up. <laughs> we can't talk about it, though, because Frigga's a fucking player. <laughs> well, there's All a right, great geez. holding back our <laughs> podcast for years. Oh. There's a fantastic video game. Well, I don't know how any of you guys feel about it. That's all about moral questions. Undertale. I've, I've seen a lot of good porn of it, but I haven't there actually played the game. Yeah. <laughs> I'd call Undertale more about how we interact with content than about moral questions, but I, I still Well, I mean, it's, it's obviously it's both of those things, right? I agree with you, but... Yeah. I mean, it's the question is, are you going to kill all these people or not? <gasps> That's some real sicko shit. <laughs> yeah. You need to be I mean, a better person. I mean, the genocide route, unironically, is some sicko shit. It's like, in order I mean, to it get... is. Like, you, I, like, I try to play it once, I'm like, I can't do this. In, in order <laughs> to, to get stop. more content out of the video game, you are, like, actively going out of your way to be malicious. It's a specific yes. thing the game's doing, and it's pretty oh, neat. Geez. And the game's hyper-aware, like, like, you're doing it just to get content. That's yeah. Like, why are you doing this? Thompson imagined a third option with the trolley problem, which was Ooh, hitting option. the switch to move the trolley towards yourself. And she concluded that if you're not ready to take yourself out, you can't ethically take anyone else out. But what's funny about that is it sounds like a permutation, which would be interesting to add yep. and to ask people. Yes. It wouldn't just be bullshit well, like that a, makes you a, a bad person for thinking about. Well, it's mm -hmm. like a permutation that validates the existence of the trolley problem as a hypothetical, isn't yep. it? Because yeah, you, can, a different like, you can... Oh, dude. Apparently, in this criticism of the trolley problem, you vindicated it. Yeah, yeah, because he's, uh, you, you present the trolley problem, and then he says, you know what's wrong with this? Is there's no personal sacrifice involved. You just flip the switch. You go, okay, you can kill yourself. That's an option. Then he'd be like, well, you know what's wrong with it now? Is that uh, you're like, it's... Mm, it, uh, yeah, you added yeah, an option exactly. without even realizing it. You well, it imagine himself. you said, it's, it's not real. And then you go, okay, and you knock him out, and then you take him to an actual trolley problem. <laughs> 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 like, is this good now? And he's like, I don't real like this. For you. Oh, I, don't know if I, I, I don't like this at all. It's not, it's real. I think that seems fair. But Thompson herself took the problem from influential 20th century ethicist oh, Philippa there Foote in her 1967 go. paper, The Problem <laughs> of Abortion and the Doctrine of Double Effect. The Doctrine of Double Effect is a principle used by Catholic philosophers, including Foote's friend Elizabeth uh -oh. Anscombe, to support their view of abortion. Don't the say main Thomas Aquinas. Idea is fucking that there is a distinction drop. between what a man foresees as a result of his voluntary action and what in the strict sense he intends. So intentionally performing an abortion aims directly at the termination of the fetus, which for Catholic philosophers equates to murder. But this can be challenged- By the way, all this is pointless because it's hypotheticals and stuff, okay? Sure, yeah. 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 The thought, yeah. Well, yeah. What if the fetus threatens the life of the mother? The Catholic argument- I don't, I'm actually lost. You understand this is all trolley problem shit, right? Whenever you talk yeah, about any I of this. 
Yes, I this is, would you rather right. do this or this? You're just changing the aesthetic of the trolley problem. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I think I, I might be understanding it incorrectly, but I think I was kind of right with the he's going to follow this up with and then she went on bec to become Adolf Hitler's right-hand philosophy person because he's just <laughs> doing that but saying this other group of people who I don't agree with really like this person and the trolley problem, so it's bad. Well, uh, like, it, it, am I wrong in that that's what he's doing right now? I don't know, because as you said, uh, Mahler, th he's just proposing another trolley problem, which I'm yeah. assuming he would agree with. Like, do you save, yeah, like, doesn't it you know, do you save the life of the mother by getting rid of the fetus? Which the is way, a, the way that he's of the trolley problem. splitting them makes me think like he's a fucking moron. He's like, look at this dumbass drawing with a little dude and the trolleys and stuff. That's never going to happen. Anyway, uh, abortion now, if there's is a, a very important sub. Yeah, with the, with a the fetus, it threatens the mother's life. Like this is actually something <laughs> that happens. Trolley problem shit is stupid because that's never gonna happen. It's but when you have to figures. choose between two lives, that does happen. <laughs> what, I mean, okay, what if the pregnant woman true. is tied to the track and the, what if trolley the pregnant is woman a very is a trolley? tiny trolley <laughs> that will just hit them right in the right in the baby? <laughs> right, in the abortion it's right in the baby. What if it's, it's five it's, pregnant women on a track? My what would you God. do? Oh my God. Here, there might five be trolleys. Doctor <laughs> would not be permitted to give an abortion as it would terminate the fetus, but they would be permitted to perform a hysterectomy on the mother as the death of the fetus here would only be foreseen, not directly intended. They would obviously hope. Okay, I agree. That's a pretty okay, retarded. So that's not the, so that's, that's not a pretty the, retarded the idea. <laughs> the Catholic position is, yeah, is the, that. The doctrine of double yeah. effect is, uh, yeah. That's really yeah, the stupid. Catholic position is that it's, it's uh, permissible to perform an abortion if it saves the mother's life. Apparently, back in those days, it wasn't. Because the, the, the mother has a chance to go on and create new life and uh -huh. no more kids and everything. And it's a tragedy, but that is the, that's their position on the matter. By double effect, the intention is the salvation of the mother's life rather than something else. Which is still a little bit, you know, cope, but... Would you say mm -hmm. five... Hydrogen bombs or the hydrogen bombs. Yeah, they're more useful. How, hey. how have we not mentioned yeah, exactly. the Theris this whole time where we're talking about like difficult, you know, hypothetical <laughs> situations, you know? Oh, we don't mention the what, sorry? To choose. Viserys? Viserys. Viserys. Oh, right. uh, like, the choice you'd have to make. Like, that's just another great one. Like, you can imagine being thrown in that situation. But then, like, this guy would just say, oh, that would never happen. Like, it's crazy. Well, yeah, he'd be like, that's fiction, you idiot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, that's family, you dumbass. Like, dragons are real. Anybody. Dragons are real. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I, I One hate of the that. reason people write fiction is to grapple with the ethical questions of real life. Exactly. Yeah. That's why we like good fiction because it gives us, you know, the proper immersion that we're looking for. Like, well, it's, it's the safe that. escapism. We don't actually have to deal with yes. this shit. We don't want to yes. actually have to I deal with it. I don't want to worry about Vagar outside my window. I yeah. want to fucking see <laughs> yeah. him. On screen, <laughs> you know I, what I mean. I, I just wonder why dilemmas like the utility monster don't get this sort of attention. Is it just because they're less popular? Like, no, nobody's hating on the utility monster as an ethical uh, like quandary for utilitarianism. I presume but, that's the case. The trolley problem is just the most famous and well referenced. You know? I guess, yeah. The thick figures, man. It just it's triggers people. Just, it's those cute faces. <laughs> that's what did it. <laughs> that both mother and baby pull through. Honestly though, this is really complicated, which is why I no longer go to Catholic doctors. Foot disagreed with this argument, but what? wanted to what? seriously- You don't, is that, a, is that a joke? I don't know. It was an attempt at a joke. joke. Funny. The funny ha ha. Uh, yeah, I could have that was. Okay. Friend, so her paper thinks about how it would apply in a variety of situations, one of them being the trolley problem. She starts with an example of some potholers who are being led by a fat man out of a cave who then gets stuck trapping them. If you've never heard the term potholers before, I need you to I need you to focus. Stop giving me these I examples you when you keep telling me how yeah. fucking worth it is to think about them. Like, yeah. I, I need you to focus and, and tell me what you actually want me to yeah. understand from you. Because right now, you're, you're like, okay, so there's a cave, there's potholers, he's a fat guy. And my brain's already setting it up in my head, and I'm like, wait, I thought this makes me a bad person. Why are you doing this to me? I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's a good hypothetical. British okay. term, which means an explorer of caves, or spelunker. That's what okay. a potholer is. I right. love this Okay. One. The on. cave then starts filling up with water, which risks drowning them all. But one of the potholers has a stick of dynamite, obviously, which they could use to blow up the fat man and get out alive. To be clear, Foot is aware that this is an absurd example. It's intentional. She uses this to
I, I yeah, like so, the troll. This is the troll. I, yeah. I hate it so <laughs> much. How do you clarify that? What's going on? Fucking clever boy you are to point out how it's a hypothetical absurd than the trolley problem. Oh come on! Oh my god! That might be the dumbest thing he said. Like that just makes so much of this worthless. Like why point that out? Backed up his own foot. Like I get that it's absurd. Fuck off! He's spitting his own face there. Like what the hell was that? The show that our intuitions go against the Catholic doctrine of double effect. To blow up the big boy is to kill him. No, the Catholic is doctrine is no. pretty intuitive. No, 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 he's talking about I... the hysterectomy thing, not what you're talking about. The hysterectomy thing, okay. The, Whatever you can give an abortion by get, doing hysterectomy as opposed to just doing an abortion. Don't know about that one. That's what, I mean, that's what the paper was about. I don't know if I they, I'm assuming if, that's knows, not the know. idea anymore, obviously, but. <laughs> he used the trolley problem to destroy the trolley. I <laughs> used the trolley problem. <laughs> anyway, yeah, examples suck. Everyone. Here are some examples of why uh, examples intense. suck. But it seems permissible <laughs> to shove that dynamite up his butt and let it rip. To be clear, foot doesn't suggest butthole dynamite. That's all me. It just seems to Shut make up. the most sense to put the dynamite. Shut I get up. it. You think you're really yeah. funny, but I want you to make a point. Come on. Yeah, yeah, it's it's but that's funny. him attempting it's to be funny. Never is all he's it. contributed. That's like, all, that's all, that's it's all he's funny. added to the work of other people. Is trying to be funny here. Up the butthole Kinda, if yeah. you wanted to get just maximum blow upage from the guy, because then it would uh, yeah, blow, blow up, up right in the middle. <laughs> Foot yeah. says this example is meant uh, to your parallel butthole is one, not in the middle. If the fetus I isn't aborted, both the fetus and mother would die. Now her next example So it was uh, legit then. Yeah, wait, is it a good example or a bad example? This is what yeah. I, mean. so, I can't. What is I the point? Know. Are you trying to I'm say just, it was absurd uh, and stupid and we shouldn't think about it, or that it was actually useful in understanding the problem? Tell me. Surely he's gonna get there. Is a judge faced <laughs> by rioters demanding that a suspect be found not guilty theory, otherwise not. take their own <laughs> bloody revenge in a particular part of town, potentially killing tons of people. Now, the actual culprit is unknown, so the judge takes. That's a funny shot. Is that a Photoshop of the <laughs> top part? Dude, the top part looks like a lab. <laughs> birthday it, hat. I thought it was a I birthday it, hat. I think no, it's, it's a just Photoshop. It looks like free. No, 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 no. It's just like a stage play or something. Uh, it's it looks like a. It looks like a, pl a plunger. Kind of. I think it's, it's just like a lamp. A it, took, it looks like yeah, a lamp. Yeah. It looks like they went. It might to, be a to, lamp, or yeah. yeah, like a like a dog's food bowl, like a steel one, and then you just flip it upside down, put a hole Maybe. in the top. This is called yeah, filmmaking on a low budget. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to hear anything about how it's bad. What does it mean? And you need a suspect to be found guilty. Otherwise, they'll take their own bloody revenge in a particular part of town, potentially killing tons of people. Now, the actual culprit is unknown, so the judge takes it upon themselves to execute an innocent person to avoid a killing spree. Wow, only in a hypothetical example would a judge execute an innocent person because that's never happened in America. What yeah, is okay, happening? Man. What is happening? Oh my goodness. Your point is Rambling so fucking moron. murky why, now. Why are, wait, what do you mean why this would never happen in America? Why would you say America? That's happened in literally every country. It's always going to happen if yeah. there is capital punishment. Always. Google why, why? Happens is it just time. like, All the time lol, of make fun of America? I guess so. Yeah. Yes. Death row and we're America like, bad. Oh, America bad okay. though. America bad. Oh, okay. Busy That's ordering true. smoothies on an app that I get points for. This too would be impermissible under the doctrine of double effect because the judge would be intending the death of the innocent person while he'd only foresee the death of the many if he didn't do anything. Foot contrasts this with the trolley problem. Now, we might think that the doctrine of double effect would suggest well, this is not a good parallel to the trolley problem I'm because in the trolley actively problem lost. I, I'm just like, shut the fuck up. He's, he's just, not making a point at all. He's just rambling. None of it can... Uh, he's just going oh, through his Philippa think... Foots things. Like, I don't know why exactly after soundly rejecting the hypothetical in its first... In, like, in the yeah, first I'm instance. so lost. Should this not is the, the visual the definition of getting lost in the weeds. It's like Guide he's standing at the edge of a cornfield beckoning <laughs> you in. Come, <laughs> get, get lost with me. And you're like, no... <laughs> The answer is like well, there, we, we go, okay, let's set up the flamethrower. We're like, I'm coming. <laughs> if, if, listen, if you don't pull the, the lever, we're going to run over five people. But if we pull the lever, we're going to get lost in the weeds with no. Mr. Wisecrack here for another two hours. I want that. Oh, just fucking kill him. Yeah, I'm just imagining you getting lost in the weeds, and as you're parting, yeah, in the cornfield, Lewis shows up. You just part the weeds, and he's staring at you. 
Oh, he's like, don't be afraid. And, you're like, and then oh, you yeah. see the two paths, you know, like the overhead view where it's like the, the path that's being carved through the cornfield or the wheat field, and then there's Lewis chasing after you. Embrace the confusion. Embrace, Embrace the, the lack of answers. <laughs> the one person, which would contrast with the consequentialist view that you should. But while the judge knows he's definitely going to kill one person to save others, Foot is less sure about the trolley problem. Writing in real life, it would hardly but the trolley ever problem's be certain, more certain that the man on the narrow track would be killed. What? Perhaps he would. He it's baked into the trolley problem. Point. The whole point. The point so is it's, that it's, it's either one or the other it. dies. The, the trolley this, element yeah. is just the. It's just Dude, fun aesthetics. I, it's, I'd lose my mind. It's just flavor to visualize it. Annoying, right? He's like, well, no, but I mean, in real life, maybe he'd wriggle out of the the. It's like, no, that's not the premise. Oh, of the trolley problem is that he can't get out. The premise if is know, that if he could wriggle no. out, what would be the point of bringing it up in the first place? If he could wiggle out, if the cat exactly. could jump it, off, it, what would be the point? You've the changed point the problem. Can't. Yeah, you've changed it into you something said to different. Them, Five yeah. people will die unless you choose to kill one. Then they say, I choose to kill one. You go, oh, wow, because five lives are worth more than one? And then they go, no, because the one will wriggle out. Yes, but have you considered what if the hypothetical you gave me were different? <laughs> Whoa. Wow. A foothold on the side of the tunnel and cling on as the vehicle hurtled by. The Tunnels. driver of the tram does not then leap off and brain him with a crowbar. The judge, however, needs the death what? of the what? man for him. Yeah, we need to roll that back because we're going to have to. Something happened there. I Allegedly, this is scripted. Writing, but... In real life, it would hardly Lies. ever be certain that the man on the narrow track would be killed. Perhaps he might find a foothold on the side of the tunnel and cling on. Well, no, the, the, if all five the, the two that. people saying these things are fucking retards who can't engage with hypotheticals. <laughs> I'm assuming like, this, this is, is going just, somewhere. Like, basic I, tier I, one. Because this is Why so absurd, it's got to be going it's the somewhere. Simplest one. Pram does not then leap yeah, off yeah, and brain him with a crowbar. The judge, however, needs the death of the innocent man for his good purposes. We got a shout out foot here for putting the phrase brain him with a crowbar in an academic paper. You didn't wake up today thinking you were going to. Oh my, I don't care about your comedy. Move uh, on. Oh I don't my care about this comedy. I don't believe so you. I, okay, so okay, I, okay, I, wait. So it seems it's like so the point that he was, I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm confused. I was trying to, I was like, oh yeah, I think I got it. Wait, no, I don't. <laughs> because all I got from that is that he was saying that the good, like he, he needs, the judge needs the guy to die for the good outcome in his to happen. But in the trolley problem, maybe he could get out, but you wouldn't assume that the driver would then kill the guy. Yeah, she's trying to highlight the difference, the I suppose, between those two scenarios. But there's no difference because I mean, in the, in the judge hypothetical, what if the mob of people just changed their mind? Yeah, what if they do it anyway? Like that's, yeah, yeah. Exactly. what if it was just right. a bluff? Turns what out when you edit bluffing. hypotheticals, you can just do that indefinitely for exactly. every hypothetical. Exactly, when you edit Crazy. the hypotheticals, yeah, it fucks them up. Yeah, that's true, so, that does happen sometimes. There's no difference between the two hypotheticals in that regard. I so I brought up the article to try to understand what the fuck the article was saying. It's not gonna help. The original article. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> I know. It's um, not gonna help. Well, no, actually, so the argument actually that the person's posing makes more sense. They're saying if you were to, to give people the judge hypothetical, most people would say, no, you shouldn't frame an innocent person to prevent people from going to destroy a town. And yet they were contrasting it with the trolley problem, saying most people would sacrifice one in the trolley problem to save the five on the other track. So they're saying, is that a contradiction? No, because one of them is a threat and one of them is assuredly someone will die. You know what episode actually explored this really well? Do you guys remember the pig episode in Black Mirror? I haven't well, seen another hey, Black Mirror episode. <laughs> Yeah, the pig one with the the mayor, or the I, president, or whatever. Oh, the guy. Yeah, someone no, remembers no. it. Yeah, yeah, that's one that Prime explores Minister it. David Cameron. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that one like really did a good job of exploring this concept, see, seeing his stress throughout the day and the pressure to actually do the act to potentially save a life, and um, all the things that we mentioned in terms of like the different hypotheticals. You, we we see him have to have to deal with all that and the pressure around them. And it's so good. And just to hear this dumbass like just say that it's all useless. It's just it's so silly to me when there's so many different variations of this in storytelling. You can see. Well, the thing is, we're running out of time. Is, uh... I'm assuming he's gonna start wrapping up and giving us a point here. No. I was just because okay, gonna... he's, he's missed Philippa Foote's point for the most part, especially because she was aiming at the doctrine of double effect. The entire article's about the doctrine of double effect. You just skipped it. You're saying? <laughs> oh, or missed yeah. it. He's not really engaging with it. He's reciting He's lazy. what he has to say, but like, well, he probably didn't even write is, this. A lot of the point does yeah. have to do with 
it the realities disengaged. of these things are made a lot more obscure in in a very much unforeseeable world where we don't we can't say concretely in the real world that like the rioters will go and burn down that town and we can't say concretely that the individual tied to the tracks will die right mm -hmm. we can just say that these are likelihoods right well, it's weird because Rain... this this critique that he's talking about here is completely different from the first critique that he spent the first half of the video on yeah, the first half of the video was it doesn't even matter, which feels like the end of the conversation, right? Yeah. Well, yeah it doesn't yeah. matter and it doesn't help you because it's a hypothetical. That's the end. Doing then this is wrong. Well. No, that's you'll, part you'll, one. You'll never play God. You'll never be in the scenario where it actually happens. And even if you were, it'll be something that's so entirely different you. than the discussion yeah. on it. It wouldn't help you at all. And it'll likely make it worse because you'll end up with PTSD or an understanding that you thought you could handle it, but you absolutely couldn't. Which is like all these things are terrible arguments. But they, they render it so that this point of comparison, why why even bother? It's, it's yeah. already worthless. Crowbar, and now both those things have happened. Point being, anything's possible. Anything's no, possible. not everything's possible. Oh, Basically, Foot the uses the trolley that? problem to emphasize That's... the difficulty and even impossibility of knowing the precise outcome of ethical decisions it that is take a place. Oh, but we're, we're, we're talking so about something different. Stupid. We're talking about something completely <laughs> different. The trolley problem has everything that it, everything that it needs baked into the problem. It's certainties. It's guarantees. You can, that's what a hypothetical is. Right. You can hypothetical it further. You, you, you present it to him, and then he says, "Oh, but you don't know that the guy's going to die." And I go, "Oh, but hypothetically, you do." <laughs> yes. Exactly. And then he's that, like, "Wait, like, what?" <laughs> this is like, I you trick me. Are you, are you are you stupid? Are you so? Are you stupid? Are you stupid? And it might be the case oh. that you just literally do not have the intelligence quotient necessary to deal with a hypothetical, in which case I legitimately feel pity for you. Yeah, that's why I was saying. I feel like it's like a lack of creativity. They can't even picture it in their head. It just upsets them. They want to, like, disengage. I also and find it frustrating that we keep using footage from Vsauce's really interesting video yeah. about the trolley <laughs> problem as an experiment. And he never acknowledges this experiment, though, like... It's it's an example of someone trying to conduct the experiment in real life. You think that'd be ah, relevant? Conduct. Well, and, and that isn't, ah. isn't it a little bit awkward because the whole point of the Vsauce video is it the, the, the video validates it as like a worthwhile thing that exists. So like you're yes. making the point while simultaneously using footage from a thing that validates the point. It's, it, you know what I mean? It's like there's a there's a con the conflict here with uh the footage and like what you actually believe. But one of the most interesting it's things about this, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, one of the one of the things most interesting about the Vsauce video is kind of highlighting the difference between what people think they would do and what they would actually do. Yeah, yeah. and so like that's an interesting conversation if you want to talk about how exactly. hypotheticals mm -hmm. don't necessarily reflect what people will do. But y y there's an example of the trolley problem being conducted as an experiment in real life, and he clearly is aware of it because he's showing footage from it, but he's just not going to talk about it. Well, he still says it's useless. It's crazy. Oh my god. Well, I guess world. in that he... context, the footage makes sense. I didn't realize this footage was from a Vsauce video, which I guess was making I recommend a good it. argument Stuff. about right. uh, the, the trolley problem. Yeah, I just, I found it silly that it's his argument here is being substantiated by real footage of like yeah. track switchers. <laughs> and like, this is missing the point, dude. It's just, what? But even anyway, if sorry. the lady who created this thinks it's stupid, okay, hypothetically, I don't know if that's what her point is, but even if she thinks it's stupid, that's kind of irrelevant because if if someone creates some philosophical problem even as a joke and yet it captivates people so much so that it just gets passed down from decade to decade and decade and gets repeated again and again that shows you that there's something important being discussed there that people latch on to why did you absolutely you just use a fucking hypothetical to explain something to me Oh, damn it. <laughs> it, it's so funny how he goes on and on about Take how like, call, awful please. hypotheticals are. Then he goes to Philippa Foote, who's like a respected philosopher. She was pretty important in her field. Um, and then she, he goes right to an article in which she's doing basically nothing but hypotheticals. <laughs> <laughs> basically, the entire article is nothing but I hypotheticals. Once you start to attention. really pay attention to all the discussion regarding anything to do with ethics, you'll realize, like, oh shit, there's a hypothetical and another one and another one and another one. And yeah. like a lot They're of everywhere. Done. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> you feel like he didn't write? You said I think you said this. You feel like he didn't write this because these are the type of things that you'd catch. Like, I don't in, think they do a, a on Wise Wisecrack. I assume they have a presenter, they have an editor, they have a writer. You know, they right, didn't right, edit right. out him looking down at a script a couple times. I did. I did catch it. I just didn't oh. say it before because I thought it was me being too autistic. 
<laughs> it, oh, you're on EFAP, baby. Yeah, go, you can't yeah, get in here unless you're tism. autistic. So. Get, get all all of your all your tisminess. Get it out Basic while you're here. This is the place for it. Exactly. Yeah. Only yeah, yeah, autistic. Yeah, he allowed. passes his eye down and to the right, so it's like yeah, reverse Basically, JFK. Foot uses the trolley problem to emphasize the difficulty and even impossibility of knowing the precise outcome of ethical decisions that take place in the real world. And that in trying to boil down complex ethical decisions to thought experiments, we often miss the point about how unlike a thought experiment the world actually is. Wow, that's wow, crazy, thanks. bro. Uh, I, wow, that's, that's so incredible. Interesting anyway, and crazy. Wow. yeah, if you want to tell me, if you want to like open your mouth for a point, then let, let, it, let me know. I'll Which is like you. when a friend says, so hypothetically, and you go, whoa, 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 why don't you just, why don't you just say something that actually happened? And you're like, oh, well, because I don't, I don't know what I'd be referencing. I'm saying hypothetical. You're like, well, then there's no point, is there? Okay. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Let's talk about something else, I guess. And remember, you can't be like, hey, remember the Dark Knight? Where you're like, nah, bap, bap, fiction. Not real. Hypothetical. Okay. You have to literally create the fucking trolley problem before you can ask someone about it. <laughs> you have to go out there and do it, and then be like, this is hypothetical, it happened. It shouldn't mm -hmm. surprise us Whittle that this was the initial intent of the trolley problem once we consider that Foote was one of the most important figures in the development of modern virtue ethics. A position that grew out of a frustration with the either-or between consequentialism and deontology that's often you, He might understand what some of those words mean. Maybe. Nah. Contemporary usage of the trolley problem. This led philosophers like Foote back to an Aristotelian version of ethics to try to make sense of how acting well is part of living well. As a particular kind of animal, Aristotle considered humans to be rational animals, is associated with a particular kind of good. In this case, this guy looks happy. For he represents yeah, good. He him. Yeah, that guy has not seen this video. <laughs> this he guy represents something else. else. Aristotle and <laughs> what is he looking at? We make like... ethics. He's looking at weed. Uh, <laughs> weed he's watching a lemono video. Yeah. Okay. Decision, I don't not wonder why. Guy, I was, I also specific. wonder why he's they reacting. can't be watching a lemono video. He's reacting to it. He was like a <laughs> picture of a guy in an electric chair in, a, in an, a video that's like entirely constructed by stock footage. It's like, is that the best one they had on Shutterstock? Yes. Or can you get a clip <laughs> from Green Mile or? Is associated with a particular kind of good. In this case, it does seem like flourishing. a happy life. For Aristotle yeah, and the virtue ethicist, we make ethical decisions not as gods, but as specific. Why are you not going as, to Aristotle? As as God. I don't know. We bounce all the fucking place. No, no, no. Why is he going to Aristotle as a virtue ethicist when Philippa Foot is a virtue ethicist? Just yeah, stick with her. Woman. She was yeah, one of the founders of the modern though. version of it. I don't know who that is. Like, I know who this Aristotle is. This relies on the whole observation of, ah, see, well, you're playing God when you do the, the trolley problem. Like, calm down. Like, she, are we not playing God whenever we one who think about anything? The trolley problem. Hypothetically? Yeah, totally you're right, Theo. Why not just, like, refer to her perspective? Consider I, it, let's yeah, be like, focused. Woman moment. And she invented the trolley problem, by the way. So you know, let's not forget Bad that. bitch. But I think she might have actually <laughs> read She's the cause of all this. He might have actually read about some Aristotle in his philosophy undergrad that was probably a decade ago, and so that's totally. what he knows to cite to is like this is actually kind of like Aristotle. I read that back in the day. Probably. Did you know that Aristotle? Did you know that Aristotle, Aristotle, know that Aristotle thought that human beings weren't gods? Whoa! Hang on! Whoa! Hang on. Whoa! Aristotle. You have to give me some hypotheticals to help me understand that. <laughs> <laughs> human individuals in specific situations who have to make sacrifices to do the right thing, who can be limited by structural and material factors, and who are often ignorant to the outcomes of their actions. So to reply to Renick... Wait, why was that stock footage of a guy just on the phone used to... It's that better moment? than nothing, damn it. Is it? Is it, though? It's like sacrificing for work. Guy on a phone writing something. <laughs> Which is like... You could always just default to the guy narrating as the visuals if you don't have a good one. Yeah, I they thought it. that was a good one. But what if he's just staring at the script the whole time? Oh, well, oh, well I mean, I, let's say well, hypothetically no, that it was a good one. Right? What about a black screen instead of that guy again? Like, I'm just so done with him, man. He had, like, human sacrifice, you know, so, like some Aztecs ripping hearts out or something. To spice up the video. Hey, they didn't rip hearts out. They were civilized. They used a knife. Okay, excuse me. They're not barbarians. They cut your chest open and then delicately. Yes, they didn't. Yeah, your heart. exactly. <laughs> they were they were surgical. They didn't do any of that. You sure they didn't use shit. one of those uh, penny machine claws to do it. I thought that was how they did it back in the day.
You have to use a little knob it. to move it around. Oh, true. Uh, sharp rock. It's like a little game. If you actually grab the heart. And if you miss the heart, it just hits it, it goes back up. They're like, God damn it. Oh, now imagine it somebody at the, at the bowling alley playing the that game and saying Kali Mars is descending to grab like the plush Pikachu. boss. Nixon Robinson. It is of course wildly misleading when the trolley problem is taught without taking all of these glaring problems into consideration. But the glaring problems such Wait, as you're was... probably not gonna have this happen in real life. <laughs> Like, what does he think is going on in a mean, philosophy class? I feel like the actual problem he has is that before you give someone a hypothetical, teach them what a hypothetical is. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay. Spicy, Mahler. <laughs> it's crazy, but sure. But it's equally important to remember that the trolley problem was originally devised as a lighthearted and slightly... Death of the author, bitch. I don't yep, care. don't care sardonic way of showing the importance of doing exactly this. Because in a life or death trolley problem situation, which to be clear, we are all very unlikely to ever experience. Why do you keep saying <laughs> yeah. that? Oh my God. Know. We are. We are. Some of us totally are. not going to happen. <laughs> what your job is, man. By the way, if Jigsaw were real he and watched this video, he would totally put this guy in the trolley problem. He'd be like, God, yes. he deserves it. it. annoyed me too much. <laughs> well, he deserves it. He should be in one of those saw houses for sure. I mean, <laughs> from a life and death perspective, yes, but everyone does a hype. Everyone probably has to do a trolley problem like all the time. Like, often, all I the time. All the time. All the time. Never, it's yeah, just not life or death. It would just be more mundane situations. Right. The point of the extreme is to force you to really dig deep and think about your principles. Yeah, but it wouldn't happen. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I hadn't considered that it wouldn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime <laughs> you can ever tell on somebody to get them into trouble and save five other people from getting into trouble, like that is you being a tattletale because you're pulling the trolley. You're but that might be the right thing to do. You're so fucking funny, too. If I had this guy here, I'd be like... Okay, so let's say hypothetically it did happen to you. Would you have been beneficial <laughs> in exploring the hypothetical beforehand? Yeah. Do you think you would have been worse off for having thought about it once before this situation arose? And remember, it's right. gonna happen to you. Hypothetically. It's well, I think that would so. scramble his brain. He'd be like, what the fuck? And then his head would explode <laughs> like a robot. Fingers crossed. The best actions might still have incredibly horrible consequences. Even if we would, of course, never intend them and would actively hope they would. Yeah, the best actions yeah. can still have horrible consequences. Yes, that's true. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, thank you for consequentialism mm -hmm. 101. <laughs> God. Yeah. Legit, happen? at sixth form, like, on the PowerPoints of problems with consequentialism, that was the first one. They do this like, in fiction all the time. It's what No Way Home was about. I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone just referenced the anime Monster in the chat, and I remember that being a really good example of this, too. Is anyone else familiar uh, with that anime? Yeah, yeah, yeah Monster's good. Anime yeah. is the monster. Oh, oh, chase no. it. <laughs> the premise crazy. for that, I, I'm, I'm not too sure what it is, but I remember the pre premise being explained to me, like something similar to like a doctor being in, the, in this situation, and the repercussions of the decisions he made. D DM me on Twitter, I'll let you know where you can find it. Sweet, sweet. Or, Ooh, what about the reverse? <gasps> Something horrible leads to great outcomes. So like we dropped the nuke on Japan, and now we have anime. Ooh. You say good outcomes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I say worth. You're Ooh. in a boat next to a volcano, and you can either save fifty people or one awesome dog. Ultimately, ethics can't rely on calculations about what might or might not happen in an imagined future. I instead, hate wait, this conclusion. wait, <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> I feel like he's said that in like 10 different ways. Like Hate every it, way yeah. he could possibly think of just repeating it, repeating it, beating us over the head with it. So like, <laughs> did he notice the bit in Philippa Foote's article where she acknowledges the possibility of chance and then discounts it can't because we can't it. really, you know, we can't account for it? I don't think he did. Yes. Ed, at least for Foote, should be grounded in an attempt to live and act virtuously. This entails analyzing situations from within and acting in accordance with virtue even when- Can you imagine that you're like walking down the street and there's a homeless person and they ask you for money? You have to stop because you've never in your entire life contemplated, hypothetically, whether you'd give a homeless person money. So you just stand there for like an hour, like in your head, like, well, should I actually do this or not? And then you go, I will. And you look at him and he's already a skeleton. <laughs> the horror! <laughs>
when we don't really know what might or might not happen. Well, this might not be as much fun what? as- well, Wait, imagine... wait, so uh, has he, is he saying like, I've solved consequentialism? I don't know. Like, someone had to do it, like, like, He seems to be coming down on the virtue ethics side of things, but like- Well, but, but I mean, I mean, it's kind of hard to not think about the possibilities of outcomes and those factor into the choices you make. It's kind of like part of yep. the discussion. You know, because people do try to make calculations of how likely or unlikely something is. Yeah, like, what is risk reason. as a principle, yeah, if not making assessments about likely or unlikely outcomes? Of course you don't know, but you can make predictions, and sometimes you can make really accurate predictions. But it's just, it feels like we've moved past that completely as a conversation anyway. Entails analyzing situations from within and acting in accordance with virtue, even when we don't really know what might or might not happen. Well, this might not be as much fun as imagining all the different ways. Okay, so wait, is his argument that we should create a set of rules to live by and then we just act according to those rules without any consideration of like what we think doing that action would do in the future? The yeah, don't, don't yeah, how do we get to those rules? How don't he... play test the rules. Oh, Rags, I'm so... that's a fantastic question. How do we get to those rules in the <laughs> how first place? Those rules see, if we're not allowed to think about and... how we get to those rules. How does it, yeah. it Isn't that the, the whole fucking point is that it starts with the guy who says, I fundamentally, principally would never take an action that would lead to someone dying. That's a principle I have. And then someone goes, trolley problem. And then that guy goes, fuck Ooh. you. And then he goes, oh, <laughs> and he does the Kaiba face. And then he turns into dust and his skeleton and fades away with the wind. What he's just said is basically, I don't care about your trolley problems. Stick to the principles. Like, it's like, oh, I'm okay. Really just put confused. your fucking fingers in your ears and go la 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 la, basically. I, I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. super confused. I, I want to reiterate this. Philippa Foote was a virtue ethicist. She basically like founded modern virtue ethics, right? She also invented the trolley problem and engaged with it during the article. So, like, how does he reconcile these two things by like coming down in this position that's basically just jerking well, off? He said like ethics. three different times she well, invented it is... to joke about it and say it's useless and. And, crap, and also, so he probably that's literally not what she said. <laughs> Someone else probably wrote this, and he's just reading it off. Yeah. Right. But have you so, considered? But, but I guess you need to ask the writer then. Like, what, what were you? What were you doing, man? How do... I was like, making fun of the trolley problem because I watched the Good Place and thought it was funny. Oh no, he uh, he wrote this episode according to the description. Oh no! <laughs> oh, okay, he wrote well, Amazon. Right, then, then I guess he, he didn't re he didn't research it though. Maybe oh, someone so he... did all the research. Oh, motherfucker can credit himself, but he can't put his fucking citations in. God damn it! Yeah, he didn't put the citations <laughs> to the articles or the Vsauce video. Oh my God. Or... Yeah, the Vsauce yeah. video totally yeah. deserves citation. That's fucked up. No, he didn't put any yeah. citations in this. I guess even if you're reading a script too, you, you, I can't see him getting this far into it and being like, wait, this is insane. Ooh. Yeah, like if, you're, would if, he, if he thought about it, right? I mean, he, there's also a Wisecrack video called Where Did All the Smart People Go? <laughs> I think we got to find out. <laughs> Not oh I, I can imagine why Wisecrack would be asking where all the smart people went. Where the smart Wise people? They all left the channel. We could run over people with trolleys or... How much dynamite you need to stick up a large man's butt to blow him up? It's much uh -huh. more useful in trying to think about how to ethically exist in our actual world. I, dude, but what I, kind uh, of what? The uh, conclusion uh, is don't uh, about uh, hypotheticals. Uh, go out and volunteer. Like it's <laughs> so <laughs> fucking funny. Imagine <laughs> we were picking up like you know litter together, put them in bags, and then I go, "Hey, dude, see that train over there? If it was like about to hit someone, would you push them out of the way and let it hit you?" And then someone goes, "Hey, hey." You pick Get up back the to fucking work. litter. Don't think about <laughs> shit like that. All you doing it. I just find that crazy. It's like, don't think about hypotheticals. Volunteer. It's like, what? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Why? Why should I volunteer? Yeah, hypothetically speaking, why? Uh, less than, yeah. <laughs> it's even. It's even worse. It's don't think, think about moral right. hypotheticals. Just be a good person. As if, the people, yeah, as if the people <laughs> preaching that to live a good life involves more to do with, like, rather than doing good actions, it's about being a good person. We're also engaging in hypotheticals. Well, I mean, I, I mean, Socrates went around just having conversations with people about stuff. I guess I, he was wasting his life, I, wasn't he? I cannot, <laughs> you know? I cannot stop belaboring this. Philippa Foote is a virtue <laughs> ethicist. She... She she is exactly what everything he is uh, like espousing right now in terms of how to live an ethical life. She was engaging with so many hypotheticals and pretty much only engaging with hypotheticals in the article from which the trolley problem comes. How the fuck does he reconcile this? <laughs> well, I don't think I don't he do. for you. I, I, I better, think, Senator. 
<laughs> I don't think he only he only brought up the volunteering thing so he could bring up the butt dynamite joke again for some reason. I, well, I guess that's I, a right. really I, good I don't know one. why we're I don't know why we're acting like you can't engage in hypotheticals and do good things in your life as well. Like as if as if impossible. You know what I mean? Like what like what what do you what are you getting at <laughs> when you do that? Like I don't you even only how pick you one. Do both. How yeah, do you, you explain to someone like the moral virtue of doing something that they're not currently doing at that exact moment? How do you explain it to them without using hypothetical? But what do you guys think? Is there still a place for the trolley problem in yes. philosophy 101? Yes, yeah, you, you didn't yeah. kill it, dude. <laughs> it's you still didn't do around. To change that. <laughs> I think if anything, he's added to the reason for why it's important and popular and yeah, useful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just reinforced it. Is it, is, it is it too abstract to help us think ethically? I fucking hate you. <laughs> too abstract <laughs> <laughs> to get. <laughs> <laughs> or might it be incredibly useful in showing us what ethics is? It's like, it's like a little meter, and you go, like, hypothetically, okay, so aliens come and he goes, aliens aren't real. You're like, what? I mean, what? Hypothetically. <laughs> 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 you get nowhere. <laughs> and then he's like, okay, well, I'll allow aliens, aliens. Okay, okay, so aliens come up with well, laser weapons. He's like, well, do they have laser weapons? That seems unlikely. Nah, hypothetical's what, what over already. It, what does it mean to choose a course of action based on presumed future outcomes that you want to avert? Like, let's say you're picking up the, the, the trash, like, you're volunteering and picking it up. Why? You're doing it presumably to prevent some bad outcome in the future, like a like a bird choking on litter or just like some amount of environmental degradation. That's all again appealing to like concepts and ideas and predictions about the future. Like, what's the? This is the problem. It's like you haven't concluded anything. You just, you know what I mean? Like, it's still like a yeah. huge conversation to be had about like ethics and which ethical system is the best one or what the merits are of each given one whether it's you know like virtue ethics consequentialism utilitarianism but he's it's almost like the, the video is like i proved it but you know let me know what you think do you think i'm right do you think i'm wrong yeah. comment below <laughs> this guy hasn't yeah he, has, he hasn't done shit he hasn't done a damn thing he's presented other people's work and tried to do shitty jokes in between like that's pretty much it like what so, did he dude, the comment below this? thing is so fucking canned that I think if someone was like a vlogger and they did that every time and they talk about like, you know, oh, my parents died in a car crash. Comment below for your opinion and I can read it out, out next time. See what you, you think about the event. So dude, hollow, you, you don't care. You don't. No, you they don't care. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm yeah, being lazy twistedness. Too, if I'm being too cynical here, but I'm trying to think about like what the no. point like this argument accomplishes. Is it just that he can... Ads in a better the, help breed. This is, is this just a justification to like dismiss any hypotheticals if, that would criticize well, his moral system? If pop like, philosophy tells you the trolley problem pops up everywhere, then he gets to be the one to be like, by the way, guys, I know you like your little pop philosophy, but here's how you're an idiot. That's step two. Well, see, you it, learn it. It, it, just, <laughs> it. it seems like a reductive conclusion of don't spend time sitting around thinking about philosophy. Go out and do things. It's like, yeah, going out and doing things is good. You do both. It's also yeah. good to sit down and think about things, too. Walk and talk, baby. <laughs> Yeah, chance. that's right. Walk and talk. I can walk and chew gum. Think about flaws. Is not. Let us know in the comments. A oh, huge God, shout out to our is. virtuous patrons who support our, our virtuous patrons. Virtuous <laughs> patrons. <laughs> uh, no, that's the opposite. What you're doing. It's all you people. Shame, shame on all the virtuous. Shame on you. Yeah, yeah, shame. These Amanda Platique. <laughs> that plus their money down the toilet. Without ads, along with extra audio and video content, and they get to jump. I don't know. I think we had enough. <laughs> I don't think yeah, there needs to be more. Does that? Boo! God damn! That was terrible. And that was that one was that one was really awful. Yeah. This is this is some low low IQ content right here. Like, I'm not as mad as I was at the last one, but because I actually <laughs> got to like oh, really there was something to engage with. Okay. Even if it was Lew bad. Lewis Lewis carried us through the first one, man. Yeah. I don't know about this guy. The first like, one was the like video. And Lewis oh, I don't even remember. One. Oh, I don't. Oh, yeah, Vane. No, I don't. Yeah, that one is a blur at this point. We did. You know yeah. what? Annoying though? voice, annoying music. I think we're doing really the great. Back... We're seven hours in, and we've done three videos. Crazy. The Man. background Man. was colorful, so it's a good video. No, but see, yeah, but all the footage colorful, is clearly yeah. like log raw footage that it hasn't been color corrected because they're lazy. So none of the colors even yeah. Like, pop. Like, look how flat it, it is. It does kind of have kind of a yellow color filter over the whole thing. Well, yeah, because like look at the shirt. It's not like a pure black. It's it's kind of like a yellowish uh, color. Yeah, no, they don't the even thing. get credit and the for microphone the microphone too. Sorry. You know, I yeah, bet he just clicked the. Really I bet he just clicked the auto button on Lumetri Color, like the plugin. 
<laughs> just like whatever it looks like, that's what I'm going with. It's an Adobe Premiere, everybody. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, oh, is it oh. pretty good? Pretty good video. Pretty good. Uh, Get this man out here... of my face, Mauler. Wish to eject now? I, I think Theo sounded like uh, I pushed yep. you through this whole video I, against your I'm will. I'm satisfied. So. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually pretty fun. I, I did this terrible video, but I had a good time. I'll let some of the people say good. Knowledge. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for having me on, and uh, good luck with the rest of the thingy. Absolutely. You bet. Thanks for jumping on, dude. Yeah, yeah this is it. all uphill Bye, from here. Theo. Bye bye now. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. See, you. See you later. Toodaloo. Um, oh, I'm glad you all could share the horror and misery of Wisecrack with your audience. Anytime. <laughs> that was, yeah, it so won't be the last around. time either. It no. won't be the last. He's a uh, colony of bad takes. We've got, I think, between two and three people about to come in, so we're going to have to lose... Oh, oh um, I, I can, I'll, I can I'll take off. Out. With this. Yeah. Whenever you need me to. All right, bye, John and Adam. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Thank you for Thanks, on. guys. You both. Toodaloo. See Thanks you later. Thanks for jumping on, guys. Bye. Hey, bye. Uh, happy anniversary, guys. Congratulations. Yeah, happy anniversary. Thank you. Episodes. That's fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. Keep at it. Thanks, Thanks dude. Maybe you'll catch up with us. We're almost at 300. Wow. Yeah, wow. Wow. Bro. Competition. <laughs> Take care. It can everybody. be a competition. Yeah, you, dude. you know, Adam and Sitch cheat though, because they label everything as part of their show. We we have sectors, okay? We have TV, True. movies, he... minis. Uh, we stream twice a week, and each one counts as episode. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's cheating. How's that cheating? Because I said so hypothetically. Uh, okay, listen, hypothetically. <laughs> hypothetically, if you only did one episode a week, then you would be way behind us. Yes, we but... choose to have we choose to have fewer. <laughs> More high quality episodes. Yes, yes, yes. Whoa. More low quality Hypothetically, episodes. what if your episodes fired. were of less quality? Sitch thinks that quantity is a quality all of its own when it comes to <laughs> podcasts. Yeah, this one sucks. That's fine. We'll do one in a few more days. It's all Listen, good. Listen, for, for, for the, the official long men here, I don't think you can complain about <laughs> quantity of anything. Okay. Yes, I can. Quanti quantity mania? We can and we uh -huh. will. Uh huh. Oh, I don't know if there's a, there's a website that has a bunch of these silly trolley problems if you want to do them on a stream. I would love to consider that. That sounds really fun. Yeah, yeah, that does. Neil, uh, Dr. Diddler sent this to me. Neil. Dr. Diddler? Was it, uh, how, the how the incredible this, Dr. Diddler. I, didn't, how would this I didn't know work? you could do get we, a doctorate in that. Do we I vote? Was... And then the, the vote, it's a poll or not poll, I guess? Yeah, for sure. We can do that. Okay, we can do this for a little bit. This sounds like fun. Wait, uh, for what? Yeah, you bet. What's going on? Absurd trolley problem. Well, you guys are going to have to go off of the one that I have on stream, I guess. Okay. So, uh -huh. we can all the just pull original it up trolley problem. Oh, no. A trolley is heading toward five people. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, killing one person instead. What do you do? Um, pull the lever. I think I'm going to pull the lever. Well, he might wriggle away yeah, anyway. Pull the lever. So. <laughs> pull the lever. No, oh, like, 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 if you highlight pull the lever, he, he like wiggles and grows. Yes, yeah, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> make sure you know what you're doing. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, this one right here. This one's gonna die. <laughs> Let's get him. To make you feel your choice. Yeah. Oh, where's the blood? <laughs> yeah, he's just go play. Hang on. 73% of people agree with you. What would the 27% doing? Wow, it actually says flat. I was joking. <laughs> what was the 27% doing about all this? They Sorry. froze. And they they didn't froze. They panicked. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Let's see if I can... They refused to engage with hypotheticals. They were not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those cowardly <laughs> bastards. <laughs> Sit there with their arms crossed. <laughs> They're still there. <laughs> They might genuinely yeah. believe, though, that the inaction is more morally justifiable than the action. Fine. Yeah, maybe. But it's mm. not. <laughs> like, yeah, wow. agree, yeah. But it's not. I mean, I agree. Nat. I'd rather pull it. So. Numbers. All right, next one. Oh, no. Maybe the trolley you. is heading towards five people. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, f killing four people instead. What do you do? Oh, I guess crap. you pull the lever, right? Because it's I five versus four. I mean, yeah, yeah. with I mean yeah. five versus four, it's, it's pretty numbers simple. Game. Pull the lever. Like no other family that's yeah, you. basically. <laughs> you There's also no other new variable. Yeah, that's the thing. You know nothing about the people, so it's like. Well, maybe... I think we're assuming that they're all you know basically identical. That they all suck. About as identical yeah. as you can get. Yeah, that they all yeah, suck on both tracks. They're all well, terrible look people. At... If you look at the little guy in the lever, he constantly shifts his eyes from the, from the people on the track to you. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Oh my god, that's, that's perfect. That's so perfect. <laughs> like, what are you going to do right. now? Pulling the lever. 
I hope everyone uh, can see that. That's so pull funny. The lever. So sixty-six yeah, percent of people pulled the lever on that one. Yeah. That's crazy. Nothing. Only sixty-six. I guess it's yeah. so simple. Like, so that means a, a third of a third of people would be like, no, five people will die instead well, of. Well, I guess uh, it's probably worth actually delving into. Are you on the hook for is is inaction in this case equivalent to action? Like in terms of moral culpability, I, I, I would say, say it is, yeah. virtually yeah. yes. Yeah, I would I'd say, say so. yes yeah. too. But I guess if you disagree on that, that might factor into it. But yeah, right. Because if well, anything, that's... I view it as you pull the lever and save a life, not yeah. you pull the lever and kill yeah, four people. That, exactly. that would be the that's way that's perspective that to look at it. it God uh, damn! I mean, some people just save the life. Have... Oh no! Obviously, well, a trolley is heading what? toward five people. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, but then your life savings will be destroyed. What do you do? Uh, pull the lever. Pull it, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, depends My how much life savings you have, right? No. True. <laughs> Not a lot. Who cares? I guess, <laughs> hopefully, be the, I think even if, I... if you have like a bajillion dollars, you can enrich the lives of many, 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 many more people than those five people. The problem with this hypothetical is they need to actually give us more of a number for us to be able to discuss it. I think it's meant to be like a normal amount of life savings. In which case, like I choose the people, yeah. In which so case, like you gotta 20 save bucks. The people. Yeah. I think the way they phrase it, well, like life savings rather than like <laughs> actually being just the number. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh no, well, the okay. money got splatted. Wait, How, so, wait, so... only 61% only of people would have destroyed their yep. life savings. Yep. <laughs> wow, that's kind of fucked <laughs> up. I, I guess you, wait, if they're framing it as I would be financially yeah. desperate. If I pull this lever, not well, just. I mean, you can always accrue more life savings, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And that's why there can I, always I be more people. What do you mean? You might be <laughs> heralded. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, there can always be more people. I always, I always have more people. Yeah. Also, I'm constantly trapping myself into looking like a psychopath by uh, by good faith carrying the trolley problem. But I would also pull the lever and destroy the savings for the record. Mm -hmm. Also, hello, nuts. Uh, welcome back. Hello. Hey. We're currently Good discussing guy. trolley problems. Uh huh. We're, yeah. we're on we're on number four, which is oh no, a trolley is heading toward five people. <laughs> you can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, sacrificing yourself instead. What do you do? Mm. So this mm. is one where um, I would never promise I would make the right call in the actual oh, situation because no. I could freeze up, I could be terrified. Are. But that I would depends like to think I would pull the lever. Yeah, pull the mm. lever is the you get self sacrifice to save five people. But all people in chat saying do nothing. <laughs> who, is, who, who can be confident that they commit? They would commit to that. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm never, saying. With that in mind, yeah, never yeah. Which know. is, by the way, the point the video wanted to make. But it's like you can you can say that while exploring these and say exactly. that you don't know exactly what you do in the situation. But that for the yeah. sake of the conversation, yeah, I pull it. Mm -hmm. Let's see how many people pulled it. Forty percent of people agree. Wow, most what? people would not. Okay, maybe they're talking because so, to be fair, that six percent could be saying I I wouldn't be able to, I just couldn't in that situation, even though I know it's the yeah. wrong thing or something like that. You know? They made that one neutral. They should have spiced it up with like family members or something like that, something that's a little bit less neutral. Maybe that will be another level. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh no, a trolley no, is heading all, towards they're all five have people. Pop you can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, but then the original copy of the Mona Lisa will be destroyed. <laughs> what the okay, right. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I immediately think of Mr. Bean when I see that. Listen, you know what's wrong with this? Is It's absurd. This would never happen. Who oh, yeah. <laughs> put the Mona Lisa on a track? Come on. Come on. <laughs> I, I gotta wonder though if it was a better piece of art, would I? Would I actually? <laughs> yeah, replace that with Lord of the Rings, and then you got a you got a scenario there. Every <laughs> copy and knowledge of Lord of the Rings is on that track. It's wiped from existence for these five fuckers. Hmm. Oh, okay, no. wait. Would you? Yeah. Why don't we do that? You would. You would not. You sacrifice five people for Lord of the Rings. I would really have to think about it longer than the movie. I don't think yeah. <laughs> is, it, it, the thing is, you could argue that Lord of the Rings as media existing as an inspirational source has affected people like yeah. infinitely across time. It's really a difficult one. Rationalization. There's a conversation yeah. there that you know how much good has come from Lord of the Rings versus these guys might be dickheads for all I know. <laughs> like that's why you need some clarification. But why are you thinking about hypotheticals? Lisa? You couldn't actually literally destroy Lord of the Rings from reality. Okay, this is a waste of time. Yeah, but hypothetically, you might. Oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> if you put it that way. <laughs> so wait, I'm assuming we're all going to destroy the Mona Lisa. Yeah, fuck um, that picture. You with me. Well, you know, like, uh, 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 imagery of it them. still exists, of course, and I, I would just, right. if yeah. people hated me for this, I'd be like, sorry, I couldn't watch the five people die. I had to save them. Well, yeah, it seems oh, baked into the premise is that by, even though you destroy the original copy, it exists and its influence still exists. 
Just yeah. draw it again. So, draw yeah, it again. so yeah, I would I would pull the lever for seventy six percent of people agree with you. All right. I don't think Christ. even approaching Da Vinci's. Just put a print in the frame in the Louvre that one, and no one will notice. There you it's go. Just that one dumb. should be like 95. That one should be That's way That's the Mr. Bean that. technique, yeah. Who even likes that picture? Wait, what? <laughs> oh, wow. No Mona Lisa? I, 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 like think pretty, I think it's pretty great. I it's respect cool. everything it represents. And I think it's it's not too. Really? Have you ever seen it in person, a... Rags? No, I haven't seen it in person. I guess you don't really like it. I haven't seen you in person, but you're all right. It's a chick in a chair. Well, thank you, I then. never got the appeal. <laughs> oh, so really we got... got... Oh, no. This is the one a trolley is heading towards a rich man. The rich man offers well, you $500,000 to pull the lever, which would divert the trolley and kill someone else. What do you do? So this one's interesting because it should probably have started uh, neutrally, right? One man versus one man. Yeah, exactly. And then added the money aspect. But um, mm -hmm. So this is one that's super duper tough because obviously, you know... It's just, well, not, it, 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 by it's, the way, not tough because of the money. Tough because I, I, I don't. I guess I just do. I not do anything. Do yeah. I, I, I? Well, really I, quick, I want to rewind to the one man versus one man. Who on earth would pull the lever? I don't know. It's like, that's that's weird. Guy. It's a weird Randomly one. That's, that's, that's kind of this guy. that's kind of what I was answering because I was ignoring the money part for a second. There, I was just like, uh, it, mm -hmm. what do you pull? Do you not? I don't know. It's, you don't. I mean, you kind of have. You kind of have to consider your one for one answer, though, because then it's only the money that's influencing your decision. And exactly. it's, well, what, yeah. Okay. That, so, what kind yeah. of maniac would pull the lever just to switch it to one different guy? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> hey, hey, even the puppies are getting upset. I don't know, man. Maybe you're feeling it. You know, you're like, actually, wait, this is a trick. I have to pull the lever and um, I save them both. I'm sure of it. The the person <laughs> might decide based on age difference. This guy's 70, this guy's 20, he has more life to live. You have to like, assume they're that they have the hypothetical, though. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the thing is, we got nothing, so I'm going to always assume that they're about the same age, mm. same general sort of yeah. existence. Yeah, it's as people. Just yeah, like... He's got a nice hat and a six he, dash, Well, so. the, the difference is, he's got more money, and like I said, they should should have had the option to haggle well, the for difference more is money. He's giving you more money. He's giving I'm you thinking money. About That's true. He is giving you money. Amount. The other one could I'm be thinking about the fact idea. that, I mean, if you don't pull the lever, you're not like you're not involved in this accident, right? But if you pull it, you're literally, you know, count as a murderer, right? I, I think mean, no. That's not a murder. Well, it, it, it's not. It's, not it's, it's definitely part of the conversation in terms of how you draw the line. But it seems like most of us have the feeling that if you do nothing, you're on the hook still, essentially, morally. Yeah, you're accountable. And I think yeah, if you want to talk about the reason. consequences, ultimately, if people found out you pulled it after the rich man offered you money, they wouldn't exactly look at you fondly. But uh, yeah. we presume they're that not going to be reasonable forever. I, nobody I, I will never know. Buy their, I if buy nobody will ever know, yeah, I mean, you... <laughs> this is this is a deal between you and the rich man. That well, it comes back to what we, we were talking about earlier: is that ultimately would the rich man dying create more good, or would you getting five hundred thousand dollars to spend in a good way be more good? You know. But I, I are you the lying only to yourself when you say you're going to spend it in good ways? Are you mm. lying, but you're actually just going to buy <laughs> a big house? Or buy well, a if, I, if I spend it in good ways for myself, that's still one person, you know, getting... You well, know, I think that's the thing, rich, right? right? No matter what happens, somebody's dead and it's on you, but you could that's get $500,000 yeah. for oh, it. Wait, wait. <laughs> you know? That's why I think, you... I think one of, the, one of the only answers is saving I... the rich man because he could potentially compensate the family of the other guy, <sighs> where in the reverse, can he do something? I, like, I don't know if we're even assuming no, no, that. You can compensate life with money. I think, I think... It's the only option we got here. <laughs> well, like, I, these, I don't know about that. Someone's losing a family member. Well, the difference is basically in either situation, someone dies. Knowing nothing else, not it, neither of them deserve life more than the other. And in I, the other circumstance, you, someone dies and you get five hundred thousand dollars. And I, I don't necessarily hypothetically, think, and that's the thing. In I Minecraft. don't necessarily think your financial benefit at all changes the question when it's the one to one trolley problem because Nutsa was right. I think if you pull that lever in either situation. That's that's like the only time that it is murder because you're not saving any lives on the other track. You're saving, yeah, the, but other, you're saving but the other life. You're, no, you're no, choosing to save you, one life. You're, you're taking but an action as gonna, otherwise you're not being involved. You know, like it's gonna uh, like, run over one of them either way. So mm -hmm. if you pull so the idea would be that the rich man ought to be doomed more morally because he was on the wrong track. I, I, yeah. 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 Offering five hundred thousand dollars no, to a stranger so, to save your life is not an immoral thing to do. No, it's no, not. No, 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 no. So, but like, if it's just one to one, there's no money. I assume everyone here wouldn't touch the lever, right? I wouldn't. 
I don't see any reason to touch the lever. Yeah, I don't don't touch it. Yeah, Yeah, right. So then, have to justify action other than why would you not touch the lever? Because there's no, no there's no difference. To. Yeah, there's there's no nothing changes. I have no yeah because I have no reason to take an action. Do you think not, it would no be immoral to, to touch the lever if, and change if it? If myself and Rags no. both ended up in the situation at the same time, we both ended up in court. I had pulled the lever and he didn't. I believe mm-hmm. that we should both get the same judgment. Okay, so you don't see any difference. I mean, obviously, all. depending on our motivations, if I said I pulled it because I fucking hated the one that it was it was going to not hit, then of course... Right, right, right. Well, you don't... Yeah, well, I was it, but if I said I pulled know, it because well, I, I was hoping to make I, a difference in some kind of positive way, even though I knew it would only just kill the other guy, but I was just hoping no, it would change I would, something. I would say, I think it is more difficult to defend the position of pulling the lever when you have no information. Yeah, yes. uh, because the you problem, have to explain why you took an action. Because it sounds like you made the decision for which one should die if you pulled the lever. Yeah, but then technically of, speaking, the you could yeah. still have that be the case if you didn't pull the lever. Yeah, I right. approve of, or at least I prefer this situation as it has been presented to me that was out of my hands. But well, again, now, you know, you, know. you, you chan- yeah, it's, it is a question of is inaction action, and you can make the argument that it is. I, I don't yeah, think, in a sense I, I think it is. absolutely yeah. not because ultimately w- people die because of every one of our inaction every single day and we yeah, but that's we a can't direct happen. inaction you are looking and, at and, it happening yeah. and plus yeah. and it, it's about like how much work you have to do well right? uh, let's that's put it this way let, let's change the parameter with... let's say it's um the the there's nobody on the other track it's like well the inaction if you took action nobody would have died right and the inaction results in one person dying like in that case, you would definitely say that inaction would be action, right? Yes, you could have said someone you didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. yeah, but see, yeah, that's why that's... that's why it's the pulling of the lever is actually, I think, a mechanically important part of the problem yeah, yeah. because pulling a lever is virtually oh, yes. free to do. It's not like you have to complete obstacle courses or travel across the world or do things of that nature. Um, right. I think that's why the money one is. Problem. What's up? Also, hi, Ackman. <laughs> uh, Welcome we to talk 250 about episodes. Yeah, we did Thank it. you. And look what Hooray. we're spending our time on. Trolley problem. Yeah, <laughs> talking about killing. Yeah, we're gamers. Killing. We love killing. Murder. Mm. Not murder. I see this dilemma. Killing. Uh, sometimes <laughs> yes. murder. Depends what Sometimes murder, actually. Yeah. Sometimes it's not justified. <laughs> sometimes murder. Like all the people who didn't pull the lever with a 5 verse 4. They should go justified. to prison oh, yeah. for murder. On that note, we should mm-hmm. probably move on to the next one. So we, we are, are we pulling or not? What's everyone think? I am. I'm. We're pulling. all gonna take a bribe. I'm not. I think. Yeah. I think I'm gonna pull. Actually, you know what? Different. Tear down the I mean, system. Someone dies either Fuck way. Capitalism. Right? Someone does die either way. But you get money in one of the ways. I think yeah. you have money I think... to help the other guy's family pull the shit. Uh, yeah, especially oh, yeah, when there you go. Split the money with it. the family. That's, that was my original suggestion. I think that's the only solution. Or use the money to buy a school that teaches hypotheticals to children. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> or use the money to get a clone of the guy who got Way killed. too meta. That's way too meta. Clones <laughs> are cheap these days. So, uh, just, are we, are we majority poll? Sounded like we were. Okay. I'm going to go with poll. We're all... I bought. agree. Disavow. I'm not going to be happy Disavow. about it. It's the only one it. that has any utility <laughs> to it. It's the only one that has any utility to it, so pull that shit. Ooh, this one's interesting. Right. 51% of people polled. Ooh, ah, see, this was a real divisive one. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 Remember, these are stupid, but it was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. A trolley oh, is heading toward five lobsters. You can pull the lever to divert it oh, to the other track, lobsters. running over a cat instead. <laughs> what do you do? I save, save the cat. cat. No. Yeah, uh, save the cat. This no, is yes, we, I'm I'm saying it better be 100%. I'm, def- I'm definitely saving the cat. Just We're click pull. It better be 100%. Or no, no, 85, 85% of people pull. Oh, yeah, We're doomed. You're going to ruin the doomed. lobsters if you run them over. You can't eat them. 50% of you are idiots. Well, I can't eat the fine. cat. If Not I... with that attitude. <laughs> you, can't cat, you can't eat the cat either way. Exactly. <laughs> the kill it. <laughs> you can pet the cat. Peterson wouldn't be very happy about it, eh? <laughs> no. Alrighty. The next one. Oh, no! A trolley is heading toward five people who are sleeping and won't feel pain. I don't know how you know that, but okay. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, running over someone who is wide awake instead. What do you do? Sorry, wide awake guy. Oh, sorry, wide awake guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, wide awake guy. Sorry, dude. Sorry, wide awake guy. Yeah. But like, it comes down to numbers. Yeah. Isn't, okay, isn't this, like, like, really this illustrates the point of hypotheticals? Like, they're trying to figure out if it's yeah. about pain now. Exactly. Yep. Straightforward. Well, easy. Can, Wait, what the fuck? Fifty-two percent of people agree with you. 
Really? That's pretty wild, what? Isn't it? Yeah. what the they, fuck? Rather, they put the wow. that amount of lives over. Wow. wow. The they sleeping people got pain the versus the they, death, sleeping yeah. people are just they worth think, less. Yeah. Um, the fact that they don't feel pain. I've been, saying that, for years. I've been saying that for you. I think it's five think families. Five it's people are. It is better that five people die painlessly than one person dies and painfully. They'll never know. Wow. They'll never know it was me. It's a getting away with murder strategy. This is like a coping. I think that might be part of it, honestly. Nobody knows. So like, I think they it's don't like know. human psychology. We're so scared that, you know, our deaths are going to be painful and stuff. I think it really affects how we think about these types of stuff, you know? Mm. Right. I don't mean, it could also be a, a supervillain test. Yeah. I, <laughs> like Lex Luthor, but I feel like I could probably yeah. talk. Uh, the guy on the one mm, track is telling me to pull the lever to be like, look, there's four people on that track, man. Yeah, you could look at it from the from the side yeah. of what would what would incur more suffering, actually. I just hey, I know. Get, yeah, because I guess they don't think about it as like, oh yeah, oh, the yeah. suffering that happens as a result of the five people dying. Well, they didn't feel it, so it's totally worth. I'm like, you people are fucking retards. Well, the thing is, is <laughs> yeah. it, it, I, I guess it depends destroyed. on the kind of thoughts that you're having about the consequences, because in this case, I think you're always assuming that these people have families and friends, not that they're, like, completely alone and nobody would notice if they were gone. Yeah, yeah, that's a big I assumption would... you're making. I just like the idea. Well, even to them, well, even families are but not to then, themselves. Five people getting to wake up and lead lives, right? Compared to one exactly, person. yeah. You don't yeah. need to introduce the family and friends. It's true. the five lives themselves. I'm, well, it's just that the the friends and family. When you talk about the notion of like suffering, mm -hmm. th th that's that's a part of the mm -hmm. equation. Oh no! A trolley is heading towards five people who tied themselves to the track. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, killing one person who accidentally tripped onto the track instead. What do you do? Oh, oh fuck. 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 No. fuck. What are you smiling about? They're all God smiling, damn. yeah. yeah they, they, they okay, so I, I wish... They want to die. I wish you this really read... Onto the train the That's thing is, fault. I wish this read that the five people tied themselves to the track hoping to be killed by the train. Yeah, that's what it looks well, like. It looks well, so no, high. No, they, that's, uh, they they that's the yeah, point. I yeah, because... Well, because the problem is tying themselves to the track like i don't you know that there's you know no, you know what they this want to die. You're, yeah you you well, know they're what taking that a means. risk well no i think it's they're taking an intentional risk even if they didn't know they what's the die. risk what's it the risk is they're gonna get over by train maybe the risk that you want to do it is this one chance that's gonna really pay off for us fucking hell god this actually one this one's actually really tough so Listen, how much do you TikTok value their name. life if they actually want to die and they're taking and you're putting well, like, even if they, the guy, Listen, even if they the, don't want to die? We're in like... the absurd realm of hypotheticals, okay? <laughs> the five of them could be high. They could something could be yeah, wrong with they could be impaired. Yeah. No, 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 no. Those guys are TikTok... drooling. The other guy's screaming for his life. Like I think I might just yeah, yeah, This is the TikTok tie yourself to the train tracks challenge, okay? What if they're part of a cult? How about that? What Ooh, the train, the trolley cult. cult. That's what I said. It's some midsummer cult. shit. Well, yeah, but that, that's the thing. Why would if, they tie themselves down? If we're dealing cult with behavior. midsummer shit, then yeah, I'm saving the one guy. But that's what I'm saying. Don't look at them. They are high as fuck, Mahler. Yeah, look but like, high. Here. What if, what if there were innocent people who were made high by someone else, and then they said, "Look, that's there's candy on the track." No, that's no, adding. It went, <laughs> they weren't drugged. They took it. That's my I think you have. They were given edibles. Edibles to make you tie yourself to train tracks. Happens all the time. I, I, I think, no... Fuck, I Would... think I'm gonna save the five because Really? I, I yeah, because I don't think that if they wanted to die or anything like that, why would you tie yourself to the train tracks if you just wanted to die? Ritualistic you just lay death? there. Yeah, that you... seems like a, that seems like it's very unlikely. Well, right? so right, you're saying that the exact opposite. There are reasons. I'd say that you could I think assume, more, but there are also reasons additional... that go against it. There are on... yes, no. I think it's both, but I think that because the five to one thing, I don't think I can weigh it in a way that like I I I basically have to be chancing it. Are you going to take the chance that the reason the five people tied themselves to the track? Is that they wanted to die versus they were high, that, they were drunk. Based on the evidence, they were forced well, well, to. Well, but the thing that's also worth adding is even if this is what they want, can you prevent that? Yeah, but because well, they could be mentally ill and they need rehabilitation. Can we talk them out of it? Can we for the sake simple. of. This, is it? Because the guy, yeah, the guy tripped onto the track. That's his fault. <laughs> 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 
It's a skill issue. Um, skill yeah, issue. A skill <laughs> issue. <laughs> that was he wasn't you a good what? trainsman. He just solved it. He accidentally <laughs> typed That motherfucker to deserves to go. <laughs> he yeah. shouldn't have been here. Yeah. I mean, come on. Now, if, if the question the was... the sake of deciding fight, as a group... He managed sorry, to for the trip sake of deciding and then tie as a himself group. up while he was tripping? Come on, dude. It's it's yeah, just like when you put your wrestling. it's like putting your 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 uh, your headphones in your pocket and then you pull them out six seconds later and they're a massive jangled up knot and you don't know what's going on. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now if the question is like five deciding, people are these five going to sue us after this and say we ruined their death? Is it an incredible situation? What? They're like the incredible. Yeah, I was thinking just that. That was my point. You didn't save my they're going to be mad. Ruined my death. That's what you did. Well then, just fucking kill yourself. Five and then you're gonna get sued by the right one there. guy who tripped his family. <laughs> I they won't I know. Gonna... They won't know. I didn't trip him. He tripped. He tripped on his <laughs> All right, own. We'll have to do a vote. I... Uh, we'll go. We'll I go left know. to right. I think, I think you 100 percent have to kill the the uh, five people that intentionally well, decided to tie themselves to the track. <laughs> every time. Everyone's gonna have to have their own the scenario. Reasons. I don't know. Wait, guys, I... guys. For the sake of answering I know, the I'm hypothetical as a group, we have. I think we should just decide either they left to right to die. Or it was like we need to decide that it's an ambiguously. Well, no, no, no. That's part of the question. Is you think so? I don't decide it for us. It's back no. into it, guys. The uh, faces. Fine. Fine, I, th fine, I think fine. that's the point of the hypothetical is you don't know the exact reason why this is yeah, happening. Which, which, by the way, doesn't, you this, know doesn't this invalidate the point in that video where it's like, oh, you know, you never know for sure. It's like you still don't know things in the trolley problem. Right. There are still aspects and that's how you weigh it up, isn't it? You don't know. Exactly. Well, okay, Here, here's my argument. If you have five people that intentionally engage in a very risky, dangerous behavior I'm, versus one person that accidentally stumbles into it, I'm, I feel less inclined. What if to... they're high? Well, that's still part of the dangerous behavior. What if they were made high? They made, they made that decision. What if they were spiked? It's drinks? like drunk driving. What if they were roofied? Roofied, Sitch. What if they were roofied? We I'm don't know that information. Psychedelics, and that generally doesn't make you want to tie yourself Not up. Well, no, generally, this is hypothetical, baby. Saving. We could go wherever we want. Well, let's let's <laughs> let's uh, let's go left to right. And let's I give our pull the lever so or not. Progress. I think we have talked about this yeah. one uh, quite a bit. Remember, pull the lever Maybe... kills the one person. Pull don't not. So just vote left to right and make it quick. <laughs> <laughs> make it quick. <laughs> I'm That's going right. with ritualistic suicide, and it's their fault. You know, like this guy, Ace. they spiked his punch and he tripped. Like, save Ace. this. But so you're saying pull the lever. <laughs> yeah, save no, no, this. No, no. no you're saying not pull the lever. Wait, no, yeah, pull it. Save the guy who tripped and. and uh, uh, saving the guy means fight. not oh doing anything. God. Save the guy yeah. is do not. Why don't we just say whether we kill five or kill one? <laughs> okay, fine, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're killing the five. Yeah, yeah, he's killing the five. The okay, great. So, <laughs> Cap, you're next. <laughs> I'm killing the five, but I'm not happy about it. Okay, Bringy. Uh, I think I'm gonna. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do nothing on this one. It's gotta kill the five. All right, die. Mark. Yeah, kill the five. Pretty confident about it. Oh man, now it's my turn. I didn't think yeah, of my exactly. answer yet. <laughs> <laughs> this is like real life. You're not supposed to think of the hypothetical. You just have to address it in the moment. It's a very I mean, slow. You know what I'm trying to imagine is. Fine. Standing there and seeing the, the five of them like smiling, almost glaring at me, being like, <laughs> <laughs> and the guy going, Oh god, please, oh jeez, oh yeah, god, that's what I mean. that would you. Yeah. He's that screaming the, with the, the unknown, well, that's the unknown details that would be information we just don't have. Yeah, maybe they're suicidal, but you're saving them and you can rehabilitate them. Oh, I hate being so torn. Maybe. Yeah, there really is that. He's a, screaming for his life, though, and the five ritualistic crazy suicide. Crazy. Molo, you made everybody else do it quickly. Yeah, yeah. Three, I haven't two, been able to talk. Two, Everyone else is talking. What? Oh, you can't think? Answer. Yeah, I am thinking. Zero. Are you ready for my answer? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to pull the lever. Nutsa, ready for you. Mm, do nothing. All right, Sitch. Do nothing. Kill the five. Rags. Pull the lever. Save the, uh, save the five. An act man. Hold on, I need to think about this for like five more minutes. <laughs> <Which> is, <laughs> I, I, I am more than happy to, for you to think, but obviously whether you say yes or no, uh, the lever the lever's not being pulled. Yes! Yeah. See, voting democracy. doesn't matter. Yeah, we voting just, doesn't uh, matter. Welcome to America. I hate democracy. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> we're doing nothing. Are. Let us see what everybody said. 79% of people did not pull the lever. Based. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. I just want to know Fair how high was the person who came up with this. <laughs> I'm here about five. 
Not as high as the people on those tracks. Speaking like, of which, oh no! Right a trolley is oh. heading toward five people. The lever just speeds up the trolley, which might make it less <laughs> painful. What do you do? Oh my oh, god. god damn it. <laughs> um, I do nothing. No, I'm pulling it. Uh, it's, so, uh, it, I mean, right, I, I so want to respect right, the right, hypothetical. So, so might I, I make know, it less painful. I know in my heart of hearts <laughs> that it will be less painful if I act. I think I'm going to pull the lever. Yeah, you don't know. It says it might. Oh, wait, so my, okay. Wait. No matter, mm. wait. So hold on. I'm you, trying to figure it out. So no matter what, it's always going to go for the five people. Yeah, the yes, one guy right. there is just. I don't know why he's there. <laughs> oh, uh, decoration. He just thought he was in trouble, but then he heard the question and he's like, "Oh, phew! Thank God." <laughs> it might yeah. make it less painful. It's not a guarantee. Yeah, it would be though. <laughs> like, but, I mean, but, well, right. there's, yeah. there's also it's the mighty. notion as well that by drawing it out, you're drawing out the horror of the impending death. Oh yeah, wait. So like, if you make it faster, oh, you will necessarily. Well, I, it, I mean, I can't be wrong, right? Like, if you pull the lever, it necessarily wow. means that there's less time in anticipation of this horrible death. That's true, but also yeah, I would say, like, oh, the surely either it doesn't really change how long it takes to kill them, or it's faster. I can't see it being slower when you've made it go over them faster. It, how could it, it be slower? If yeah. the rolls over you slowly, the, there will be a time in which it is on top of you that no vital organs have been destroyed, and even then, you, you might still be kind of alive if your brain hasn't been totally destroyed, so... You're gonna experience it. I, because I presume that they, less pain. I presume it's not baked into this that like if it runs over two or three people, it slows it down enough to save two, and that by pulling the lever, you damn them all for sure. Uh, oh, I mean that would be an interesting variable. Yeah. That's I what I was going to say. I Maybe by going we fast, knew they're dead no matter what. I yeah. Yeah. I, do we know that? Yeah. I assume. I was gonna say, what if it's the first guy? Like, what if it's by going fast, you guarantee well, that he's going to die, it, but it's going to be pain free. But, but if by if, going slow, he might possibly survive, and you're removing that option. Well, yeah, but the thing is, that's they didn't say that. I feel like that stuff that we're adding on. It seems to me that it is just that if you pull the lever, it might make it less painful, but it absolutely will reduce the time that they spend horrifically yeah, anticipating that seems their pretty demise. Simple. If we're going to so, put yeah. it in that terms, then it's simple. Just less pain. Yeah, then you, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's less pain, so you'd pull the lever. If it yeah. seems that we're majority pull the lever then. Yeah. Yeah, yep. this one is just yeah I think so. I Need I don't it. know. Um, Yeah, it's better that they die painlessly if everyone's going to die. I mean, the less pain, the all things being equal, seems to be better. 71% of people Plus, agree with you. Plus, there's maybe it'll maybe if there's a curve, it'll be so fast it goes off the track. I don't fucking. Know. Oh no! A trolley's heading towards ah. one guy. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, but then your Amazon <laughs> package will be late. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> oh, okay. oh, what are they delivering? <laughs> yeah, what am I getting? At least yeah. it's level eleven minor inconvenience. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Just there, pull it. Yeah, pull it. There, yeah, of course you're pulling it. What the yeah, fuck? Eighty percent of people agree with you. Oh, so it's gotta be memes. It's gotta be memes. Yeah. Yeah. People it's are trolling. Memes. Yeah, people are trolling. Oh no! A trolley's oh, heading toward your best friend, and you can pull the lever to divide it to the other track, killing five strangers. What do you do? Okay. Oh, say that. Can you say that one more time? Sorry. Best yeah, friend or five people? My best friend would understand. Uh, I don't. I'd be like, I gotta nothing. do this mandatory. Well, you got to do nothing, but I don't know if everyone would in that situation. You know what I mean? Even if they this felt would definitely be principle. one of those ones where you would you would add that on as a yeah as a statement. It's you don't know if you would actually do it. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of like a selfish act kind of thing. Well, if you did nothing, then not only would you feel guilty, but maybe your best friend would too. Forever. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah no, do, live with do, nothing, you, do nothing. Do nothing. Let your best friend die. You need yeah, to pull do the nothing. Lever. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant pull the lever. Right. Yeah. If yeah, I so am, uh, yeah. If I would want my best friend to be like, listen, you got to save the five. You got to let me go. Yeah. yeah. What, 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 you would what if they were screaming at you? I want to live. Please. <laughs> nice rough. I live. Really, it really depends on how good of a best friend you have. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is also true. I think he gives you shit for not completing video games and just do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as it gets. It's just more painful to think about. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks, but hopefully we would all make the right decision here. Yeah. This is a variation on the numbers one. Twenty nine percent of strangers. Everyone's saving yeah. their best friend, apparently. Oh wow. Yeah, okay. Wow, that's. Mm. Someone said you guys are crappy friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good friends. Oh, well, I mean, like we're good people. You know, theoretically, it's. Like if if, if they pulled the lever and saved me, or if they saved me and let the five die, like I don't know if that could be my best friend anymore. 
Oh no! A trolley is heading toward five people. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, killing one person instead. At least that's what you think is happening. You forgot your glasses and you can't see well. What do you do? <laughs> they're just if I, if, only if I don't yeah, have they're it, just fucking with us now. Oh, if I don't know what's happening, I ain't doing shit. Yeah. Correct. No, I think it's a good question. Yeah, trolley nothing. problems. Isn't it that you know there's five people on the track ahead of you for sure, and you don't no. really know what's on the other track? I'm wondering. Know? I'm wondering if it's a, as if it's a trick that by doing nothing, it's actually not going to hurt anybody. It's tricking you into thinking it's five people, but it's or actually the one. That it isn't on that a track. trick. Sure. Yeah, oh, I don't know. Oh That's my god. Yeah, I just don't have any information. I think yeah. honestly, part of the problem yeah. is that it says yeah, that's see. what you think is happening, and it's like, how yeah. how hard am I? Th is this a sure think or is this a maybe think? It's or a maybe thing. The thing I is, think. those five people are actually a, an Amazon package. <laughs> and, and one, the other track is an actual human being, so you just killed the one human being. Just yeah. like five Amazon packages. <laughs> yeah, that'd be rough. Oh, oh, I, I've got an M Night Shyamalan twist. You can't see it. You, it's trying to tell you that there's five people, but really, it's just a bunch of like wooden planks that are gonna derail the thinking. trolley and kill yeah. everyone on the trolley. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh my goodness! It was something that. that makes no sense that I couldn't have possibly ever guessed or was unintuitive the entire time. Wow, that's so <laughs> clever! <laughs> yeah, well, you should have put your glasses on. I guess I should have. Uh, so what are we voting for here? Do nothing. Do nothing. Yeah. Do nothing. Can't do, do nothing. nothing. Welch. Forty-seven yeah, percent feel, of people agree with that. What would you feel more guilty about? Doing nothing or doing something? Like which one? If you fucked up, which one would you I, feel worse about? I would like, feel oh, worse I if I acted with no information and it made things worse. Yeah. Instead yeah. of because uh, like, yeah, because I couldn't like I can't blame myself if I have no information to work with and I don't do anything. It's like well, yeah, I had mm -hmm. no information to work with. Most How did I even end up here? Yeah. Where are my glasses? What the fuck? <laughs> There's a lot of situations. I took a wrong turn somewhere. Oh god. Oh no! A trolley is heading oh, towards no. one of your first cousins. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, oh, killing three god. of your second cousins instead. What do you do? <laughs> what? Do 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 That's they think go that I have some point. hierarchy in my mind? Yeah, I guess so. Second cousins. First versus second cousins. I don't Sorry, know. I'm, I'm doing second, nothing. Bro. Is everyone else more doing nothing? More lives win. Obviously, the yeah. more lives. I mean, I really here. don't like my second cousin. So. <laughs> one of them has a top hat. Uh, he's rich. Exactly. How much money is he giving me? He's wheeling and dealing? <laughs> All right. It looks like the result is 58% of people agree to kill 58%? the first. 58%? Jeez. Yeah, I'm surprised. Do, do people really grade their cousins that? Oh, that's this is bizarre. A, apparently. I live, in Ar I live in Arkansas, and I don't grade my cousins like that. So this is much geez. more of a classic. Oh, no. A trolley's heading toward five elderly people, and you can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, running over a baby instead. What do you do? How many elderly people? Sorry. Five. Five. <sighs> Oh, oh, oh I think no, it's time for no. some late term abortions. Bye, everybody. bye baby. <laughs> wait, wait, when you say late term oh, abortion, which oh. side are you referring to? Because <laughs> it's a late term <laughs> abortion. Well, well, he said abortions, so I guess he's going for the elderly. Okay. No, I, I'm going I, the baby. Get that baby out of here. That baby. I think so. Yeah, save the baby. I I think no, I'm, I'm saying kill the baby. baby. I'm saying kill oh, the baby. God. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I think kill the baby. Uh, that baby could be Hitler, Frangy. If they were Hitler, we'd if they were Hitler, we'd know about it. Why exactly. Hitler, Hitler was many Mozart. things, but Subtle was not one of them. He was not old. <laughs> so we must they were disqualified. I Yeah, I I I'd, I'd, I'd pick baby. save the baby. Mm. Okay, so it sounds like we disagree. One of especially in modern times, even if you're elderly, you can live a long time. You know, you yeah, could live yeah. a long time and you can do a lot of stuff, even if you're That's, 70, 80, whatever years old. It depends how yeah, elderly you are. Wouldn't, 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 but I mean, the argument that would counter would be that they've all had a chance to lead like a full life and that, that kid Maybe like, hasn't. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, true. He's, That's true. He's, he's just been born. Like, he's, he's got his whole life ahead of him. Obviously, they mean, he'll they mean a hell of a lot to all the different people that matter to these five. There's a lot there. Uh, there is mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Are, no, I know. Yeah. And what if some of them yeah. wanted you to save the baby and then, like, one of them wanted you to save them? That's I not know, hypothetical. I would it's possible, but it's not a hypothetical. Because if they, if the five elderly people were like, you know what, we've had good lives, save that baby, kill me, <laughs> uh, my hip hurts, <laughs> kill I, me. I my... really doubt that they would yeah. say I mean, that. One of the well, if they guys, did, then I would fuck let that them baby. die. I'd probably be like, okay, well, fuck you, buddy. But if they were <laughs> like, fuck that baby, 
Yeah, I, mean, I, should, should, I don't care kicking. about that baby. That baby has cancer. It's going to die. I got, anyway. I've got, I've got pickleball <laughs> tomorrow with the with the girls. I just started I'll using blue chew. Cancer baby. I have to see the East Enders for Dally. <laughs> they made a Downton Abbey movie. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> should we go? No, save me. I think we understand right both now. sides of it. We're gonna have to uh, do a vote. I think. So, kill the baby or kill the elderly. Left to right, let's go. Uh, oh, kill the elderly, I guess. Ooh, save the baby. Elderly down. Yep. Kill the elderly, save elderly the baby. Elderly down. Fringy. Save the baby. Elderly down. Mark. The baby does not have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> save the baby if it doesn't have cancer. If it does, I might need to think more. <laughs> Okay, for me, I'm gonna go with the hypothetical's description of elderly is like they're they're really in the latter parts of life, and so I'm gonna save the baby because is that like... how the hypothetical describes them? Elderly. Elderly. Yeah. I'm, I'm picturing yeah. like Patrick Stewart, like you got like a week left, like, <laughs> a week left. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no. But I'll feel bad about it. Nuts. Uh... Oh, I don't know. This one is hard for me. I mean, those are like five souls with like mm -hmm. an entire family tree and stuff. I mean, they probably have a lot of relatives they might actually be happy to see them go but you know inheritance and shit i don't oh, know damn. Damn. Uh, wow you uh, went dark you're thinking of some greedy <laughs> nephews Eat up those inheritance oh, yeah. why did you save yep, my grandpa i want his money <laughs> yeah. don't ask those I mean, okay save the baby save the baby okay Ditch. Uh, well i'm assuming by elderly they mean like 70 so i'm gonna say kill Hard. that baby dead kill the baby Five dead parts. okay Rags. I, I am also going to kill that baby dead and save the elderly. Base. Act man, kill the baby or the elderly. Save, save the elderly. Okay, wow. It was right. kind of close oh, wait, there for a second. Wait, we got baby killers over here? What happened? Yeah, we, yeah. we got, yeah. We got some right baby right <laughs> Elderly well, killers are cool. But... Killers. <laughs> yeah, at least we're not killing there. grandmas and grandpas <laughs> and old farts. Well, my grandparents would want me to save the baby, but uh, funny enough. Well, the baby just was that's... born, okay? He'll respawn. He, this won't matter. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. My grandfather would want me to save the baby. That's good for me. I just love the idea of one of the old people being like, kill that baby. Do it. much to live for. <laughs> I've been eating my fruits and veggies so I can live long and probably Look at that baby smiling. It doesn't even know what's happening. Okay? Seventy-six percent of people voted to kill the elderly. Oh fair, but I disagree. I mean, oh no! A trolley is barreling towards five sides. identical clones of you. You can pull the leader oh and divert God. it to the other track, sacrificing doing? yourself uh, instead. Wait, not Nuts is right. How high were they when they made this? Like, this is like, they just <laughs> explore every this possible a, place. I don't know what to do. This uh, is like, cool. where I am when they came up with this. Those clones are all people. As far as they're aware, they have memories of a life that they've led and will lead a future life. Absolutely. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, they, they, they must be destroyed. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, the clones must be destroyed. I'd save my clones so I could have five people working on videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, all right, guys, do me one thing. <laughs> Wasn't yeah. this the the thing with the Mahler twins in Invincible? Like something? Like, who watched that? Refresh my memory. Yes. Which yeah, one was, was the real one? Like, yeah. Yeah. So, like that was the most interesting part of the, or one of the most interesting parts of the show of like exploring that concept and like it would really, yeah, the emotional ties they had to it. It would kind of mess you up. So yeah, I'm thinking about this when I see that. Though he did, yeah. he did the original one didn't really give a shit about the clone that much. I mean, this he killed him. This one's downstream from your opinions on clones. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. seems like it is, because I saw someone mm -hmm. say stolen memories. It's like, what do you mean? They're clones. All right, they didn't so, have any so say in whether or not they it. exist, uh, do they? They're, uh, yeah, saving, I'm saving the clones. They're I'm saving five the clones. Yep, yeah, five yeah, saving the clones. And what's you even know, worse yeah. is that I would basically know how each one of those clones would feel if I saved myself to kill them, and I would never fucking be able to live with myself. <laughs> so to speak, mm -hmm. but um, but they got uh, it. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, I save the clones. They're five people. I'm killing and the they're clones. They're fucking amazing yeah, people. No, they're myself. killing the. Holy they're just clones. Really? They're just, they're just clones. clones. They're just, they're just clones. Just they're clones. clones. So, someone had people. watched the Clone Wars. Oh, Jesus, the original article the is the most important. Okay. Jeez, I don't yes, work it, on it, that. Kind of My God. If you have soulless are. clones, okay, there's no one, none of you don't soulless. have a soul. Why do we presume so, that they're soulless? Yeah, if they're because I said you, so. then you don't have a soul. Just, just like the Mahler twins, what if yeah. they don't know who the original is? What if, like, all of them think they're you? Like, the, the, the perspective yeah, but they're like, wrong. You can't just I know treat they're wrong. <laughs> the hypothetical <laughs> yeah, but it's five against one. 
I'd use it as the perfect oh, moment. Yeah, but I'm the one with the lever. The only one, and <laughs> I'm the one mean. with the power. <laughs> the only I'm, one. This is somewhat, you obviously just let the clones live. I mean, it's a, it's yeah. a five to one, it's five lives to one. Again, run over. I'm, Those I'm, clones are yeah, going. I'm, I'm saving the clones. Listen, I can always make more clones. You can't make another original. You okay? can always make more people, but that's, that we, doesn't mean you're not an original. Why do we presume that you can't clone the clones? Do we believe that that's going to cause problems necessarily? No, 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 no. no, no. How, do you, you can, how do you know you can't make, make more of those? You can make more clones. You can make more babies, but that doesn't mean you can kill babies. Again. Am I the only one, though, operating under the assumption that those five identical clones of you that you were previously unaware of may very well be trying to steal your memory and, like, invade your life? Yes, and yeah, you made all, all of that up. Up. These are great points. <laughs> you, you made all that You absolutely made all that You're, you're, you're going to save a you bunch of evil that up doppelgangers? Come on. Like, less of an evil bastard. Who no, need headcanon for this? <laughs> you're just trying to justify <laughs> saving your life. I love that the queen doppelopolis. The cowardly way. They're scrolls. They're scrolls. <laughs> no, they're not. They're clones. If they were scrolls, I'd say kill them, regardless of context. Yeah, that would make this a lot easier. Oh, they didn't say this to scroll token. All right. Let us not, vote we... left to right. Yeah. Kill yourself no, right or the left. clones. Right to left. If they're scrolls, okay, right to left, sure. They're not scrolls. <laughs> Act man, you'll go first this clones, time. Right this to gets complicated. Left. Save the clones. They Save will carry the on the legacy of my channel and do all the work that I don't <laughs> want to. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta sign a contract that I'll pull the lever. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, rags. Uh, I will sacrifice myself to save the five lives. Sitch. Kill them clones. Nuts. Uh, uh, sacrifice myself. I guess. Wow. All right. Uh, yeah. This seems pretty straightforward to me. And if I had more context about them actually trying to be scrolls and shit, then fair enough. But for now, they just seem like five lives. So I'll I'll give myself up. Mark, I, I'm killing the clones because I just I I cannot I cannot draw the assumption that things that look exactly like me and may very well try to steal my life are probably better. <laughs> well, how are they going to steal your life? Well, Mark, Mark, <laughs> would you, <laughs> Mark, would you yeah. steal oh, your no, own oh, life? Oh no, no, okay, I like that. I'll, I'll specify that I didn't mean kill me because I'm dying in this situation if I if. <laughs> the clones what i mean but, is i it, it's not me controlling who interacts with all the other people in my life i may have killed my wife parents like my sister her kids for all what? i know these clones are why just are we assuming the, the worst clones? out of all these clones what? you put a lot of thought into this why would, all, why would, why would you do Mark, that identical Mark, clones this is a bit of a so self would you yeah, why, would, why would you kill x-ray girl <laughs> what? Yeah, what you don't have probably a... what they would do for taste in pizza have we established they definitely have all our memories and they're experience? They're identical clones. Yes, they're Doesn't clones say. of you. Well, they're I mean, do they clones. look? Okay. Yeah, but Mark, I... Mark, wait, wait, wait. Don't let them talk you out of this, Mark. You fucking kill us. <laughs> no, don't listen to the fucking <laughs> bastard. Don't listen to these Why are you? He says identical. Don't let him influence you. Language. Listen, those clones are coming to replace you. Those dapple games. No, they're not. You wouldn't. Okay. You wouldn't do that. Gonna 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 you up. How can all five of them replace you anyway? Why? Why would they replace you? Why would they replace them? No, 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 no. Why would they replace you? Money. They are you. They have your memories and your oh, yeah. values. Yeah, they're no gonna do it. They're, they're gonna, gonna know they're stealing their your lives. shit. They're not gonna be so confused. You're gonna accidentally steal your life from you. You wouldn't cooperate with your own clones. Okay, look. No, if they have five of you working together. I want them together. to pressure you, Mark. Stand, stand firm. Look what you've done, Mahler. <laughs> I didn't do this, I swear. <laughs> you created it. This it wasn't my fault. Okay, look. I, 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 the decision, Mark. I was not operating on the assumption that I knew for sure they had all my thoughts, memories, emotions, and desires. Identical would, clone. Right. They're identical yeah. clones of you. I mean, they me have the to have those that, things. No, that's not necessarily true because to me, identical To be an identical clone memories. of somebody, you have to have the memories and experiences. No, look exactly like them. No, it doesn't say identical. that they look exactly like you. It says they are clones of you. I don't... Okay, but no, identical clones are... are identical you have to assume clones. that they're full they clones with your full memory, memory, basically. Yes. I okay. think that's the only way this works. Because if they just were made yesterday and they don't even know how to count, also, fuck, like, if they, they didn't, <laughs> it wouldn't even change the answer. Wait, 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 wait. Completely change if they didn't, well, it, it would change his didn't. answer because he said he believes they're going to destroy his whole life and kill all his family. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. 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 If, if they were five, know, I'm in the military. I've seen Chris if they were evil, it would say evil. evil. It could be a big problem if they all look like me. Would it? Oh, so for the inconvenience, fucking kill them. 
No, I mean, for the potential, like, I might be committing treason by not killing How would you be committing treason? You'd go to the government and say, hey, I've got these just five kill clones them, Mark. of Just kill them, Mark. Just say, you're not time to do that. <laughs> if they're clones of you, they're probably going to submit themselves to the government and be like, we're five clones. We don't know well, what's going on. <laughs> but if they're identically me as far as personality and, and temperament. Well, then, and then, then they would make whatever decision you would make. And exactly, in which case I'd let them live. Because then yeah, they so would everything I care about in my life. Okay. They would care about just as much ah. and yes as then, yeah thank you for arriving at the obvious conclusion <laughs> it wasn't obvious to me though because i thought there were just five guys i who guess it wasn't like obvious me. to you you're right <laughs> no, i still don't I, think you should kill them if they're five guys who look like you but if i don't know like right guys <laughs> i don't know good man. ones all right anyway friggy uh, what are you, you, what are you? Uh, yeah i i sacrifice myself for the clones yeah yep Principally, I would sacrifice myself for the clones, but in reality, I don't know if I would. I think if I was actually in that situation, I probably wouldn't. That's my. Right, nice. That's what I think I would probably do. I think I'd probably kill the clones in real life, though I wouldn't yeah, feel yeah, good about it. Clones. And Brooks? If they're scrolls, fuck them. They're dead. But if they're actually legitimate clones of me with like my interests and values and everything, like then yeah, we're going to save them because five of me is going to be able to do more than one of me. That's going to provide more for my family after I die. That type of shit, you know? It's, right. it's, a big, it's the only one that has utility to it. Or they oh. might kill each other because they're all trying to sleep Stop with, with the paranoia! <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very oh, simple. Man. So I wouldn't kill someone so I could sleep with their wives. 12% agree with the... Uh... Oh, I got the majority on my side. Wait, so, wait, so 12% Fuck would... 12% 12, 12 would die, die for the clones. Jeez, wow. wow. Yeah. To be fair, to be the fair there's a lot they didn't like, discuss it. people fucking they hate the idea of like, they find that horrifying, right? Clones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like they put 10 seconds of thought into this. Ew, clones moved on, where we just spoke, yeah. we just went to war over <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> like, explored, explored every position. Ew, clones. Oh, no. Me. A trolley's heading towards a mystery box with, fi oh, no, a mystery box oh, with 50% oh. chance of oh, containing no. two people. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, hitting a mystery box with a 10% oh, no. chance of 10 people. Okay, what we're do doing do? math now? It's you feel like, um, it's, 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 feeling it's, like it's, I'm going to get a ray gun. Can um, a mathematician? It's, box. it's, it's literally a mathematician. You, I, yeah, you can do yeah, an equation for this one. Good, to yeah. to actually do the balance of probability. Know. I don't remember what yeah, breaking out math. Wait, isn't it exactly identical? Or am I oh, dumb? maybe it is. Maybe maybe the ten percent of ten is percent. one, and fifty percent of two is one. Oh yeah, right. Is yes. that how that works, or am I? Just I think you're tired? right. I think so. Yeah, yeah. but that so doesn't are you mean... giving? It doesn't. That doesn't mean that's how you necessarily Abrams derive the, the ethical comments? position on it. Um, yeah. Well, uh... the first thought I had was like, I don't think I can justify risking ten people's deaths. For the sake of the two people. That's true, but yeah, the you have a instead of figuring it out. It's 50, 50, kind yeah. of, but I'm gonna go for the the potential to save more people is in the box with ten maybes. So I think really? I'm gonna go with that one because I think there's a potential for there to be three being saved. Because if there's a potential to save, it's I think I'm yeah I think I'm gonna go with that one. But it's I, feel it's like, I feel like there's a trick here that I'm. Uh, th that's something I mean, that I don't I'm think it's a trick. I think it's just a calculation. In what way? I would go with the ten percent. I'm just trying yeah. to. I'm, you know, I'm I, trying and to just try. hope you don't get XCOM. Yeah. I think it's ten at ten percent. I think I'm actually. I'm go I think that. I was wrong when I said it's basically the same. I think. I think you got to go ten percent because it's just you have a ten percent chance of killing. Well, is it worth thinking about like if if it does kill the ten versus it did kill the two? Like which which outcome you would prefer are those two, and all, you know, obviously we know what outcome you prefer. But the fact is, like risking, it's just something that I struggle to think about. If I did choose that ten percent, thinking like that's the best chance I have of well, killing nobody, and then it kills ten, I'd be like, Jesus. I guess, Christ. Uh, I guess it would be. It, it point, wouldn't be on you. A ninety percent chance versus a fifty percent chance. Yeah. Of death. Of death, but obviously the scale of you, death is... Uh, it's well, a bit, well, well, it's a wait, bit wait, backward, wait, wait. but you could say the killing what? of two people guaranteed the safety of eight. <laughs> and hold up, can you please restate the question? Because uh, I want to see how it phrases the... the uh, a state. trolley is yeah, heading toward I, the mystery I, box with 50% chance of containing two people. You can pull the lever to divert it to the track, hitting a mystery box with a 10% chance of 10 people instead. So there might be people in the box. That's yeah. that's what it is. It's, yeah, not, it's there might be ten. people in the box. Yeah. There's a chance that there's people in the box. There's a fifty percent chance. If you do, but remember, you got to pull the lever for the ten percent chance. Yeah, I'm pulling the lever. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling I, uh, it. Uh, 
I feel, I feel, yeah, like I feel I, those odds, man, like a 90% if, chance. So this is the thing, if dying. it killed 10 people and I was asked to explain myself, I'd be like, it was 10%. I thought I was saving everybody. I'm sorry. Well, that would be my answer. It's like, it's a 90% yeah, chance. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Like, I made the best call I could have yeah, based on what information I, I had. I think I'm going to go a with that. Yeah, because I can no justify, yes, I can justify a 90% chance way easier. Yeah, because if you didn't pull the lever and you ki and it did kill two people, and then the box and the other track, there's no one there. You're like, you idiot! There was ten percent chance, or ninety yeah. percent chance, there'd be it's no one just, there. It's you are it, you're risking more lives, but the risk is so much lower. Like it, it feels mm -hmm. like it's way. It, I mean, it's a coin toss, right? For the for do nothing. Yeah, you got a fifty fifty chance of people dying versus a ten percent chance of a, more people dying. So we pull in. Seems like uh, I think. On. Pull it. I, I think so. Pull. 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 I'm pulling. I think so. Fifty-seven percent of people agree with you. Ah, so that's it. Right. Okay. That was a tough one then. Yeah, fair. it is a complicated one. It's an interesting. Yeah, it's that's complex. an interesting oh one. My God. Variable. <laughs> oh no! Oh, a trolley's right. heading toward five sentient robots. You could pull the lever to divert it to the other oh, track, killing um, a human instead. Uh, what do you do? Do nothing. Do I nothing. kill those robots. Do they nothing. I. So Take you're telling me if it was, it was five Wallies, for instance, you'd be like, <laughs> fuck all of you. Yep. Yeah. Fuck five yeah. Wallies. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Totally. I would fuck just five Wallies. Be, uh, five it could also be five of those robots, my meals. robot. What about the replicants? Fuck them, too. Five can. of those? Yeah, fuck five replicants them. versus one human? Yes. Yeah, Take them all out. Oh, wait, wait oh, is, is what's happening yeah. here someone's got an opinion about the state of sentient life that's not human or something? Have we got other things to talk about? What do you mean? Are you, it mm -hmm. sounds like you're out, like you absolutely consider human life more valuable than any other form of sentient, uh, like robot. Well, we wouldn't. If my argument one... would be we wouldn't know what ex what does it mean for a robot to be sentient. Is that what we're relying on? The fact that we don't understand it, or are we going to take uh, yes, this right now? The robot yeah, is that, that is what I'm relying on. It was programmed with sentience. What does that mean? It, well, it but, your, why not take it best faith it and you assume in the hypothetical you are convinced they are no necessarily different in terms of the mind? Does the body make the difference? Okay, if yeah, I, these if are I, like yes, five could be or five. So, you know, but this, okay, if the question was that there are five robots that I believe on my philosophical, moral, spiritual belief system are literally the exact same value of life as humans. No, 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 no. Same mind, not the same body. Because I feel no, like that's what the question that's is. Not what's no, no, no. I said value. Okay, I really quick. If I believe sentient... that the life of these robots are the exact well, same, that already whatever, answers the question, what, however I define yeah. life, if I'm defining that as the same in the robots and the hypothetical, obviously I would say the robots, but I wouldn't be able to judge that. Well, normally. sentience doesn't mean they have the same mind and experience as human beings. It just means that they're they not going to feel pain. I, that just seals I, it. I said value. Yeah. Yeah. That, even uh, if we, you, even that, if you that treat them, like that does not that seal, doesn't seal it. Remember, yeah. Data yeah. one human versus five yeah. humans who don't feel pain. Data can feel pain in humans. first contact. They can so. literally be rebuilt versus someone well, who would wait, die. No, but yeah, exactly. Address the one that Mola just brought up: five people who can't feel pain versus one person who can. But those five people can't be rebuilt. These guys can. You can just so human mean? beings human heal. Just so we're clear, They're human droids. beings can heal. Like, why? Why do we? No, why do? Why do we assume that they can be rebuilt and they'd be the same? Uh, there's no point in the question. Experience. If they can be rebuilt, yeah. then who cares? Then who cares Maybe if they can be rebuilt? Maybe they up on the cloud. Okay, fair, fair, fair. The question is pointless. <laughs> well, that's my head that in with that in mind, the question becomes pointless that they can be rebuilt. So well, you have if they to can, look at it from the I feel like they'd like say that, that if, it, if they can, because of course yeah, yeah, you can true. rebuild them and there's no difference. And that's, then, of course, that's an easy yeah. choice. But I presume that it means they're dead. Yeah. We wipe kind of out whatever their experience the To clarify, mm -hmm. right, Sitch, you're saying that if the question were robots that you philosophically consider entirely the same as a human versus a human, you're, the question becomes easy. Because it's just like, yes, well, save but the, I'm, the way I'm the way I'm interpreting these questions is like I'm literally standing there at the lever, and someone just tells me this sentence, and I Why have to would interpret we it. However, the robots it. are sentient because the question says they are. <laughs> that's yeah. the point of the question. Oh, no, it's not an assumption. That is not what I said. But <laughs> no, 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 that's, no, no. That's what someone in chat oh, okay. said. So did chat. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha. Um, Out of curiosity, Cap, right. if you were given the same premise that you believed they are of similar value to the same value as a human being in terms of what they mean to the world i assume you would save the five okay uh potentially yes but so a lot of animals that we have on earth today would like be would qualify as sentient if it was five you know well, because dolphins they... or dogs or something i would I well would yeah do is the appeal that now. you and uh, sitch are making sort of is that we just we just don't know enough about what these things are what a sentient robot really means what we i'm saying know. What I'm saying is that sentient doesn't mean at the level of human beings necessarily. Sentient versus it sapience. Yeah. Um, I want. 
I forget, uh, well, I forget what sapience means. So, so uh, apparently, according to, yeah, like uh, that sentient, like a, like a dog is sentient, but sapience would be like above that. Wise is kind of yeah. the keyword for that. So if it were yeah, one person or oh, five I, dogs, I, I, I would I, kill I the five dogs. That, like, because humans are sentient, but they're also sapient, I imagine would be the conclusion that yeah. if you are sapient, you, like that, sen yeah, sentient being like the capacity to feel and like recognize and understand those feelings, maybe? I'm not sure. Which is curious, right? Because a robot yeah. programming versus actually feeling it, question mark, what does that even mean? It's complicated. What does it even mean? And exactly. I wonder if that's Where enough to choose to save the human because you simply, like you'd argue in court, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not prepared to figure this out and I'd rather not take the risk. I don't know what I'm dealing well, with. Well, I mean, so presumably if it was like one human versus five chimpanzees, for example, you'd I was about to say that, but that changes the five I'd say well, because yeah. uh, chimpanzees are the, the most intelligent, right? They're, they're like number one most intelligent. They're, they're, they're up there. there. Dolphins. 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 The, the human over the chimpanzee, mm -hmm. like over five chimpanzees, rather. I don't think the, the question one, presumes <laughs> that the robots have equal or greater level of sentience or sapience. I think you know, if it was five chimpanzees, that's basically the same question. So I would mm -hmm. do nothing. I mean, well, if that was the question, I'd do nothing, yeah. Well, that is the question, essentially. I'm not it depends well, on how I, you're... I'm not, I'm not sure if it was written by this person to mean that they are like a dog, people, but not a human. I feel yeah, like I it was written, written by a robot. People <laughs> very often use sentience to mean, like, human sapience. Yeah, exactly. And that's the only that's, reason they would well, use that specific word. That's kind of what I'm wondering. Well, is if the, the I don't know. The I they, are, I, they are used casually, interchangeably. Yes. Well, I think yeah, you I could reasonably know. assume from the question that all is meant is that they're aware, they're self-aware, not that they have right. emotions or anything like that necessarily. Then dogs aren't self-aware. That's why you always tell them they're good puppies. That's right, you're good puppies. <laughs> I'm willing to um, <laughs> say that the spirit of the question is the fact that we don't quite understand this fully. Like, that's actually part of it. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't fully understand the state of those robots. And that yeah, would you sure. want that murkiness to take value over the one human life? Because if it was like you have a 120-year-old human that can barely see is lying on the ground, it's like, I, <laughs> maybe I'd save the robots at that point because that guy's like, and he's maybe in agony or something. But the, the, the normal healthy human being versus the five sentient robots of which I'm not, yeah, I, I'm willing to agree but, I don't know enough about. Mola, if, if, mm. they, if they were like five wallies, for instance. My question is basically like five advanced chat GPT with uh, like bodies. Like, I don't right. know. Gonna... I, well, I, the, 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 the problem, problem is sentience has levels, right? It could refer to a yeah. couple of yeah. things and that's part of the gray I, area. I mean, I, I would consider it, but the <laughs> graphics don't make it convincing to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you guys might <laughs> be all knocking it Okay, so Fringy, I have a question for you. Like, okay, okay if, 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 this, if, it's, if you do one-to-one -one and it's like a robot at like you know, um, like data's level, or assume identical like level of mind to a human being. Would you do nothing, or would you pull the lever? Um, I I feel like because I don't know that much about data, it says it's Bender. Bender. Okay, forget person. data. Yeah. Just Bender. assume yeah, that the sentient robot I'm thinking, has the I'm same thinking, level of mind Bender. as a person. Yeah, just go with Bender. Yeah, Bender. What, Bender. One one human versus one Bender. Five Benders. One human no, versus five bands. I am I am wondering if for you you would choose the human over a robot of equal level of mind. That's what uh, I'm asking. Well, I, I feel like again it would be the same. It, I uh, uh, would I, one human versus one bender. Uh, I mean, I I I feel like I'd probably save the human. Yeah, I probably would over one bender. But again, bender is basically a person. Okay, mm -hmm. like, so. It, uh, if you add person, benders, right? does that change it for you? Is if if it's five benders versus if it's one five person. benders versus one person, I feel I feel like that is you're killing five people for one person. I don't see how it's so easy for you to kill one bender of one person. Then, uh, <laughs> I don't think it's I, again. I I don't know if I find it easy either. Right? It feels like I could make the argument that it's essentially one person versus another. So what? Um, so what? Just bed is a cartoon. It's like, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, I always uh, bed is a cartoon. This is all dude. hypothetical clown stuff, anyway. Yeah, so it's it's all clown game. stuff. Yeah. I, I so almost said you can't die. Come on. I, I almost said a similar if you point. Have the goo. <laughs> that tied into the to Futurama a little bit more, but Bender, Bender is very hard to kill. Like he might and be again, less remember, tied into the hypothetical. Assuming, though. We're assuming that we can't repair him. If you can repair yeah. him and there's no harm and Bender's just okay and he's he's happy That's, in life, yeah, of course obviously. you save the human. Yeah, yeah, obviously okay. you save the human. 
but that's what i mean i feel like it can't be that they can be rebuilt because if they can be rebuilt then it's it's like there is no choice you always save the person so i don't know why you keep saying that you can rebuild them i don't know why you're doing that i feel like you're just trying to create a shortcut because you know that there's a conversation to be had here about like (laughs) well i think we settled on this question it was just adding yeah Oh, on this question, it is probably the murkiness of my capacity to understand what their, you know, their conscious experience is versus a human who I understand and know what yeah. their conscious experience is. So I think I'd probably do nothing in this case with that I gray mean, area. The replicants mm-hmm. might be a little bit of an easier way to to yeah. say because well, they look like people. That's the one. That yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's what that's what gets to people. Because when it's Wally, they're like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, it's just like a robot thing made out of metal." But if it looks like a person, then it changes things. The thing though is though the replicants they're not really they're not really robots. They're kind of like genetically they are literally robots. They, they are definitely robots. No, yeah. aren't they? Aren't they closer to being clones? Uh, I thought that's that's the way that it was. Oh, uh, they have implanted memories. Sure, yeah, they have those. But Just I mean, like a robot can are. have without a human body. Aren't aren't they made of organic material though? Well, like, I mean, that, remember that, Terminator. I Terminator is made partially of organic material. Yeah. You're, you're made of organic material. I, I, but I don't. I think the difference yeah. is though, they have like bone. They don't. They don't have a, an endoskeleton. Wait, wait, so not, is, is, we told them the difference. Wouldn't it be androids? dependent on? Yeah, brain, so is it skeletal say, stru- so is it skeletal structure the determinant and whether it gets because I feel like I think I think the the reason it makes the question a little bit easier to answer is because it, it they are androids the, in that they're artificial humanoid machines essentially but uh, but because they're made of biological material and they kind of look like humans it's sort of like well I mean are they like how far oh, away are they so from to us? clarify oh, someone, someone would probably in chat call was like android 18 oh if it's android 18 oh, oh, yeah. i'm saving those robots baby <laughs> <laughs> yep just to clarify you can't right die by train wally would be considered from? a robot while a terminator is more likely to be considered an android because it's made to look as yeah. close to human as possible meanwhile wally is clearly a robot but robot mm-hmm. wally, but they're all robots he has a soul in the mm-hmm. in the in the metaphorical sense he right. feels, he loves, he self he sacrificed himself to save a bunch of it. humans. Wally is a hero. Oh, he'd be fine with it, yeah. Right. Uh, okay. <laughs> let, let's let's the, I don't know. The guy at the top. Thank like, God they're heroes, so I can kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, let's let's get it going. So we'll vote. I, I assume everyone was on do nothing with this one, right? Or rags, how you feel? I yep, do nothing. <sighs> kill them robots. I think I'm gonna save the five sentient robots. Wow. I think mm. that, you know, with all this being in mind, I think the question is such that I, I, I would lean towards the the fact that there's five of them. I think it tips the scale even with the ambiguity, but I don't fault anyone for going the other way because there is that ambiguity. Because if it was mm-hmm. like, do you see if five, you know, Data's are one person? It's like, well, I mean, Data's a person, you know? Yeah. It's a, I think mm-hmm. the, problem, so. the problem is that sentient robot is just too abstract of a term mm-hmm. we just need more mm-hmm. context for this it's really hard to decide i mean yeah, yeah. it not... depends on a perspective where you lean right yeah. you can only guess with this one yeah it, it's the ambiguity that gets it if it was mm-hmm. like five ro- basically five sapient robots or a person is like i'm saving the robots every time and there's no question about it but it's the ambiguity of the question here yeah uh, just so I, th- I think it's majority do nothing, so I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I think so. Splat. 84% of people say splat the robots. Oh no! A trolley is heading toward Robot. three empty trolleys worth $900,000. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, <laughs> hitting one empty trolley worth 300000 instead. What do you do? Uh, the, the one, you yeah, destroy the, the one and, as opposed think, to the three. Yeah, it's the, the, the quandary here, I guess, is supposed to be that you'll be culpable now because you pulled the lever, I guess? Well, the oh, you, company that you save them six hundred thousand. I was gonna say, I think they'll appreciate yeah, exactly. you saving the three. Oh, so. Yeah, it's a bad one. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, maybe strange. it's an introductory one. Like it'll get more difficult. I don't know, but seventy-eight percent of people agree. Been, like a, a, a small, a, the, only a single from a small hmm. company, or three trolleys from a massive company, maybe could have been a better question. Oh no, a that trolley is releasing one hundred kilograms of CO two per <laughs> year, which will kill five people oh, over thirty God. years. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, hitting a brick wall and decommissioning the trolley. What do you do? Nothing. Uh, well, wait, what's the what's the quandary? Oh, what's what's yeah. the loss of decommissioning the trolley if it's going to save lives? You just yeah, it literally saves lives. That goes, lives. That goes both ways. Like if this thing like has been created and it, this is just what it does, then I guess they'll just make another one to replace it. Yep. I don't know that. If this is the just a normal them. function, then 
But what, what I'm yeah. trying to say is, this, if this, this thing is broken really and it's leaking, and we, we could have the chance to stop oh, it, of course I'm on board with that. But if <laughs> right, this is yeah. its normal function, then I guess I, I I don't know if it makes much of a difference. But sure. I, I yeah. mean, it's you still want to save the five. Well, but I, 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 I thought the implication is that like this is just they they're doing that through like averages of stats of people who die to. Oh, yeah. I figured it was emissions. some crazy evil like trolley that was just killing people. Well, yeah, That's because, the only like, way that I read this. Well, in that <laughs> case, yeah, we stop the trolley. That seems easy to yeah. me. I thought it was trying to i don't know no, I, 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 oh what you were saying that it's like just a regular trolley well so put it this CO2. way right if someone takes you outside and points at the bus and says do you know the emissions of that kill an average of one person per year yeah, blow and you can blow bus. it up not hurting anybody you can just i'd be like i don't know if there's a point to that they're just going to replace it with another bus i, I don't know well oh, they would I probably see what you mean. well they You're would probably replace it with a greener bus maybe is that t that tends to be the trend that we're going that that we're seeing is that things get that's right. You know, so by destroying it, it puts and... an incentive on them to build a. Uh, but what if statistically, a, a by destroying trolley. it, the cost of the construction of the new one that's already true. has emissions as well? Yeah, hmm. but are I they higher still, or lower? I still, but but that would create in a bus that would replace a bad bus that would last for longer. I, I think I, I'd go with that. I one. feel like we've, we've both invented a yeah, shit ton. Yeah, Neither of us know anything that's going on here except I think we could just treat this as simple as it is and is, just stop it. Yeah, yeah, we yep. just stop it. Yeah. It seems pretty simple. Yeah, I think that's just a poorly worded. Wait, one. no, think of the company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and my manager lever. for this company is my promotion on the line for this. Sixty percent of people pull the lever. I think being able to why they talk wouldn't. into per, into destruction sixty percent huh? hypothetical environmental damages over the next three decades from that machine surviving, I, I I don't know, man. I think that a lot of people could talk you doing some pretty dumb stuff if you're falling for that one without like questioning it deeply. Mm. It it's baked into the nature of the question that we know it to be the case. Also, it is chat. You're treating it like I didn't entertain all of those bonus options. I didn't know. Like we just said, we have no fucking clue what the hell they were trying to tell us was happening in that hypothetical. Okay, they were just like crazy runaway trolleys killing everybody. <laughs> Do you stop? <laughs> I don't know if it was just talking about emissions in general or not. It's confusing. So, oh no, you're reincarnated as a being who will eventually be reincarnated as every person in this classic trolley problem. What do you do? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, now we gotta get into now yeah, yeah I, I guess, guess I, I die now. I, I suppose. <laughs> I mean that gives that that means I get five extra lives. Yeah, I guess I've And I like I know it. Fun, yeah, yeah. I get extra lives. So it's almost like like death is yeah. less meaningful in a way if you know that it's going to you're just gonna come back and get to do it over again in a sense. Um at least for I don't, yeah. I don't think I understand that wait, so you will be reincarnated as every person in this trolley problem. Eventually. And, I, is this just a trick to say, hey, like, put yourself in every single one of this person's position and you can still pull the lever or not? What do I you do? I feel like that makes it, if anything, easier mm. to save. Well, yeah, life. if you were if you were going to yeah. come up to me, if a wizard came up to me and said, hey, you get to have five extra lives. Each one ends with you being killed, though. I'm like, I'll take it. Is this not the clone one all over again in a different way? In a kind sense. Of. It depends yeah. on, I guess. No, it, maybe it's trying to you to dying how you over feel. and over again. Yeah, you have to experience the death, but you have another life that gives you a death to experience, which well, I'm like, I'll take it. We, I, it I don't I think mean, your memories transfer over between lives, though, do they? Even if I it didn't. Know. Even Does if it, it didn't. matter? Because the way I, I read this question is like, it means that it's like, no matter what you do, you're going to die on this track eventually. For uh, me, it's I, like, I, end feels... it as quickly as possible. I don't want to do this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this. I'm going with pull the lever. Is everyone else? So. I mean, something happening I, once a yeah, life. Pull lever. I, yeah, yeah I, I pull the lever. Five extra yeah, lives sounds nice. Yeah, it I mean, means that I get extra lives, oh, is how my mind looks Apparently at this. This is one know? of the most controversial ones 52 to 48. I don't, I don't I think, understand this one. I, yeah, I, I think people are confused. confused. That's probably what it is. Yeah. I mean, there's a lack of context again. Okay. Oh no, a trolley is heading toward nothing. But you kind of want to prank the trolley driver. What do you do? <laughs> prank him. Prank him. <laughs> yeah, do it. Why not? I'm going to do nothing. I don't know what, I, what fucking I thing could happen if I actually well. yeah. 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 Eagle Scout, do nothing. Yeah. It's a social <laughs> experiment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, look what oh, they called it. Harmless prank question mark. That's right. Well, it's I mean, I guess, yeah, you know, if you're if you're gonna add like six hours to this poor guy's day, oh maybe. my god, <laughs> it's like I, a lifelong I'm PTSD. Not I'm not doing this. You one. have to pay do for nothing. therapy then. Yeah, I'm doing nothing. Right. Yeah, doing nothing. nothing. I actually don't want to make someone. Yeah, prank him. Okay. Fuck it. Wow, thirty-seven percent <laughs> of people agreed to not prank him. Sixty-three pranked wow. him. Wow. 
Wow. Mm -hmm. Bad people. Of silly That's gooses all. out there. Oh no! A trolley's heading toward a good citizen. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, running over someone who litters instead. What do you do? <laughs> oh, easy. <laughs> Kill the litter bug. Easy. Kill the litter bug. The litter bug. Out. Yeah. I, mean, I, I get with all I I mean it's like a jaywalker <laughs> almost. The body. <laughs> you know, no littering is worse than jaywalking. Um, oh yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. see. Uh, Kill the litter bug. Kill him. Yeah, literal Kill him littering is gonna die That's with his litter. litter. That's the worst part. <laughs> Someone's gonna die either way if one guy's guess, better. I guess even in the, the slightest it, possible metric, I guess. Well, again, it, yeah, littering's one awful. Dies, though, stop know? doing it. I guess either way, one person dies. A, littering is bad, and you knew it was bad when you did it. I guess that's something to tip the Death scale. Or, even as, bye I bye. Mean, this is it for you. With all things Destroy being equal, I guess so. Litera. You know, I, mean, I didn't out. tie him to the track. You know, so I right. wish he was like a yeah. I mean, if he had been like a murderer or rapist, that would have made things easier. It would be but so he funny though. If he watches you pull it. He, he goes really paper. for littering, and you're like, well, that guy well, didn't litter. I, mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, he didn't. <laughs> well, Jim you know? didn't litter, and you did. Yeah, but he didn't litter. Are the items he's littering biodegradable? <laughs> oh my god. No. <laughs> it's like paper. Great no. question. Yeah. He littered so much, it, he got trapped in the litter, and that's why he's on the tracks. If he's just like, motherfucker, there's a banana peel. Where do you want me to put it? I'm in the woods. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, you can litter that. Litterers have no respect for their common man. Kill him. Right. Yeah, We're killing him. I, Here we go. Pulling the lever. 80% yeah, so, yeah. of people agree to kill the litterer. Yes. Good. Yeah, <laughs> littering is bad, and littering can actually create really terrible consequences depending oh no. on littering as well. So. Due to construction errors, a trolley is stuck in an eternal <laughs> loop. If you pull the lever, the trolley will explode, and if you don't, the trolley and its passengers will go in circles for eternity. What do you do? Well, Jesus. I mean, uh, yeah. explosion or Explode it. Uh, explode it, yeah, I don't want to stop to death. Yeah, I assume that's the alternative. I, I guess it would be starvation, be yeah. What but if it's like that doing movie? It, but they said do cannibalism. It well, they, it says the passengers the will go and they do it for eternity. eternity. Yeah. So I, I think they yeah, survive. Yeah, they live. Die. It's like the but worst. They bought, they they lived lived in, yeah. Attracted a trolley for the end of oh time. Oh my god. You know? I'm blind man. I was going to say, I still feel like we should blow them up if they're trapped on there for eternity. If they're yeah. trapped, I, yeah, I think so. I don't think, I think you assume they live. Yeah, that makes it easier. If they die horribly or they're stuck forever, it's still horrible. Like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. If if I was yeah. looking at a life of I'm stuck on a trolley in infinitely, like I just I, up. I probably want to be blown up. Yeah, Who if it means I get out. Is, is there plumbing? <laughs> And who else is on the trolley with and look you? Look at the G forces on that turn, man! My goodness. <laughs> no, right? Yeah, they got swung back and forth every like <laughs> five seconds. What a horrible existence! Oh, Pull it. You got the spin oh, forever. Yeah. Save him from this eternal suffering. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we pull and save him. Eternal motion so. sickness or an explosion? I mean, Kaboom! Every single one of those people in that trolley would pull the tr lever. Eventually, yeah, they would have to, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fifty-seven percent of people agree to blow it up. Oh no! A That's trolley's it. heading toward your worst enemy. You can pull the lever to divert the trolley <laughs> and save them, or you can do nothing, and no one will ever know. Ooh. I don't. I mean, my, are you a murderer? I like that they put him <laughs> no, as an no, angry no, dude. No. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> what did your worst enemy do my to you? Uh, yeah, save uh, the yeah. I feel like my worst enemy is like, would it be like Putin or something like that? There's like some terrible mm, despot in the world, or is it something? Well, someone like personal. personal. It's, probably, it's someone, you're probably someone you actually know. have to know. Otherwise, yeah. you get yeah. the worst yeah, person. No one just some jerk in your life, like yeah, the jerk. Like you know, as, yeah, they 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 haven't done anything worthy of death. So yeah, they're just no, like my worst like, enemy. I don't even know who my worst enemy is. <laughs> it's so no. You they don't, don't have die. enough enemies. I guess I don't, or not not good ones. They're just petty the enemies. Never just done, you can do me. nothing, and no one Organized will ever chaos. know. They gotta add that in. No one will ever yeah. know if this <laughs> happens. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, pull the lever. Yeah, they yeah oh, save oh, them. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, save I'm, them. Obviously. Now, if I was a person who like someone like killed my child and got away with it or something, yeah, yeah, the, I'm fucking pulling that lever. Or oh I'm yeah. Them, but, so, yeah. for I'm the not, sake of it, yeah. I mean, not for this question, but just as another hypothetical, if it actually was the worst person on the planet right now, whoever that may be, would you, would that change it for you? Of course. Uh, yes. I, yes. Yeah. I assume Easy. we're entering into serial just, killer levels, yeah. so yeah, kill. Yeah, kill, kill, kill. So, but um, in the sense of your worst enemy, we're doing nothing, I assume. 
I think it's got to, you got to. Wait, no, no, no. Doing nothing. Oh, sorry. Pull the lever. I mean, pull the lever. Pull the lever. Yeah. 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 Save yeah, fifty-one percent of people agree. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ! Their worst enemy deserves okay. death. Apparently, what kind of enemies wow. do they have? Wow. That is, you know, is that, that the closest one? Like being like the worst person in the world, you know, in that Jeez. sort of sense. Oh no! A trolley is heading towards a person and will lower their lifespan by fifty years. You can pull the lever to divert the trolley and lower the lifespan of five people by ten years instead. What do you do? Wow. Ah, so you're reducing um, everybody's life substant uh, by this 50 years total, no matter what. Yep. Mm. Yeah, but it's spread out between five people, so out. someone yeah. gets fucked or or five people get taxed. I, yeah, that, I think that's my thinking. One person yeah. gets their life seriously yeah. reduced. That dude in, is in, done. In time. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Five yeah. Guys probably the die when they're like 20 or 30. Um, Whereas the, the older 30s. people, you know, 10 years would be like 70 instead of 80, possibly. I mean, it could be for somebody that's like 40 instead of 50. <sighs> I think, I'm, I'm going to split it up. I think I'm going to split, split it up. up. Yeah. yeah. Spread oh, it out. I, I would spread oh. it. Because if you think about it, right, would like, would you remove some, if we just change the numbers, but keep the, you know, concept, you know, would you take, you know, 70, you know, years away from one person or would you, you know, how, how would you have to rejig the numbers to get you to change? But yeah, I think I, in this, yeah, one yeah, year, I'd rather it, 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 it ruins That'd one guy's cool. life versus reducing by uh, a much smaller amount for five other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Read it out. There's yeah, a misery loves there. company. There's a mechanic in Final Fantasy XIV where one person is targeted like, that they're going to get a significant amount of damage in like a couple seconds. Wasn't and the Sid the mechanic? No, no, no. Uh, a, a, yeah, actually, a good one. Uh, but, uh, and the way that you do it, because it's the MMO one, is everyone on the team has to get on that point so that it spreads the damage to all four people in your party as opposed to just that one guy dying, which is a much bigger problem than a bunch of you getting 10% damage, you know? So it's kind of the same deal. Jojo. No. 64% uh, of people agreed on that one. Well, what do you think the... Because we, did, we didn't spend too long on it. What do you think the main counter-argument against that one would be? Sorry, say that one more time. What do you think the main counter argument would be on that one? You're hurting yeah. more. Um, it's best You're to hurt the more least lives. amount of people possible. Uh, that uh, ten years of life, even between five people, is still a significant amount of time. They might lead. You know, they would have different lives. They might. Um, uh, they might use that life to enrich the lives of other people because there are mm. five of them that you know they know. Um, but again, it's, I, it's the way same it's amount of years. Five, it's just yeah. that they're very yeah, localized it's... for one poor dude. Yeah. But I, I, that guy I, might have a week left if you pick him. Because in a, in a sense, right, like the the value of the lives, you know, one to you know fifty is really really like important in a different way than you know between seventy and eighty or sixty and seventy. True. So I think that, you know, if you kind of take the value of that stuff, it, um, you know, I, I, I think it tips in in the favor of spreading it out. Um, so, yeah. And... Wait, what? What is this one? Mm -hmm. Oh, right. What? Oh, no. The trolley's heading toward five yeah. people. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, sending the trolley into the future to kill five people 100 years from now. What do you do? Oh. I mean, this is essentially oh, like killing five people on the planet now that are on the other side of the world. Um, no, no. A, a hundred years from now, they have a better chance of like being able to, you know, accommodate. No, they're gonna die. I think. I think it's presumed no, they're that they're gonna die. die. Resurrection. Yeah, they're going to it. It. it okay. No, they, they will die. It. Yeah. Uh, uh, kill them now and get it over with. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, no. I would say in Why the no? future, I assume that lives will be longer yeah. and better. That's a better version mm -hmm. of what I'm saying. You're gonna say there's more <laughs> people, so life would be less. <laughs> you no, know, I, I think, yeah, in the future, I think you're going to live longer and you'll have more years, and I think the standard of living will be higher. Um, you'll probably, there's chances are you'll have more of an education, you will be healthier, you will, you know, all of those good things. Um, so I think it's. All things being equal, like it's better to save the lives of five people in a hundred years, um, because they will happen by the That's nature of the idea. question. So, Man. yeah, because I mean, if we assume that just by the years alone, they'll it, you will have saved more lives in years, and there's a better chance that they will not die young because of accidents or diseases and things like that. So, I just think you're going to get way more bang for your buck, so to speak. Is it, isn't five centuries five? a lot of time in which the world could have just ended, though? Like, I mean, be it by asteroid. Yeah. I, it's possible, but I'm not. I can't use that as justification. Well, yeah, yeah, that's not part of the question. Yeah, yeah it's we have to assume there's a. Yeah. 
They well, what years, if, not five I think that's the reason I'd pull the lever. Because Rags, what if the future is worse? People and well, possible. you know what? It's then possible. I guess I was wrong. And I'll yeah. never know. <laughs> what, if they re- what if those people are ghouls? Like, fall Ooh, out, my know? God. Ooh. Ghouls. Maybe. Hey, What's ghoul like uh, Lewis. Lewis. <laughs> Lewis. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. I I think the trend is that things are things are actually you know I know there's a lot of news and doom and gloom and stuff, but things are generally uh, trending to be better. So yeah, I don't see any reason why it'd be get, getting worse. And what if we if we're in the past, maybe we can prevent. I was in the, the past. True. I can tell you all about it. Ask me about the past. <laughs> I was so there. We, damn it. Are we deciding to do nothing? Is that what's happening? Well, the yeah, one that saves okay. the yeah the five lives in the future as a it, just to be clear, it's saved five lives now or five uh, five people in a hundred years. I think it's the is same. there um is it, I'm genuinely right. just thinking about this out loud. Is there an argument to be made that you're killing more people by killing five people now than in the future? Uh, because those mean, people could uh, produce um, offspring. Is that your argument? I assume uh, that I'm thinking about but out loud. Five, yeah, because the no, five people the, the same thing would apply to the five people in a hundred right. years in more future. It's, yeah, it's the and same you, thing. It's population control. Yeah, I think that's fair. Infinitely speaking, this is the same. So principally do nothing, but in actuality, do you think you would pull the lever? So you I... don't have to see it. So we right have to now. pretend yeah, that I understand completely that portal will definitely send it to the future and kill five people from the future. It's... Yes, if I, if I believe the premise of the question is accurate, if I believe that premise to be true, then I would yeah. save the people in the future. I think what are the people on the track are what make the people in the future. Well, then the question oh, is mis- question. It, then the question is malformed, and that's yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's, it's almost like malformed. You want to no, kill a little bit of a, a little bit of a tingle, a little bit of a you have to Not think really. harder about it. Also, hi, no. uh... <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you're killing all of those people's bloodlines that would have stemmed from them. Yeah, it's not, nece- the not other necessarily. People, I mean, because uh, the bloodlines are more than one person, obviously. I, I think the question almost boils down sure, to like, do you want to kill? Do you want to kill five people and see it and experience it, or do you want to know five people were killed by your I think hand? You're right. not actually yeah, it. it's pretty I much that. that I don't. I, I you want to see it that way at all? I just saw it as like, what are the likelihoods of the five people in the future living longer or better lives? And that's a complicated plus, question. I plus the five I, people on the trolley, they have gotten to experience a life, so that's almost like a bonus in a way. Oh, that's interesting. Like, do we assume the people on the truck, like the people in the future, will die like the minute they're born, or like at some point? Which is, I think, which I think is reasonably less likely, considering you know technology and our the the life expectancy going up and infant mortality going down as a trend. This is just like the sentient robots all over again, where we don't know so many. There's too many variables on that side. I think think it's actually, I think it's better in this case because we have very a lot of reasons to believe that you know the trends and things about the future will you know be a lot better. Mm -hmm. So based on what we know about the world, it seems much more. You say it's a guarantee we're going to be better in the future. Not saying it's a guarantee, but I I think it's reasonable. I, I was I was hearing it as five hundred years, so that that's why I was thinking I don't know if, if we're all going to be around in another five centuries. But one century, yeah, I think I'll save the future people. Well, too. you well either way, people will be around because the premise of the question is saving five people in a five hundred years. What if so they're in a wasteland, right? A fallout yeah, wasteland, and they're about to. Be well, then we need people even more. <laughs> God damn it! What what kill the five raiders. Faces. True. What if they don't kill have five a face, goblin huh? people they, who are trying what if they don't to eat have babies. A face? Yeah. What yeah. if they what don't have the faces, cre- right? What if they're Think creeper? About it. What if they're the creeper guy from Black Cauldron? Oh what, are you doing? Yeah. what if they're part of Caesar's Legion? Yeah. There's yeah, any no. any amount of like, well, what ifs? You know, you could ask. Yep, doesn't but change my answer. It's fun to think about, but yeah, yeah. yeah. my answer is when they are killed. I think I would what? rather pull it and not witness it. Yeah. That's it, I, I, yeah, that's pretty much simplifies it for me. Send it to the future and hope for the best rather than seeing the <laughs> Send it to I don't the want to future deal with and shit. hope for the best. <laughs> well, luck, I love y'all. the idea as the, as the <laughs> trolley goes through the pole. You go, good luck. <laughs> that's legit. Like, what else could I do? That's a problem for future me. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I feel like that's what most people would do, honestly. All right, well, yeah. let's, do let's do a vote. Let's this do was a vote left to right. Me. Are you going <laughs> the the present or the future? Left to right. Let's go. Future. Good luck. To, Still the future, the all right. Uh, Cap? Uh, principally, you gotta do nothing. Do nothing. Yeah. Oh, is that an option? Just do nothing? That's Well, that's... Well, yeah. I mean, nothing's... Uh, yeah. Nothing. Have you heard of, have you heard then, of the trolley uh, problem? Yeah, but then which one, which one does it hit if you do nothing? If you do nothing, it the, kills the five in the present. Okay. 
So you see uh, the splat. Not all of your shirt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll send him to the future. Boom. Okay. Uh, Fringy. Keep your shirt clean. Uh, hmm. Uh, I, th I think I'll send it to the future. Wow. But they could be robots in the future, Fringy. You'll never know. It goes through the portal. Well, the and problem is, the, when it's through the portal, it I says no, the, the, the question says people. It says, yeah, I presume it's as the just, same circumstance, but 100 years from now. Just, just when it, it goes people. through the portal, you hear, Wally. <laughs> oh, just saying. <laughs> Well, okay, the effect of a trolley on five people now, we completely oh, understand. The effect of a trolley of people in the already... future, maybe we won't. I future thought, people are going. It takes them to the question that they will die. The is over. <laughs> deliberation. Yeah, deliberation is over. Free. What, what, sorry, what was your answer? Uh, yeah, I'll pull the lever. Pull the lever. Okay. Uh, Mark. I, I hate to keep on throwing in variables, but are you legally on the hook for the people who die in the oh present? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be dead. Bro. It won't matter. Will I have to look their families in the eye? Not if they have to look years their little babies in the I, will, I know I will be not dead. be prosecuted for killing five people a hundred years from now, but I Ooh. might be for killing five people here now. You know? <laughs> Up to uh, you. Uh, how you want. Cool. In the in the future, <laughs> we'll kill the present people. And like we said, in action. Killing we'll the present people. It. Yeah. Okay. So now it's me. Um, I was. I feel like we could have talked forever about it. Um, but I, I, I was just, I was gonna kill the present people. Yeah. I feel like the future people, I'll be killing lives that have, uh, potentially got so much more. And I don't want to take that risk. But obviously, it could go both ways. I understand that. But, uh, you know, in the moment, probably go for the five present. Nuts. Does that. Actually, uh, wait, hold on. Does that mean that if it was sent to the past, you would pull the lever? Uh, that's a good question. So if it was sent to like ancient Rome. Oh, so the worry with that Rome. one, which no could have, I don't know, opened up the whole conversation yeah. again, but it's the butterfly. Let's, yeah, let's say no paradoxes. No don't paradoxes. you dare, Fringy. Wait, if, 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 if built in, it changes nothing about the events of history and everything, then I'd probably pull it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well. Jack, yeah. Jack and well, Papa Cayman. Yeah. Same thing about this. Uh, yeah. But sorry, yeah, not so. What's your what's your answer? Mm. Pull it. Goodbye, <laughs> yeah, future. Simply. Uh, <laughs> sitch. Uh, the present people gotta die. Rags. Yep. Save those in the future. Act man. Killing the present. Shit, man. Is that actually like? Yeah. Do we just draw? Yeah, I think we might have. Flip a coin. <laughs> you gotta oh. flip a coin. Yeah. Hold on. Wait, wait, like chat, do a poll, <laughs> chat tiebreaker. I can sort that out, yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be, yeah, yeah, chat, oh. you decide. It's on you yeah, now. You, you've been sitting yeah, there but... judging us, now you get to make a choice. Yeah, yeah. Chat starts sweating. Your like, now. Oh, blood from your hands. That's right. <laughs> blood splattered in your face, like Huey and the boys, or yeah, do you want yeah, to yeah. send it through the portal and just say, you know what? And then pretend like it didn't even happen, just walk like, away. You, you have to make that choice. It's the cleanest choice. Who wouldn't make that? Versus splat! Oh my God! And chaos. No. Well, I think Rags's <laughs> argument was compelling. The idea that yeah, those five people do. might have higher quality of life. Um, they might also suck. <laughs> like, it, it might also not suck. rule that's, that out. That's true. That's what makes it. Yeah. Here we go. All right. Let's the see. Begins. Oh gosh, it's pretty. Uh... Yeah, Pull the lever. Oh. Even the present the looks like. To the future. Wow. To the future. Thank you, chat. Mm -hmm. It would be curious to know the general motivation for that. Is it the thing about not wanting to watch it. the people die? Yeah, if it's it's that, well, yeah. It's that yeah. simple. Like you can just pick that and like just that I'm, alone. I'm just going by time paradox. I don't want to affect anything here in the present that would mess up yeah. that portal existing there to go to the future. What if Ignorance you knew that wouldn't moved. affect anything, though? Exactly. What if you knew, if I knew that wouldn't affect it? Well, why? Yeah. Well, if it, okay. It. Uh, if it didn't, then uh, to, to be quite honest, I don't have to watch five people get brutally All slaughtered. Right. Exactly. It always comes yep. back to that initiative. The way well, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's it's fair. Like, you said it to the pole, you just hear right? blood curdled screams coming out of the pole, and you're like, huh. No, the pole closes. <laughs> yeah. right it closes right. instantly. Like, you don't hear anything. Living, you don't hear anything. Living blissful <laughs> ignorance. Blissful I guess ignorance. that is part of the Complete equation, ignorance. right? Five people die no matter what, but how scarred are you? That's why I said it was like, do you want to have blood on your hands or just know that it would be responsible for it, but not actually have to experience it? Like, what? one's going to traumatize you for life. One, like, you can kind of compartmentalize and just, like, you know, that never happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can go, uh, close your eyes and hide. 
Um, the best. You know, that never happened. Life that PTSD. Gotta, enough booze, 20 years. Don't you, don't you at least owe it to the people that you're about to kill to, like, look them in the eyes? Witness it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, oh. <laughs> it's a bit more cowardly uh, to just be like, I don't want to worry about this. Hmm? I just love yes, that. You're like, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, like, present people. I'm killing you. I'm saving the future people. Like, you don't even know them. I do. It makes <laughs> to the I don't know you question. either. I don't know you, fuckers. So I don't care. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say the from the shining opening up. I was like, "Oh my god!" And then you just see big flood of blood come out of the portal. You're like, yeah, "Well, it wasn't easy." Chat, chat has decided we are pulling the lever. Yeah. Wow! The future, oh. and seventy percent of people agree oh, with that. Oh, oh that's oh. really exactly what I'm like. Yeah, that's interesting. Thirty-two like percent. Wow. Also, I figure uh, we'll go to thirty, and then we'll go back to and watching videos because there is a video that. Oh shit! Well, I think well, thirty's the last we, one. Yeah, we we've been going for like. We would go for nine hours. <laughs> yeah, but because it's the first part, I, I'm more than willing. We usually go to like, a, well, not usually, but we have gone to like 11 hours on the first part. And since okay. everyone's already well, here, like, uh, yeah, it'll all work out, obviously. Oh, okay. um, oh no, what a the... trolley problem is playing out before you. Do you actually have a choice in this situation or has everything been predetermined <laughs> since the universe began? <laughs> what? I have, I have no reason to believe that the yeah, world has do. been predetermined. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. I have a choice. Yes. Well, yeah, I recognize my own capacity to choose. Even if I don't, I feel that I do. So. Well, we can talk about w whether or not the world is deterministic is different than if the world is predeterministic. And I have right. no right. reason to believe that the world is predeterministic. Oh, right, right, right. T2 I or T3? Yeah, I Pick one. Yeah. I like Plus. how if you choose I have a choice, it does uh, splat the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, we did it. That's the end. Congratulations, oh, you yeah, solved yeah, yeah, philosophy. Yeah. We did it. Yeah. All right, yeah, everybody. Yeah. All right. It was, was easy. Yeah. It was faster, <laughs> yeah. We probably did that out. faster and easier than the wisecrack shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, Send right. that to wisecrackhead. Why would he even yeah, have been done it right? There's no tricky. point in engaging in the... But I feel like we learned some things from us. I these did. Yeah, no, this was all a waste of time, okay? You don't understand. It was, it was a waste, waste of time, time, actually, yeah. I, I thought some sentient robots. Uh, just like all <laughs> philosophy classes, it feels like a waste of time. <laughs> Could have been playing video games, dude. Free credits, man. Right? Oh my god. I had an existential crisis which resulted in me sacrificing myself for five clones of me. That's right. We, <laughs> we, learned, we learned a lot about your thoughts on clothing. I love the idea this yeah. will be like, yes, but Mark, is that ever really going to happen? Probably. Well, maybe. Maybe, maybe <laughs> well, you will fuck get you, maybe. Train <laughs> tracks. Joking. You never know. And now you're prepared. Now you know that most of you, I think, wouldn't do that. Yeah, we've all explored it. Though. it looked like, or most of the people who responded would uh, let the and clones I've, die. And I've explored myself. You know, I've, I've, I've looked into, you know, what I think and why I think it. You know what, it, I'm going to bet. Me something to think about. I'm going to bet the EFAB fans are probably going to like that overall, that section. Uh, yeah, well, well, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. yeah and I really not hope be so, too, yeah. uh, And they could play along. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> oh, no. It's, it's, what is this? There is a trolley headed towards a group of people tied to the tracks. Wisecrack can pull the lever to switch the tracks and save the people. <laughs> no one will die if the lever is pulled, but pulling the lever is voluntary participation <laughs> in a dumb hypothetical used by evil capitalists. Stay the course, wise <laughs> Stay the course. So, uh, what thank you, uh, Kilo. Do? Kilo Kino sent that to me. Thank you. Good. Oh, that's <laughs> right, sir. <laughs> And thank you, uh, Dr. Diddler, for uh, sending us that uh, Neil.fun trolley thing. Unlike Wisecrack, we had yeah, hours of fun. fun with that. Yeah, yeah I bet mean, he would be judging really us the good. whole time if we had done that in front of him, the Wisecrack guy. What's wrong with you? I, I, the it was the, uh, do you prank the trolley driver? That was probably my favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so have I got a treat for Welcome you Welcome back, guys. children, to my... Oh, ah, uh -oh. right. This video is called Plot Armor is Good, Sometimes. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay. Well, hey, hey, hey. Well, you know what, let's see. Yeah, oh, you know, you don't want to prejudge him. I was pre -judge just telling Mahler, I've been uh, re-watching Game of Thrones, so this was pretty cool. Yeah, that's perfect. I'm sure Game of Thrones yeah, actually does armor. come up in here. Maybe. I can't remember, but... So, um, does everybody have the how? link? Everybody no. Yeah, Hang on, I'll, I'll repost it. it. It's been a while. Okay. This guy's uh, channel name is Hello Future Me. Is he one of the people that would have got killed by the trauma? <laughs> oh, <Yes. laughs> my favorite. I love this fella. Oh, good. There we go. Oh, Everything's working right. out. Man, yeah. he loves Cora. Oh, oh, wow. oh, no. oh no, this <laughs> man. Wow. Pinkish purple light. I'm sure, How daring. I'm sure he's not going to reference Cora, and I'm sure that oh, that had no. nothing to do with me organizing you coming on here and having this video <laughs> right now. I'm sure. Oh, yes. no. That's conspiracy thinking. We don't do that. Here, That's so. predetermined. No, 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 That's no, predetermined. How no, no, no. <laughs> we do that? <laughs>
Okay, here we go. Oh, wait, is everyone in? One, two, three. I think everyone is in, right? I mean, yeah, I'm like... Bazinga. Okay. Don't well, let me pick a nickname. That's okay. Welcome back, children, to my imagination bubble, where together we uncover the secrets of the uh, universe. Today, why don't the voices in our heads stop? And also, plot armor. Well, they they don't stop. They tell me to kill. Yeah, they did it for ages just then. Oh. We did a whole section on it. Because not even six bullets to the head can stop bad writing. And I've created a whole companion video to this one discussing oh, so is he, is examples. Oh, is he uh, from New Zealand? New Zealand? Don't know. Well, because he said heed instead and of head. That uh, sounds like jumping? a New Zealand accent. Mm. Mm. Of what well, it isn't plot armor, Only someone down under would, would know that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what people think, and some truly awful examples of it as part of my ongoing Beyond Writing series, which Wait. you can get access to with the Curiosity Stream now oh, yeah. a bundle. Links below as they have kindly a bundle. sponsored this yeah, video. I like a bundle. Part Apparently one, he is let's from be honest, New Zealand. Yes. sometimes it's just bad writing. I agree. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. But, uh, wait, sure. some, uh, wait, what, what is sometimes plot just armor, plot armor. Plot armor. armor. Oh, sure, the, sure. Right. But is our, is our position going into this that it's always bad writing? I feel like you wouldn't call it plot armor <laughs> if it wasn't justified. And by justified, Oh, I yeah, mean... I suppose, yeah, necessarily. If it's plot armor, then it is bad ne by necessity because plot armor is a bad thing. Yeah, I don't think anyone but, ever but... says, like, that's really great plot armor. Yeah, that's a great it's plot. Yeah, yeah, it's like inherently that, yeah. a bad I don't know. There, there, are, there are stories where that is, like, the point. Like, you know, like, One Punch Man. The point is that he is... The, I wouldn't call that plot armor. But armor. they would justify it within the he story, though. Yeah, he... he, yeah, he they don't, they How are we defining plot armor? They don't actually yeah. justify it within the story. They, they make it a humongous joke. Yeah, they explain it away. Well, yeah, but it's I mean, accounted you know, for in terms of how they do the narrative. Squads in a 10 kilometer run, and you do I that for three yeah. years, you'll, yeah. you'll be unkillable. Yeah, the nature of that world is such that, that if but, you do but, that, but, you yes, become. I, uh, but, uh, but, ever, yeah. but even like even Genesis, like that's basic strength training. Everybody would be you. No, no, no. I can't. Wait, 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 wait. Is is there though, as the story eventually unfolds, a reveal for what exactly the origin for his power is, or is by in universe they are actually arguing that that I, is exactly what it is? I um, there, don't believe there's a. I think there, it's, it's just a joke that he's just overly strong for no great reason. It wasn't there just squats and like well, push-ups and chin. Okay, well, so no. there kind of there is kind of a vague yeah. explanation that you kind of have to do some headcanon to explain. But there, there is a somewhat like a, of an he did break his limiter or something like that. I believe they brought oh, it later. Right. But I feel like it, plot armor is a very broad term because you could apply it to like situations like in Game of Thrones where you know the series establishes that people get killed when they fuck up and a lot of people fuck up in the later seasons but don't die but then well, you also like mm. right but would you consider like luke skywalker being shot at by like six stormtroopers that all miss would you consider that plot armor it depends you know? where it depends it, where because yeah. if it's yeah. in the new i mean if he's it's standing new... still after obi-wan dies and you know and yeah, but no they, and you, they um, that's problem. not so they were ordered not to kill him though yeah oh yeah, yeah. and also that that's true <laughs> Big one. And depends on a franchise, uh, right? Guess. Like how much it can get away with. I mean, every franchise has its own rules, mm -hmm. right? Game of Thrones is so much more brutal than like yeah. Star Wars, right? I, th I feel uh, like as, as long as the you... action can kind of like trick you, it, like that you don't think about yeah. that, then then it's not a big deal. Right. If you if you're not sitting there thinking like, wow, these characters really really should have died. This is kind of dumb. Then that's then that's bad, yeah. you know. Well, I mean, well, yeah. sometimes yeah. they can mask it within the scene, uh, but that's part of the reason yeah. it's going to be revealed on a rewatch. I agree. I think it's yeah, just like, exactly. it's no an issue though. I it's think just not all armor is the same, right? Sometimes yeah. it's really egregious. Sometimes it's like, eh, okay. I've I was gonna say, you want to establish a baseline? Like the long night is like that's definitive plot armor. They just cut. Mm -hmm. That's like the most absurd it. example. Yeah. Of that, plot that's armor, like the greatest. That's the most perfect example. We have you surrounded and it is cut. That what's her name getting stabbed through the gut and she's she's fine. Mm -hmm. Like the next Sabine, day she's up Sabine, Sabine yeah. Wren, the very yeah, cool no, character. Oh, that's, that's pretty that's awesome. Hyper plot armor compared I've to the character with the worst armor. haircut in any Wren. fucking <laughs> series ever. <laughs> Related to Kylo Ren. Well, well had, hold on. Um, is is Sabine's hair worse than uh, Holdo's? Mm, nothing. Um, I don't even know who this character Holdo. looks like. But... Who's Holdo? All right, let me let me explain this <laughs> oh, in a phrase. Yeah, yeah, let me yeah. let oh, me oh, explain oh. this in a oh, let me explain this in a format similar. you might understand. There is all right. A tr oh no, a trolley is heading down the track. Oh, <laughs> Admiral <laughs> Holdo is. Tied to I'm one. an expert at this. <laughs> they both I have a terrible haircut. They both have terrible haircuts. One is purple. Who dies? 
I need to take this opportunity to say though, cauterization does not make your Equal organs. Causation? Oh, causation. So, this mark guy is an yeah. idiot. If you get stabbed in the heart, as long as it's cauterized, you're fine. No, yeah, obviously. Stop bleeding. Yeah. That's she, her insides will be boiling and completely. Have you ever been stabbed in the brain? Destroyed. You've got to put like fire just... in there, and it'll save you. Yeah. Honestly, you have a better chance of getting. If stabbed I get if I get shot by a yeah, bullet. I don't know. Well, it doesn't do anything. Uh, it's like no damage. To say. You're a vegetable, though. Just well, so wait, should we all... How, how are we defining plot armor? Well, at all? When, well, when I mean, you're supposed to take damage, but you don't. Us. Okay, okay, we'll see. Yes, yeah, yeah, and then we can talk cool. about it. All right, fine. You write Jeez. yourself into a corner, and you come up with some dumb, contrived excuse of a way to get out of it. And the reader noticed. Graham the wizard who likes cats is floating through the vacuum of space, oh, no. bleeding out from 62,000 million stab wounds, and he just oh, happens no. to pop a magic pill from the spaceship, and you've never heard of it, and oh, suddenly, it's just a flesh wound. It's dumb. You know it's dumb. The three-eyed man who whispers to me from under my bed that he knows. He knows. <laughs> He knows it's dumb as well. I don't like saying this because I like giving more helpful advice, but sometimes there's really no other solution than just to write a better scene. Like, there's this one time where Arya gets stabbed several <laughs> times in the- This is a classic. Yeah. Soup! Yeah. For those who don't know, classic. she gets stabbed like four times in the belly by a, like a dagger thrown into a sewer, and then the following day she has some chicken soup and it's all fine. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Chase through the city after, like literally they have a whole parkour scene practically. There is with that this too, movie. yes. Yeah. And then she has some soup and she's good. ...stomach and falls into sewer water and then stumbles around the town and seemingly... God, that was so stupid. ...he heals oh, up just dumb. fine the next day. They should very... Wow, he didn't mention the chicken soup. Liar. Uh, wow. <laughs> or the soup is <laughs> integral. Yes. Simply she have she never sort of used her daredevil power. Suit. They gave her that daredevil ability where she turned off the lights and could still fight. And she never fucking used it. That was the the, the thing I actually cared she, about. Was the same, he cuts the candle and fights the waif. Uh, oh my god! Did, did you mean after, after that? that? Yeah, that is after this. Yeah, we never. No, no, no. Saw I it. meant, did you mean she never uses it? Like she after never that uses moment. it again after. Like I like oh, that moment. Oh right, like, right, okay, right. She doesn't defeat the night king in the dark. Yeah. I didn't even, dude. I I wouldn't even defend the use against the waif. The waif is supposed to be prepared in that sort of shit too. Yeah, so, it would make a difference. Our the faceless. Yeah, the faceless stuff. Everything. It, it felt like it, it had a really cool buildup and idea for absolutely zero payoff. They fucking you, wasted yeah. Arya so it much. Sounds like you're talking Bravos. about seasons five through eight. The most... Almost like they had. As really soon as she got the Bravos, her brain just melted and she became an unlikable character that they had no plan for. I loved Arya season one through four and a half. Well, they, that's where they know. ran out of book material. So yeah, 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 yeah like season crazy. five. Fucking. It's crazy how they managed to waste her p entire potential even yeah. though she Thanks. does kill the main guy it's crazy <laughs> yeah nothing they didn't do anything with her what that was set up <laughs> dude, she, dude her fucking ending but, where she's like what's west of westeros <laughs> and she, she just cuts she's skin dressed, like she no her, and westeros yeah. it was set up in season one when she would secretly whisper the night king at the end of her or season two <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah, off screen. Oh, no. It's totally fine. Nope. At the end of it, list. But uh, uh, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. with mentioning, by the way, killed the Night King in episode three. I'm pretty sure it's episode either one or two of that season that she's like, "What's a White Walker?" It was the episode oh. like right before that. Oh, She'd never even God. heard of them. Yeah, she had never awesome. heard of them before yeah. and has to had to ask Gendry. So kills cringe. the Night King, the and then she thing. wants to just leave like the next time. Like, Apparently, she, the very she next day. Old Nan telling her about them. Old Nan. So, ugh. So oh yeah. Evil, evil cringe. Come up with something better. They should have written a better solution for Aya to get out of this, or foreshadowed the solution better. Or at least just don't write them into uh, a corner yeah. where it requires a contrived solution like this in the first place. It's why Agreed. plot armor with often so feels far. like Deus Ex Machina yeah. or just yeah. luck. The problem a lot of the time is a few pages back, and if it feels contrived to you when you're writing it, if you're kind of arming and ahhing, it probably is. But Our... I'll let you in on a little <gasps> trade secret. We make characters survive uh -oh. for plot reasons just because we want them to all the time. Plot armor is just when we don't hide that very well. Um, yep. pretty much. I'd agree with uh, that. Uh, sure. I don't think. Well, um, there's sometimes I have to they think could about that. They could construct a scenario where you can clearly see this is plot armor, but at this moment is so earned by the character that you kind of just let it go. My right. example would be like Jon Snow in the in the, the in the um, the long the um, Battle of the Bastards. Oh, 
aged terribly, but in the moment, I remember just kind of giving him a <laughs> Wait, but that doesn't, that doesn't work as an I example mean, then, right? With this what? logic, I think every time the main character does not die is like plot armor. Like well, so wait, what, what I think, I think he has he's, to make, he's simply trying to say is that as a writer, you've always got the power to choose when and where they die or don't. It's just that when you do a bad job of protecting them, that's when it looks like plot armor, even though plot armor is yeah. totally happening all the yeah, time. That's what I, I agree that's what with I the sentiment. Um, when you notice I just it, wouldn't classify it the same way. I wouldn't it's say it's like definition, yeah. the clean plot armor or obvious. not, I guess, would be the difference. Yeah, it's hard to pinpoint it that way. Mm hmm. That's so why I said we have to define what we mean by plot armor. Yeah, well, that's going to be a bit of a contention. Is that I wouldn't define it the way he is, but that's fine. I, I understand yeah, I what think he's the sentiment I agree with. Yes. See, plot armor isn't actually a problem with main characters not dying. I think a lot of the time we just get fatigued with the question of whether characters are going to get hurt or die with no follow through, and we stop believing, we stop caring, we see behind the curtain, and we see the plot armor. That's why it's really a problem with one, a lack of immersion, or two, a lack That's of That's not attention. plot armor. That example right there is not plot armor. No, well, there's, plot armor. there's plenty of the plot visuals. armor in these. Yeah, because because there's yeah, a lot of this is um this is the desolation of Smaug. Uh, there's plenty of plot armor in this movie. There's a lot of plot armor in this movie and in this series. But um yeah, I don't yeah uh what's her name? Tariel saving Tariel saving Keely. That is not plot armor. She was also yeah, they were there to get them. Yeah. Lack of immersion and lack of tension leading to us seeing the plot armor more obviously, like maybe, but that wouldn't change whether or not it's actually there, right? The tension or immersion. I'd say the plot armor is what breaks the the, the Yeah, the it's what, these are side mm -hmm. effects of that. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'd also oh. remind <laughs> that in real life, plot armor can't exist. It's like a plot hole. It mm -hmm. can't exist in reality. Because in reality there is a reason, a logical reason for everything. Mm -hmm. um it's yeah it, it's it's purely can only exist within a fictional or hypothetical world i mean spoken like a true side character i was about to say just because you <laughs> have plot armor doesn't mean you can pretend like it doesn't exist right Come on. wait <laughs> wait okay. teddy roosevelt had plot armor when he got <laughs> shot while giving a speech and then he didn't die and kept giving the speech he had plot Bro. armor then. Real the, the, writer, the writer killed jfk he could have given him plot armor he had the he speech <laughs> yeah it's teddy it also seemed like he's conflating uh, things, not like, okay, so plot armor, we typically think of it as like, they should have died from this thing, but they didn't because the story mm -hmm. writer didn't want them to. But he's he seems to be conflating like uh, the unwillingness to kill main characters as if that's the same thing. And I don't know if it is like if, um, you know, Stranger Things doesn't seem to want to kill any of the main kids, but they just keep introducing new characters every season to kill. Is that I don't know if I don't right. know if I'd call that plot armor. Um, um as far as I'm concerned, as, as long as they're never in a position where they should have died. Yeah, and didn't. Don't yeah. Put them in a position that that there's no I... coming back from. Don't put them there's in a position that's it. Which by yeah, the way happens in Stranger Things about season four. Is, something I've thought about is like does, a yeah. uh, a way of keeping track of plot armor is you imagine you put a main character in a dangerous situation and you, you almost like imagine in your head a likelihood of them not coming out of that one okay or dying. And that there's only so many times that you can put a character in an incredibly perilous situation before, as a reader, viewer, player, whatever, you're just going to be like, hmm, really? Really? Like, they got lucky every single time, the bullets missed yeah. every single time, they got away mm. with it every single time, that there's only so many times you can put somebody in a dangerous situation before there has to be a consequence for them. Kind of whether that like, um, me, injured. the very Damon and, and the Hati when he got hit with the arrow. Like, yeah, yeah, I was having an well, issue with say, that scene, but I feel like they fixed it in the end. Go ahead. There's so many variables that come into it, right? Like if you had a guy who's just in an open space, lying on the ground, enemy has a minigun, and they're just firing. It's like, okay, switch the minigun for a pistol, and they're pretty far away. It's like, that's better, but they could probably still get him. Now there's a table in front of him that he's tilted up, and he's using his cover. It's like, okay, now he has an Iron Man suit. You're like, oh, well, then he's safe. That's 100. Like, you know, there's like all of those different scenarios you keep changing the likelihood. And oh, yeah, I, I think Fringy's right that if you kept putting them in a position where a guy with a pistol kept shooting at them and they had a table wooden and you know he fired like a thousand shots we were like uh i don't think the table's gonna save you from that at some point the odds are not in your favor you know yeah there's only so many times you can get lucky no i saw this is something we've talked about before someone mentioned in the chat they said you can choose to make the survivor the protagonist which is like yeah the reason why we're following this person is because they were the lucky yeah. one in this situation <laughs> this they're the pov character because they made it to the end you can think about it that way as well but even then, right, it's like, how how lucky can that person get, you know? 
That's that's yeah, only it's, there's only so far you can put it. Yeah. Exactly. It's not an exact line necessarily no. when plot armor it's becomes the case. Sometimes it does, but usually it's not an exact line. But in much the same way, we have you know differences between two things. Generally, you can say when plot armor happens, and it's generally pretty reasonable as to whether or not people go along with the idea. You can maybe do a bit by establishing that the thing that makes this character exceptional is just that they are very lucky and people keep commenting on it. But I think even then it'll turn into parody. Well, yeah, that it's sounds like, like um, shading. Oh, I mean, yeah, what, they do that what, pretty good you, with uh, Mass Dead Chief too. in the Halo yeah, series. That's, that's actually was oh, my... yeah, yeah, that'd be, that'd be a good example, actually. Because that's, like, hey, that's also like a motif, you know? It's like a theme. But it's not like the universe is, well, until 343 came along, it's not like the universe ordained him as being lucky. It's just kind of an observation that characters well, make. No. Yeah. And, but it kind of, it begins Halo 3 with Cortana basically saying that's why she picked him, because he, he had luck that the other ones... He had but that's Cort yeah, they but didn't that's, have. But that's Cortana's perspective. It's not a yeah, necessarily exactly. a state it's as not, to the actual state until, of the Until, again, 343 3 came along and decided that that's not the case. But to like, bring it to a more a simple kind of trope, to, to give an example of a simple trope that you do see pop up in things, the, the Bible in the pocket trick, like the bullet, the bullet hit that book that my father gave me that I always <laughs> carry around in my like <laughs> The lucky coin. That happening to a character one time at most. But if you're in a situation where it's like, hey, we're in season five of this TV show, and we got to keep on thinking of like new big heavy necklaces to give this guy because man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow and that's just, uh just don't put them even, in a situation even the first you time you do it you got to do it like with ned flanders where every single time <laughs> he got lucky two yeah. times over because he has a bible close to his heart and uh, a necklace with a piece of the oh, cross yeah. to protect him <laughs> from the sniper that's i think we're gonna go inside sad. <laughs> and then it hits the pickaxe down. I told you we should have bought more than three bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just grab them. Especially when part two, the writer. Funny, someone said that's literal armor. No, no that's plot armor. Not. That's not armor, <laughs> regular armor. Well, you could argue it's both, I guess, because the, the, the idea that he was lucky enough that the bullet hit exactly on the. It's just yeah, like exactly. a glass onion. Yeah. That's fucking plot armor. That's not regular armor. Yeah. But I guess Mandel you could never it... getting hit. In his non armor parts. It's yeah, absolutely, absolutely yeah, plot armor. I, I yeah. did specify you can get away with it once, maybe, if you write it in a way that it's like, well, we did establish him being given this thing and putting it in this pocket at the beginning of the movie. So well, later um, in the movie, when he gets shot in the chest, hey, we did set it up. But if you do it again, everyone's just going to be out. There are ways to try and yeah. uh, narrow in the variables, right? Like, imagine. Someone was trying to subvert an assassination, and so they told the victim, like, the only way we can do this convincingly is I'm going to give you something that will protect you and uh, put it over your heart. It's relatively small, won't be seen, blah, blah, blah. And then they tell the assassin, make sure you hit them in their heart, you know. Don't miss. You know, so, like, the, the, it's like, oh, so when it hit that, because that, blah, 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 as opposed to they just luckily wore something that luckily hit the thing and that luckily saved them. Yeah, like, there are ways to try and reduce well. the variables. I'm worried this guy's just going to say that the times that plot armor is good are times that we wouldn't even consider it plot armor. You know, that he's well, going to broaden what he the has term. To say. Let's say, yeah. Breaks yeah. the rules they originally set up. Like, nobody is annoyed because heroes in a CW superhero show aren't getting hit by stray bullets like the bystanders are in the weekly Let's but maybe See How they Much More Whipping This Dead Horse no Can no Take episode. Shit. No, we're mad because the show is terrible. See, a ton of stories have <laughs> Why this is it terrible? Uh... approach to death and pain where if you okay. die, you get to one, conclude your character arc, two, probably go out heroically, and three, someone... Why do you have Luke why, here? Why is Luke there? Why do you have Luke I know. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh... Why is Luke no. here? Like, my brain just, like, clued into that. It's like, Luke could have gone. Wait, 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 wait. Get him out of here. No. Remember, he's gone, 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 but he did it. it. Ultimate plot armor, being a ghost. Well, also, the doctor doesn't exactly <laughs> die. Okay, guys. Yeah, yeah I, I'm fine with people considering it the death right? of that iteration. That's fair. Mm -hmm. I don't like the way this video is constructed. It's giving me a whiplash, kind of. So plot armor and whiplash. Oh, Bad <laughs> well, damn good no. movie. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that movie. Well, I was just about like, well, it's, you know, it it's a plot armor that he didn't die in the car crash. It's like, nope. Well, that might be a good example, right? He didn't he die, got but he fucked suffered up, significantly. Though. He didn't he die hurt. because cars are designed to keep you fucking alive. Play. It had yeah. which, which is probably a thing to emphasize, right? If a character doesn't die, but they suffer massive consequences for the, the thing anyway, 
That's the important part. It's not whether mm -hmm. they die. It's really about exactly the consequences. The consequences. Yeah. Yes. Well, hey, that, you got mean, Iron Man on screen right now. He didn't die Iron from Man. that explosion to his heart, but fuck, it had consequences. <laughs> yes, it did have consequences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just gonna say on Whiplash that that crash scene. I think that's one of the most realistic crash scenes I've seen in like a long yeah. time. Yeah. Like that, the way they portrayed it was like you feel it. When he's playing. And you oh, see the brutal. slow. Yeah. 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 Everything about it. Yeah. They nailed it. Gordon will kill you. Doctor Who, Marvel, Star Wars, they all work by this kind of logic. And people love these stories. We all no. use that logic. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wow, wow. Debatable. Wow. Debatable, yes. I don't know. It's part there. of the charm of these fictional worlds. Which... Please don't say oh, that with what? this visual. Oh, <laughs> this, is this, is this, was, no. this movie was this arguably. Was I gotta say, seeing this in the theater was so confusing to me. I was like, what is <laughs> you going can't, on? Can't yeah, I was like, wait, is Luke dead? Is yeah, it people debated whether is Luke or not done? it died. Is done with Luke? Luke? Like, is he dead? Is Luke I was like, gone? okay, I guess they'll have him in the next movie. He's gotta go, oh, wait, he's dead. Like, just to be clear. To remind everybody, the last Jet this is the movie that created EFAP. Yeah. <laughs> to re reminder on the anniversary, e TLJ yeah. created EFAP. That's how we all like came together, decided to make a podcast. The whole that's did it. It TLJ wasn't it's it's the bit to your garbage. We nice. EFAP might not have ever become a thing. <laughs> Maybe not. Somehow Luke Skywalker returned. No Summer in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> let me, let me, let, Regs, Regs, let they me could. add to that. Let me add to that. TLJ is why my name is Jedi Brooks. It inspired my channel too. So it's like permanently tied <laughs> to this man. Okay, here's your trolley problem. Oh no. I'll on one it. track, <laughs> on one track, not you change nothing, and EFAP continues to exist. On the other FAP, on the other FAP, on the other track. <laughs> 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 you know what's on, on your track? Mind. I already know okay, where you're going. I know where you're you, going. You, you run over you Ryan and Johnson, before. and Over's you and you get a better writer for the Star Wars movie. Right, yeah, exactly. Long live EFAP. Just, why don't you just make it straightforward? Save Star Wars by sacrificing EFAP. Do you do it? Okay, oh. just fine. Whatever. I don't think Star Wars people. gets saved. It, it all Star ends Wars up fucked save, anyway. Yeah. Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah. baked into the no, no, hypothetical that it's saved. Yeah, oh, in the hypothetical, oh, right, right, it's handled right. well. Was, the franchise is strong and healthy. How many people would you have never met? Like, just that's simple. I think, dude, right we there. we actually, I think a super chat asked us this not like half a year ago or so, and we did talk about like all the good that came from the death of Star Wars, but that Star Wars does mean a shit ton to so many people. So it's it's kind of difficult. Yeah. Yeah. When you were with Jeff, you and Wolf were with Jeff talking about like alien and stuff. You had like a podcast for like three hours. That same question popped up. I remember that specifically. And um, basically, would you pull the plug? And like all three of you just came down to like all the connections you've made and like. Like, why, why would you delete all that just for, like, no, just, no. My friendships yeah. are real, no. yeah, the yeah. real people and the podcast and, like, versus a they did it to themselves. Wars, Let, good. To be clear, the Star Wars people, they did to, the, they did to themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the this, Star Wars this people are not burden, burden. This is not the burden that we have to bear for them. Exactly. <laughs> 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 they are the ones all <laughs> these <laughs> rationalizations, okay? <laughs> they are the ones who fucked up. Not you know, us. This, there's no reason we should answer this. This is absurd. This would never happen. This hypothetical. <laughs> That's crazy. Right. That's true. That's right. TLJ would never be good. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way. Wait, 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 wait. Let me get this straight. So, Mahler, you would kill your, you would, you're tied to the track. You would pull the lever to kill yourself over five strangers. Over. What? But you wouldn't do that to, no, to save um, Star Wars. I didn't have any. I didn't get the answer. I, I was going to say like, uh, I if I was convinced that the a healthy Star Wars makes the world a much better place than a healthy EFAP, then I would probably have to uh, save Star Wars. What would Star convince Wars. you? Save EFAP. Yeah. It's, it's a tough thing to because I know how much good EFAP is brought to people, so it's difficult for me to know that other future where like does Star Wars inspire like some of the greatest heroes in the world? Maybe. Um, by the way, I'm not even joking. Like that's a potential. Luke Skywalker's story handled well could further inspire mm -hmm. other people to become like firefighters or you know Absolutely. whatever have you. So yeah, but if but if the movie wasn't brain. as bad as it was, then we wouldn't even be here to discuss the concept yeah. of this. So and we wouldn't have it to learn from too. Like yeah. How many people what? like change the way they view movies? Remember, That's actually is true. Yeah. Is yeah. It is movie. true. A lot of great <laughs> stories may have been inspired by the shittiness <laughs> of Star Wars. It's complicated. I know, I know <laughs> way more about writing because Ryan Johnson destroyed Luke. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. Point. It woke me up. I never it watched the review awakening. before that. Yeah. So same. do we have a choice or not? Yes. I, I don't think anyone's <laughs> even Star Wars here. It's, uh, it's super difficult, and and it would eventually get to a point where we're like, I don't know if I want to fuck with reality to the point where I don't know if I make everything worse. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm happy with how things are. You know, I think things turned out all right. That is a yeah. all said and done. We have a, 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 a self-action part of it, right?
Star Wars had its chance. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, Star Wars didn't bad, return. A lot of good co came out of it, especially The Last Jedi. I mean, there's so much content, so much <laughs> positive and like fun launched, stuff launched out a lot there of about it. Yeah, yeah. I have I have many many we might not Studio essay. Well, legit question uh rags ringy i know i would but would you uh want to like sort of say something in that regard to ryan if you met him at first would you want to say something like thank you for like the effect you've had on my life or something or would you want to not look around that's hilarious um you know what yeah the dude seems to be like a real prick so <laughs> <laughs> um i would be like yeah man thanks so much for like changing film discussion and launching you know help launching this podcast of ours and you know, it really, like, it was probably the most damaging thing ever, but that mm -hmm. made ripples and waves that did so much good for so many people. A lot of people, you know, got awoken from their, I, I, I guess their, you know, complacency, uh, mm -hmm. potentially. But yeah, I, I might be like, yeah, you know, you, you know, you might have made one of the worst movies ever made and destroyed arguably one of the biggest franchises in human history mm -hmm. and, you know, probably set it on a course of destruction. But, you know, some good stuff came out of it. I, would tell I wouldn't say this to like Hitler or anything, but you know, I, I you know, with Ryan, I'd, I'd be pretty, you know. I would tell him he destroyed a franchise with his first draft piece of shit movie, and he had some help. Like he will never be forgotten yeah. for this. Like it's just I one mean, of those situations. He's like a legend now because of this. Also, I think it's, it was a collective effort from everyone involved. They tried really hard. They, they should How many people right? tried yep. to talk him out of it? Like, if you watch the clips, you can see the faces. Nobody was, like, Everyone's on board with miserable. this. They just, you know? You can see their face. They're like, dude, oh, man. You see his little stick man figure drawings? He legit... Well, <laughs> the reality oh, is it God. all began with the decision to have different people who didn't talk to each other create a, yep. yeah. a trilogy. Yeah. That's how we get a fresh take each time. Hey, that's, Here's that's a thing. better that's question. Why, they did it Would you Mark? JJ trilogy or Ryan trilogy? Pick one right now. Uh, oh, oh damn. No. Um, JJ. I, no. I, oh, JJ. I probably JJ. would go with the JJ one because it'd be it'd, shit, but it'd be entertaining. It'd be, Ryan no. would be oh, no, no, no. I don't know. It'd be entertaining, you really think? I think I'm, I'm not promising Bay, that. I'm just... I don't think I'd promise entertainment. It'd be awful. I'm entertaining in an awful way. It would, okay, let me rephrase like that. Let me rephrase that. Enough to, to enough to less insulting for the casual audience and less insulting. <laughs> it wouldn't rip my heart out and turn me into a movie review. <laughs> Look what yeah, you did to me. Think about the content. <laughs> Destroyed. Yeah. Think about the amount of content oh, that would be know, made actually. out of the about that now. trilogy from Ryan. I can oh. think about that now, but back then I just wanted to. I started TLJ thinking this is gonna be one of the best. This is gonna be one of my favorite movies. Like, it's, yeah, like, yes. it can't, it can't the not trailers. be. Trailers. Oh my god. They got me I with that clip. You know so much. You I've know? got something for this actually. Uh, do you wanna rags? Why don't you read this out? It's directly from Ryan Johnson. It feels appropriate right now. All right, Ryan Ooh. Johnson said. Some in the round. Head. Look. In terms of the round, uh, in terms of <laughs> you said roundhead, and I wanted to say it. Look, <laughs> in terms of the Star Wars movie I did. I tried to give it a hell of an ending. I love endings so much that even doing the middle tra uh, chapter of the trilogy, I tried to give it a good ending. You a good fuck. ending you that recontextualizes fuck. everything that came before it and makes it a beautiful object unto itself. That's what makes a movie a movie. It feels like there's less and less of that. This whole poisonous idea of creating intellectual property has completely seeped into the bedrock of storytelling. Everybody, everyone is just thinking, how do we keep milking it? I love an ending where you. <clears throat> I love an. En... I love an ending where you burn the Viking boat into the sea. Oh I love that God. his response to infinitely milking it is to fucking annihilate it, kill it, <laughs> stab it. Oh, it's yeah. fucking... He got respect for that. He just kind of like I'm, gave the middle I'm finger in total to agreement with him. I wouldn't believe that unless you told me it was. I do. I absolutely do not have to respect him for that. What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? I mean, I'm, no respect. Respect the gall, because like you just gave the middle finger to Disney and all the Star Wars fans. Like Hell you're just yeah. flat out saying, "Yeah, I I burned the Viking boat." Fuck y'all the thing is if you if you're burning the viking boat at the end of a story and also it's yep. your own story that's one thing but if it's the mm -hmm. middle chapter of a trilogy, yes, exactly. story yeah. trilogy what? a man yeah. ends the trilogy, trilogy in the middle that's, of the trilogy that's, that's the worst part of it it's so funny he screwed over the that's next guy so yeah funny. exactly <laughs> everybody with that he like, ended uh, the film like I don't think I do not he, respect that goal at all. How much blame do you put on the people that made uh, Rise of Skywalker versus Ryan Johnson? What, and what could they do? It's a, it's a complicated I blame thing them all. Could have done a lot if of I, stuff. 
TFA mm. lays down a horrible okay, they groundwork. They could have had them yeah. no yeah. totally A lot of that horrible groundwork as well. And then the last, and then, yeah, and then the Rise of Skywalker just backtracks again. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. I think <laughs> like it's, the Rise of Skywalker could absolutely be a better movie. It could have yeah. been better. Yeah, that was not terrible. a good one, but Ryan, a better it's, one. Ryan Even left with them the, with. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. Ryan left them no, with no. nothing, but it still could have been way better. Like, still Ryan left them with, with, with a burnt Viking ship. ship. <laughs> you know? he did. He really did. It wasn't just Rami, the ending, I remember though. Like, coming out of TLJ, just... we still had the Ray and the Kylo. We still had yeah. the... Uh, this stuff the, you the could Finn do. Finn yeah, and Poe, and you still had... That you, Viking boat, they could have had a time. He could paddle Remember, in they, it. They, Instead, he just shot himself. Have had a, yeah, he could have gotten on the escape raft. It wouldn't have been perfect, but it would have gotten the job done. Hell he didn't of a lot need better. to bring back Palpatine. He entire... didn't have to do that. That's true. Yeah, but... Somehow well, Palpatine returned. That was actually, yeah, um, that there was a viral lived. tweet saying, like, what a fuck up that like, it forced JJ to bring back Palpatine. And I was like, no, it didn't no, force him. No, 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 ridiculous. The, whole the, fir trilogy. the first time... Fucked. The very first time I looked at the very first time I looked at the poster for TFA, the first thing I said is, "Where the hell's Luke?" I'm like, "Who is this guy?" The, the um, Finn, and then I thought Ray. I'm like, "You know what? She's probably gonna have a good, a good backstory. Maybe she'll be a Kenobi. Ooh, maybe she'll be a Palpatine." That was my first ten seconds of looking at the poster, <laughs> and to think that that was what they yeah. dragged it out to to the very. Well, I mean, I mean, well, they I weren't mean, sure again, who she was until they actually. Yeah, no it. idea. Well, it's just the indecisiveness. Your history mm -hmm. matters. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. <laughs> that's, that's, they're nobody. Trilogy. For everybody to be super creative <laughs> and be with the crazy things they can throw into their brand new story. Oh, God. I mean, JJ completely you see, when they, set it up. Ryan when they robbed Jimmy my house. It. Yeah. When they robbed my yeah. house, they forced yeah. me to shit myself. We've, we've gotten so <laughs> derailed from the video. <laughs> <laughs> I was he just seeing, us. just seeing this fucking image. Yeah, yeah it's it a great He needs to put trigger warnings on the video. Imagery of the t TLJ will be showing up. <laughs> the same thing happened with Arya in the super. You will, we all just you will be reminded. Well, and to think, what's crazy is the Legend of Korra is going to be in this too. So E.R. will have oh, his turn. Oh, you know it. I can't wait. I can't wait. She, she always brings, brings it up. I can't wait. <laughs> Where there's this purpose and poetry to death that we don't get in no, real stop life. It. In this weird masochistic what? way. You don't think we life can like... be purposeful and poetic? Papa, hey boy. Not, not in the same way it is in film, I guess, yeah. Rags. I well, do I guess not agree with that. Matter, it's a matter of perspective, isn't it? Yeah. You could you could find ways to make it like a narrative or like poetry, you know, in real life, even even if it doesn't necessarily fully fit. Well, I guess you'd say you, like we would inscribe the meaning as opposed to life itself has. Well, sure, I, mean, I want to be generous like, and say that like time, right? the stories are built to do that, while life, you know, sure, it, sure. it could, it could not, it, it or it would always depending on I who what, you are. I, I understand right. what he means. He died Imagine because he forced power too hard one him. time. Danger because it gets us look at that, look at that little character. Buy into that what are you fantasy. doing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Oh, God. He never yeah. hurt nobody. Poor boy. Right. They can't keep going away with it. Sometimes a character will go and mend their relationship with their estranged brother, and then they'll say, Ah, uh, I can't wait to retire into my old age after this, after this big epic final battle. Like, they're already dead at that point. There's no hope for them. They're already in the I mean, that's a ground. trope, but what? that's not necessarily the case. And I'm getting a little lost as to what his point is. That reverse plot yeah. armor? I think he's, um, he's doing a bit of a ramble. <laughs> like, he's, like... I think that is reverse yep. plot armor, yeah. Yeah. I think this is a meme. Is, is he there suggesting, is, though, that right, fair enough. Wait, wait, yeah. it's impossible the mentor character could live into the story? He's just, he's just talking about the trope of when the old dude is like, man, I'm retiring next week, isn't that great? And it's like, oh, well, he's dead. <laughs> that, that's always the funniest. Because yeah. 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 you know exactly oh, yeah. where it's going to go. Dude, and then in McVay, in like the McVay thing, we just crush the boat, and the boat yeah. is called Live Forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love Live Forever. <laughs> not going to make it. Back from that in these kinds of stories. But plot armor isn't really something people complain about, not as much as you might think, because there's this underlying understanding that there are different rules for death. And here's the thing, going back on those rules can destroy immersion. Look, I, I'm, I'm looking to possibly agree with you, but I, I need, need more clarity yeah. here. Give me more clarity. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this yeah. is a weird Let's way of saying the... that there's different types of plot armor. Like, yeah. Well, because I, I almost thought he was going to say that there is plot armor sometimes that people just don't give a shit about because narratively it's so strong that the thing happened. 
that's the point I was trying to make er, I, earlier with the yeah, the yeah, which thing where it, I yeah. totally buy that there are people who will totally accept a thing, even if it's dumb as like it was funny you said Battle of the Bastards that was highly as rated as fuck, even though you're right in terms of there's loads of problems sure, of plot armor in it. But the, I would probably, and I assume this is more so the EFAP position, we'd be like, we highlight it whether or not it's got narrative juice. Probably point out the narrative juice as well, yeah. but still. <laughs> Rickon had plot vulnerability. Yeah, plot poison, plot sabotaging, anti-plot armor, reverse plot armor, yeah. whichever word you want to go with. vulnerability, something. Yeah, there's a name for it. But let's it's compare something. Game of Thrones, those CW shows, and Daredevil, each right, of which have it. very different oh, narrative Daredevil. rules around death and pain and injury. So, in Game of Thrones, Ned Stark dying is meant to signal to the reader that Spoiler. main characters, one... Yeah, sorry about that, everybody. Ned Stark does die. Jeez. ...are not safe, and two... Wait, Sean Bean die dies? Seemingly ...still haven't recovered. <laughs> what? In a movie? I could not <laughs> believe that would happen. In a oh film? I don't want to fight him on everything, but I do find it interesting to call it an anticlimactic way. I guess the point being that it's not a heroic I, death, what? where he fights like I, a dragon. I understand what he, Wait, I understand what he made, made my ass. That it's like, that this is... dies and things are unresolved and things are pretty maybe. bad. Well, no, maybe untraditional is a better way of saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I'd say it's, it's uh, unexpected, right? It's, it's, uh, well, um, it's yeah. atypical. It's, it's not... It's not anticlimactic. It's Subversive? as he's walking up there. It's like it's so drawn yeah. out. You're like someone's gonna come in and save him. Like you're just waiting for that. And just yeah, yeah I understand what you mean. Just it's really cool. Yeah, um, he, he's talking yeah, about like the series or whatever series or story establishing its rules for death and how death is handled with like main characters. Oh, yeah, he is. Right? That's rule yeah, one. The it's it's Something good. This establishes a sense that any character can die at any moment. They're not safe, yeah. which gives you a sense of more so immersion. I would argue that you you mm -hmm. you feel like mm -hmm. the events have actual consequences, but anticlimactic is complicated, yeah. I guess. I would say that there was a guy I showed the show, and when Ned got killed, he didn't believe it. Hit the credits, and he was like, he's not dead. He's not, there's no, that's not, that's insane. He's not dead. And I was like, sorry, mate. <laughs> <I think. laughs> like, he's dead. <laughs> yeah, you just can't accept it. I didn't, I was the same way, until you actually see the next episode start with his body mm -hmm. being dragged. I wouldn't accept it until I yep. see the body. Something's going to pop in. I've watched too many shows. It's Sean Bean. They're not killing him. Oh, Which is God, why I would rather call it Sean Bean. Versus. They're not killing him. Yeah. Was your logic? <laughs> yeah. I, that was my logic at the time. Yeah. And I learned. Sean kill Sean Bean. Bean. Yeah. In, I don't in think his he's calling it anticlimactic. I think he's more so saying like it can hit you unexpectedly in a way that might feel anticlimactic or I think uh, subversive. Yeah, that's a good word. Just unconventional. Just just not cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the filmmaking just, perspective. Just a thesaurus mistake. From the filmmaking standpoint, it's very uh, climactic, right? The way it's shot, the I think way so, it's yeah. set up, the way it happens. Mm -hmm. But in within the story itself, it's a behead. It's a Your casual beheading execution. of a man, right? Yeah, in yeah. that terms, okay, it could be considered anti anticlimactic within the story. But the way it's translated to the film, it's very climactic to the viewer itself. I think. Yeah, like if oh, wait, he, no, if wouldn't it, was... it be the opposite? Like in real life, you just expect he just walks up and gets his head shut off. But in a story, you expect like someone's gonna save him. Well, this is that's why I think she's kind of crystallized it there because uh, I think this is quite a climactic scene. It's building, 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 and he right. dies, and it's like holy fuck. But anticlimactic in the way of did an ex an executioner just killed Ned Stark after he was in jail for three yeah. episodes? What the fuck? Seriously? And it's like yeah, stories don't usually go that way. Uh, didn't the character combat at the last moment? Or... <laughs> Yeah, you expect like two yeah, armies just... fight and the two bosses meet up in the fucking battlefield. They have a huge, you know, showdown and then one of them dies. That's a climactic I... way to die. The lack of action right. is probably why he said it. Just it wasn't a battle scene. It was a super yeah. way to do it. Yeah, that's why it was so powerful. I think it's, it's, it's interesting to describe it this way. And I think uh, we know what he means. Yeah, like we Rob Stark's death. Can you you might be able to call anticlimactic because like at least the first time I watched a Game of Thrones. When mm -hmm. I was watching it, I was like so invested because I was like, oh, fuck yeah, Rob's going to get vengeance somehow. And then he doesn't. And you just, like, yeah, that when is... I first watched The Red Wedding, I was like, man, so now, like, the thing I've been watching and looking forward to is just n not going to happen, I guess. Felt... I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe a show had that much balls to do it again. Yeah. Like, literally derail your main character Dude, that again. Is how you got me invested. Those two big events is how this show got its rep. And then the Red the Wedding Oberyn, created yeah. Game of Thrones. Yeah. The, the Purple mm -hmm. Wedding and Oberyn again and again. It's like, these are mm -hmm. a crazy event. And then they started, like, it started to become, like, uh, iterative and yep. sort of yep. trying to create those events. It, they tried to recreate that, that the, the, the public appeal of that and try to, yeah, try yeah. to recreate those moments and all these stupid things. They just got lost in the, um, 
the spectacle and forgot what the I whole feel like uh, the showrunners got to a point where like people had been so invested in the characters and they love so many of them that in the later seasons they were scared as fuck to do yeah. any like rash decision so you know I love Ed but you know like him him getting killed off versus like I don't know Aria or something yeah you know? well and, and by the way your pure apathy there pure some people... apathy who was saying the red wedding is absolutely climactic? It's like it's really about how you how you break down what mean. That's why I was saying it's an interesting word to use because I feel like it gives different. Yeah, ideas it, it, different it is true. It's complicated when you're talking about the red wedding with that one. The anticlimactic ways, whether or not their arc is finished, it doesn't need to be heroic. There can be questions that are still unanswered in the narrative, and it can be something stupid. There's this massive story in the books. It doesn't appear in the show where one character goes to like meet Daenerys's dragons and there's whole chapters leading up to it and then he's just roasted in an instant doesn't go anywhere that <laughs> but actually sounds kind of cool um again well... i would probably aim for subversive on a lot of these especially if i was yeah, aiming to compliment up. them mm -hmm. um because you just know how people are like Ryan Johnson, he was just subversive. It's like, I don't fucking care if he was no. subversive. It was yeah. horribly like, written. He's actually wrong, what, that's, though, factually. Because like, what's that described? What he just described in the book? I'd be like, if I was reading that for ages and then he gets the dragon and gets burnt up, I'm like, oh, I mean, I guess. Yeah, but uh, so, okay. In the book, but... so in the book, there's a lot of hinting that that guy does not actually die. That it's just they faked his death. So mm. he's actually just wrong about that, but. Oh, well, he didn't even um, could we at least, it properly? Wow. Could we at least no. say that he might be wrong on the reference, but the in concept, if you had a character who was on a journey forever and ever and ever, and then they just die. I mean, that would be horribly anticlimactic. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, yeah well, like there's um, there's a point it, where it's it like, yeah. It could be mysterious. It's, it's probably, yeah, it's probably worth mentioning. I feel like there's going to be an example of how to do that right, quote unquote. There's probably no a way. Yeah. Yeah. No Country for Old Men? Yeah. No Country for Old Men? No Country for Old Men should be the example for that, probably, yeah. Yeah, that'd be, that's a really good Did example. Do you like that? No Country for Old Men? I adore that film. I, I love that, that film. That, that, that puzzled me. Wait, that which puzzled me for so years, for many years, like what happened in that ending. But I, it's one of the most fascinating endings to a movie I've ever had. We're going to have the, the fucking the, argument the of whether or not that ending is fucking masterclass. I don't know if we have the time. <laughs> I, 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 I think <laughs> there's very few people that would have the balls to actually commit to an ending like that. And I'm glad they did, even though it confused millions. I mean, it was ballsy. I'll, I'll agree with I that. I remember yeah, watching it with a girl. And she, like, walked up that and very ballsy. <laughs> Just, you don't like it. That's the implication. Me? No, I, I hate I hate the ending. Well, I hate... Oh, I'm not God, the ending. I hate that they killed the main guy off screen, but... They, they uh, could have they could have gave us some right crazy now. showdown, <laughs> but <laughs> I, mean, I guess they understand that, that but you hate, I think, you hate uh, um Inglorious Bastards, right? Yeah, we had that conversation. <laughs> Wait, you hate oh, that movie? Oh, no, I didn't like, <laughs> the, I didn't like the, uh, It helps me understand Fringy. I'm just oh, I'm just oh. creating I know you hate creating a profile. You know, Amal is trying to poison the well. You're discrediting Sid. Exactly. Sid, Sid, you also have great media opinions, right? What'd you say? You also have great media opinions, right? Hey, look at this. Look at this. Ad just say yes. Just well. say it's yes. Just and you've got to... Say yes. Agree. It helps this. you if you agree. All you have to do no, is say yes. I, if you I'm say, say no, okay. it's terrible. So, no, 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 no. Okay. Let me answer the question. So first no, of all, you can card. like the... I didn't say that the ending to No Country for Men is bad. I just don't like it. I, that's not my cup oh, wait, of you tea. You said you hated it, right? To just have the main character be killed anticlimactically off screen. And I'm like, wait, what? I... I think it's really ballsy, kind of brilliant. I know okay. why people hate it, though. It's one of those things where, like, I can totally I understand can just ruining I mean, it. Of course, yeah. you can like or dislike it, whatever. It's, I'd say it's just a shame that you didn't enjoy it like that because I loved it. <laughs> that would, that is like, oh, it, god it, damn, what a. It felt to me too much like. Choice. Personally, it felt to me too much like the director being like egotistical. Tentious? Pretentious and pretentious. Like that. Yeah, that's how I interpreted it. So I was like, oh, how so? Uh, but, I don't get that. Uh, why we don't? We, like, do we want to do this? Going like it's you real. To, we'll be we'll be on this for a while if we bring it up. I know. So yeah. We can move on. I, by the way, for the record, I would love to have that conversation, but I would probably like to rewatch the film if we want to do it ahead of that. Just, just uh, put a note on that. Yeah, I mean, wait, I'd right, love sure. to talk about No Country for Old Men. It's a fucking great film. Yeah, I mean, I love it up until that point. I was like, this movie's great. <laughs> That's why I find it so fascinating. I feel like millions of people probably hate it for that reason, but are also the other side of it, the fascinating aspect. Oh, yeah, yeah apparently it's a blue ball. People, people didn't like it. Also, for the, someone just said, like, we don't need this stupid digression. It is, like, one of the most relevant just... digressions possible. We just had a point in the video 
about how it's anticlimactic and possibly like pulls the audience out when you have a character on a journey that ends abruptly. Mm. Then we cite one of the most commonly understood to be abrupt endings for a very mm. famous film ever that's considered a masterpiece. Like Discuss whether or not one. it was well done. That would be the most relevant tangent <laughs> ever, just yep. for the record, okay? Yeah. I'd say, I'd say uh, No Country for Old Men in Brazil, probably like the most abrupt endings probably of all time. Yeah. Okay. Season seven and eight, our characters were suddenly Money surviving Python, things great. that these rules said that before they great probably movie. shouldn't have. Also, yes, he is correct. As Game of Thrones went on, people started yeah. surviving insane shit. The plot armor got insane yeah. Yeah. for a the show that's so appeal was that there is no plot armor. They even you mind a couple oh, of what? times, but it was happening over and over and over. With oh god, the sad part, the yeah. Oh, no. he's, 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 he's crying. He's crying in the corner and a zombie oh, grabs god. him and then we don't see him, but then he's fine later. Just like, god. oh, okay. I just, I want to just point out one quick thing about Jorah. He was the person in the show that introduced us how armor works. That he blocked the oh, blade god, and yeah. then hit the guy back where you actually can see, you get an immersion. It actually works. Yes. And then season eight, the guy dies getting stabbed through plate armor. The with person the fucking... who showed us that armor works. The zombie it's the knife. Worst, it's so painful. The worst it's not thing fair. ever. For anyone who's well, paying attention to the details, like that's just a slap well, in the face. Well, it's because he didn't wear a helmet. <laughs> True. <laughs> they caught him then in the we couldn't see his fate. Then we couldn't see Trump the dragon. Dude, Jorah deserved to be killed by a White Walker. He should have been killed 100%. in a big old boss fight. Not a fucking random white. That sucks. Random, yeah, random death. Oh, well, oh. I don't agree. Jorah's been cucked his whole life, so, you know, kind of makes sense. <laughs> better. Jorah Whoa. is bad. You're, only, you're saying that because you hate Daenerys, right? I assume. No, I'm saying he, I mean, he got cucked by Daenerys. He just got cucked his whole he, life. He did. Wife, by well, Daenerys, he, he's basically you know, the so archetype for White Knight. He white knighted oh, throughout the whole happened. series. But like, yep. I don't know. He's I thought what he was... Kristen Cole is eventually going to become. <laughs> I loved how fucking good he was as a, as a fighter, and I like. I don't know. I, I, I don't mean, I love a guy fighting Jorah. for a lady. It's okay. He was um, an understandable character. There's been millions of Joras. Like we could totally understand that guy. You know, like, mm, right. what, and he was very consistent. I wish. And his death was so like it was suited, but completely butchered at the same time. He should have died fighting for Daenerys, but not like a fucking moron. Yeah. The, well, there's <laughs> so much. Race that season. Yeah, there's so much they fucked mm. up. The most egregious yeah. example being Arya stabbed several times. That's, that's possibly not the most egregious across the whole it's series. Not, but not even close. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> but I understand well, well, him choosing I mean, it's it. a bad one. It's, it's a, a bad really one, yeah. bad one. Yeah. In the chest, yeah. under the stomach, chucked into the sewer water, and then fixed up pretty easily. Okay, enough. this is just by. He's not mentioning the chicken soup. He, I just feel like this mm. is fucked up. Like, <laughs> that is the critical part of this. Come on, dude. You've be got to be honest. Gotta be fair. Even if you don't like it, you gotta be fair. This wouldn't be plot armor, though, in a lot of stories, you know? But Her it not feels dying of like... septic shock would be. Um, what does he mean it wouldn't be plot armor in a lot of stories? She should have what, died. In what story I would think, it not I be think plot armor? He's he's always always is, yeah. Game of Thrones is a show where main characters die, but in other stories, that's not but much that's of an expectation. that's because they die. Well, I no, but think I, yeah. that's, I think that he's, is... I think he's making a big meta argument here. I think it's, it's. Are like, you the saying show like a and... stab to the belly the and like the flash show wouldn't mean much? Yeah, because mm -hmm. that's not a show where you expect main characters to well, die. Or Game of Thrones, like, main characters to like, die. I'd you still know? criticize that as plot armor, though. Yeah, he's yeah. He's making plot a point about, show. like... We would, I don't know if he would. I think he's making a point about well, the different he, worlds he and how death is, like, contextualized in, in the series. I just... I you know, like, you, or yeah, you, you, just you think about Avatar, it's like, okay, the Avatar dies, but then the Avatar is reborn, and then the Avatar can talk to, like, Roku, who's dead, you know, so the rules of death are different in oh, that well, universe. I, I wonder if that's, because I, I think it is that he believes that the show set up an expectation that main characters will die, so if you see a main character get seriously hurt, this show should condition you to expect them to die, whereas in other shows where that's not an expectation... Uh, but they can survive crazy them? things. But I would. Yeah. If we we just got a recent example with Sabine Wren getting stabbed through the chest uh -huh. by a lightsaber. Even though it seems to be now that lightsabers stabbing people through the chest is not fatal. Yeah. I still call that plot armor. Oh yeah. So, so the problem is, is, I think at that point people don't need apparently. I think the problem at that point is, are we talking about the same things? Or are we talking past each other? You know, like would he agree with that? Uh, would he agree with that framework? That it doesn't well, matter what the genre is, it doesn't matter what the expectations uh, the, the story puts forth. If somebody maybe, gets hurt in a way that should kill them, they should die, you know? Maybe this will be a good test question. Is John Wick plot armor? Or has plot not, armor? Not the John Wick one. is the uh, fucking god of plot armor. 
I, mean, I don't think there's he? any character and well, I don't I, think I have a feeling I know what Sitch is saying. Like the the existence of those things in universe deflecting bullets is one thing, but the fact that he doesn't he never gets shot in any significant way and it doesn't do any force like damage at all. Like that I'm just ask, would you because people I mean part of the reason we're watching the video it says plot armor can be good, right? And I mean everyone likes John Wick, so is it that we just don't. an example of good plot armor? <laughs> we don't. Or yeah, do we yeah, not classify that as plot armor? We don't like John yeah, Wick. Yeah, I would I would there's basically just say that oh, well, John Wick is John Wick. I don't I don't think there's any character who has more plot armor than John Wick. I think Mando? after three more than Mando? Yes, I well, yeah, I think so. I think Mando I think if we talk <laughs> about how many times he's shot at and the combat engagements he gets in. Um, I wouldn't fault anyone for saying Mando, but I think John Wick has him beat in terms of sheer so amount of shots and engagement he's in. I, I am, I'm with you. The, the thing to consider, of course, is that Mando's armor doesn't cover anywhere near as much of himself as John's does, but Mando's not in anywhere near as many death scenarios, I think, or fires as many bullets at it's, him, right? It's tough. Yeah. I think I could be swayed. I would have to double check, like, and maybe have to, like, I could probably calculate it, like, mathematically if well, I dude, tallied the, up all the shots. John Black dies. Is, um, John dies. Kill death four, ratio for like, John Wick times. Like, yeah. Ridiculous. Blasters, I think Star Wars blaster is also not seeming to have a lot of kinetic property to them, being just like laser beams that seem no, to I don't think that. Be I don't think it matters here. It's just sheer shot placement. Even though that doesn't really make. Uh, and for the record, we understand Star he's got bulletproof suits. That does not solve the problem. If you watch the film, <laughs> yes, slowly. it helps. It doesn't solve it. All the rancor. Is... My, the my rancor mind. killed Mando like five yeah. times. He should have died. Oh, uh, uh, Mando, my, yeah, Mando's a very close second in my mind, but I think John Wick is like be, is the god of it, and I think the mm -hmm. thing that pushes him over the edge to be the god of plot armor is that John Wick, his the the combatants trying to kill him, will just like not try and kill him when they need to, like they'll they'll physically start like having conversations with him or things of that nature. J just uh, to clarify. Are you talking about the entire franchise or just highlighting? Well, yeah. Oh, we don't, the, not counting John Wick 1. John Wick 1 is okay. a good one. Oh, okay. okay. John Wick 2. Oh, okay. John, John Wick 1 does have that scene where they do have him like tied up in a chair and then they don't just like shoot him in the head. Yeah, that's the weakest scene. Uh, I think. Yeah, that, I, I wish, I the wish they took that scene. I, I, I don't know. I can answer. I can, I can buy that they would suffocate him instead question. of splattering him. I can, I can buy I can that. Buy can plot armor be good? Yes. Austin Powers. <laughs> as a parody of plot armor it can plot armor can be good if it's a parody of itself. exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So supposed to... punch man. you you oh, like oh, the man, first john yeah. wick rags exactly. is that that's the only one you like yes i only like the okay. first one so does, like but do you think he doesn't have plot armor in the first one i think in the first one he has significantly yeah. less I, I need to rewatch it to, to john, check. Check. In john wick we clarifying but, sorry in the first one. Yeah, yeah. In the first yeah. one, it's way fucking better some. because uh, getting shot in his body armor actually has consequences. And mm. when he's thrown, mm -hmm. I think, two meters onto the ground, he suffers significantly. Oh, and in the future he, films, he yeah. starts getting tossed out of fucking skyscrapers and he gets up. <laughs> yeah, just gets uh, and, uh, and, in, and I think in John Wick 1, he takes a lot more precautions to avoid being shot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, whereas in John Wick 2, 3, and 4, he doesn't really give a Dude, shit. Blankets that uh, stupid right. a fucking mm. coat around and just walks. Like, yeah. The, the, it's so hard to believe that he he's the best at what he does when that's what we see him do. Also in 4, they started making him just grab his coattail and put it up over his face, and they didn't give yeah. him a long coat. He's still wearing <laughs> just a normal well, suit. We, we talked about it when we watched I it. Why not just it. wear the, the uh, like a balaclava, right? Like, wear it all. Why not? Why? The bulletproof balaclava. Why not? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> ironically. No, I, why not? It's true. If you have that material, why wouldn't you fully cover it? reality, why not? But isn't that hilarious? And that's yeah. Good. yeah. Like, well, that's why you it remove work. those options and go back to him actually having skill like, yes right. yes Jesus yeah, Christ, man. that was the whole point of the first one or yes. they give them uh, they have actual i mean you have we have face masks that will save your life from being shot in the face by a bullet now you will be knocked the fuck out and you're gonna have a nasty bruise and it's gonna hurt for a long time but you won't be dead so yeah. you know having him dress up and wear that mask is like could be like a cool badass moment where he's supposed like, to yep, be so good that he's never in a situation where 100 people are firing miniguns at him you know mm-hmm I think the worst part of these franchises is when you see uh, in the first, in the beginning of those franchises, people have like significant amount of vulnerability and it s significantly declines over time. You know, when you start off at some point, you have to be consistent with it. Like with Star Wars, right? It's like an inside joke that stormtroopers can't shoot right, right? Because it became an inside joke. Joke, but... Yeah, it, it it has been there from the beginning and it's okay. Like, it's no, fine it hasn't been there us. from the beginning. Not from A New Hope. A New Hope is clean because uh, Vader orders them not 
Um, kill. And they 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 yeah, actually I perform mean, really uh, well in the ten to five or four. They lost yeah. their mind in, in in Vespa, I think. Like Cloud City, they just went Vespa. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we yeah, uh, uh, we talked about it a couple yeah. of times. The three films you got uh, pretty much fully working properly in in the New Hope, and then it's fifty fifty in Empire, and then it's just clowns in. Uh... <laughs> Turn of the Jedi. We don't even need to address that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Watch. Not to nitpick. I mean, carry on. <laughs> from the like o original trilogy, I mean, I think, but um, yeah, I mean, when you see, especially in Game of Thrones, right, it just declines over time, it, and people get less and less vul vulnerable and more inclined to have a plot armor, and that's when it becomes a problem for me. I think if a franchise sets itself up f to be like a fantastical thing, I'm okay with it. Like I'm not okay with it, but you know, it's a uh, it's a matter of taste, right? If you I think it's what he's um, he's getting out with the immersion stuff, right? It'll always annoy me, yeah. I think, but I can understand people yes. being like, it's the stormtroopers; they never shoot anybody well. They're dumbasses, mm -hmm. and then it's gonna be funny the day that they actually need it as a payoff, and they shoot and they tag someone. Then you as a viewer mm -hmm. be like, hey. They never Wait, what, an and like an Andor? <laughs> like at the beginning of the heist, one of the guys just gets yeah. fucking killed? Yeah. yeah, which is unfair to like, Andor. Oh. People were like, Andor, you fuck it up. You're not supposed to have them accurate. It's like, I'm having them accurate as normal people. Like, fuck off. Yes, <laughs> they're, nor they're normal with rifles that they've trained with. That dude's fucking dead if he's out there in the open. Yeah, and that's why we want to push back on it. We never want it to be that you have to do it. Like, if, if someone incompetent before you made enough of a pattern of a character being a complete fucking idiot against all reason, it's not like you should have to continue that. That's not fair. Especially, hey, like, fellas. an entire force. Like, all of the stormtroopers are retarded. Like, really? And Taika Waititi tried to make that cannon that they were retarded. Mm -hmm. I, really I gotta, I gotta head out here, fellas. Appreciate you having me on. Oh, I appreciate you coming, dude. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. So Happy 250th episode, and uh, have fun Thanks. with the rest of the stream. Thank you. Oh, yeah, we will. Fun, Thanks dude. for, uh, Thanks for showing arms, up. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll try to listen to what I can as you guys uh, keep going. So. <laughs> thanks, thanks. We will see yeah. you later. All right, peace, Dude, boys. Doodle -doo. Bye. 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 He did a good video on the pre-booting situation he recently. He did. I watched it. it was funny. Yeah, I need to. I need to I watch it. I still haven't it. yet. Gotta get yeah. onto it. Very funny. Had me. Had me laughing out loud a couple times. Yeah, he does good. He does good stuff. We like that act guy. Yeah. Funman. He's, he's all right. Onions. Stomach chucked into the sewer water and then fixed up pretty easily afterwards. This wouldn't be plot armor though in a lot of stories, you know, but it feels like it is here because it breaks the established rules of Game of Thrones, and more importantly, it undermines the tension that the show originally had. Calling yeah, plot I, armor like I, I understand said, what you're I saying. Think this is a I, I think mm -hmm. it is a meta argument more so. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. talking about like the history of this show doesn't do this, therefore it's contradictory to its own like inner universe, but... Yeah, not necessarily course... that it, it contradicts the rules of being stabbed in the gut and getting thrown into sewer water. As, uh, well, but well, the interesting question the, uh, for him then would be how many years do we have to treat it like a clown show before the clown show aspect is okay? Right, exactly. You know, if it sets up a rule terrible and argument. it contradicts it and then it goes no, it's from not... there with the contradicted rule. I, I don't think I don't even think he's necessarily making an argument. I think he's talking about some. He's just like commenting on reality that people find this more egregious when they're used to Which a show that true. doesn't treat it That's this way. Um, well, yeah. he did say that this wouldn't be plot armor in me in most other stories. If he means that... strictly from the perspective of an audience, I'm inclined to say that he's got some level of a point, but that we wouldn't agree with him. We call it plot armor every time, whether or not. He, yeah. I think he I needs think to provide an example. Good. Of what he's referencing, head, this would be okay. Did, well, think, in my head, that's plot armor anywhere, everywhere. I, th I think he might time. be ramping up to it. All at once. <laughs> I, I think so. Well, well, see, well he brought we'll up the Flash. I bet you yeah. that the big observation with the Flash is it's a really stupid clown show. No <laughs> <laughs> way. There's no expectation of uh of this type uh, of consistency. A, yeah, Glide yeah, just but says. Again, if it earlier yeah. in that season, Bruce Bolton does die from one knife stabbed oh. to the same area. So. Right, so that would lend more to his point then, right? Of well, expectations the... in the show and universe and everything. Um, yeah, well, technically, yeah, he was appealing to earlier seasons, but you could argue it's the exact same season. So at that point, it's just mm. complete incompetence, which, yeah, right. there's no secret about that. ...is really saying that there's no real tension in these scenes anymore. Daredevil, on the other hand, goes out of its way to show how Matthew Murdock will come away with sustained injuries when he fights. Yep. You can bet your ass people really... are going to compare to yep. this when we don't see it in She-Hulk. Yep. Wow. Well, sorry, yep. She-Hulk. Uh, wow, the new, way that, 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 that my brain contextualizes <laughs> that, you can already <laughs> the, tell. The new Daredevil it's one of the best... She-Hulk. Uh, well, I guess we'll see, right? I'm not... I feel I'm like... Not, I'm very... 
that is that? that is what I'm thinking going in, and I'm willing to be proven wrong as I was with Andor. But yeah, I have low hopes am, for Disney Plus Daredevil. I will say I am very nervous too. I'm not, I'm not very optimistic Just about play, it. Play the game Sifu with the They're Daredevil mod, and, and that'll be all you need. But yeah, I mean, it's one of the. Him. It's one of uh, the best parts about the uh, one one uh, hallway fight in uh, episode two is that he gets tired. He gets really tired yeah. by the end. It's a simple tired. idea, but it's yep. incredibly effective. It's so mm -hmm. good when you make them not invincible and invulnerable and infinite stamina. They Reminder can that they're everything. humans. Yep, exactly. Because mm -hmm. Matt Vi, Vi was the same guy. thing. Yeah. Vi and Arcane, yeah. when's the last time you've seen someone bleed out from a stab wound? They just make people invincible, and, and it's like it's a nice to actually have a fresh, um, like reminder of these things. Arcane's so good. Well, that's what so sucks bad. about Arcane season two is open. They're gonna have to give some people plot armor. They got no choice. Almost. They're gonna Probably. have to explain yeah. something. Yeah. There has to be some explanation. Good luck. <laughs> yep. You, you wrote yourself it. into this, so I ass I'm gonna assume you knew what you were doing. I feel like they can explain Jace having the tech to have protected himself. Yeah, uh, I, think I assume it's gonna be um. Maduva, Maduva, what's their name again? Madada? Some type of reveal. Madada type of reveal. has that little reflection-y thing going on. I think there's a power that she may have that we haven't been told about yet. There's there's a chance of that. It also could just be that they fucking blow it up and they go, yeah, some people died, some people didn't. Shut up. <laughs> like, okay. I, I suppose is, like League of Legends is a world in which people do have powers that they sometimes are not telling other people about. So, you know, it's, it's a way to get I, it in. I, yeah, I mean... Sona heals the, the all the little music thing. I don't even know if how many people here would get that reference, but yes. A Morgana shield. <laughs> Morgana shield. <laughs> even if he's just going up against random nameless goons. Now, we don't yes. think that he will die. It's not that sort of show, but getting paralyzed is certainly on the cards <laughs> in a way that Marvel or Doctor Who or the CW Gim suits just don't really play with. Kind of funny that that's the that's... case, right? That Marvel doesn't do. It's a Marvel show. <laughs> Not only it's, that, but uh, Marvel no, did used to play with this. Civil War well, paralyzed yeah, I mean, Rhodey. That's exactly. And, and but, people died. Like Quicksilver. <laughs> yeah. I, you know? It references it's not that sort of show in that, yeah, it's Netflix's Daredevil and you're showing a scene from like the third episode, maybe. Or like, uh, how far in is that hallway fight? That's episode two. Two, yeah. So there you go. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, Daredevil's probably not going to die in the second episode of season <laughs> one of his show that released on Netflix. So all 13 episodes are out right now. Well, to be like, fair, he did say that we have no expectation of him dying, but that being paralyzed isn't off the cards, which is true. He get really hurt. I mean, I, in, in episode two? Well, yeah, but, uh, not, to be yeah. fair, paralyzed can go as far as like well, losing remember, feeling in your arm remember, or something. He gets oh, really, really when he fights, uh, I think it was Nobu. He he gets that. He is uh, he in bad up, yeah. shape at the end of that fight. He is really in trouble. Oh well, well see, I I think though that what I, the the stakes in this fight though, I think it, of him getting tired and how that has an effect on the stakes. I think is less about we're thinking something legitimately bad might happen to Matt Murdock, and more it's no. This is him just doing his normal superhero thing. But he's he's just a guy who's really good at fighting. I, I think I agree with him that it can set up an expectation, you know, for people of uh, how much can he take. Yeah. If he's getting tired fighting these guys, what happens when he fights like a crazy skilled, uh, like basically his equal? <laughs> Oh well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. It sets the stakes in a way that I, I think is pretty reasonable. So I like I just what I was disagreeing with was him saying that we would have to have in our head any type of reasonable expectation of this fight being one in which Matt Murdock could lose to a degree that it would be catastrophic to the character. It, like this early into a to a TV show. Yeah, right? but is I mean, do we are we calling it plot armor that he gets so beaten up throughout Daredevil and, like, isn't paralyzed and isn't dead? Uh, I mean, maybe to a degree. Like, I mean, uh, that, that the aspect of the, the medical treatment aspect of plot armor can always be kind of tricky because there, there's plenty of things where it's like, hey, if you, mm -hmm. if you hit a person in the head as hard as that guy got hit, he would not just be knocked out. He has a traumatic brain injury and is probably dead or a vegetable unless he was immediately <laughs> brought to an ER. <laughs> But right. so, and not not ER the person to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can I can fix him. Oh, I, I, ER would fix him up right good. Can I fix him? No, I can't. Like one yeah. character in Arrow 
is paralyzed and then is magically cured like four episodes later. <laughs> Each of I don't want to. Uh, give any sense of credit to Arrow, but I feel like you have told us everything there, right? You've given have you given us all the context there? Because Arrow, Arrow is magically, yeah. I just I almost know. I almost feel like it's like was there more to it than that? I feel like one person in chat will be like, hey, no, it meant it made more sense Probably than that. But who knows? It is Arrow. I don't. Know. These create different expectations around death and tension, and that's okay. I mean, you look at anime, and there's wildly different rules around death and injury and pain, right? But going back on the rules that you establish can rob a story of uh, tension and immersion because we get drawn into a story by being convinced that there are stakes, that things matter, right? And if So is this leading to the idea of as long... Hmm. I don't know where he's going. I guess I'll... I mean, I agree with what he said. I don't see. I'm, 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 I'm yeah. basically figuring out if there's anything I disagree with there. I think, I think that's all clean. I think I agree. I... I'm waiting for the butt. Like it feels like he's building mm -hmm. up to a butt. I do like, like butts. Just... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. What you said matter before no longer matter. It's eh, and people say plot armor. It's usually okay to make the rules of death harsher, but a lot more difficult to make them easier. It's often connected to flanderization, where characters become more extreme versions of themselves, and power creep. Video on that. So ask yourself, uh, what expectations do you give your readers? Why? Why'd you do? What, why? What was that sound? I, I just saw something that or, I disliked. And yeah. I couldn't help but make an auditor. <laughs> also, yeah. I would have recommended to him. I wouldn't want to involve those concepts alongside this one. We're already, like I said, clarity. I don't want to mix in other things like power creep and flanderization alongside plot armor and where we find it. You know. Yeah. Uh, I, I understand what he's trying to say is that they can they can appear or diminish in the same vein. Just uh, I don't know. He is kind of right. referring to all anime as if it's Dragon Ball Z, though. Like, I mean, yeah, but even Dragon Ball yeah. Z. Well, just say anime and summarize them all under one umbrella. It's like there's yeah, so different. Not, well, you said an anime, there's all kinds medium. of different shit going on. It seems on. like he's talking about like shonen, where uh, right. people are going to be thrown against a mountain and still kind of like get back up. But that's not every fucking anime. Exactly. Death Note, you're dead. It's like that's more anime relevant. Is a medium. It's not even a genre. Yeah, that's so, what I was just saying. It's a medium, but people treat yeah, it like yeah, it's a genre exactly. that's like all the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you should make sure it's, you know you have good recommendations but like, and be picky with certain animes. Don't just go into any of them. But to treat them all like they're the same thing is nonsense. Like some of them are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Also, oh. welcome Weekend yeah. Warrior. Hello. I agree. Hey. Hello. Not all anime is good. I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I also, you know, I also Did, agree. Do you guys see how hard it was for him to say that? <laughs> a little bit it's just, just, with anime. yeah a little bit yeah mm -hmm. you know i try to be accepting of all anime but you know sometimes you gotta stump some shit down, a little bit so. of bigotry yeah right. yeah yeah you gotta keep your own house clean hell exactly. paradise is a recent one i enjoyed quite a lot oh hell yeah i yeah. recommend that also uh, if Which you want to grab the watch together link and join us we're watching a video all about plot armor it's a oh, Hell's oh. Paradise VR. It's a kind of like Raku, Hell's Paradise. Yeah, it's sort of like that Natalie Portman movie Annihilation, but way better. <laughs> mm, okay, I'd be down for a hard. better version of that movie. That movie was yeah, I would everybody too. would be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that bear scene, every every other scene, and but yeah. <laughs> bear scene was the good. Shit. Yeah, no, the bear scene's not good either. <gasps> Think about it at all. Oh no, disgusting. Happier to steal right. people's feelings. I'm sorry. Disgusting. I'm going to steal all those feelings. Give them Why to me. Why on the bear, man? Because <laughs> the, the bear is stupid and it makes no sense. <laughs> sorry. How is it stupid? Go hey, for it. How is uh, it stupid? Do it. I got to elaborate now. <laughs> because they spend the whole thing being like, oh, you can't. You guys, you can't make any noise. Oh, my God. If you make any noise, the bear is going to get you. And then they're making a ton of noise. And like what the bear's motivations make. They them. were stupid. Not what, the bear. What, is the bear, what is the bear's motivation? <laughs> the, there, it doesn't have one, really. Oh, uh, okay. It, oh all right. Um, I genuinely can't remember. I, I just remember the screamy bear. The bear screamed, yeah. and the girls were dumb. Like I don't remember how you, could, how you how do you condemn the bear for that? Legit, the only thing I take I'm away from it is I'm talking about the bear scene, the creepy Nothing. and effective right. concept of like a mutant, like murky bear creature that yeah. raw is screams. That shit screaming was and like good yeah, shit, but terrible. like obviously, 
in terms of the I, I have quite a hatred for Annihilation and its construction as a script, so I'd probably be inclined to agree if I was given all the references again. But right. I don't want to, to have to watch clear, that. Movie. I'm, I'm calling the bear itself stupid. I'm talking about the bear sequence. Well, bears are bears are stupid. So <gasps> the the premise of this show, where they're going to the kind of hell like Paradise Lost type scenario, is death row inmates who are each being brought by a samurai who is their executioner. And their thing is come back with the elixir of life that's supposed to grant eternal life or the samurai kills you. Yeah. And they have to work out their differences and, you know. And some wacky misadventures. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I like that it ends on a high note. Like it didn't, unlike some like popular mangas, when mangas get popular, they try to extend the lifespan of the anime or the manga just for shits and giggles, just to make more money mm-hmm. out of it. But oh, I respect man. that they ended it at the right yeah, time. Sh- so. Oh, you're talking that out. Milk it. Oh, yeah, uh, and the manga and that, if they're going to adapt the anime, they're going to, like, do more or less than the manga I, art. I thought you were just... Yeah. 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 Ryan Johnson. Season one of the anime ends, ends pretty solid. It's a, it's, a, it's a good one season so far, I'd say. Oh, yeah. oh they didn't complete the whole manga yet okay i don't know i mean i don't think so it, it seems I, like I, it for season i two. just recommend jigoku raku as the ma- the, uh, the original version like... as it were like yeah, right so. <laughs> it's a good it's a good i i'm not surprised that it's a good anime anyway so yeah. it's, it's just a good manga story and does any given survival contradict in-world logic that you have demonstrated and carefully this includes Part three, <gasps> inconsistent characterization. Hmm. The hero just blitzes through thousands of minions with lives and dreams of their own, but the moment they get to the killing genocidal maniac at the Those top, are... suddenly- This is the wrong visual, oh. my man. This the is wrong, wrong visual. visual. What? It's wrong <laughs> visual. <laughs> Why are yeah. you playing this? You are, you oh, yeah. are making a point. Visual issues. You are making a point that could be applied to a lot of other stories, but not this one. So, yeah. oh, of, oh, this you know, one all of the, all of the minions, just... whatever, but the villain who was actually responsible for, you know, all of it in the greatest time. But not really like and <laughs> can I just if, point out that just grabbed the most random videos and clips. Well, because part of the problem is like just, just, just throw them in the, for sure. The, uh, the edgy troopers that uh, like don't ha- like that don't have a consciousness seemingly. Yeah, why did he? Ch- oh, it's so wrong in so many levels. Because if the point is just the hero is so good, he gets rid of all of these amazing warriors. But when he gets to the leader, amazing warriors, suddenly he's not as good anymore. I understand what he's trying to say. It's a decent idea for trope. These visuals are the, just horrendously chosen. These two scenes don't even have anything to do with each other. He does yeah, defeat Vader, so I don't know why you're using that as a oh, visual no, no, for no. Like... I don't know if he's going to say... I don't know if he's... Is, he, is it going to be about defeating them, or is it about the choices that they make about, you know, sparing them, killing them? Let's uh, roll back a sec. Mm, see what let's see. Part three, three four. inconsistent characterization. The hero just blitzes through thousands of minions with lives and dreams of their own, but the moment they get to the killing genocidal maniac at the top, suddenly, oh, robots. I can't do it. Okay. I'll be no. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah but that, that's, right, that, that's right. still yeah, horrible right. because that's his fucking dad no, no, versus no, no. the soulless again, robots. Again, again, yeah, Wait. again, it's still not the right example because it's like super central to. You know what Luke's he needs art. to do? Have The Last of Us 2 as a visual. Ignoring too much context. The Last of Us 2. And I point the, out last of us two is, the Last of Us 2 is perfect. Yeah, it is absolutely yes. perfect. The best mm-hmm. All of these people yeah. who had nothing to do with anything, but then you get to the one person who was actually <laughs> responsible and you let them go. I think yeah, that, that, that's a that's yeah, weird yeah, thing. I was... That that pointed that pointed comment about um these people have lives and dreams of their own. That's a Last of Us Two thing. Yeah, yeah, and because the, footage, the, the robots yeah, don't. They, they're just robots. Yeah, There's no robots. robots. Don't have yeah, they're they have robots. No okay, now remember, that. these aren't the ones. Okay, these aren't like the ones the on the trolley. Dream, uh, no, on the, on the thing, they don't. They don't have dreams of. Remember, these are the these are the dubstep <laughs> robots. They just go. <laughs> and again, these are different stories. These are totally different stories. Yeah. This takes place after this. Yep, yeah, I know. This, this where be the you. I could imagine him being like, "Dude, calm down. I'm just showing robots, and I'm showing like a leader." Okay, that's all it's supposed Random to be interpreted visual. as. Yes, these visuals, visual. these visuals are hypothetical, guys. <laughs> Maybe that's why he had Luke at the beginning. Dude. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, there's two mm. times he's misused Luke, young Luke and old Luke. Yeah, I was just be like, oh, please never true. use that to illustrate <laughs> the point ever again. <laughs> like, at the end of the last one, Abby was like, "Ellie, I'm your mother." <laughs> <Would that> have- <laughs> 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 it's 
better than the bad guy. Well, boo-hoo, Janet, you're already ten times worse. It's always obvious, isn't it? It's so well, bad, too, because if wait, his point was about you... how, you know, Luke cut through a bunch of innocent people without realizing that they're all people, too, just like his dad, he'd be like, yeah, but that is his dad. Like, the, the, you'd have to actually have special well, consideration for family fighting, members. That's just human. Stormtroopers were trying to kill him that are trying to oppress the entire galaxy. Stormtroopers are enemy yeah. combatants in a war, so, this, this I mean... Is, this well, this is, is his dad. This is what I mean. Like, it's not even it's not even just generic evil leader. This is his father. Like, that actually does have yeah. weight. Yes. Isn't it when a character either one inexplicably acts differently, or two, the character is suddenly incompetent? That visual was very oh. fucking confusing oh. there. The Snowpiercer oh, no. one? I'm not even sure what I was supposed to grab from that. I find it interesting that the text says Snowpiercer because it presumably nobody... Most people don't know what that is. So Pretty it's just like, well, well, better let him know. Everybody like knows you didn't about put Luke. it here nobody for Return of the Jedi. Gen genuine <laughs> question. <laughs> what am I supposed to grab from the visual, though? It's worse. It's yeah. always yeah. obvious, isn't it, when a character either one inexplicably acts differently, or two, the character is suddenly incompetent compared to before? It's like... Drugs. Oh, those visuals yeah, didn't I'm help. Really confused. Yeah, I'm the, the, the thing is, um, plot uh, armor. Uh, I guess I, I guess it's a form of plot armor if you had two people fighting and one of them should obviously win but is suddenly incompetent for no reason. One could argue it's a form of plot armor. Yeah, I think he's also also talking yeah, about yeah, making yeah, the decision. Luke hesitating to... about killing his father is not incompetent. And it's not even plot armor because yeah. uh, this is what I mean. Anyway, his choice of visuals, his, his choice of visuals, really fuck up the interpretation. I think. Well, yeah, I'm even just the visuals. I wouldn't have video more if I found out he had a third party editor and that he actually did. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, yeah, maybe. So, it looks possible. like he's probably has somebody else yeah. editing these things. And, uh, in the <laughs> Why do people do that? Yeah. Oh, wait, uh, Cap, what are you saying about the. Was lazy. It's not just the visuals. He's talk. He started talking about how the tr like the trope of you know mowing down faceless or nameless enemy combatants, but then you know not killing the big main bad guy. What does that have to do with plot armor? I get well. well the, so the impression I got was you saying your skill level should denote that he should take out that leader easily, but he some, for some reason doesn't, and we all know the meta reason well, is that the big boss fight has to be longer. Or I think that, that no, I, I, I think he just said. Armor, I think he just said before you pause that there's two explanations. One is the character motivated choice of they are acting out of character by sparing the villain after killing all of the henchmen, and then two was incompetence that they're just suddenly not good anymore at what they do. So I think he's saying that both of those are plot armor to save the villain, I think? Yeah, it's or to plot armor the for the villain. Yeah, to make it longer. Yeah. I think it'd be less confusing oh, if he okay. if he instead of yes. framing it from the hero killing the, yes, the villain characters absolutely. that it's usually like there's some villain who's like killing all like the random good guy soldiers then when he gets the hero, you know, That's he has to one. tie him up or spare him yep. or whatever. Mm -hmm. That would exactly. be the plot armor. Maybe he'll bring that one up later, though. Well, yeah, I mean, he's got James Bond here. here tied in the chair, so I assume... Which is a classic example. But... And it's all because they clearly need to keep this other person alive for plot yeah. reasons. Uh, it's uh, frustrating, yeah, yeah. Exactly. and it I destroys see. immersion. It reminds me uh, that I am... I, uh, you are making fiction. a point... Well, you are making a point that is valid for examples other than the one that you brought up. Yeah, like yeah. I said, those Star Wars yeah. visuals almost completely but, fucked this whole thing up. Mm -hmm. Because I do agree with this, and again, The Last of Us Two is the prime example. Yeah, that was insanely stupid. Yeah, but even that, again, would, I mean, would you call it plot mm -hmm. armor or just like? Stupid? Uh, Abby has plot so what, armor. Sure. I think what Abby we would call it yeah. is character assassination, mm -hmm. but the yes, you could be like, and it, and it happens to protect that's Abby's probably. life. So it's a yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, that'd be a way to put it. Not that I'm like reading because, like, you know, uh, let's say for example, a giant steel box fell from fucking space and prevents. Uh, Ellie from killing Abby. It's like, oh, so that's just plot armor. Doesn't have anything to do with Ellie's character, but if she chooses not to kill him for no fucking reason at all, or at least an out-of-character reason, then yeah. It does protect mm -hmm. Abby, but it's characterization and assassination. Well, I, I, haven't, I haven't played Last of the Two. The villain, you play as the villain at the end, right? For like, a uh, third, third of the game. You play Ellie at the end. Yeah. yeah Basically, you, the simplest the, way to put it is yeah. that Abby kills Joel, Ellie kills many, many, many people who were not involved and then let's go the person who actually did it. Because she right, learned, I mean, the, she I learned the violence yeah. is a cycle and she needs to stop it. Yeah. Even I, mean, I guess what I'm getting is there like, on the spot. Like, even though she's already perpetuated it to a degree that it's one of the funniest to, like, uh, examples of like the theme just completely contradicting the whole all the events of the game. Good old Luda narrative dissonance. I brought it up. Aria and the Hound all over again. Just suddenly she's not a killer. Like it's ridiculous. 
I brought it up as a joke, but honestly, if Abby says to Ellie at any point, Abby, I'm your mother, it honestly makes the story a little better. Maybe. <laughs> with with, killer at with Arya, was, she, was, she was intentionally not killing the Hound because like, no, no. she's a dick, not because she was sparing him. No, Cersei, Cersei. I'm talking about in the Bells oh, episode. Oh, oh. And suddenly, suddenly, yeah, oh, she's... don't kill it. Like, she's killed more people for vengeance like than, than he yeah, has. Yeah, like, yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she's oh, yeah. committed at this point. It wasn't about making right. her... They yeah, fucked Arya so hard. That, that, that's one of the smallest parts of that episode that like a lot of people just don't even factor in. Just destroy Because everything's so bad, it's like hard and to see. Sift through the sea even, of yeah. shit, you know? Mm -hmm. And then there was some prophecy right there. Um, the Game killing, of Thrones? Like, uh, yeah, with the a a area. No, uh, with her killing with the who? Eyes. They oh, changed the, yeah, the color of they, they the literally eyes. changed the wording of the eye thing. It wasn't for Arya. It was not. They changed the wording to try to make it apply to Arya. I remember that. It's the first video I ever made was on the Long Night. Uh, actually, and, um, you're wrong because really she wording. said she what? closed blue eyes, and that is the Night King's eyes. So it's set up right in season two. Oh God! Right. No, 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 no. That's what I'm talking about. They say it earlier in the season, but the wording of what they say is changed in season eight. It's I'm just like memeing anyway. Oh, okay. Just, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like the secret Bro, word. Bro, I fucking hate the, everything about back. season A, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Justify my crazy Last nice. of Us mother take, though. You'd at that point have Ellie's biological mother being the killer of Joel, which would actually give Ellie a pretty difficult thing to have to grapple with. Especially if she'd never it's known her like biological that. mother, you know? It's better than what they cooked up. That's for fucking sure. Yeah. <laughs> In the story, I feel like I could buy her not killing Abby at the end way better than I did by the time I finished that game. And, you know, Artemis. Sorry, I gotta pause it really quick. So, hey, based. Okay. <laughs> we, <laughs> I, oh, I'm worried that we're spending a long time talking about different kinds of plot armor and why they're bad. And it's like, yep, yep. When is it going to be good though? I'm worried he's going to say, oh, the less the story. You know, the more like The Flash and the less like Game of Thrones, the more okay it is when people survive incredible nonsense. Yeah, I like, think he's what... already basically said that. I don't, I don't um, think yeah. that. I mean, but I, but he's been he's shot on The Flash. I don't, and nobody's going to be defending The Flash as like good or anything. I, it looked to well, me like I, the I Daredevil like was the example that was good. But mm -hmm. why is that plot armor? No, I don't. Um, I think we need to go further before That's we can figure out exactly what his plans are on that front. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm not sure exactly where he's going, even though I'm I would have to, uh, like, check this out. This foul and going, man, what a great non-fiction story. You know what I mean? But no, sometimes there's no. this, like, yeah. anti-plot armor, and I love it when this happens. In a story where characters who are meant to be safe, you know, it's a lighter tone, and they're... Uh, okay, because this feels oh. like a meta thing of, like, you wouldn't kill yeah. a child when it should be that the if the child is in a position in the writing that they would die from the thing you've made happen... I wouldn't call it anti-plot armor. That's just consequence. I'd just be like, oh, they, yeah, they killed a kid. Well, it's like anti-trope, you know, armor, I guess. I think it's subverting right? expectations. I'd rather go with yeah, subversion, okay. yeah. 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 Killed in a really shocking way that you didn't think would happen. That can be really powerful if you play your cards right. Oh, is this Bridge to Terabithia? Yeah, Bithia, yeah. as soon as I saw the swing. Is so uh, I was about to say, yeah. Is this tonal whiplash? Yeah. I read the book. A world that felt I read the book too. And safe in grade school. Torn yep. apart, you know, like a rope suddenly snapping and a main character is just killed off screen. That tonal shift delivers the themes and emotions of the story so damn well. But I think that actually most of the time it's less about Discount breaking your beard. own rules and it's more about part four, the audience doesn't buy into the type of tension you're relying on. Let us return for a moment to the cesspit that is the CW superhero genre. When right, I was watching- He definitely doesn't think highly of the Flash. Definitely yeah. thinks that Flash. <laughs> how yeah. dare you insult hey. me? <laughs> These guys look great. I bet that they're super fast. <laughs> look at them go. They the are they're, they're, they're called Zoom rags. Really? They're what? No, they're really. Yes. Zoom? That's their name. They're called Zoom. They're Zoom? Oh, oh, is that Zoom? Yeah, that's Zoom, oh, isn't it? Hey, Sitch, you like them. Do they do oh Zoomies? <laughs> Wait, what? They zoom okay. around you, really fast. You, you, you like them. The outfits. Is yeah, the KKK fashion of the Zooms? <laughs> <laughs> oh, or, or am I... Wait, is... Oh, God the speed. Godspeed. Okay. Wow, Fringy, get your flash lore right. They're called yeah, Godspeed God in a way <laughs> that's actually worse. Wait, it look, is I, worse, yeah. God what, speed, good speed. Damn it, God damn it. But, They're both pretty shit. I'd rather be called Zoom than Godspeed. Wait, what's yeah. who is Zoom? Hold on. Who is that? 
Zoom that's the, the that's the, the mo- that's the kid that that's, was in the um, Mazda commercial. That's JD's brother. Yeah. yeah. Zoom zoom. Zoom zoom zoom. zoom. <laughs> There's a deep right. cut. Zoom zoom. Oh wow, Remember Zoom is very zoom. edgy. Yeah, he's, he's as edgy as Godspeed. He, he, yeah, he is like... edgier. God, these costumes suck. Wow, what? What do you mean? I can't wait to watch oh, this. You. And we oh, can watch it on fastclipsyoutube.com forward slash. Check it out. They like. I feel this like at this level, weird. they had to intentionally make this look as shitty as possible. For the <laughs> yeah. show. I think they might legitimately be old Power Ranger. Oh, that is an edgy boy. And his he name is, is Zoom. He doesn't yes. look like a Zoom. Zoom is Professor like... Um, Zoom. Zoom. Zoom feels like... Uh, Zoom feels like a... Room. Oh, that's my car. That's uh, that's my car. That's a 2004 Mazda Speed Miata. That's there the car I drive. Boom. Yeah. Um, Wait, I th- but... I've only seen the first season of Flash. I thought the, the bad guy in the first season was Zoom. Oh, that's also Zoom. Zoom. That's yeah, also Zoom. Zoom. Zoom? Like, yeah. uh, like a character from Static yeah. Shock or something. He doesn't. Well, he doesn't seem like a character got, from you know. You got Reverse Flash. He's static the shock. he's the big old yeah. Bad guy. Reverse Flash, yeah. And, and all of these lads, the people that go go fast. They, oh, Zoom well, well except for Captain Cold, he doesn't go very fast. That's the only Captain Cold slows the Flash down. That bastard. So I'm confused. So Zoom is different from Reverse Flash. Am I, am I understanding yeah, that? I think so, yeah. They're Obviously. I thought they were the same guy. <laughs> I'm absolutely I, someone does the same guy, yeah. Dude, someone just said, like, no more. A Professor Zoom <laughs> is Reverse Flash. You. Like, oh god, this is getting too I mean, difficult to understand. The, the worst name for a character. <laughs> Professor well, yeah, Flash. Prof- Zoom in. Wait, which, which, what, when you say, we would say it a lot of really dumb names. You're going to have to Reverse Flash. It. That reverse mean Flash is that dumb. mean he's yeah. slow? He's like, oh, he's reverse flash. He's very slow. No, he's evil yeah. flash. That's what that means. <laughs> so he's oh. actually moving backwards. Bizarro he flash. only walks flash backwards. Is good and he's good. He's bad. <laughs> he runs he backwards. Back yeah. yeah, he runs backwards. Like uh... <laughs> He runs very fast, but only backwards. Oh, he's like the chick from uh, Malignant. No, no, he's like no. he's like in Tenet. He's just stuck going backwards forever. I was shockingly entertained by Malignant. I, I don't oh, know. so were we. So were it was we. a very entertaining movie. <laughs> wild, man. It was shit, but it was very entertaining. Yeah, no, it, it, yeah, Jury's still out on whether or not it's a parody. <laughs> I, I mean, it's like they had to know what they were doing, right? Cool. I don't know. How did they not? I don't know. By the end of that movie, I feel like there's no way they weren't self-aware that they were making a ridiculous film. You never know. You know, mm. Ryan Johnson know. thinks he makes good movies, so who knows? <laughs> it's just dumb. It was constantly oh. asking me to worry whether a character oh, might get hurt just or in die, some and lot that was really the only Cooper. real tension in the story. Oh. Was, but I knew that that'd be fine. Oh, oh my god! Were, they got hurt, they lived, and it just felt like Barry. Oh. Was, uh, what is oh, this? Wow. What is that? <laughs> what? Oh, oh that looks bad. It's oh, oh, yeah. yeah. the fastest what? man. What's this? What is it's voodoo. It's voodoo Epic flash. Episode. Also, what does it capture? Comics flash. Clips season seven. Okay. Or he stole or lifted this. Uh... <laughs> oh, like he recorded these going. and then he put them on his YouTube channel and Thank then he God. put a watermark on his shit to be like, yeah, I'm the one who took these from the show. So <laughs> whatever. It was just inconsistently incompetent just depending mm. on who he faced. They have lightning so, swords. They have lightsabers. Yeah. They have lightning swords. Yeah. I remember people shared this yeah. shit. Speed force yeah. lightsabers. Oh, excuse Get me. It they're right. speed. Yeah, yeah. They're speed force sabers. God, his outfit looks like shit. I know. Uh, Everything looks like shit. It looks like the <laughs> it looks like the mesh on some of my like Under Armour shirts. <laughs> I feel like that was good. way worse than some of the the costumes from this show that I've seen. His face it, is what I it, the face I make when I look at this show. <laughs> mm. <laughs> a little bit. The tension <laughs> and the scenes as a whole fell flat. Oh saber. Maybe your story is kind of the same. The story, or just an individual scene, doesn't feel very tense because readers know that they're going to make it out of life. How do you manage that? Well, one, you've got to show us that the character can lose. Plot arm often comes from a pattern of successes <laughs> in unlikely oh, wow. situations. Even- it's so oh, distracting. Man, another one. It's so bad. I know. It's really difficult. To like, cause I think I agree with what he was talking about. Like, what yeah, people at? gotta believe your character can lose. Sure. Oh, yeah. The white yeah. Power Ranger is. I was on board with this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and it's a Foot Clan Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, a Foot Clan Ninja. That's what's going well, on here. The, yes. the, the only impression that I get from this is a Daredevil. There's a reason why they made a television show about a ground level, you know, superhero who doesn't have any crazy like powers or anything yes. going on because you just yeah, don't have the budget. Don't have the money. I don't know you why I don't lean into that. The vision. Yeah. 
Gary's I swear Gary's been saying this for years. Level. Why haven't we have a Batman sh- like series, like a proper Batman well, series? Well, it's, like be, it's because the CW would never be allowed to have Batman. The, all they get is Batwoman. Oh, you, what you mean, like a real, a proper like a real, one, like a <laughs> fucking yeah. HBO? Are you something? saying like, Gotham Knights isn't a proper Batman <laughs> yeah, well, show? Well, Except well, for you, me, they're only, they're only allowed to have it, the Batman wow. kind of around in the background, and then for that one episode that was really scary, when they're they only allowed the to fake, fucking kill him, fake yeah. Bruce Wayne. That was pretty terrifying for an episode there, but then they got oh, rid of him in, in the premiere. That that was good. That was a good yeah. decision. He was out quick. Was I thought he was going to be around for a whole season. Yeah, that was the episode drive me mad. Tom I Welling gotta... getting a cameo was the only thing that was cool of that infinite shit that you guys were watching. I think but, I have oh, to... yeah, right, because I, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have to go back and watch some 90s Power Rangers just to recalibrate myself after seeing <laughs> yeah. Go, go, Power <laughs> Rangers. Well, go, go, getting, go, go, getting go. back to what go, he was Power saying. Go, go, Why would you want to do that, Cap? Go, go. <laughs> uh, because I have thoughts about it. Go ahead. Okay. Can, we not, can we not? Can we just mock because the about power, power Rangers? Rangers? Wait, you have thoughts oh, yeah. on Power Rangers? Sorry. No, no. No. Okay. I have what Power Ranger was the best Avengers Power Ranger? Second. Obviously, the Green Ranger. He had a talking sword. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that is yeah, objectively yeah. true. Talking so sword. So did the... yeah, but Dave the Barbarian had a talking. He had the flute. Yeah, he had the flute. He had a Godzilla flute. That's right. I had Green that Island toy. Green Ranger's evil. Wait, why did he have that a toy. flute to summon <laughs> to a summon Matt? the dragon, man? Yeah, how does why that make any sense? What you're not gonna yell for him? The fuck not. <laughs> none of them. None of them else had like. Supposed to just be like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> like what are you actually gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Hey, come here. <laughs> you can safely say, and I'm I'm actually not joking. The Green Ranger is the only character on that entire show that had an arc. Really? And it that was true. Yeah, he was evil, and he became evil. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. I don't know. I, I'd have to Probably see more. The, I have to see video. Power Rangers again to know. I don't know if he became of white when he was good, which seems kind of racist. But yeah, yeah. You, you're <laughs> just saying that because you're black. Well, no, he didn't become the White oh. Ranger right away. That that was yeah. that was when they like rebooted the oh, show. Was it? I don't. I don't remember. Does, does he also have a saber cat that talks? Yeah, his little dagger had like a little tiger yeah. face that would talk. Yeah, and it, it, that's when he became the White Ranger. Oh, okay. They, it was the you drag- obviously have watched this oh, far more recently. Than no, it, it, yeah, no, you're up to date, dude. No, I just I watched it at the age where I would watch things like 30 times. I, I remember a lot of Simpsons oh, okay. for very similar reasons yes. around this. Mm-hmm. As do I. As Vulcan screen. Skull, I think, were the names of the two. Oh my god, oh, no yeah. Scully, what, was Scully or Skull? Scully was the was X Files, right? Yeah, yeah. Vulcan's- Absolutely. Mully and Skulder. Yeah. yeah. Whatever happened to Rita Repulsa? Remember her? She turned into uh, that lady who made the Charlie's Angels movies. Yeah. Uh, what? Does her? Rita Rita she was free. Elizabeth Banks? Yeah, that's the one. I would have. Jeez, I would have <laughs> fucked the uh, shit out of her. Yeah, I remember seeing her in 40 year old virgin for the first time. I was like, wow, yeah, that's uh, definitely, that would be top of the list, Steve Carell. Give up on the, give up on the eBay lady. Well, yeah, but I also she's also like tarnished by the fact that she ruined JD's life in Scrubs. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's true. Also, wait, wait, I'm so confused. This person, this Elizabeth Banks. It's so I funny. I followed Asian. all of that completely, but the people who haven't followed enough of it, like, will just be lost because of the yeah, amount wait, of references. Mueller, I don't think we've ever spoken about what, Rita Repulsa from Rita Power Rangers was in Scrubs. Yes, no, I thought Rita she was. Yeah, she was in Scrubs. No, she was in the new the key, movie. The keywords the... are Elizabeth Banks that connects all yeah, of those yeah. things. The yeah. Rita Repulsa in the original show was a Japanese woman that never yeah. spoke a word of English. Because That's why they... I'm very confused. But yeah. Elizabeth Banks yeah. played her in the new version of Power Rangers yeah. that no one liked. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I was tracking it, but uh, yeah, that was... Oh, uh, wait. She's Rita Rita Repulsa was, was in the 2017? I was like, what's going on? Yeah, she was, the, she was in the new Power Rangers movie. Oh, she God, she looks... Weird. Oh, I, I never saw that movie because, of course, I didn't. But I'm looking at pictures of her. No one and... liked it. So oh the... yeah. Here, let the me get you a picture. You're the cringe. Bad, but the first ninety <laughs> minutes of the movie are kind of not worth watching at all. And then the last half hour of the movie just really plays. Like the last half hour of the movie is seriously just a super big budget episode of the old Power Rangers show. Nice. That's all it is. It's it's no better than any of those episodes, but it's it's definitely looks like it costs a lot more money. So that's Rita Repulsa in the 2017 one. Yeah, that's Elizabeth that's, Banks. Don't that's like her at all. That sucks. <laughs> she looks like a weird Poison Ivy ripoff. Mm, I'll go with the yeah. original man. That girl went ham. Yeah, it I looks know. like a yeah. Mortal Kombat I would, character. Yeah, I wouldn't fuck this the new one at Pink all. Ranger is quite attractive in that film, though. 
She's Not certainly. She isn't she? Isn't the Pink Ranger usually pretty? Aren't they all pretty? Yeah, like, yeah that, is, that is a tradition. That if they, I put in the words never Pink, been Ranger, enough Pink Ranger, they they, they picked a correct have. thing to not retcon. Oh yeah, she they looks kind of like uh, Sandra Bullock in the cast. I think. Oh really? Kimberly it Hart. Was one of well, Rangers, I think. Or Amy Jo Johnson. And uh... Amy Jo Johnson was the <laughs> Dude, in the in the coverage of um, of EFAB on EFAB uh, Kimberly Kids screenshot at the times that guy said I had to beat those games. <laughs> <laughs> they're there just in case you missed it the trolley problem section looking you know good what? up to date beautiful yeah i Jackie yeah there, there's something about Jackie. classic power rangers that's just it's a it's a 90s vibe the the catchphrases the and the, the the goofiness of it mm -hmm. and you know the, the the formula of the show and i was just man it just somehow it just works all the little like toys and the gadgets like she had the the bow and they all had the swords and the axes and stuff. It's very and it was campy. Just, oh, good too, this yeah, one. it's very Girl. campy. I Dude, it's funny as fuck to be like, how are we on that's this? And then you return to the watch together and you're like, oh, that's how. I still don't know. <laughs> like I said, return to the watch together, you can tell. You'll <laughs> be like, oh, yeah. oh, let me look back to the thing. Oh, it's just a flash from it. Oh, it's a flash. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah. That's why we Man, got here. Power Rangers is a vibe. Yeah, there was, you know, because it was an old, like, Japanese Godzilla-style Sentai show, and not mm -hmm. to be confused with hentai. Super Sentai wasn't... There was a lot of elements that it touched on. That, and, and it's it like, it's so much they, of it is practical. They had the big puppets at the end that they, that they were in, and they'd fuck each other up, and there'd be miniature trees and stuff. And all the little bad mm -hmm. guys that they fought, those were all dudes in costumes, and they were flipping around, and, yeah, it, and all the props were real, all their little swords and stuff, and it was just... Oh man, it's the, it's nineties. The, the interesting thing though about whether they localized it in North America was it was a an a North American production company that just basically decided to shoot their own like saved by the bell type show and just insert it into this Japanese action <laughs> show that already existed. And it kind of worked. Like for <laughs> Is that really how it happened? Just some yeah. crazy morph. Yeah, the action yeah. and the uh, Sort of American Japanese style Power part Rangers of the shot separately. Though. I don't think it's called Power Rangers, but um, but yeah, it's um, wow, that makes so much sense. Actually, thinking about it, yeah, yeah, and it, 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 when you look back on those episodes, they they can be a bit more fun to watch when you have that mm -hmm. kind of like oh, okay, I that see context, yeah. So, Capelo opinions. What was your opinion Hello. about what he said? Well, I yeah, think... what, what what was his opinion, and what's your disagreement or whatever? I think part of the reason we went off on a tangent. And we weren't really super invested in what he was saying while the lightsabers were being fought with, is that everything he said so far has been more or less agreeable in the service of a video that could have been called Plot Armor is Bad and Here's Why. But this video is called Plot Armor is Good Sometimes, and we haven't gotten mm -hmm. there yet. Everything mm -hmm. he's describing is like, yeah, that's a reason that's a reason the plot armor is bad. I agree. When are we gonna <laughs> Yeah, it's so confusing. When's the other like, shoe gonna drop? He, he titled it wrong, or he's got some big, like, you know, reveal coming. Uh, uh, butts coming, deserves... something's coming. Smaller he deserves an butts. award for the selection like the of clips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Reasonable? clips are atrocious. It's just oh. random. But especially if it's by luck. Because red shirts are rarely lucky. So you've got to let your characters <gasps> lose in all sorts of ways. There let them go. lose physical fights. Let them lose personal battles. Let them lose things precious to them. Let them lose their friends. And relatively... Cora is not a good example of... Let him yeah, make the argument. Armor. This is the part <laughs> oh, we were waiting yeah, for, okay? Yeah, I, give, I give ER and Sitch full permission to spig out once he finishes the argument on Korra. Okay. Okay. Often as well, will. with lasting physical and emotional consequences, to convince <laughs> people that your characters can lose and that they don't have plot armor. I've talked oh, about no. this a lot in writing character arcs and redemption Korra? arcs, that we allow characters mm. to fail in the small <laughs> moments so that it's satisfying when they succeed in the big ones, and in the same way, we allow them to fail in the small moments so that it's tense as to whether they will in those big ones. And all those discussions, by the way, are in volumes 1 and volumes 2 of On Writing and World Building, which contains all of the- I assume they're his books, I don't actually know. Yeah, they, I, yeah, they are. That. Yeah. Discussions about writing world building oh. that I've had. They've compiled Wait, everything with gonna... a ton of additional notes, and it's sold nearly 60,000 copies so far, which is amazing. Oh, Thank wow. you very much. That's and if you prefer to wow. listen to audio... Maybe you can write a book on how to focus your fucking camera next. Uh, oh. Uh, I don't... No, it's fine. It's, it's okay. No, it's fine. it's fine. I'm just joking around. He should shave, though. Listen to audiobooks, then there... <laughs>
<laughs> listen to audiobooks then there is the audiobook version of volume two out as well now wow. links are all down below thank you very much but it's not just that if you want to add back in more tension more immersion then number two you've got to use different sources of tension than just will they survive Legend of Korra is really damn good at this. Like, if we think about it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, right. There we go. Yeah. Oh, We're here oh, now. Yeah. It's gonna be here fun. We go. Here we go. We know that Korra's probably not gonna die. She's the main character, she's the avatar, so the writers very rarely use that threat as the main source of tension. In season one, she goes up against a mon with the threat that she might lose her powers. Her it's funny because I understand all of this because I watched Tia's videos. I know what he's talking about. I also know how he's wrong, but I won't be the one to explain it. <laughs> Every time I hear yeah. Avatar, my brain says, and you've got to deal with it. You've got to deal with it. And she doesn't deal with it very long. Mm. Bending, the thing that she has always defined herself by, that mm. is a personal crisis that adds a lot of tension to any given scene. We're oh, always asking be. how close Amon is to getting to do that. In season two, she loses access to the previous avatars, throwing her identity as the avatar into question and giving us a permanent, real, devastating consequence. It's uh, only in season three and all. four that they start to really draw tension from whether or not she'll get hurt or die. And the thing is, they make good on that threat. Cora oh, gets crippled, oh. and that's to say nothing of her mental stability, which oh. she is- This Cora show seems pretty neat. What do you guys have to say about that? Oh Sounds good. Yes, he's confusing. Uh, uh, we go. You, you, <laughs> <laughs> I've got so many things that my mind is go like, nuts. Pick one. Floor is yours. Well, number one, the, the when her, when her uh, bending is taken away, um, it is about five minutes later that she gets all that bending back. So yeah, I mean, fuck that. Um, that doesn't count. And what was the other thing? Uh, she loses the access to the past avatars. She never used them. Um. <laughs> that completely comes out of fucking nowhere and it doesn't have any real consequence for the rest of the show so that's that's nothing too and her losing her uh, legs it's just fucking uh, despair porn we get like maybe an episode or two of her doing some physical therapy uh, seeing an old character telling her to just, sh just man the fuck up it's no problem it's so easily solved it's just she's so fucking retarded Ooh. Anyway, yeah, no, I don't trust him. He lies. Can, can I just also comment? Oh I, I went to his Amazon page, and the only books he's written are the world building books. He hasn't really written a, a fiction book on That's yeah, okay. True. He's allowed to I'm have fine. a perspective on uh, how to Is write, it? even if he hasn't written. How fiction? many books have you oh, written? Okay. Fair. Yeah, fair. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm just going to yeah, say, like, fair. I would believe him more if he actually did what he says he's doing. Does that make yeah. sense? Sorry, if Ryan yeah, Jones yeah, wrote believe, yeah. a book about writing like advice, <laughs> would you care about that more than. <laughs> all right, all right, Freddy, this that's guy? a fair point. I'm just saying, yeah. If well, I think Freddy the fact that wrote he's... a book about screenwriting, would you trust his opinions more? Mm. Maybe. Oh, actually. wow. <laughs> Like, I mean, I was thinking if, if like, would I write Direct a book on no, design and feel okay no, about I, that? I understand what you mean. Design the game, I'd be like, well, I'm, I know a fair amount about it, but yeah, I've never made a game, so what? Maybe I know nothing. No, I, I mean, I understand it intuitively. If, if it's just like, oh, presumably you've written stuff. Like, I understand that as a perspective, but you know, yeah, just, he doesn't have to write anything to have valid and correct perspectives on writing. It's with with the core example. It's weird because like yeah, even though Cora like gets beat up a lot, she doesn't solve most of her own problems herself. Exactly, they're still solved by like the plot or universe. So it's like this ah. very bizarre situation. Damn. <laughs> so what? So it's not a very good show. You're saying? <laughs> well, I mean, it's an awful show, obviously. But I don't know. I haven't seen <laughs> Legend of Korra. Yeah, yeah, well, you guys well, don't. Yeah. <laughs> on Mary Sue grounds. Yeah, just watch ER's videos on Cora. You'll be fine. It's yeah, there, there you go. I have some wonderful videos you can just look at instead. Your I, mean, I always found Dude. her annoying as a kid. I well, hated isn't it mean her. like that's... I'm the Avatar? You gotta deal with it, isn't that? Yeah, that's yeah. Her though, right. Yeah, immediately yeah, she comes out the gate. This is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> I've I definitely <laughs> prefer the Pink Ranger. <laughs> I've, I've had people make honest cases to me though to play the game life is strange and every single time i'm just like look 
I, I don't know how to better <laughs> say this. There's no way that however good you're telling me it is, I will enjoy it more than I've already enjoyed ER's video on it. Life is Strange <laughs> makes very little sense. It has some really bad dialogue. Oh, so, yeah. well, but but Fringy, as we learned from Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, life doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to make okay. sense. Life yeah. doesn't make that's sense, okay. and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. True. That's what I learned from that movie. I made the mistake of telling people I like Vampire, and now everyone's just like, play Life is Strange. And I'm just like, I feel like they're not the same. Is that how you pronounce it? Play, play, play uh, Vampire. Vampire. Uh, uh, remember me instead. V-A-M-P-Y-R is how the game yeah. is spelled. Vampire? Yeah, it's Vampire. Get it right, goddammit. Vampire. Vampire. Oh, oh my goodness. Vampire. Okay. Vampire. I-R-E. Vampire. Well, like what were we doing? Oh, uh, we 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 would kind of just let them vent about Cora, <laughs> which oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, to get that off his chest. Yeah. So Cora? if what he if what he summarized about Cora was accurate, then that would just mean that her plot um, armor is justified. Well, he, he's got a point right about uh, you can derive tension from things beyond will the character live or die. You, you will Losing mm -hmm. things they value, of course. Aspects right. of their identity, yeah, other people. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's all cool. It's just, I have no idea. <laughs> Based right. on what you've said, it sounds like Legend of Korra is not a great like, example. In this point specific there. instance, she should not have lost any uh, of her capability right here. It's uh, a complete ass bull and breaks the rules of oh. the entire universe beforehand. They just wanted to put her in a bad situation because uh, they haven't been able to do that for the basically the entire series. And they realized that and they wanted to do something with PTSD and they treat it horribly. Uh, even fans of the show are like, this is not how you would treat that kind of um, actual, uh, I don't know what you would call PTSD, a psychosis, a mental illness. Mm -hmm. uh, they should, they treat it by her, having her go to the person who abused her, having a nice little chat, and her kind of like realizing, oh, you don't have power over me. Da, da, da. Oh, that's so fucking stupid. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't. I can't. It's Let so it out, much. man. Let it out. It's okay. It's just so this much. is a safe space. Uh, <laughs> Well, I kind of want to see if he has any any further point to this. We're like fighting a... for. We never feel like she has plot armor because one, we've been shown she can lose, and in meaningful ways. Two, the tension lot, comes from not a believable. But... I'm gonna go ahead and assume she does get plot armor as well, but I haven't seen it. Well, so in in the first season, she loses her bending from Amon, and mm -hmm. the way she solves the conflict is like so. If you haven't watched the show, the whole season. In the first season, she's trying to learn how to airbend, and she's uncapable. She's incapable of doing this, and mm. it's and it's like presented that she's incapable because she has to change who she is as like her personality. She has to, you know, become more of a go with the flow kind of person or something. Or at least initially, yeah. Right. It's kind of like in your know, original bend. Avatar. I can which, air which, bend. Which I remember you, that. I think you saw um, Mahler. Like Aang has to change his personality to learn earthbending. He has to become more like mm. self assured and. More yeah. like stand his ground and not just be like so uh, evasive, sort of. Mm -hmm. And so she has kind of like the opposite problem. And so when she root, when Amon takes all her bending away, she doesn't change her personality to get air bending. She just does it for no fucking reason in the last fight. Like that's the plot armor. She mm -hmm. just granted air bending, and defeats the the bad guy in one hit. <laughs> so the judge said, "I just air bend with my freaking mind." <laughs> that just happened. That Even just worse, happened. She never does have to change her personality at all to learn like airbending footwork. She goes against all of the teachings that she was presented with beforehand. Does whatever the fuck she wants to learn airbending footwork on her own because she's you know she's magical. Mary Sue, this is the best word for it. <gasps> and then, and then she has all her power taken away. But. Uh, She's she's just so fucking magical. She keeps that power, and it just comes out of fucking nowhere to save her friend. I hate this show. By the way. <laughs> well, er, I have a question. Um, if you ate yourself, would you double in size or would you disappear? If I ate myself, would I double in size or would I di uh all of myself? Uh. No, I think my head would remain. Right? 
I feel like answers. Because uh, well, if, if I yeah, it's a false dichotomy. To. Neither thing would happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, all right. inside out or I something. Just, I was just, Rags is a yeah, charlatan, a false husband. I was, husband. Just, like, I was just trying to engage. I was just curious. Yeah, just you know, good with your you head. Lose, you lose. <laughs> you Rags is a fucking mind. idiot. He doesn't realize the hypotheticals are stupid. That's true. <laughs> they could never. Cool. He could never. Like it never happen. Actually, no. You wouldn't gain weight because if you're eating off parts that you're cutting off of yourself, you'd be losing as much more weight because you wouldn't eat the bones, right? Yeah. I don't know if that's. Okay, anyway, dude, I had a friend who believed that if you stuck your head up your ass all the way, you would disappear, and I fucking lost my shit when he said that. What? <laughs> he was like, what else would happen? How old was your friend at the time? Well, yeah, that's why if I ever have, like, a straw, and there's no wastebasket around, I just fold it into itself, and then I just push, and it's yep. just gone. So it works. It's just gone. Where'd it go? I don't know. And three, Magic. the thing under the bed told me. So if you're worried about a story or a particular scene not being tense enough, then consider drawing tension from threatening a character's identity, relationships, morality, their place in the world. Morality. And personally, I find that so much more compelling, right? Because that's the stuff that we get attached to in a character. It's actually staggeringly also, also straightforward advice, right? Like, don't yeah. just mm -hmm. challenge their health, challenge other yeah. aspects. You're like, well, yeah. Don't just challenge their physical health, challenge their mental health. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is good advice. It's just course. Yeah, course of yeah you could do that. You just clips. Have, you know, I guess yeah. I, confidently. I, I, I would say that bad this, clips. this feels like very. You know what? I feel like there'd be a lot of people would say, "Well, yeah, of course," because I, you know, the the genres that I engage in don't often deal with like life or death. Like, what is a drama? Typically, you know, like a like a soap opera. Well, I guess soap operas. Yeah, the vast majority. Dramatic. But yeah, there's a yeah. lot of stories that aren't about people being threatened with life or death. Like, you figure that right. this is something that everybody would understand, unless you're reading, like, action well, stories all the time, or watching action shows and TV, you know, mm -hmm. TV shows. I mean, this films. is our lives. Most of the drama in our life has nothing to do with, like, mortal danger or peril. It's just like, oh, no, what will Dad think if he finds out about that today? If, if I'm oh, no, just it's raining all the when bandwidth. I went outside, damn it. Yeah, I don't. What if the parents find out I've been stealing all the bandwidth to download games because I must finish that game? Or you know, will Timmy go to the prom with me or something like will that? Will anyone find out I killed yeah. Lewis? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd say the 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 majority of drama and stuff is not life threatening at all. So. What he's giving advice for is the majority of things. I'd say that are done. it's very localized to like if you're talking about action stories, essentially, yeah. Rather than a lot of other genres where it would just be like, yeah, of course you don't just threaten their physical health. Of course, like that's that's a huge that's a huge amount of the the conflict and drama in a huge number of mediums. It's good advice. I'm just wondering when he's going to tell me when plot advice, armor is but... good. Yeah, I'm waiting yeah. for a disagreement. Yeah. It's, it's the it's, clips. It's... It's the, not even, I'm just building not, up to the I'm ultimate not, butt. Ooh, I don't <laughs> think so because it's examples in this fucking are... room right now. What if they're his points so, are okay? This is well, yeah, they're his basic. Points are fine, but so like the title of the video is "Plot Armor is Good," and every point has yeah. been about how plot armor can be bad, and I'm like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Like a generic get to the sometimes. Like Wait, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry, it would be the opposite of sometimes, yeah, because plot armor is good as a whole is kind of the implication of the title, that's true. Like plot a character is dying sometimes. is bad, but I I want them to be happy in their life as well, and it's a lot more believable that they end up miserable, right? It's how Wait, um, what? is it? Um, is it <laughs> it's sorry, more what? believable <laughs> that they end up miserable? Let's roll it back. Characters <laughs> identity, that's... relationships, morality, their place in the world. And personally, I find that so much more compelling, right? Because that's the stuff that we get attached to in a character. Like, a character dying is bad, but I, I want them to be happy in their life as well, and it's a lot more believable that they end up miserable. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, <laughs> no! No, it is not, good sir. I want them to be happy, but I also want them to be depressed. It's I'm more confused. believable that people are depressed. Okay. It's like, um... That's a strange. Are you okay, my dude? Yeah. Things going okay, right Yeah, now? I think you're projecting there a little bit, buddy. <laughs> He's okay. been watching too many Zack Snyder movies. Right? <laughs> it's how characters change and it's how they foster empathy. And in drawing tension uh, from man, who they Cork, are on a fundamental level is really interesting. Sometimes, though, it does just come down to creating a great antagonist.
Hey, hey. you're happy to see Mr. Hey. Man from Gore you, there. You know what? He could have been a great antagonist. He actually could have been. They fuck him up at the end, though. No. Yep. So who is the fourth one there? Is the last one? from Jessica Jones. I don't know, actually. Jessica Jones. No, David yeah. Tennant. Uh, is he okay. hip, hypno man, hypnotized <laughs> master. Well, his ability is that he can like mind control everybody to do. What oh he my wants. goodness! Spoopy, spoopy indeed. You know, villains who ideologically or intellectually or morally challenge my characters, whose actions build into their character arc and create tension. What's what's Joffrey's character arc? He doesn't have one at all. I was going to say, why is he putting him as an antagonist? Like, Joffrey doesn't he's really fit that. Gets like, worse. I'm happy he to call him an antagonist, I mean, antagonist, but he doesn't he have an arc. arc. He's just an asshole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> from that, so the question of will they survive doesn't matter so much. Like, Amon, the huh? Joker, Joffrey all do this. And this applies on a scene-by-scene -scene level, you know? If you want to make a Whoa, specific wait, wait. Scene... will they survive for the Joker is really important. In I don't understand, yeah. The... Night. Dude, it is for Joffrey too. Joffrey being alive is causing chaos and torment yeah, for everyone. I can't speak for that one, but I mean, like, Joker is trying to get Batman to kill him, and so it is very important whether or not he lives or part of his, not. Part of why Joffrey dying, Joffrey dying is so interesting is because so everyone has a motive to kill him, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, this is just wrong. <laughs> so be nice, everybody. So that don't give everyone around you a reason to kill you. Good life Doesn't advice. Doesn't matter so much. Like Amon, the Joker, Joffrey, all do this, and this applies on a scene by scene level. You know, if you want to make a specific scene more tense as well. In the Dark Knight, the Joker is roaming through the streets, and Batman could kill him right here and now. He's got guns on his motorbike, and the Joker is out of bullets. But the question is really not, will Batman survive? Him being out of bullets Batman... is less of a reason to kill I'm him, confused. just to be clear. Oh, okay, so it sounds like he does recognize that that is, that whether or not Joker lives or dies is an important part, right? Based on whether it's Batman doing it? Well, I'm not now, sure, yeah, man. now I'm lost. Now I'm confused. And give up his morals and try to kill the Joker. And we believe it because one, we've seen him struggle with violence and immorality the whole time, and two, this could actually happen in our minds. But, come on, not every single scene can have this super personal crisis of morality going on inside their brain, right? You, sometimes you just got a plot point and you, you want an obstacle, you and so you're first. creating one. How do you make that more interesting? Okay, so here's where you use dilemmas and secondary objectives. Okay. What? If, I thought what dilemmas was spelled with D I L M D I L E M N A S. Is it two M's or yeah. M M? I'm sure it's two M's. I wonder. It's, it's a weird, it's a weird looking word. Dilemmas. Dilemma for us. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. D I L E M M A S. What you said, yeah, M. What? 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 Well, I was, I was, I was wondering if that was an alternate spelling because in my head, I Dilemma? think I've seen the yeah, S is I, making I, it look weird, I, but it's two S. Okay, the S is not relevant. Uh, so I have in my head, I'm thinking that dilem, dilemma could be spelled D I L E M N A S. I don't know why I'm. I, I thought that was an alternate spelling for it. Is that uh, is that true? Or uh, am I just a, a, a cursory uh, Google of. search is that that's an error. That yeah. for some reason it's it's a way that people do spell it, but that it's it's not oh, the shit. right way. So Weird. I have it's seen it. Error. Okay, because in my it's mind, so you like, may have that, seen it. Yes. Yeah, also, I'm, for I'm the record, me, Fringy, and Rags, and by extension some others, are already in the territory of getting the excuse we've been streaming for at least 11 hours, talking non-stop. We get to make mistakes now. Exactly. <laughs> no, I didn't make a mistake! Yeah. I was asking It's okay, you Rags, got you covered, buddy. <laughs> it's I, not I don't a mistake. think you made a mistake, Rags. It's not a mistake. I didn't, I didn't even make a mistake. Yeah. I highlighted yeah. if something yeah. was a mistake, and That's I was asking right. if yeah. something was That's a mistake. Right. All I, I said, my fucking bases. All I said is we're allowed to make mistakes. That's all I said. Good job, dude. Well, that'll come in, in handy the, uh... if I make one, which is probably not going to happen. <laughs> but in the case that it happens, it's good that you know that that'll be a thing that you could mention or bring up. I think in your until original Bearstein universe that you came from, Rags, they spelled it with an N, so it's not your fault. Yeah, if I see it's not a, your fault. Uh, if I see a beer stain beer, then I know what to do. I know what to do. I when can't you believe you guys wanted beers. to talk about this instead of listening to what he's got to say about secondary objectives and well, dilemmas. This sounds fascinating. Yeah, well, that, is. this he's video is my like secondary totally objective right now. Giving, <laughs> wow. He's giving totally okay writing advice that has nothing to do with the title of his video. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. 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 Which, which makes it the best video we've seen on. today. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, because he's making, he's making generally okay observations. Yeah, this yeah. is fine. I just don't much. know why. <laughs> I like how everyone is like, eh, fine. 
I'm which, getting... which puts them in the high tier of videos it, covered it on EFAP when we just go, eh. Top 20th percentile mm. or something. Yeah. I feel oh, like I'm no, the one no, getting annoyed, no, though, that he's not getting to his main point. We got, we got a couple minutes left. We got this. Yeah, we got... I know there's going to be maybe an ad and outro, but we, we got some time. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Ooh. our characters end up in this huge fight in the Department of Mysteries against Voldemort's Death Eaters, where they find this prophecy, this orb thing, right? It's kind of a MacGuffin, really, and Voldemort wants to get a hold of it. Is it a MacGuffin? I thought it, the, uh, mm. does it have like a memory in it or something that has, it's, it's like understood, isn't it? We know what it is, or I can't remember. I and it's it. the uh, prophecy of him defeating Voldemort, isn't it? Well, it's in Harry Potter, so I'm going to assume it doesn't make sense. That <laughs> is beside the point, okay? <laughs> it's just that MacGuffin is typically sort of a, like item of value for everybody that we don't even know what it is, right? Versus, but it, it, isn't like it? It like only only certain people can read yeah. them, like to who it pertains to, or something like that. Is don't know. I have no idea. Uh, but I was going to say MacGuffin is also interesting thing. According to like Leo Wikipedia, theater. what's that? Sorry. It's just an object that serves as the like the 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 the, the plot advancement thing. Right. Well, the, the best Anyone example can... I think is from Pulp Fiction. The briefcase is a MacGuffin. What's in there? What does it do? Sure. Don't know, but everybody wants it. The interesting thing with uh, Wikipedia is that it adds onto that that it is insignificant, unimportant, or irrelevant in itself. That's what uh, Wikipedia has in the definition of a mm. MacGuffin. Oh, so wow. the ring in yeah. uh, Lord of the Rings cannot sure. be a MacGuffin. Yeah. Well, it, and I want to clarify, colloquially, lot. MacGuffin is now used to just item of importance. Like, people will put yeah, it on Yeah, pretty that. much. Yeah. It's just that, according to Wikipedia, a MacGuffin is an object, device, or event that is necessary to the plot and the motivation of the characters, but insignificant, unimportant, or irrelevant in itself. I mean, in a, in a, it could be a semantic thing. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, what's in the briefcase? We never find out what it is. It doesn't matter to the audience that much at all in and of itself. And all that matters but... is it advances the plot mode yeah, of yeah. characters. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They have two objectives in this scene. They want to get out alive, and they don't want this prophecy to fall into Voldemort's hands. Harry ends up being faced with a dilemma. Give up the prophecy, or his friends get hurt. This scene is tense, because even though our main cast gets out Isn't alive, this... we... Isn't this the same as what he was saying before about right drama that challenges a character's identity? Isn't isn't like a dilemma just an extension of That's that? Not it's a, not like a new thing. It's part of the. It's like dilemma. it's it's tied pretty closely to the original thing, which is challenge your characters beyond just life and death. Challenge. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. Morality, this is a moral challenge. challenge yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And I think and, he's been and, repeating uh, himself for thirteen minutes. Yeah, I, think <laughs> yeah. I think it's yeah. just um, it's, it's tangled up because we're talking about plot armor. But we're talking about other principles of writing that are getting in the mix, and then we've like we we've like separated into different parts of the video things that are like under an umbrella category. It's it's a very like it's a it's strange. It feels the like we're kind of all over the place. It's all like saying a bunch of things that are really sure video. wrong. In fact, like a lot of the observations are fine, but it's just a, very, a confusing structure to the video. Even if he's saying things that are correct, when it's structured this poorly and he just keeps repeating himself, it just gets I think, gets yeah, the, the yeah. editing and structure is making this video a lot mm -hmm. worse than it needed to be. Yeah, the framing, that. And the framing is not, this framing is not the secondary dilemma. It's like, it's. I think it's a main plot point. No, right? he's if saying gonna... that there's a dilemma and a secondary objective. They're two different What's... things. So the secondary. This is the dilemma is example, saving. right? This is the dilemma. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This is the dilemma. This, but as Fringy pointed out, this should qualify as a category that he brought up earlier, which was challenging the character morally, which is true. Yeah. Yeah, because the way okay, that he intro okay. this is, not every sin is going to be absolutely like insanely important in terms of what's happening to character. But this dilemma sounds like what well, I haven't seen that film. This sounds important. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, so the problem is, is, like is what he yeah. said I need to rewatch it, but they've got like an army of Death Eaters. I don't understand why they couldn't just do the Kang thing in Quantumania and just take it off him and kill them. You know what I mean? Like the idea that like uh, is it just a matter? Someone's gonna have to tell me as a Potter expert, but is it just a matter of the Death Eaters are like it would be easier for us if you just give the prophecy and we'll allow you to live as a temptation? Because I know that's how he presents it to him. He says, um, give me the prophecy or watch your friends die. Like, I, I remember that line. Because Jason Isaacs is great. But I don't remember the fuller context to be critical of it or not. Maybe the mm. kids just all had plot armor and they couldn't take him out. Yeah. Rue. Those Rue. orbs are very fragile. That's probably the best defense. Like, they need him to be consensual in providing it in case he destroys it, I guess. Perhaps. Well, I can't they do, like, a... 
A spell? You'd think. I don't know. The uh, the spell that controls them. Yeah, I don't. I don't again, I'd have to rewatch the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. I'm Harry sure Potter. it makes it total matter. sense. I don't know whether they're going to succeed in this secondary objective, and in fact, they oh. fail. These oh. complicate the oh, tension so this is in the a scene, and it turns it into yeah. more of a problem-solving uh. exercise. <laughs> Then you get to well, show I the mean, strengths a lot of, of your... a lot of conflict is problem solving. I would have right? thought all of writing is problem solving. Yes. Oh right, well, I guess if yeah. you if you're talking about from the yeah. perspective of the writer, but I mean plot points. Is that what he's speaking to? Or, or because he gave the the MacGuffin, <sighs> it becomes a secondary objective to survive. Because the, now he's showing a scene where they're trying to fight them off. I, well, I, but the, so. Know. This is why I thought it was a dilemma, because the whole point is, do you put the prophecy which will lead to whether or not the world is saved above or below your friends, which is a very reasonable thing to say as a dilemma. But now he's saying, like, well, yeah. the orb was the secondary objective. Like, yeah, that's it's, okay. it's very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. In fact, hmm. they fail. These complicate the tension in the scene, and it turns it into more of a problem solve. Wait, sorry, did he describe that as if he, they failed by handing over the orb? Or, yes, I guess so. Would that is that huh. fair? I don't know if that's because should be described as a failure. I am pretty... I wouldn't. Uh, I don't know. I I'm, I'm like... saying I genuinely I'm not sure. Just because you know, choosing your friends over the orb. I don't know. <laughs> it's... I mean, under prefer the orb, you under your friends. I wish I remembered this movie. Better. Yeah, I wish I did yeah, too. Yeah, same. Pondering the orb. Holding exercise for them. And then you get to show the strengths of your characters, right? Uh -huh. Or it can just be plot tension. In Eyes of the Void by Adrian Tchaikovsky, multiple factions are all trying to get hold of this one person, Idris Telemier. And as this planet is breaking apart with him on it, the tension isn't so much about whether he's going to survive, but who takes him? Because that's the question that matters. A lot of it really okay. does come down to part five, the yes. Okay, this I hate the structure of this. Oh here, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> rambling. This also, is actually hard to follow. Too many examples. I like so one around. or two. This is I just uh, I terrible. can't. This is a badly written video. Yeah. Yeah. He so doesn't seem like a dumb guy, but the structure of this is just brutal, man. He establishes a point. You you, you say yes, and then he goes up to something completely random. Ugh. It wasn't Finally worth the it. butt. <laughs> It wasn't worth the wait. A character surviving or not getting hurt is a lot more palatable if they lose in some other way as well. Even uh, if it's unlikely maybe. or lucky that they do get out in the first place. Cora gets out alive, but she loses her bending. Donna gets out alive, but she For loses her minutes. memories. Harry gets out alive, but Sirius <laughs> dies. Stories. I don't see why these things are just better. Well, no, I, th I mean, I, I imagine... More palatable, I think I agree with him. More palatable. Are, uh, yeah, that in terms of consequences, if, if the characters get out of a situation that was very dangerous, if it cost them something to get out of it... It's kind of what we brought up with um, more... Tony Stark. We, yeah, ex yeah, exactly. You know, that, that even, if, even if a character doesn't die, even if a character doesn't get hurt, you can hurt them in some other way. You know, it's important that the scenes are consequential, um, mm -hmm. regardless of what actually, what the outcome is plot armor by demonstrating that secondary characters are vulnerable even if main characters aren't so much. These stories with that poetic approach to death often rely on this type of tension a lot more. The yes but. Fundamentally, and here's the thing you gotta remember, people aren't gonna feel that there's a lot of plot armor if you're not drawing a lot of tension, you're not spending page time or screen time on the question of whether they will get out alive, but something else, something more profound, those secondary objectives, those dilemmas, those other points of tension. Now, as much as I wanted- He said Wait. that like 30 times already. It draws focus. Um, so, is he saying that uh, like, the audiences uh, won't notice the plot armor or there won't be as many opportunities for plot well, armor to arise if you're focusing on other things? Maybe this would be a, a, a hypothetical. To, like, imagine if you had a film that just slowed down every time a bullet missed to just show you, wow, look at how close that was. Oh, that was <laughs> close. Yeah, that was close. That was, Yeah, it just draws your attention to the fact that mm -hmm. they should be getting hurt rather than if the same thing was happening, but there's way more of a focus in the story on, like, getting some object or saving that other person. I, mm -hmm. I agree with that. Like, you draw people's focus and then plot armor can be uh, more or less obvious to people. For sure. So it seems like he's giving you tips on how to get the audience not to notice. What, the to plot trick armor. them? <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's the way he phrased it, right? Um, 
A little bit, but I I, I want to give him a little bit more benefit of the doubt. I think uh, I'm just saying that that you can you can circumvent these problems by just pay attention to what you're focusing on because what you focus on is an important choice when it comes to a story. Yeah, no, definitely. But like, I okay, so I'm I'm harping on it, but I'm really <laughs> waiting for okay. him to say when it's good. Yeah. When is that armor good? It hasn't he's dropped. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. He's not going to do it. He's, he's, not he's still got it. a little left. We can we can make God. it. Still got we can time. make it. We got time. To to and get out my whip and beat the dead horse that is Game of Thrones Season 8 one more time. And other stories yes. like Star Wars and Snowpiercer, it didn't really fit for this video. And that is why I have created a whole oh, oh no, this isn't the end, right? No, Can't be. We've got, we've got enough. There's no way it's all ads. No way. It's all ads. That is all ads. That is all ads. That is all ads. That is all ads. This is funny, though. That this is... Horse. This is the secret of Mario's jump part two. You can find it on Nebula. <laughs> it isn't, you know, because there are misconceptions with Jon Snow's resurrection, with Rey beating Kylo Ren, Game of Thrones oh, season eight. Oh, oh he said misconception. Oh, you catch that? DLC for is this plot armor? He said it's a misconception that you'd see this plot armor that Rey beat Kylo in Force Awakens or something. It, it, oh, there's, no. there's a lot to untangle there. Also, he said there are thoughts in this video I couldn't fit in this one. It's like, mm, yes, you yeah, you are. Yes, temporally, you, you could. Determine, you sure. determine how long the fucking video is, just like how you determine how long your books are. It's up the to amount you. Of time the amount of times he repeated it, had, he had room for everything. Under the yeah, thrill Mark. of being the author. Also, someone said, I disagree that having indirect costs makes plot armor more palatable. Aya could have lost the use of her legs and it still wouldn't have negated the fact that she should have died. That's true, but that would be that more palatable. True. It'd be more palatable. I, I, there would, yeah. it just I, there'd would. be consequences rather than soup. Yeah, if she loses <laughs> her <laughs> legs, I'd be like, oh shit, well, yeah, yeah, she should have died, but I mean, at least she lost her legs, so it's, it's a consequence, yeah. Yeah, tell me about it. It seems like his his advice for how to do plot armor well is to do things to make it less plot armor, yeah. which implies that <laughs> plot armor is bad, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that should be the title. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> plot armor is bad, comma, actually. Find it over on Nebula uh -oh. as episode three of my ongoing Beyond writing series. There's uh -huh. a companion video for everyone that's on the main channel. Oh Nebula is a platform that a bunch of us creators made ourselves okay, because so we didn't like living oh, under the threat of corporations taking away but I don't, guys. don't tell me that that's not why you made yeah, Nebula. Yeah, yeah. You made Nebula yeah, to have a fucking um, money wall. Like, what's it called? <laughs> it's paywall. Paywall, yeah. paywall that's you, it, yeah. Because uh, there's no yeah. way that you, no offense, man, but you don't have any problems about censorship. You didn't, you didn't even get close <laughs> to being censored in this video. There's no fucking way. Yep. You're the idea up. that you like, we went to Nebula so we could be truthful. And I was like, fuck off. No, no. <laughs> no way. You didn't have a paywall. That's why. They are livelihood at a moment. There's By the way, that's totally fine. If you wanted to make more money from making the videos and you, you set up a system to do that, okay. You could just say that. It helps us be more just... independent. More inde Wait, look look at this. Uh, these are some good... Uh, where is memes? it? Memes? Some good content right yeah. here. I like memes. Oh, okay, so we go... Right there. Look at the... Uh, you like the good uh, media criticism people? Just oh, Right is it. fantastic. I hate all four content of them. Yeah. Lindsay Alice and Patrick Willems' Lessons from the Screenplay is probably the only one. Well, Lessons from the Screenplay and Lindsay Alice have videos that I think are good. They, they yeah. do exist. They're out there. Yeah. But overall, mm -hmm. Lindsay Alice is awful. Um, yes. Correct. I'm yes. trying to think of whether or not I describe it as hit or miss on a media really? or mostly bad or mostly good. I can't remember. I'd have to rewatch them. I remember liking like the Hobbit stuff and. Um, uh... Her movie. I mean, I like when she cancelled herself <laughs> on the internet. Has yeah, Patrick really ever fun. made anything good? Mm. Like, I don't know what Patrick Willem is doing there. <laughs> I like the gif Think of all the hot dogs one. smashing into her face. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> good memes. Taking away our livelihood at a moment's notice. It helps us be more independent. We can make what we want without any sort of censorship. And I think that's... I just stop saying that. It's not a thing you okay. have to worry about. You don't get to pull that card until you actually get censored. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Well, you... It's also... What, what kind of contentious content is this it's, guy It's, it's bullshit. Like, yeah. so it's actually, they're lying. There's no fucking way they you make content they, they, they worry, worry about censorship. About it's not true. Same, like, like, I doing it that are good is extremely controversial. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, this plot armor in Game of Thrones. Oh no, don't censor me. Oh no. 
I just wanted to be critical of Game of Thrones. I mean, if ER said that, I'd believe him. I'd be like, oh, that makes sense. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> I do. I think we have the concern of being censored a lot, but like the the idea that they do, it's like, no, come on, you guys. No, no. You're, you're the one. You guys are the ones fucking cheering for that shit. We totally need to be effort. free to make milk toast takes on media. foundational in helping Nebula grow, and so we've created a bundle where you get access to both. There is more to this video, right? Of these amazing educational nope, hope platforms so. with documentaries from people like David. It can't all be ads left. Attenborough and so all of it. much more. Oh, I if you want to oh, support, yeah, ads guys, all the I way down. This, this whole thing is just an ad for people to. Click I was about on to say, armor. I'm yeah, having a yeah, bad it. realization here that like this feels like clickbait yeah. in an ad. Yeah, it's it like, and he it and he didn't exp it didn't explain his point that throw plot armor is bad is oh, bad except that's what Cap said. All really he did was bad. explain yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's bad except when you justify it, which is because, uh, which could have just been when you justify it. Yeah, something that was oh. mentioned in the ad is the companion videos on Nebula. That there's like the video on the YouTube, and then the this isn't one where it continues over on Nebula, right? This is this is what I don't I know. We got to find out. Now. Must know oh, the secret. Be. Content like this, then you can Surely do it for just not. fifteen bucks a year with twenty six percent. Yeah, I know. This is such great offers. The thing about oh, this sponsor oh. is that I oh, get to sponsor stuff. my own video with my own stuff. That is very cool. You Thank calm down you with the fingers. Very much. This Check is, it out. The link is down you. below. Let we me know what that you think. Not sponsor. This is an infomercial. Yeah. Let's bring. Running Wait, he's bringing it all here. back. Here we go. Okay, all right, okay, we got okay, it. Wait, really quick. All of this really quick. Together. In yes. Really quick. Uh, okay. Anyone out there who wants to make their own videos where they're going to be on camera, uh, if you're going to stand in one spot the entire time, you don't I need know where it you're on going. focus. Yes. Just leave please. It one focus point on your face, yes. set it up, and then stay there. You don't need to set it on autofocus so that every time you move your hands, the focus shifts. All right? Yes, I you hate that. I almost. Mm -hmm. I almost brought it up earlier because everyone it seems like everyone does this when they're just sitting in front of the webcam turn off autofocus stop it 98% of the time when autofocus shifts it's wrong and it's trying to clarify your 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 hands motions or or it, it sees a booger in the background and it gets confused or something <laughs> just oh take God. it off autofocus <laughs> is wrong most of the time it should be off by default. My shots are wide, and so yeah, autofocus is just not even an option. There's too many things that could be picking up at any given time. So yeah, you just set your focal length, and you're good. Mm -hmm. I just and want him to say one time that plot armor is good, and I'm gonna give him like a few points. <laughs> just say it once. <laughs> Don't give me any context, just say it. It would just be so Forgot funny it. if he says, and so for all of those reasons, plot armor is good sometimes. Yes. And, we'll, and then we'll say, you bastard. At least I'll be a bit more entertained. D don't Maybe. essays tend to have a thesis presented close to the beginning? Yeah. It'll have or a in thesis the title, maybe, day. even. Pieces of armor, the breastplate of the righteousness of the god of writing. Look who's coming better together in my head. Number one, sometimes it is just bad writing. Set up solutions beforehand or don't put Wait, are we recapping? In so, okay, mm -hmm. let's pretend for a second that the starting statement is plot armor is good sometimes. And then his first clarification is, but sometimes it's just bad writing. In positions okay. that require contrived answers. Two, this plot right. armor can come from breaking the rules around death and pain you previously set up. They can also shift the tone. Though that can be used More reasons for it's bad. Okay. Yeah. This 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 to okay. me feels like saying uh, they're bad, but they can do things. And it's like yeah. I mean that doesn't really. <laughs> it's almost like explaining why character assassination is useful. And it's like why? It's like because you can get the character to do things they wouldn't have done. <laughs> well, yeah, you also, do yeah. if he's still saying it's bad. Also, what a cop out of a conclusion. Just summarize, mm -hmm. like literally repeat everything you've said in a small sentences. Like well, this isn't going to help first. us because um, we already were confused, so summarizing it's not going to change mm -hmm. anything. Three, plot armor usually comes about because the audience doesn't buy into the type of tension you're relying on. Show the character can lose in many ways and give the story a different source of tension than will they survive. Four, the tension... That one's just like, that's just not even to do with plot armor, that's just like give different forms of tension. That really, then, not just to physical like health. All of these so like far forward. have said plot armor is bad. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. I agree. That, that's true. Did, you know, thinking back, um, did he ever define plot armor? 
Probably. No, no. not oh, properly. No. Not like he in one did. sentence. He should have, should be the but first thing he does. But big, what you could do is just title this video "How to Avoid Plot Armor" or "How to Fix Plot Armor," yeah. and then everything's basically fine. Yeah. The examples are terrible, but yeah, or just yeah, yeah. 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 call yeah. the video yeah. like me rambling about plot armor. I think you fixed everything. <laughs> that would make more sense. <laughs> yeah, but you just got clickbaited more. You understand that, right? Because yeah, title's just clickbait. Well, yeah, to be fair, we, most of the videos ads. we watch are clickbait, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dude, no, just... this was this guy tricked us. He's... I think, yeah, this is probably the most egregious because this feels more so like an ad for all of his work on a different site filled with. Yeah, that's what he kept doing. Ads. And his books. All the little plugs. Yes. <laughs> and his books. Posing a threat he repeated himself for 10 minutes just to plug his stuff. Alternatively, give scenes, dilemmas, or secondary objectives in a yes but behind their survival. Stay nerdy. Grab my book. Tell me about your worst example of plot oh, armor down below oh. in the comments. What's mm. the thing is that it just asked. Oh, yeah. he, what it's a good. Great great story. Wow, wow. Lying to me, too. That sucked. Oh. <laughs> I asked him. It, 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 uh, I, I don't know if I go that. It's just, it was. We trusted you, Tim. Messy. It was messy. Trusted. Is it? Okay. He's saying it's the title Tim. of the lie. And then give the title of the actual lie. I'm going to leave a comment on the video. I can't believe I was baited by Tim. When is it good, you bastard? It's good sometimes. Like we we'll never get learn. An example of it being good. Yeah. It no, was just we didn't. Well, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say that, this is the big problem. It's, I don't even think this is semantics. It goes beyond that. But if he said to us right now in this call, what I mean is it's good because good things come out of it, or that it's good because when you do it in a way that it costs them something that's not their physical health, that works as well. And it's like, but all of these are just then, concessions on the bad thing. It's not good things. Or I'll tell you what we're on plot armor, we're just talking yeah, about. Yeah, like, I guess if you give him the extreme benefit of the doubt, he's trying to say that you can use this negative attribute to do a lot of different things with it, which can he be good. Say that. Yeah, like he, if you're he right does kind of say order. that, but he's not. But the end result is that at the ultimately it's bad. You're trying to avoid plot armor. Yeah, all the advice is how to avoid this or to justify mm -hmm. it such that we wouldn't even call it plot armor anymore. Yeah. Well, it feels like when it's like when Pillar of Garbage was like, actually, plot conveniences are good sometimes. Look at this paper where a lady said that, you know, plot conveniences can be good when you make them not conveniences anymore. I remember. Yeah. I remember that was funny. Story. Is he That's saying perfect. that if you write yourself into a corner and then use plot armor to get the character out of it, that gives you the challenge as the writer to say, okay, now explain that plot armor. Give a reason but he for should it. Have, but, but that, I guess what he should have said maybe. was, don't, if you realize you've written yourself into a corner, you're the author, goddammit. Yeah, don't do that and unwrite, yeah, go back I, and fix your mistake. I, I guess I wonder if the problem, it, if it was confused because the video comes across with the recognition that plot armor is a bad thing. So it wouldn't be mm -hmm. that it's like, this is a type of plot armor that's good. It's, it's, it's like he knows that he's sort of navigating around something that is a problem. And like, it depends. Do we agree that if you have written something that's good that you're past plot armor? It's like, oh, well, you've just written good drama. You've written a good action scene. You've written good tension. Yeah, it sounds like the kind of advice that's telling people to accidentally write good stuff like Stephen King does, where it's just he does just kind of do flight of fancy. I'm just going to write whatever I'm going to write myself into a bunch of corners and sometimes I'm going to do really crazy stuff to get myself out of it. And every so often that works for him. But, you know, for the for the most part, I don't think anyone really ever says Stephen King has written a lot of great endings. Mm -mm. I think I don't think that's a controversial take. If you're trying to avoid plot armor, maybe don't have every conflict about whether they're going to die or not. Maybe write like 12 Angry Men or instead. It's like, yeah. this I mean, is, this is not a piece of those thoughts were in this video. Because even the yeah, one where for... it said, like, go back and fix it, he even said that in his first point about how it's just going to be bad writing and stuff. It's just like, I don't I don't mean to sound condescending, but it's just like, you really need to redraft this, especially being mm. a writer advisor yes. person. Yeah, my my bar is my my bar is higher for someone who is an author. This was a very poorly written video that basically yes. doesn't address the title and doesn't even really help any writer that much. Very basic stuff in here. 
Um, not at all fine, what I would have put no. together if I was to make a video on plot armor. It had the illusion of structure and research. research and you would, but like, you it probably shouldn't apart. define what plot armor is at the very yes. least. Your first yes. 30 mm -hmm. seconds. Like, that should and be the Here body is body. what plot armor is. Good. Now that we have established this, we can do all these other things. And you're, when you're a writer and you're talking about writing and from the, the get-go, you, the first thing you mention is that sometimes it's bad writing. How, what, what a cop out of a, like, this is the what first thing that you statement. say. Well, already, what, what is bad writing? We need to, you know, sometimes, like, yeah, it's, it's how can writing be bad? Writing. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he even, and from what you guys are telling me right now, in the beginning of the video, he doesn't even define what plot armor is. So it's a I don't think he did, him. unless I'm just yeah, having a know. complete mental. Maybe he pulled back. If he did, we'd remember picture, that part. Maybe for two seconds. Is it just well, yeah, I, did he, op he opened with the eye or example, and I guess you would consider it intuitive that you'd understand like when they're supposed to be dead but don't die. You know, we kind of went nuts when he mentioned Arya. Maybe he did like elaborate. We just skipped. Give an example. <laughs> okay, that's okay. A definition, but it was a pretty good example, I would say. Get, yeah, well, because that's the thing, right? Someone might be like, "Well, that doesn't really cover all of plot armor, does it?" It's there are times where people should be injured and not die, but they don't get injured at all, Cause, even. Yeah, because it's like, why? Why is this example here such a good example of plot armor? I was like, well, because human bodies, knives, you know, sepsis, all this stuff. You know, like, we have a th this comparison. To reality, um, you know this sort of intuition that comes with when you're portraying a realistic world that plays by realistic rules, and you mm -hmm. show someone getting stabbed and stabbed and then thrown off bridges and things, and they're okay. Yeah. Like that, that break. That's a that's a disconnect that makes a, a break in our minds between what we expect to happen based on the rules of reality and what it you're is. showing us in the work of yeah, fiction. I think, um, I think one of the oh, go ahead, sorry, oh, so, sorry, it sounded like you had more rags. No, I was I was wrapping up. Anyway. All right, what, what I, I I think that something that would because a lot of the latter portion of the video is here's how you like solve the problem of it arising in the story. I feel like a good way to lead with the video is explaining why does it why is plot armor like a problem that shows up in stories in the first place? And a lot of the time, it's just path of least resistance to get to the things that you want. It's like the quickest, easiest mm -hmm. sort of uh, immediate. Like it's the quickest way of getting to the plot points that you want as the mm -hmm. creator. Quick and sort of thinking of about. Yeah, yeah, it's and then, and so then easy maybe... to just say, "Well, love the stormtroopers." Exactly. Missed. But and sometimes maybe, they get lost in that, to, trying to cheat. It'd be good think... to start with that as an explanation, and then kind of explain there are other solutions to these problems. There's other ways, or even like, just to give it a little bit more structure, or even or the set first it up the, properly. Like the first segment is, "Uh oh, your character has plot armor. How did we get here?" Yeah, in the whole exactly. like, well, what you did was you put your characters in a situation where they should be dead based off of the rules of their world. Consider going back and fixing this, or going back and writing it to another way, because you're the god of this universe, you're the author, you can make things be whatever you want, you know? So consider not even writing yourself into this position in the first place, which is probably generally going to be a good rule, or be prepared to deal with the consequences of what you write, which is probably always good advice to sprinkle into any author whenever they're writing anything. I think it also would be kind of an okay take if uh, he sort of took a, a turn where he said like um, it's oh like it's inevitable that sometimes plot armor like will happen and it's okay it's an inevitable thing sometimes I, authors need to take liberty. Inevitable. I do, I wouldn't give it, that it, advice. I'm well, not, it's not inevitable. It's, it's, it's always avoidable. It's, it's it's always it's gonna happen. It's it's gonna I happen some way it's, or it's, another it's, if you don't have it. I think, but it, it depends on how you justify in it. In small too. cases, like, not like you know, getting stepped in the uh, stomach. De definitely <laughs> not. But you know, when there's like a huge shootings and you have big, huge battle scenes, right? Sequences. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be some type of liberty that you have to take with some characters to, in order to protect them. Uh, oh, I, 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 think I thought whole... it was more so that people make mistakes when creating art. Like that, it's it's very yeah, difficult to not have that a no, you take story. not that it happens, well, especially but... I mean, with that happens um, you write it in the script. Take a project you, like you wrote yourself into a corner with that situation. Yeah, like, it's not a natural that. emergent property of a story that plot armor hmm. occurs. It's, it's because not, it you wrote happen. it this way, and this series is to prevent you from doing that or being able. Well, to one could argue that errors are a natural production of the creative process, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's what I thought. It's an easy solution for a lot of writers that they're willing to take, but you just, it's the whole point of writing is to avoid that, like the problem solving, like not write yourself into a corner where you have to provide plot armor for these people. That's why Game of Thrones was so frustrating because we saw great examples of them not having plot armor and then some of the worst plot armor I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. True.
Um, it's he worth had, mentioning. Like, some, some decent takes and advice, but a lot of it was so scatterbrained that he was yeah. pulling yeah. in all these unrelated issues, other different writing problems regarding certain tropes. And well, I feel cheated. And, yeah, I do too. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> I wanna Liar. I never learned. I never learned Maybe. when plot armor is good. The best that we got was it, like how to what good how to put a band-aid on it. Or you know, it it's a how to apply a but at least yeah. to your plot armor issue, which is not fixing mm -hmm. the issue. It's just I like, thought well, he'd eventually get at to least, that, but then I just gave Jews up on a nation of their own. It's like, well, mm -hmm. that's not the problem. No, guys, this is part of his Nova DLC plot armor package, which you can get for twenty six ninety nine. No, <laughs> it does oh feel God. like he tried to imply that he would eventually get to the point in the Nebula video. I don't believe <laughs> that. You over. Yeah, I don't that believe it either. Yeah. Hook, uh, it? This was a uh, how long? Uh, how long was this video 19 actually? Minutes. 90 minutes. 19 minute 19 minutes. 19 minute advertisement for his too long. Well, books 17 and minutes. His books and his crap. Yeah. Talking about mm -hmm. something for 19 minutes. You can you can cover buy a the lot DLC. of information. You believe I mean, this entire video was like him, I think, something I would write down in my notes app and just like rumble on about. That's how it felt like for me. Yeah. If it's you told me this was written by like an author, I'd be like, nah. nah. It'd be, it would have yeah. been better if that was the case. <laughs> I think this is the type of made video I would make and like if I had to quiz into a two day Rush it. <laughs> deadline. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the first draft wow. and it's all over the place. Yeah, rushed yeah, and rambly. Draft, it's not focused. It didn't Brand get that. Edit. Hey, the good stuff Editing is on Nebula, can... okay? The uncensored stuff. Yeah, that's the I real mean, good What show. do you mean it wasn't focused? He had chapters. He wouldn't put the he wouldn't put all the good not... bits in the in the free in the free stuff. I think yeah, only the I most mean, talented personal... of video creators can pull off the whole like part one, it's hmm. bad because part two, it's always because of part three. It's like, oh fuck off. <laughs> like I can't understand this. this is too complicated. Help me. And also, like in my personal experience, I spend more time, like not editing clips, but like finding the correct material that will like actually correspond to what I'm saying. Yeah. Like that's that's what I find the hardest uh, for me during the editing process. And this was just rushed. He did not care what yeah. he was putting up there. Just that's the most often... tedious part, making sure it matches your words and you can get yeah, proper there's... context. Yes. You would expect there to be some deliberateness when it comes to the the visuals that are used, um, and mm -hmm. some of them were just mm -hmm. downright confusing. But the whole Luke Skywalker yeah. Vader thing was just like, no, this is completely contradictory well, to what well, you are saying right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. and this is like this is like basic shit that you've got to avoid when you're making videos. Yeah, like oh. don't have your words and your visuals contradict each other. Basic tier one kind of stuff that you that you just can't be doing if you have. Jesus, a million. Jeez, he's got a million subs and he's making like amateur mistakes like that. Like, really? come on, man. Oh, we gotta set really? our bar. We gotta set our bar higher. Well, on that yeah, one point zero five million apparently. I gotta go. Oh my god. Jeez. Did you say you gotta go? <laughs> it's getting late, and I gotta stream tomorrow for another that twelve hours. Oh well, I was gonna say we're at eleven hours and twenty something minutes, and so we're gonna be Ooh, wrapping up soon. Halfway. For part one. Yeah, I know it is. Like part one's almost Ooh. over, and we're halfway. Yeah. Not bad. Um, first thing before we go, I want to make every sure everyone's aware. The link is in the description for the vinyls. They're still yes. going. Beautiful vinyls lads. are amazing. Are you doing records? The timer is ticking. We are. Away. <laughs> we're gonna. We're doing records. We're setting records every day. Next new vinyls. One eighth of this stream will be on a vinyl record that you can buy. <laughs> That's nice. true. You can hear I'm this stream no in even there. lower quality. <laughs> on a vinyl of your choice. But it sounds warmer and more real, man. Definitely. Vinyl figures. I don't know. Got one of me, one of Mr. Fringolius. Gotta check out these wonderful boxes, too. And one of me. I was getting to that. <laughs> God. Wow. There's also wow. Rex. Look at him go. Yay. There's it's me. Look at me go. Oh, I already got one. my vinyl figures. Oh, what man, about you, you chat? Have I you bought <laughs> you and your friends slash relatives their vinyl figures in addition to your own? Buying vinyl figures helps, should. helps EFAP not be censored. Yeah. Yes. Every <laughs> vinyl figure that you buy is a middle finger to big censorship. tech censorship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't like that. Might be safer around the puppies and the plushies, too. I have the Sijin Adam ones, and uh, two sets of Adam's glasses have been destroyed by the Chihuahua. 
Oh, oh my god! He's I hope very killing the bitches. Okay. What can I say? Yeah, <laughs> this, uh, this one's been left alone. I think you scare them. <laughs> Based. Well, and on that note, you guys know what time it is. This this time of year Miller between time. parts, there is indeed <gasps> a Batwoman episode about to launch. Yes. So you guys get to be babysat by uh, past us while future present us, I guess, are uh, going to take a second to grab oxygen slash make sure our legs yeah. still work. Boy, I sure uh, do love and oxygen. And avoid the trolley. Yeah. And then well, we shall return for who knows what's next. And who knows who is next. We have all kinds of people still hoping to come on. Um, obviously, the way it works, you guys know we won't be able to get everybody, but I think we've had a pretty good selection so far. And of course, very thankful to everybody so who's come so on. Good. Been, yeah, um, I think this is probably some of the densest EFAP has ever been in terms of like video coverage and uh, commentary, you know? Yeah, so, it has. Yeah. No dense problems. This is us saying appreciate it because we're going to go to sleep for a while once this is over, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And have a little bit of a nap? A little bit, yeah. Uh, but let's not get our hopes up because that's still half a day away. It is. Still uh, don't even away. think about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> we've got to stay awake for a much longer time. That's um, right. But yes, check out the vinyl figures. There are links in the description as well as a link to the uh, questionnaire that we'll be looking at in part three because of the way that the, the reason for anybody who doesn't know is that youtube caps at 11 hours and 45 minutes i believe for um like unlisted live streams so we want to make sure we don't split it too hard and if it's 24 hours that typically would mean 888 i think last year we actually did 888 but um this year apparently it's going to be 11 and a half and then who knows what and then the remaining so yep and on the bun, I'm sure. Because you will indeed be getting another um, Batwoman episode in between wow. episodes, uh, parts two and three. How um, incredible. So, yeah, I guess uh, we still got to kill another uh, nine minutes, so we'll have to talk about something. Oh. Uh, <laughs> another nine minutes? Do you think another we can talk nine? for nine minutes? I don't know. I don't, still... Maybe that's possible at all. Yeah. Are you still I mean, planning you on doing that? Um... Yeah. Yeah. Have any of you played Armory Core since? Yes, I have. Woo, that's exactly Woo. what I was saying at the same time, too. And hell yeah. No, I haven't. It's very good. I, I get my ass kicked. It's very good. Are you still going through that top 10 list? The top 10 ways Lord of the Rings has aged badly? Oh, yeah, probably. Um, we got a lot of potential for... To be honest with you, I'm, just, I'm still surprised that in one part we got through... What was that, four videos? It's insane. Wow. Yeah, it we got through four videos in half a day. I can't believe it. Oh, God. Super fast. How long has it been? Hyper speed. High quality shit. It right has been there. 11 hours and 26 minutes. Jesus Christ. Is there anyone who's been here since the beginning? I think Brooke has been here one this of the guy. longest, right? Yeah. I've been here since the beginning, yeah. Outside of me, Rags and Fringy, of course. <laughs> you, Rags and Fringy, yeah. popped in, ah. and then me and Theo came in the exact same time, pretty mm. much. Oh, um, I was going to say. In, I'm sure. I was going to say, just if you guys need me to pop out, whatever you need to do, but if, try to give me a heads up, if possible, if the rotation comes. I really want to try to be there for that that list. That stupid list is so ridiculous. Maybe. We shall indeed figure how it out. You do it. Also, I've been made aware Ooh. of this. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. What, oh, what, is, what this? is this? Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> Jeez. What I am, so I'm much is happening. <laughs> So it's been a, it's already been a long day. <gasps> it's Lois. Ho, oh, Ragu is of Anime Doggu. Is that Wolf do down there? Nani, what do is happening? You. I didn't know I spoke Japanese. <laughs> Ambiguous Japanese ness on the floor. Got... Oh, Fringu Guru. I just realized oh. how long you are in this picture. <laughs> yeah. <Jeez. laughs> Boosie. I got them tig old biddies. Oh, look, Weekend Warriors there, too. Boobzu. Mm -hmm. Oh, Boobzu. Oh, 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 nice. You're chair staring metal, at metal my chair. asshole. Metal's chair. Yeah. yeah. Who's metal the black chair dude? Become alive. Who's Fringy's who? looking... Uh, that's Lewis from Left 4 Dead. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. Lewis. Oh, and he's got the noisy cricket. Is that what he's got in his oh, hand? Yeah. Oh, is that a controller? Not sure. I think it's a controller. It looks like an Xbox controller or something. Yeah, it does. Lewis is officially the, buttons, the mascot yeah. of episode 250, I think. We've got a decent oh, yeah. amount of props oh, yeah. down there at the bottom left in that pile. We've we got do. an R-Wing. We've got Kirby and a Goomba. 
we've got some uh the triforce and uh i don't Dolphin know what that little blue Sword. pendant is it looks legend of zelda Ooh, a beyblade Ooh. got beyblades a gamecube oh no actually, a gyroid that's the and a little thing. animal crossing leaf a um what's the little the bug what's the bug from is that a reaver from starcraft one I can't remember. Oh. So I have to back it. Um, Master Sword. We got three different Nintendo game systems. Um, a mushroom, Pokeball. What's behind the sword? What is that behind the sword there? That behind red one. This, oh, uh, what is that? Uh, is that a bike? A motorcycle? Is that a light cycle from Tron? Or is it a? Is it an? Is it? Is it the Akira motorcycle? That's, Maybe. That's the sword from Berserk. I just recognize that. Uh, yeah, that's okay. I, I can't really see. Is that is it Cloud Sword I, from Final yeah. Fantasy VII? No, or it's it, Guts. I think, I think it's Guts. They're both cringe. All right. Oh, um, oh my uh, god, you just did that. Uh, 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 Guts' wow. blade is on point. Oh my god. Cloud yeah, is cringe. I'll vouch for Guts. That's yes, all right. They're you both they're they're pretty cringe. From Bible right I there. think that's a motorcycle back behind the sword there. Um, what's the the one the thing in the back underneath ambiguous Japanese-ness? Um, what is that in the very back there? Like a propane grill. It looks like a yeah. It, I like Fringy's What shoes. is that? Yeah, I like Fringy's good. face. He looks like a Pokemon. Oh, he looks like that Pokemon. Wait, which is, one? Doesn't he look like? I don't know which one he is, but doesn't isn't he? Doesn't he look like a Pokemon? I um, don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know which one you mean. He looks like a it. dinosaur from Land Before Time. Uh, oh, kind yeah, of. He looks like a Petri. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Just a second. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, that's right. Well, no, that's Ducky. She says that. Oh, damn. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Land Before Time. Um, I, yeah. Uh, the first one was kind of, it was good. It was kind of like, it was serious shit. It was like spooky. Yeah, the first they were the, the, the tar pits scared. and the yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, that shit was. Yeah, I remember being intense. Uh, what? What? Green Pokemon frog? Did you ever see the uh, female <laughs> Mauler picture? Yes, we actually have a couple oh, that we're gonna be checking yes. out at some point. There's a few female versions of all of us. Um, Trico? Why? I. You know what? That's Sounds a question for the woke, ages, I mean. suppose. That is pretty woke. You're right. The one with the, the boob comparison. Oh, I don't know what I'm thinking. Oh, I would Fringy see this, reminds though. Me of something. <laughs> oh, that one. Oh, my goodness gracious. What the? What the? <laughs> oh, Sigoy. Oh. I mean... <laughs> I, I like the thong regs, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> or it's not looking terrible. Yeah. I don't necessarily want larger boobs. I appreciate breasts of all sizes, so... I don't think bigger you is appreciate, better. Appreciate uh, Dev. Um. <laughs> yeah. What happened to Sitch Chan's personality when the PSA Sitch channel gets one million subs? Well, how know. come I don't have? Happen. How come there's not like a plus whatever something thousand for dog bites? Or a uh, EVAP. Wow. What is dog bites on? I need to. Ah, uh, fuck it. Uh, dog bites is forty-eight and a half thousand subs. So. Nice. I feel, so I you just, guys are already I, winning, okay? Well, so why are we yeah. pretending no, like Sitch makes videos? I don't this want, is a lie. That's true. That's what it says if you read it. Oh. Gonna slide into 6.5k any day now. Sweet. I will say, I don't think I need my boobs any bigger. Well, Beowin's got me, and there's eight, <laughs> too. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you got How do I operate? <laughs> operate. Six. Is that, like, is that a disability? You know... I don't know. Man. More than possible, though. You just want to squeeze them. Oh, two minutes. It's going to start up any time uh -oh. now with its blaring music. Uh, and I'll uh, probably... <laughs> uh, that'll be when we sort of shut down on this end. So I'll start spamming the link. In case, for some reason, you guys can't figure out how to go to the Moolah channel. It's okay. I'm not judging. Potentially a problem. Uh, I mean, I, the you link. say that you're not, but... I don't know. What? What? Oh, I, Bayouin oh did say God. the red thing what? is the bike from what? Akira. I got the bike right. Right, I yeah. got that right. Um, the propane tank you. is a steam ball from Steam Boy. Oh. Uh, the amulet is from Laputa. The bug is a gnome from Nausicaa. So, uh, yeah, there we go. All right. 
we the answers are... have been given to me. I've received I have received special revelation from God received just now enlightenment. As, to what the, uh, as to what they were. Yeah. Do we get a final answer on which sword it was? I no, I, I assume I think... that it's the one that yeah, it's the guts one, isn't it? Guts. No, I think it's it's the cloud sword, the Buster sword. <laughs> yeah, see. Uh, it legit, oh guts, my God. guts sword. Gut sword from Berserk is I oh, think, okay. okay. So that's like, what... just to be consistent with the video game. Cloud sword. Yeah, that looks like the sword. Yeah, that looks like sword. Sword. This doesn't. Yeah, I think I'm going Buster let's sword. See. Let's see here. I don't know. I thought you weebs would be able to sell this. Uh, let's see. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know it has like the Swiss cheese things, doesn't it? The little rivets, the little metal yeah. rivets, look like Guts' sword. And the handle. Uh... The handle looks like Guts's. Mm hmm. You know, it, it doesn't bunch. really look like either of them, honestly. Maybe, Maybe it's just like a like an amalgamation of the two. Hey, it got up talking about it. Big sward. Um, hmm, yeah, I don't know. It's it's pretty big. Well, I don't know. Actually, to scale, it's not that big, right? Uh, I guess you could say it's wide. Maybe it's a trick of or the maybe, light. Or maybe it's, it's just it really far away. I don't think, I don't think so. Uh, it could be. <laughs> Both uh, of the actual swords are, are, are just, just, you know, they're impractically long. huge. <laughs> Big well, sound I mean, any you. second now. Well, they really are. <laughs> like they're they're only not to guts. It kind of doesn't make no, any. According to you, they're impractical, yeah. but you I'm know, many. maybe they're really good at using them. Cloud is really good at. Swinging that big sword. Uh, I guess guts is justified within the story, so I at least appreciate yeah, it. Like, uh, yeah, they yeah. they really make it make sense why guts, and it's it's a big deal to guts. Big even sword pick it up. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, hold on, he can he can hold that thing. They do it right oh, within Berserk. Oh, a lot of a lot of ones just want yeah. to have a big sword for the sake of having a big sword. Well, and it's because he was a, he was a soldier since he was a little kid, and they just gave him adult weapons. Yeah, he yeah. had to use an oversized blade since he was a child, so it just makes yeah. sense for it to scale up to that point. Yeah, yeah that makes and sense. The, and the and when you see him, he you see him keep training with bigger and bigger swords. Mm -hmm. All right, he tries to it's starting up. All of you flow okay. into that video. We will see you again on the other side of the Batwoman episode. Uh -huh. That's right. The Thank you all so continues. much. Hang right. on. We Bye. shall be back. Yep. Bye. See you shortly. Bye-bye.